Hello. Zimbabwe has introduced a new currency. It is called ZIG. It stands for Zimbabwe Gold. It is the latest effort to stabilize the country's currency, which has gone from one crisis to another in the last 25 years. ZIG is a gold back currency. It represses the Zimbabwean dollar, which has lost three quarters of its value this year alone. Whether it will help stabilize the battered economy of Zimbabwe is something time will tell. In March, the annual inflation in Zimbabwe rose to 55%. It was a seven month high. In 2008, inflation rose so high that the Central Bank of Zimbabwe printed $10 trillion Zimbabwean dollars notes. Zimbabweans have 25 days to exchange the old notes for the new ZIG. Despite the introduction of the new currency, the US dollar, which accounts for 85% of transactions in Zimbabwe, will remain a legal tender. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, a popular influencer, a transgender woman known as Bob Risky, has pleaded guilty to four counts of abusing the currency. Authorities accuse her of spraying Naira notes at social events. Nigerians commonly spread Naira notes at weddings and other celebrations. It is unusual for authorities to, in Nigeria to prosecute people for abuse of the Naira. If found guilty, the maximum punishment for the crime is six months in jail. Human rights activists have tackled the EFCC for Western resources, arresting and prosecuting Babriski when serious crimes are left unaddressed in Nigeria. It is 5.30 p.m. in Lagos, Nigeria, 12.30 p.m. in New York City, 4.30 p.m. in Dakar, Senegal, and 7.30 p.m. in Nairobi, Kenya. Wherever in the world you're joining us, welcome to another episode of 90 Minutes Africa. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. My co-host, Chido Anoma, is on assignment. Our guest today is Nollywood legend, Stella Damasos. She will join us to discuss the plight of girl child in Africa. It is a subject of her book, Mama, It is a Girl. Here is an introduction. Many, she's the darling of the golden days of Nollywood. Her smiles and emotionally charged movie performances have earned her recognition at home and abroad. Her name is Stella Damasus, also known as Stella Damascus by her stubborn Nigerian fans, who despite her countless attempts to get them to say her name right, has stopped to what they chose. Stella was born in the vibrant city of Benin on the 24th of April, 1978. Blessed amongst women, she is with four sisters and, of course, her two beautiful daughters. Originally from Asaba Delta State, she explains the origin of her surname, which her family adopted during the Nigerian Civil War. My, my original surname was Ojuku, but that, that changed during the war, during the Biafran War, oh. where my people were attacked in Asaba because they thought that it was the same Ojuku as a seasoned thespian with a Bachelor in Arts in Theatre Arts from the prestigious University of Lagos, Stella describes her foray into the world of movies as accidental. She recounts how she landed her first feature in 1995 from an impromptu audition for the movie Abused. So I didn't plan to be an actor. A man came to my house one day and I was like, oh, I'm going for an audition. And as we were about to leave, someone saw me and said, have you auditioned? I said, no, I haven't. I didn't come here for that. And he said, oh, well, I like the way you sound and I like your look. Come in and read. And I read what? <laughs> Spurred on by the success of her first role, she acted in many other Nollywood classics starring in over 70 movies. Despite her busy schedule, Stella still pursued her first love, music, and released her first album, The Alternative, in 2016. Somewhere on the other side of town, there's a young boy praying. Seventeen. The house is small and you complain when someone else just wants to leave. Her works have earned recognition at home and abroad and cemented her name as one of Nollywood's most prominent practitioners. Stella married Jaya Bordering at 21, a decision she says was to check herself from being carried away by the fame she already had. 
we have a tendency to be crazy and do whatever we like yeah. because we could get away with anything we could travel all over the world we could get people to like us like this yeah. we had money to throw around if i don't have that family you need to check me i don't know what i would have become when her husband passed a few years later stella found herself alone with two young children whose lives she kept away from the media until a few years ago when they appeared on the cover of her magazine a diva with her in 2005 stella received critical acclaim for her role in the movie the widow Many believed the movie was her life story because of her riveting performance. The movie portrayed the inhumane cultural rights a widow was subjected to at the death of her husband. She explains the origin of the movie and says the movie was shot before her husband passed. I, I did Widows months before my husband passed away. Um, so And I, I saw the lady that I played and so when the movie came out, the movie came out after my husband had died. Stella remarried in 2007 to Emeka Nzeribe, three years after losing her husband. But the marriage ended eight months later on a mutual agreement by both parties. In recognition of her works, the screen diva was nominated for Best Actress in a leading role at the African Movie Academy Awards in 2009. She won the award for Best Actress at the Nigeria Entertainment Awards in 2007. She won another award for Best Actress for the movie Two Brides and a Baby at the Golden Icons Academy Awards in Houston, Texas in 2012. As an advocate for social justice and a philanthropist, Stella has worked with several organizations including Globally Igniting Africa GIA a non-profit organization as their women's ambassador project alert to fight against domestic violence women for africa as an ambassador she has also worked with wfp world food program to help the people of liberia and supports lamborghini say no to crime still on a quest to see her country work she worked as an ambassador for the NDLEA, Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency. She worked with an organization in Cameroon that supports cancer patients. Stella's advocacy for the rights of women and children gained national and international prominence in 2014 when she frankly spoke against the marriage of Senator Yarima, a 53-year-old man, to a 13-year-old child. I am also worried about the fact that we are making it seem like he is a hero of a certain group of people and he is not and all of these have stated and stipulated that no child should be considered marriageable until she is the age of 18. After seven years since her marriage ended the beautiful mother of two found love again. With it she found herself at the center of controversies in an industry where it was nearly impossible not to be controversial. Between 2013 and 2014 she was embroiled in a controversial love triangle with her now ex-husband Daniel and his former wife Doris Simeon. Stella maintained a tight lip throughout the controversies but later spoke on the issue in an interview. She maintained that she only got into a relationship with Daniel after his marriage had ended with his ex-wife and debunked rumors that she snatched him and his son from her. If I marry 10, it concerns you. That's what I used to say. If I have 50 husbands, how does that affect you? Two people come together, it's not working, they go their separate ways. This one meets somebody, all of a sudden, it is that somebody that is the problem. Did anybody ever ask, what went wrong? Why would a man pick up his son and walk away from a marriage? A published author's book, Mama, It's a Girl, tells the story of a young girl whose determination changed the course of history for her people. She is a big supporter of women and recently dedicated the whole of March to promoting women-owned businesses on her social media handles. Never one not to have a say, Stella expresses her opinions and thoughts and interacts with her fans through her blogs, social media pages and her two very popular podcasts, Excuse My African, a weekly podcast about life through the eyes of a misrepresented and misunderstood African girl abroad and Daily Dose. All right, uh, let's welcome to the show, uh, Stella. Stella, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's very nice to have you. And um, we've been going after the legends of uh, Nollywood, and we're happy to have you today. Thank you for joining us. Um, let me start by asking of your opinion on something in the news that we saw a few minutes ago, and that is the arrest of Bob Risky. Um, what do you take up? What could you make of that? 
It's funny to me how that even became news in the first place, because I, I heard about it. And when I asked, they told me this person was arrested because he was spraying money on the floor. I'm like, this is what we do. <laughs> this is a normal Nigerian thing. Now, whether it is wrong or right is a different matter altogether. But the fact is, everybody does it. Weddings, parties, birthdays, even graduation. Nigerians have this thing of spraying money. So when you leave out all the issues that the country is facing, all the corruption that's happening in different uh, uh, parastatals, different structures of the economy, you leave all of that and focus your attention on arresting someone who was spraying money. I, I was really shocked. I'm like, there must be something else behind this. This is probably a cover-up story that, you know, they want people to just have at the back of their minds. But the real reason is different from just spray money. It cannot be. We can't waste Nigeria's resources on that. There has to be something else that they're covering up, honestly. <laughs> exactly. And, and looking at the news today, I was surprised. The former governor of uh, Kano State, Ganduje, the one that we knew, we had the video of him collecting bribe. I was saying that uh, the state government was trying to prosecute him. He was saying that they don't have the right, that it's only the attorney general and the EFCC, that, that, that they are the only two uh, agencies that could um, really uh, take him to court. But here is Bob Risky. The EFCC is going after Bob Risky, but not the person that we saw on video collecting. Mm -hmm. right. It's a shame that of everything that we could misconstrue in the constitution of our great nation, it's that some people are above the law. That's the, because in our constitution, nobody should be above the law, but a lot of people have immunity for some weird reason, which is very convenient to people in high places, people in power, that they can do the unthinkable and get away with it. But when you are a normal citizen, you're a civilian, the little thing you can get arrested without a word, without anything, without any concrete reason, you know? So this immunity that they give themselves is very crazy, but we know that nobody should be above the law. So how we allow these things to happen, and we just look over it like it's nothing. That's why it continues. Nobody says anything, nobody does anything. I'm glad that there are some groups that are fighting this back, but I hear a lot of comments and people saying, hey, they should leave them, Joe, they should arrest her, Joe. I'm like, are you, are you, are you guys serious right now? <laughs> let, let, me, let me find out from you. Do you think there's this divide between Nigerians at home and how they look at someone like Bob Risky and Nigerians abroad? Is there yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Because, I mean, I live in Atlanta, for instance, and you walk around the street, sometimes it takes you three minutes to identify a man from a woman or a woman from a man. So these are things that we see. We see all sorts in the streets, and we're so used to this that in our heads, it's kind of like, it's your choice. It's between you and your God, because nobody puts a knife to your throat because of your de decisions about your personal life. They are more concerned with the crimes that you commit against other people, against the state and against the nation. But they just see it as this is your life. Whatever choices you decide to make, you deal with it on your own. The consequences, you deal with it on your own. So when it comes to morals, they leave the morals for your upbringing, for your parents, for your religious sector, wherever you are, you're a Christian, they leave it to you and your pastor, you and your God. But when it comes to the crime that you commit, then the law takes a stand. But it's different back home in Nigeria because the law will take over your both your state life, your personal life, your religious life, your moral life, every, <laughs> everything. The, the, the country believes that they have the right or the power to check everything. And they say, ah, if we don't do it, our children will spoil. But at the end of the day, the devices that your kids have in their hands the content that they see on TV and the things they read, they are even worse than these things they're talking about and you let them. So how, why don't you focus on raising your children right? I'm, I've raised two daughters in this country and they know the difference between right and wrong. They know that if I use I and talk to you and you don't answer me, you know what follows you. <laughs> so it, it should be left to the individual to deal with their moral issues and it's between them and God. So I think us who are here, we have seen so much that we look at life differently, you know. <laughs> one, one of the headlines I, I found today was about another pastor who was arrested by the EFCC for defrauding a member of the church for 3.6 million naira. And and I, I, I want to ask you, because it appears as if um, pastors have come to become uh, at the receiving end of criticism in different ways, including now that the EFCC is arresting them for for something, I'm not saying if you do anything wrong, you shouldn't mm -hmm. be arrested. 
system, but it's not something that we used to see before, you know. So so maybe we'll get to a point where politicians will also be arrested. Uh, what do you think about pastors actually in, in, in Nigeria and their role in, in terms of um, how the society is structured and who, who is held accountable to things? Um, I always say that pastors are human beings first, you know. They are, they are men before they, you add the of God at the back. They are, <laughs> and unfortunately, I have, I've seen both sides of the divide when it comes to pastors and religion. And I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I go to church. So I am just very heartbroken because I've seen a lot of things happening, not just in Nigeria, but all over Africa, where it seems like these people who are supposed to be pastors, who are supposed to take care of their congregation and feed them with the word and, and, and raise them right, they a lot of them take advantage of their members. I'm not gonna lie. I've seen crazy things. I've seen countries where women and children have died because their pastors have told them don't eat so that you can see God. And I've seen cases where they tell them to eat grass or lick their pastor's feet. A, a lot of crazy things. And then you see churches where the pastor is extremely wealthy driving in big cars, but saying, God told me to tell you that you should bring all your life savings to me and he will bless you. The more you bring, the more blessings you get. I've heard of that. It doesn't mean that they're all like that because I have pastors that I have worked with, that I have prayed with, that I have attended their churches and they're amazing. However, I think that the church too should be looked at because people are now taking it for granted because you know when you have a church, it's tax exempt. So there are so many things that have to do with money laundering and fraud going on through a lot of churches. So. I'm not surprised and I don't have any issues with them looking into some churches because there are people who use it as business now. <laughs> we call it church business where I can talk. I can collect sermon notes from anybody. All we need to do is position this church. It's a business. People come together, put money together and establish, register this church. And they use it to collect money and deprive poor people of the little that they have, which is wrong. So if they have, there has come a time where they are looking into their finances now and looking into all of this scam and this fraud, they should do it. And hopefully, like you said, it graduates and it gets into the politicians as well. And we start looking into those who have been stealing our money. Yeah. But we still have a lot of Nigerians who we say to you, don't criticize the pastors. Don't look into what they are doing. It's not your church. They're not forcing you to come to church. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? So, like I, I said earlier, that when it comes to the morals of it, that's not the business of the state or the fed federation. But if it comes to crimes against someone else or crimes against the state, meaning money, things like money laundry, if your church is laundering money, it's a crime. If you're defrauding people, it's a crime. But if the person willingly gave that money to the church saying, okay, I was asked to pay tithe and offering and they didn't scam you in any way. They just said, pay your tithe or give pastor this and you openly did it, you know, with your heart. Then that's fine. What if, what if you give your brother's car? <laughs> there are some instances where people will give something that someone gave them to keep mm -hmm. they give it to the church as tithe. Mm -hmm. What happens in that situation? That's on them. That's not on the church because the church didn't tell you, go out, that car that I'm seeing that is your brother's car, bring it. No, you decided to give whatever you wanted to give to the church. So when you wake up tomorrow and say, hey, I shouldn't have done that. This is a problem. Don't blame the church. But if the church is really, you know, embezzling money and scamming people and doing money laundry, then they should be looked at. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, another headline talking about churches at, in today's news is from uh, Pastor Adeboye. Um, he's been under attack recently for certain things he said. One of them was that uh, he had tea with Jesus, um, uh, that he, uh, there was one that he, um, miracles that he performed. Or even uh, Chris Oyekinlame uh, last week, I think two weeks ago, talked about um, raising 50 people from the dead. So a lot of people have been paying attention to what things that churches, um, pastors and churches are, are saying. And today in the news, uh, Pastor Adeboyo, Adeboyo said that um, I am nothing, but don't make mock my God. So mm -hmm. he's reacting to this criticism of Nigerians saying mm -hmm. that why do you say uh, certain things you said, like he drove a car from Lagos, from Ore to Lagos without any gas in the car. Um, he, you know, he talked about several things and, and people are beginning to focus attention on the churches and what they, what they are saying. Um, so what do you think about that? Do you think that um, people have the right to criticize men of God and their vision? Whether they, you know? Here's what I would say. Um, 
I know that a lot of things that some pastors say might sound bizarre to people, especially those who have not experienced certain things. Now, I'm not saying, oh, no matter what they do, don't criticize a man of God. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, before you criticize someone, make sure that you understand where the person is coming from, the context, and the Bible, because the Bible has spoken about so many of these things happening, that there will be signs and wonders in the last days, that people will dream dreams, people will have visions, things will happen. Um, when I was not fully aware of what the Bible spoke about, when you tell me I met with God or I met with Satan and we had a fight, in my head, because I wasn't sure of what was going on, I was picturing real life demon standing in your room and you fighting the real life demon but what i now realize is that it can come in any form it can come in a familiar spirit form you know people have had extreme um, experiences that i cannot explain because i haven't had their experiences but i've had mine when someone says they drove from Ori to lagos and there was no gas in their car i can't tell you the lie because there are things that have happened in my life that till today i cannot explain it I cannot explain to you how these things happened or why. I might not be one to come outside and say it, but a lot of us have experiences that are very bizarre to others because even us, we can't explain it, let alone tell you for you to believe. So there are things that people will say to me and I'm like, anyway, the Bible has said it that these things will happen. But that does not take away the fact that there are so many people who are fake. Let's, let's call it how, fake. How do we know? How do we know who is fake and who is real? For me, the spirit of the Lord leads in you. If you really have the spirit of God in you, when somebody's saying crap, your, the spirit of the Lord will minister to you. And if you read the Bible as well, all these things that they claim, a lot of times I've seen people on TV, they say some things and they quote the verse. And I go and look at the verse and it has nothing to do with what they, what they have said. So when the Bible says study to show your, yourself approved, it means you have to know so that nobody can come and lie to you or deceive you or tell you how oh, this happened. If you really, really understand the word of God, I mean, I'm not an expert, I'm still learning, but from what I understand, there are some things I hear, they don't shock me anymore. Some people will tell you about NSPPD, what God cannot do does not exist. I, I, I watch NSPPD, I follow NSPPD. In the beginning, it was tiring for me. People were bombarding me and I'm like, I beg, I beg. People that are praying and doing miracles and people all over the world are getting healed and that I don't want it. And then I had a horrible experience and my sister said, just try it. It doesn't harm you. It is not, it's at night for you because you're in America. Don't just try it. And I followed it. And that thing that I was thinking about was that was going to crush me in less than two months. The thing changed. Now, I'm not, I don't know if it's them, but the fact that I, I had the culture of praying every night, it's not because of the man. It's not because of their building. It's because of the fact that they encouraged everyone to pray every night and get into this fire prayer that we are probably not used to. And, you know, things can happen from there. So I, I don't say, oh, don't judge, pastor. don't judge anybody. But when you smell a rat somewhere, no matter who, call it what it is. But if you don't understand the person's calling, the person's ministry, and exactly the, the way God speaks to them or appears to them, if you don't understand it, don't knock it down. Just move on. <laughs> because you, you are not there. You don't know what they know. So Yeah, yeah you, you mentioned that you should be able to differentiate, you know, but sometimes we also know that there are a lot of our people who may not be able to read or be able to have the critical uh, thinking to be able to differentiate. And they fall victims of these people. Who will protect them? How do we protect them? You know, there are some people we know what they do and how they operate their churches. Mm -hmm. You feel like, why are people in that church listening to this man? But then, mm -hmm. who would protect them? The thing is, it's only the Holy Spirit and God that can protect them. I can't go to somebody's church and tell their members, don't listen to your pastor, he's a madman. <laughs> But one thing I do know is if, what, like, sometimes I go on YouTube and I see a lot of these sermons and I hear some people who say they're pastors, they say some things that are very, like, crazy to me. I'm like, what's your business? This is what you're preaching in your church. But instead of me to go online to start bashing the man, instead I use my platform to say what I believe is right. For instance, somebody says, oh, there's a video from Beyonce. She's worshipping Yemoja. She's worshipping goddess of this. And that was the whole sermon for the whole day. And the congregation, yes, pastor, preach pastor. And the man was singing the song. The man was telling you what was in the video. In my head, I'm like, but pastor, you've listened to this album to the point that you can sing all the songs. You've watched the video so that you can describe all the costumes. I can't even remember everything. So how do you pay so much attention and focus 
on what you say is wrong and then make your congregation focus on that for two whole hours. Instead, I went online and I said, look, if you are worried about devil worship or you're worried about your children being addicted to things that are not good, can you stop your children from seeing certain things? Can you put parental control on YouTube or parental control on their phone? Can you put, so I'm not focused on another person or judging another person for creating her art. That's not what I'm focused on. I'm focused on telling you what I think is right, which is what the men of God are supposed to do. But a lot of times they don't. So for us, our duty to help people who will probably listen to these men and feel like, ah, this one is demonic. Ah, this one is this. this one. My job is to tell you what I think is right. Instead of focusing on that, focus on the right thing. That's the least I can do. I can't tell you to stop going to your church or stop listening to your man of God, but I will encourage you, read the Bible for yourself because it's your personal relationship with God that counts. It's not your relationship with your pastor or your relationship with your church building. Build your own relationship with God. Find out the truth for yourself. Even if you don't read Bible, there's so many things that are out there that are available for people who can't speak English. They're speaking English translation. You can listen to the Bible. If you can go to a church, if you can do this, do that, you can as well listen to somebody who's talking in pidgin or expressing it to you. It's a matter of interest. What are you interested in? Knowing God or following pastor? All right. <clears throat> We're going to get to uh, your book. We're going to get to your career in uh, Nollywood and beyond. Uh, but first, let me find out the election that just um, happened last year. It's still, uh, we are still living in with the implications. Where were you during that time? Were you involved in any way? And uh, what, what do you think about the outcome? I was in America when it when the election happened. Even when during the campaign, the election itself, I was in America. And um, I couldn't get involved. I don't get involved in politics. Let me just put it out there. But when it comes to my followers, I always want them to know where I stand so that nobody is confused. Because I know I made a video, so I can't come here and hide it or not say anything because my video is out there i was supporting peter Obi. i was supporting the labor party and even for the lagos state governorship i was supporting grv and all of that because of what they represented because of what they were willing to do because of the questions that i heard them answer and respond to because of the heart that i saw that they had so I actually made videos that this is where I stand, you know, the, a person that you can verify, a person that tells you he can do this, a person that has a track record and can sit with young people and they bombard him with all sorts. And he's able to tell you, I'm not perfect. I cannot change. He's not the usual politician that will come and promise you heaven and earth. He's telling you, together we can do this. I need people to support me so we can do this together. So I supported him. And then when I started seeing all the things, all the craziness that was happening during the elections and the ballot boxes being moved and things, I posted a video or two of people changing, you know, things that were happening and restamping. I, I was like, our country has become like a jungle. <laughs> we live in a jungle right now, you know, and when the other party won and he came into power and everything in my head i said okay i will do what they do in developed countries my candidate did not win but i will not go and fight whoever has won what can i do to make sure that at least me my family my community we don't suffer to the point that we die in the process how can i make sure that people who are around me the lives that i can impact how can I make them good? Because for so long, we've had to depend on ourselves. Everything is individualized, it's privatized. Everything that works in Nigeria is in the private sector because everything government is a problem. So those of us who are in the private sector, what can we do to alleviate the suffering of our people? That's the best thing we can do in our country as opposed to depending on whoever is there. You know, So whatever he does or doesn't do, I don't pay attention to their flaws or their faults or their issues because it's been happening for too long. So what can we do as people to help ourselves to make sure that we don't die of hunger or the economic strength? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So um, does it mean that uh, you don't uh, have any reason to critique the government? Do you um, remove yourself from that role? <sighs> if I start criticizing this government, I will not that I will not end in the next 10 years. And it's not just this government. It's a lot of governments that have come in. But I realized that criticizing them all the time will not solve the problem. There are people who they feel comfortable in the criticisms. That's what they want to do. 
But there are some of us who want to go beyond criticizing and find solutions to the immediate problems that our people have. Last year during the Christmas, there were so many areas, you know, after Aja in Lagos going down. They were so hungry. They didn't have food to eat that period. They didn't have anything. The market that was in their community that all of them have their businesses in was demolished by the government without warning. People were rolling on the floor. Old men were crying and fainting. And I'm like, this is too much for me to bear. So I had to send my people from my foundation to just buy food, go there and distribute. I didn't care who they were giving the food to, just send food to as many people as we can feed, that we can afford to feed. Just go there and just do it, you know? And for me, that is my own little way of saying, yes, the country is this, the government is doing this, they are doing that, whatever it is, the time that I will use to be shouting, government don't do this, government do this. Let me focus my energy on doing the least that I can do to make sure at least we survive this period until we know exactly what's going on. Because right now, the economy is shaking. However, having said that, I don't expect someone to come into power and in less than a year or two, you perform magic. Nothing good comes easy. So I'm giving the government the benefit of the doubt that in the next four years, at least before the tenure is up, there has to be a reason for this immediate suffering. There has to be some an end goal for all of this that's been done, you know? So I, I believe in benefit of the doubt before I knock somebody down totally, yeah. Yeah, during the campaign, there were so many uh, of your colleagues in Nollywood who came out and took positions. Uh, some of them took position in support of Tinubu, some in support of OB. And a lot of people are still paying a price for their position. Uh, what do you think about that? The people feel that you guys in Hollywood should not have political view. We, we... <laughs> it's very sad because when things happen, when it's politics or NSARS or this, sometimes I intentionally don't say anything. I remove myself from it. It is still the same people that will come and bombard me. This thing is happening in your country. You are not talking. You have a voice. You have a platform. You are not talking. And then when we now still come and talk, they are still the same that will say, hey, how dare you? Why are you supporting this? <laughs> so... What, whatever you do, they will still come for you. They will drag you, they will blast you, whatever it is. But I always say that we all have our choices. We make our choices, we select our preferences based on what we want, what our beliefs are, what we see, the experiences we've had. My experiences is different from my colleague's experience. So if my colleague goes out to say, I support Tinubu, they must have a reason for it. Whatever the reason is, I can't knock it down because it's their life and their experience. I came out and I said, I support Peter Obi. A lot of people did not agree with that. They fought with me. And I'm like, I know why I'm saying it. I know my experience. I know what I've heard. And I know what I've seen from this man. You know, so it's, it's unfair when people say, ah, this Nollywood people, they don't have sense. It's just to talk. They talk nonsense. But if we don't talk, they will come and say you're not supportive, you know? So I've just learned to be myself and, and speak my mind when I have to. I don't believe in putting my mouth in every single issue, especially when I'm not sure of both sides or exactly what it is. If it's something I've heard or I've seen online or YouTube, I don't say it until I have confirmation, you know? So um, whatever, whatever it is, people should do what is in their heart to do and just keep it moving. <laughs> All right. So how is uh, how is Nollywood? How is how are things in Nollywood? Are they going well? Um, where are we? Um, Nollywood is doing good compared to you know a few years ago. Nollywood is doing much better. We have been exposed to more platforms that our movies are now received and hosted in, like Netflix and Amazon and stuff like that. Um, there are other places like Tubi and the rest of them. So we have a larger, wider range of places where our films can you know, be hosted in. And, and it's, it goes to show that with good distribution, you know, the industry gets better. However, it's not how I would have loved for it to be because there are too many gatekeepers. So the going to Netflix or Amazon or going to the big cinemas and all of that is still dependent on who you know and the connections you have and how you can do this and do that. It's not for everyone who's a filmmaker who's done great films. Not everyone has that opportunity or that connection or it belongs to a particular clique to be able to get through to most of these platforms so it's still a problem however i i feel like with what's happening on youtube now youtube has opened up this this whole portal for more filmmakers especially those who don't who have low budget films and they create their low budget films put it on youtube and youtube pays them for it so it's it's it now creates an opportunity for more work 
more people are getting work, more people are getting fed. And don't forget, it's not just about the directors or the producers and the actors. There's so many people, the location drivers, the equipment people, the PAs who carry the equipment, the woman who's cooking for them, the hotels that the artists have to stay. It is actually helping to build the economy, which is why I'm still shocked that the government has not seen the, the, the opportunities and the things that the industry can bring so that there's full support the way they have in India. Because in India, the government supports Bollywood so much, like 60% of the money that is poured into Bollywood to make films comes from the government. They support it so much. So um, Nollywood is, has gotten to a place where we walk on the streets in America and people recognize us. And when I say people, it's not just Africans or, or black people. Some people see me. I, I saw a white kid, a white boy a few years ago in Dallas, Texas. He saw me and he was shocked. I'm like, why are you looking at me like that? And he goes, Mom, Mom, is that her? And the mom looked at me, oh my goodness, we were just looking at some things on YouTube and we, we stumbled on your face and he, he, he liked what you did. And he, I'm like, huh? How? <laughs> you know, we go for festivals here in America and people, the kind of people who see us and go, Nollywood, right? Oh, I love your movies. You know, I saw this one and I'm like, oh, okay, we're traveling. You know, it's taking a while, but now we're creating more jobs. People are surviving. People are making money. We're getting into the minds of people. We're being heard and seen gradually all over the world. We have Nollywood Week in Paris. We have the, the Toronto International Nollywood Film Festival. We have so many countries where they're doing festivals in honor of Nollywood. So I would say that we are growing. However, again, because I always have something to add. <laughs> However, we need to learn more. We need capacity building. We need to train more people because a lot of people learned on the job. So this is not a marketplace where you learn from your ogre how to trade and just come out and you don't, you have to be professionally trained on your own, you know, and then we have a lot to learn in terms of how we package it because up until now we're still struggling. I mean, it's, it's crazy that we don't have a lot of our films in cinemas in America in London. There's only one cinema in London that helps us. And they, I think there are only two or three movies from Nollywood that have ever been shown in America. We, we, you know, I don't understand it because there are millions of us in America and in the UK. And if they say, okay, only Nigerians know this thing. If we go to the theater and support our films, our own dollar alone will pay for everything. You know, they will have a blockbuster in their hands, but we're still trying to um, fix all of that. And um, gradually we'll get there. Uh, one aspect is uh, the script itself, the quality of the story. Uh, a lot of people notice that it's improved. And I happen to know a lot of people who are not Africans <clears throat> who watch Nollywood movies, especially from the islands and, and African-Americans. They, they tend to, um, they, they so much uh, believe what they are seeing. So have you felt that the impact of maybe the early Nollywood, what it did to the image of Africa in terms of the stories that were presented at that point? The thing is, I hear a lot of people say that they loved our uh, earlier movies. They call it OG Nollywood, you know, where it is true to life, where we were not trying to copy anyone or be like anyone or try to do things that we were not, we couldn't relate to. People could relate to our stories. Our quality was nothing like it is now. It was, it was not that great, but, but people loved our stories. But now I see that it's 50-50, it's you know. Um, there are some stories that are not that great, and I don't blame them because a lot of people now write based on their budgets. So you don't have a situation where we just write a script and then let's just go and look for money to shoot it. No. Now say, I have two million, I have five million. What can five million do for me? Write me five million Naira <laughs> script. And I don't blame them because the question is, if you spend 50, 100, 150 million making a film, how do you get your money back? There's no guarantee that they will pick your title to Netflix. How much will Netflix pay you? How much will Amazon pay you? So where will your money come from? You know, so it's a risk. What we do as a profession is a risk, is a gamble. So you find that a lot of our scripts, some of them, when they know that, okay, the person who's going to produce this wants to produce a big budget film or it's because they have different categories. Now there's cinema film, there's Netflix film, there's Amazon film. I even heard that Amazon film is now different from Netflix film. There's Iroko film and there's YouTube film. You know, there's YouTube film yeah. and there's Asaba film. Those are send, those are sending straight to YouTube. Where do they make the money? Is it from YouTube? YouTube, yes. And that's enough for the budget. Well, 
they have been for them to keep turning it out and keep doing it it means that there's return on investment whether there's profit on it or not i don't know but there's return on investment and it's enough for them to keep making it and a lot of people are struggling but i admire their courage and their tenacity because it's not easy to put your film out there because you don't know who's going to see it who's going to stream it who's going to watch it and how youtube will count the views because it's getting worse now that more and more people are pouring their content on youtube youtube has seen it and like, ah these nigerians we were not ready for you when we said <laughs> you are doing too much and we're spending too much so now they will now keep increasing the number of views you have to get for one dollar you know so it's a struggle because they have no other place to put their their content they have to keep trying so i'm just glad that at least people are still able to survive and feed themselves with this work of ours because we don't have guarantees. You can be an actor, work this month, and in the next four to five months, you don't have a script. You've done auditions, you don't have. So, but your bills are the same, your rent is the same. So what are you gonna do? So I just applaud everyone, whether the story is great, whether the story is not that great. I just applaud the fact that being in an industry in Nigeria like this is not easy. Mm. Now, do you think that the skate makers and the, the uh, outbursts, these skates that are everywhere, they have impacts, negative impacts on, on people making movies in, in Nollywood? I don't think it has a negative impact. In fact, I feel like, I feel like they've added color to, to entertainment, to filmmaking, because a lot of these skate makers, they have become actors. Some of them are even better than a lot of people in the industry. <laughs> when you watch their skits, first of all, it's good content. It makes you laugh most of the time. You find new actors, you find new content creators. Some of these people write their skits. They produce and direct and do everything and act inside all by themselves. And you wonder, how are you able to do all of this? Because it's like some of these skits can pass for short films. And you know the, what it takes to create a film. So for people to use just their phone, in their house with their clothes with different wigs and write something funny to make people laugh and just film it and then edit it with their apps on their phone it's so innovative that i'm like people have become so creative like okay i'm not in the industry i want a lot of these people are comedians not every comedian has enough money to stage their own stand-up comedy show so how do i get myself out there because even i teach acting i have an acting school and i tell my students don't sit in your house and wait for producer to call you for film don't sit in your house and wait for there to be an audition notice when you are not working create your own content film your monologues do a scene call two or three or other actors who are looking for work people stay in your living room and create something so it is a way of just putting yourself out there we're in an age where everything is on social media so how do you engage people how do you grow your brand how do you get out there in the faces of people and then start to make money from it because now facebook is paying instagram is paying anywhere that money can be made and you have content you're creative you better enter <laughs> what about what about attention span you know because people are concerned that people who make movies some of them are concerned that by watching all these small clips of um, one minute two minutes three you know eventually people don't uh, have the time and the energy to stay and watch their whole th three hour movie how is that going the truth is it's not the skit makers that have caused this issue with attention span it's the world we live in it's technology it's the fact that i can post a picture and write a full-fledged comment uh, caption for you to understand it nobody cares to read the caption they just want to look at the picture and move on or they see your video they don't understand the context and they start raining hell on you attention span is something that they have scientists said it years ago that over time it would affect the whole world we used to think that it's only children that have issues with attention span but now even adults have issues with attention span now instead of reading the bible a lot of people have apps that will just have a voice just telling you what you need to know they will abbreviate it for you and tell you what the page is talking about so you don't have to read it there are million and one things that have started shrinking our attention span and it's because we live in a world where the the inform is called information overload you are overloaded with so much information that people know that for their content to catch your attention they have to keep it short and simple because a lot of people are in a hurry workers are in a hurry everybody wants to make money everybody is on the move at every point in time because the world is moving technology is taking over ai is taking over how do i keep up i don't have time to sit down and but what i will say for a fact is that people who love movies 
they will sit down and watch your movies. That's why people will pay and go to the cinema and sit there and see a full movie. People sit in their houses, they do watch parties, invite their friends. If you create a good movie, people will sit down and watch it. There's a movie that's not out, Finding Messiah. It's already taking over the whole place by Oscar Herman Aka, Kemia Dittibar's husband. People are singing the song from the movie that has not come out. People are creating challenges because we saw a five minute trailer that blew our minds. And in that trailer, the song was there and we started learning the song. Meaning that as the theme is coming out, wherever it's coming out, everybody wants to sit down and see it because we feel like they've created something. Same thing happened with Black Book. We saw a small trailer of Black Book. Everybody, Black Book blew up all over the world, not just Africa. So if you have good content, people will see it. These cake makers are not your problem. <laughs> They're not your problem. Okay, okay. <clears throat> now, in looking at um, uh, Nollywood, there are issues that people always uh, bring up. I mean, one is um, the welfare of the actors and actresses, um, which uh, what captures it mostly is typically uh, most of the original actors are getting old, and almost every six months we see somebody who is sick and who is looking for help. Uh, to go to India for treatment or something like that. And you find different opinions. You find people who feel that, why, why is it our, why should we be the one contributing to help this person, even though this person entertained us in their peak? So what is, what's your take on that? What is, what is the industry doing? I'm going to talk now, and I know that they will blast me and fight me and drag me. As usual, I'm used to it anyway. Let me start from what I'm doing now and why I'm doing it. I just registered something called Global African Filmmakers. And it's supposed to be a union that protects filmmakers, whether you're an actor, producer, director, gaffer, wardrobe, costume. And we're starting it here in America, which is the headquarters, but it's supposed to be global. The reason I'm doing this is because of the reasons that you have just stated and even more, because I've been talking about this even before I left Nigeria and it felt like, Stella, you're doing ITK, I do know, like you know it all. This is not how it works here because for a long time I've been harping on, especially actors, signing contracts and I've been begging that those contracts should have something that stipulates that we should at least receive royalties, even if it's 0.08% of royalties because a lot of filmmakers make their films, they pay you and that's it. But they take these films all across the world. They take it to show it in different places. They sell it to different people who will dub it into French and different languages. They sell it to different platforms and they keep the money. We don't get royalties, but here is different. You get royalties for especially being in a part of a TV series. Imagine doing a 120 episode television series and the thing can show for years and years and years and you don't have claim to a dime after that. That's crazy. Secondly, I've complained about the structure, especially for our guild. And of course they'll fight me because I will tell them like it is. There is no way you can have an industry as thriving as this and you have actors who they spend their lives, they go out in the sun, all kinds of weather. They stay up all day, all night. We don't even have proper working hours, which we're supposed to have in the contract. There's no human being that should work for more than 12 hours in a day. But we go to set by 7 and we don't leave till 5 a.m. and we have to re report to work again at 9 a.m., which is crazy. It's telling on our bodies. But we don't feel it when we're in our 30s or 40s. But when you are getting to 70, then you now start having disease because what time do we have to go for tests? What time do we have to check on our health? And what money? Because you are paying me this money to do this thing on set. Before the film is even finished, that money is done. Why do we not have things like health insurance? Why can we as an industry not partner with different hospitals saying, can we pay something monthly so that at least, even if it's the initial consultation or the initial test, our health insurance can cover it if you're a card carrying member of this guild. Why don't we have that? Why don't we have actors emergency fund where you can have a place where as an actor is receiving money from a producer, like they do in sag -Aftra here. If you're paying an actor, if you're paying me, for instance, to do a job, there's a tiny percentage of it that should be paid to sag -Aftra actors emergency fund or just paid to sag -Aftra. And every member of sag -Aftra has claims to something. Your, your retirement plan, your insurance, your, your, your emergency fund. And they have a foundation where it is that when you are homeless or when you have an issue, there's a department in SAG that actually sits down to say, okay, all the small, small money that we've been receiving from the work that you have done over time, this is what we can provide for you. Why don't we have all of that? This is the reason why somebody gets sick. And the problem is by the time the person realizes that they're really sick, it's already too late. 
because we don't have the culture of doing tests. We don't have the culture of making one film after all that stress, going to places or in the bush where different things are biting you, you don't know what's entering your body. You are eating different things, you don't know how sanitized it is. And then you don't have the time to take between one film and the other because if you don't shoot another film, you won't feed your family. So we're doing it like this because they're paying us stipends. We don't have royalty. We're depending on what we get on set. We don't have the time to go and take care of our health or, or just debrief ourselves from that, from that set. It's from set to set to set. There are so many people who tell me, Astella, people who shoot in Astella, some of them have houses there. They are there permanently because as they're coming out of one film, they're entering another one, entering another one, entering another. You are dealing with your body in a way that you probably don't understand. And then when you are in your 50s, 60s, something is wrong, something is wrong. Okay, let me take a go. Let me take Panadol. Let me do over-the-counter medication because ah, if I go to hospital now, they will charge me. I don't have that kind of money. Then when the thing gets bad and it becomes terminal, it's too late to do anything. Before people can gather money and send you abroad to fix it, it's a problem. And the fact that we have to beg the, the, the people to help us because we've spent all our own, it's painful. It is painful. That's why... I said in the beginning, if the government did for us what they did in Bollywood, the government will set up a structured plan for entertainers who don't receive a salary in terms of health insurance to be sure that at least, worst case scenario, every six months as an entertainer, you can go and get check up, check everything. It's not too much to ask, but Stella is ITK. Stella talks to me. <laughs> No, no, I don't think. I think over time, I think they are beginning to, because we've talked to several actors and they're beginning to embrace that. So it might be something about time. Now, but how is the pay structure now, like, you know, in, in Nollywood? Um, you, have, you have an idea? Um, because I, I, I hear some of the actors complain that if, you, if your rate is high, too high, they go and find someone else. And, you know, how is it going? How, how, what is the range? I hear more complaints than, than, you know, joy. And, you know, I hear more complaints. That's, that's what worries me. Um, and it happened to us before, even when I was really active, when I was much younger, where there was this ban, where the, when the marketers were in charge of films, they were the executive producers, and they banned 10 of us that we were going too big. I don't know where, I don't know how that's humanly possible that you tell a human being you are growing too big for us in this industry. You are receiving too much money and too much fame. So we'll stop giving you work and we'll find other people. It backfired on them anyway. But what I'm saying is it is unfair to, to say that you can, you want to determine the value of an artist. You know, I can understand as a producer what your budget can be. But I also understand that some people can be very greedy, that you get funding to make a film. And I know a lot of people cut it in half, keep half for themselves, and only the half is meant to be spread around the whole production. There are some people who are very good. They want good production, so they go all out and they spend the money. Because I know some actors who are well paid. If you don't pay them, don't call them. They are well paid because they've found a way to get other sources of income, which is another thing that I teach my students. As an actor, do not think that the acting is what will sustain you alone, especially when you're just starting. It's important for you to have a side hustle. Sell something, create something with your hand. Do something with your life. Create content. Become an influencer. Let them be paying you online. Whatever it is, do something extra so that what is happening in the industry does not frustrate you and depress you. Because it, it just shocks you to hear... Just yesterday, I had one of my students said to me, they're asking me to play a lead role in a movie and they're paying me 100000 I said, well, that's like, what, less than $100 for a whole film. And he said, yes, if I don't do it, somebody else will do it. At that point, who am I to say, no, they're teaching you don't, no, because really the person needs a job. So if you don't work, it's as if they will call other people. But it's hard to get all the actors to say, this should be your barest minimum. But if you had a guild that can actually sit with their members and say, let us look into ourselves and see that we are capable of taking care of our families with this work that we are doing. We're not saying pay us heaven and earth, but let us have the industry standard, the guild standard, of barest minimum. They can pay you anything, but they cannot go below this figure.
That's all I'm saying. You can decide to pay them whatever, but don't go below this figure. We don't have that. That's that's why there's an issue. Hmm. So <clears throat> I want to talk about, I know they address this in other um, interviews, but I want our viewers to also hear that from you. What is the challenges? Uh, the challenges you have or people like you have crossing over to Hollywood when, when you come to America? Um, because because we know that the um, the people in the music industry they they've been able to do that. We have this uh, um, our musicians, you know, mm. performing with other musicians from here and all over the world. But um, our actors, we've not seen a lot of them in Hollywood movies. So, so for those who may, I know a lot of people want to know what what is going on or may not have had you answer that question. What is what is the challenge? What are the challenges? Sure. Well, to respond to this, let me take it from why it seems like musicians are doing way better in that aspect. And we all have to remember that when it comes to music, it is the person, it is the brand. Nowadays, people can sit in their living rooms and have their technology in their room, create their own music, put it out there on Spotify, on Google, on Apple Music and all of that. Just put it out there. It goes viral, people love it. And somebody is inviting you for a show, you know, and you're flying down there to play and the DJ can play your backing track and you can perform or you can have you know musicians there who will be a band and everything but it's about you you are the star you are the brand it's your music it's your voice but when it comes to actors it is impossible to do it as just you because it is a collaborative effort it is an ensemble for me to be in a project that would be viral or that people want to see, it comes with the executive producer, the producer, the director, you know, the people on set, the gaffers, the, the costume, the wardrobe. I cannot carry myself as just me as the brand. Because if you invite me to London to say, oh, Stella is an actress, she's coming here to perform. Perform what? Unless I stand on stage alone and do a monologue <laughs> or I come and speak about my industry or about women or something. What am I coming to give you? Do you understand? So it's more difficult for us to say, oh, we, we've, we've, you know, hit the, the, the mark of going global. You know, we're, we're trying, we're doing the best that we can, but it's different for the musicians because they are the brand, it's their face, it's their music. They can stand in one place and sing to any track uh, or have people just back them up. It's just them. They are the important ones, but we can't do that. That's one. Two, the, the, issue of coming to america as an actor and believing that oh i've done this thing for almost 28 years now when i come here it should be easy i'm in america now i should enter hollywood in fact tyler perry should be calling me by morning lies <laughs> they don't prepare you for what you come and meet here i can tell you for a fact that 95 percent of actors who have relocated to america are no longer actively in the movie industry. They do it for fun when they have time. 95% of them are in other jobs, IT, nursing, you know, you name it, different things. When I came to America, I was in New York first. You know, I met you, I met you in New York. So I attended a lot of, you know, acting classes, met with a lot of people, auditioned, went for talent showcases. I was in front of a lot of casting directors. I went even in Atlanta, did the same thing, met with agents and managers. And there was one thing that they kept telling me that I could not for the life of me understand. You have amazing talent. You're so good at what you do and we love you. However, we can't manage you, or we can't be your agent, or, you know, we can't put you in a lot of things because we are not, we don't write scripts with people like you in mind. We don't have enough stories with people like you in it. So why keep you in our roster when we can have other people who can get frequent jobs? And I'm like, okay, make me understand. If I'm good, why don't I have opportunities? And they say, one, they use this phrase for me. They say, you, you're you not Lupita Dark. So your skin has to be as dark as Lupita or Danai Rira or something for the Viola Davis, for them to accept your Africanness. And then they said, secondly, you don't sound African. You, you don't also sound American because I don't go to these places trying to speak like an American. I came here in my thirties. I cannot come and speak for them more than the people who are born and raised here. So 
I go there with my natural accent, the way I'm talking to you. And they're like, you don't sound American, but you don't sound African. And I say, excuse me, how do you think Africans sound, please? So in their head, obviously, it sounds like Kunta Kinte. It sounds like Black Panther. It sounds like what people try to make you feel that that is how Africans sound. But I said, we don't all sound like that. Do you know how many states, how many countries we have in Africa? I tell them, I say, even in my country alone, we have over 200 ethnic groups. And each ethnic group, they have their own accent. If a Calabar man speaks English, it's different from when an Igbo man speaks English, different from when an Hausa man speaks. We all sound different. So I don't know what you think Africa is. You think it's a, it's a country? It's not. It's a continent, and there's so much diversity. We have Africans who have blue eyes, gray eyes. We have one million and one skin tones. We have people who are lighter than half caste in, in Africa. So I don't, and they're like, it will take a while to convince Hollywood because there's a lot of ignorance. There's a lot they don't know. It will take a while. And I understand we, we haven't also done enough work to sensitize the industry here. We haven't done enough work to make them know who we are as a people, which is another reason why I set up Global African Filmmakers is part of what we're going to be doing, the conferences, the workshops that we're having, integrating, you know, the whole diversity and inclusion, inviting the foreigners, the filmmakers, the stakeholders. This is who we are. This is our culture. This is where we're from. This is where this person is from. Because Global African Filmmakers is not about Nollywood. It's about African filmmakers. So whether you're Kenyan, South African, Nigerian, Ghanaian, you're a part of it. So it is hard to break through. It is hard for them to see you. So the few nigerians who are in projects you will find out that they're nigerian americans or they're nigerian british most of them were born and raised here but those of us who are african immigrants who just came less than 15 years ago it's hard that's why you see people doing their own individual things but gradually we are attending meetings we are attending i've met with the government uh, georgia entertainment people and i'm like we're here this is who we are and they're like, you're scattered all over the place. Can you have one voice? Is that a portal? Is that a place, a platform where we can find? I said, okay, this is what we have to do. Then we have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. There was something you mentioned that uh, uh, that I was interested in. You said that um, if there is a project that all Africans in uh, America will watch, that will bring millions. So, and I know that there are a lot of um, Nigerians and other Africans who are making movies here. You know, there's an issue about what should that movie be called? Is it an American movie or Nollywood? Yeah. But but they're here, they're making movies. Mm -hmm. So why is it that we've not had a, a breakthrough movie that could probably made here, not the ones made in Nigeria and brought here, that could be in theater? So I already said that distribution is a problem in Nigeria for filmmakers. It's worse for us here. Because like you said, we don't have a category yet. A lot of times when I speak to people who are members of jurors of some um, awards and festivals and all of that, and I'm like, we want to bring our content and put it in your festival. They're like, you, you don't have category. Will we call it African film, Nollywood, or Nollywood shot in America, or this? And I'm like, but we don't live in Nigeria. We live in America. I was still filmmakers. Are you saying we can't make films? It's a problem. I've had conversations where people like, well, I've even asked, why can't we have our own aggregator because people like Netflix, you can't just send your films to Netflix. They have aggregators, they have middlemen who you have to submit your titles to and those ones will pick the titles that they, they decide will be good enough to go to Netflix. So we don't have that for us here. Even the, the proper indie filmmakers in America, they are having issues trying to get their projects out there. A lot of African-American movie makers who are indie producers, they are struggling. So they, most of their films, if you go to Tubi, is there, YouTube is there. But that's the problem we're having. We don't have a voice here. We don't have an aggregator here. We don't have a distribution channel here. So definitely, if we want to make films here, what kind of budget are we going to spend making the kind of movie that is cinema worthy? How will my money come back? Stella, you never do films since. You've moved to America. You haven't produced your own film. OK, I produce my film here. Where will I put it? Because taking it to Nigeria to put in the cinema is hard. It's hard. Because they will ask you, how would people relate to it? Why would they want to come and see it? Because Nigerians will go to the cinema to either watch Nollywood films or American films. But to go and watch films made by Nigerians inside America, is the cinema people will tell you, we can't guarantee you a slot. You can just do your premiere and keep it moving. 
But to guarantee that we'll put this in cinema, who will watch it? We can't guarantee it. There are festivals, even here in America, that we've tried to put our films in. And they will tell you, be, based on category, 30 or 40% of your content has to be shot in Africa because you're an African immigrant filmmaker. So I said, how do we figure out budget to now fly back home to shoot 40% there, 60% here, so I can have a category? We don't have that kind of budget. Where do we want to do So the problems are a lot. And that's why some people just throw in the towel and say, I beg. Let me go and do Scrum Master or Project Manager. Let me go and just do healthcare provider and be receiving my my and then they save some money and say oh let me even do one film because i love it let me let's let me not forget my craft then they will do a small film do premiere here put it inside youtube or put it that's it it's gone it's gone so people think i'm crazy because i refuse to do it nine to five this is who i am this is what i want to do tell her grace hunger will kill you by god's grace <laughs> god god will not let that happen to me <laughs> That's interesting, you know, because I, I, I know a lot of people who, who are dealing with that issue. And most people outside don't understand. They think that it's easy. And I wanted them to hear it from you so that they will be able to understand the difficulties. Guess what? We've done one hour. We've not talked about the book. Um, but what we're going to do is um, we are going to take a quick break. Um, I, I want to have a break. And then we will come back and talk about the book. Because okay. uh, that's the main thing that we we brought you here to talk about. <laughs> so so we take a break and then we will come back and and then of course we we'll talk about the book maybe about fifteen minutes and then we we'll let our viewers join us and then you can have opportunity to ask questions to to our guests. Okay. All right, so let's take a break. Thank you so much, Stella, for for doing this. about technology I'm, I'm dealing with technology here uh we will take a break eventually Hello, my dear, you know, when Christmas is already coming, good day, and I know you want to buy a few things for your parents, but because both you jackpot, hello, my dear, even though you are not in jackpot, oh, till you far, you know, one day, who will help mommy in Beji to, you know, buy all this, even need to, what, beans, egg, yam, rice, noodles, and cocoa. Do not worry. I'm here to introduce to you, help me waka, hey, waka, waka for me, amen. Now, what this is going to do for you is, they will help you to deliver anything that you want to your parents, to your husband, to your wife that you have left in Nigeria. Kodak, you that are giving Baba Bejo that is doing the work of a former, according to a former in your college, you're bearing that's fact. So they can help you to build your house, they help you to buy cement, earring, block, paint, ties, that is, and so on and so forth. They also do personalized gifts. Look at this, for example, where it has my name on it. And it has exciting and personal items. I love to ask. You already know that. They won't put clock. Go. You remind me, well, I should not be using another person's clock to run. You understand me now? So anything that you want whatsoever, they are in Nigeria, they are in Ghana, and Cameroon. Don't worry. Don't go to their website. I'm going to put a link in my bio. Follow them on Instagram. Any problem or any ills that you are having, I you want it. When your mother love you, I want my mother love you. Max, if you have one love, one more, no fool, no fool, no laga, no laga, ni piazigo, ma wo laga, do ni piazigo, I want my willoji, oh, be corrupt, oh, conavazia. When your mouth's around because I want my words around the same. If you want your nigga, I'm over. Let 
But not my story. The woman who I played lives in the UK with her children. Mm -hmm. I, I did widows months before my husband passed away. Um, so and I, I saw the lady that I played and so when the movie came out, the movie came out after my husband had died. It didn't come out before but I shot it way before so when it came out after everybody thought oh that's her story. She was telling her story in a movie. Mm -hmm. It wasn't it wasn't my story. I wasn't upset. I was actually grateful that I did such a great job that people believed 
that it was me because as at the time I was doing it, my husband was out. In fact, he was one dropping me <laughs> off on location. So right. it means that I must have done a very good job for people to actually feel it and say, oh, it must be her story. How do you feel at times when... All right. Welcome back to the show. And uh, we have uh, joining us again. Hey, Stella, Stella, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, it's over an hour. I always tell our guests we won't know when an hour is up. <laughs> and um, so uh, let's get to, uh, we are going to let our audience. So for those who are watching and waiting, I know some of you are already in the studio. Uh, we are going to let you in in a few minutes. We just want to talk about her book, which is um, the main reason why we brought her here. She wrote a wonderful book about the plight of um girls in Africa uh, as uh, represented by this character in the book, Mama is a Girl. So let me start with, um, huh. so what, um, where do we start? It's amazing, it's gut-wrenching. I've never read anything like this. It was uh, <laughs> everything that could happen to anybody, <laughs> bad thing happened to her. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, it was, um, I felt so sad, so bad for what she went through. What led to you uh, deciding that this is uh, a book that you want to write and, and now? I when, I, when I was a kid, like I've always said, I, I always wanted to be an author. I just wanted to see my name, you know, with, just with author written beside it. I didn't know what I was going to write. <laughs> but as I grew older, I truly believed that I was going to write a romance novel, a love story. That's what I thought, because that was what I was used to. I was reading a lot of romance books, even in my movies, the characters that I would play, she would always be romantic and also I thought that that was the kind of book that I would write. But then when I started experiencing certain things in life, you know, I experienced widowhood, you know. Um, I also had a lot of people around me who had gone through domestic violence, sexual assaults, different things that people go through, and how it was handled because we were African women living in Africa. I was really shocked. So a few years down the line, I started working with um, an organization called Project Alert in Nigeria, and they are like a shelter for abused women. And I got to meet with a lot of these women. I got to speak with them, you know. And then I started traveling all over Africa because I, I just got so interested in in, in African women and their challenges and how nobody listens to them and they, they feel like they're second class citizens. And as I was traveling, I met a lot of people who confided in me and told me their stories and their stories shocked me. I could not shake it off. I was looking for a way to help them speak because a lot of them couldn't even speak proper English so I had to use translators. And the thing that struck me was the fact that they kept saying, please oh, tell them they, they, they should look at us, we're suffering. Tell them, look our children, this, that, 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 please. Was, and I said, okay, should I make a film? Should I do this? Should I, what can I do that will be a legacy, that will be a voice for them, that can represent them and all that? So when I was ready to write a book, I was just sitting in my house in Atlanta a few years ago. And I think I wrote this book in 20, end, from end of 2016. I sat down and I said, I'm ready to write a book. But my heart was tugging at me. And I'm like, I think it's time to tell their story. But it was impossible for me to write the story of all these women individually, because it would be too much for people to take in as a non-fiction book. Because a lot of people don't really like non-fiction books, you know? So I said, okay, what if I can do it to be fiction, like it's just a story, and tell their stories through the life of one person? So it's easier to follow a journey than to see what happened to different women at the same time. So I created this fictitious character who lived in a fictitious place, just like you have in Black Panther, where they say Wakanda, but you cannot identify where Wakanda is. So this was me coming up with different names for different people and, and the city and, and the village and things like that. And it was me putting names together and picking letters from each name and putting those letters together. That's how I came up with Kamin Wanaga. I, I tried to pronounce it, I couldn't. Kamin Wanaga. Kamin Wanaga, yeah. Oh. Okay. So there's Tenondiba, there's Bantakiba, you know, there are so many people and these are not names that exist. You know, these are not places that exist. I created them just so as to give you an idea that it is not happening in one place in particular. It is happening all over Africa to different women. 
And so I created the character, gave her the journey, and her journey was a part of my story, these other women's stories, and I put everything together and just wrote it. And it took me years. It took me almost six to seven years to actually publish the book because I was scared. I was worried about how it would be received. You know, I was worried about, you know, people thinking, ah, ah, what kind of story is this? It's too painful. It's too hard. It's too this. But as these years were passing, I looked at my book and I looked at what was still happening in the world. And I felt guilty that there are some things that could create awareness. There are some things that could start conversations that I have in this book. And I'm just keeping it in my house, sitting there. But women need help. So I said, whatever it is, even if it's only my family members who buy it, I don't care. <laughs> Let me just do it. So. I published it, I did my launch last year here in Atlanta and I did it again in Lagos later in the year last year and the response was crazy. People were sending me videos of themselves crying as they were reading it, sending reviews and I'm like, okay, I didn't know that this will happen. I just wanted it to just be something that I did as contribution to raising awareness for women's plights and young girls and and I'm very grateful for the for the response that it's gotten so far. Yeah, so yeah, it's 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 uh, it's amazing um how you were able to integrate so many stories uh, on on in one particular uh, uh book and then um and how touching anybody who could read it you know you you could have questions about timeline and everything mm -hmm. but it was really something that um, how about men how are men reacting to the book what, what was the reaction well, surprisingly most of the men who have read it. I was shocked to hear them tell me, thank you. I'm like, for what? And they're like, we didn't realize how women saw it from another point of view. Not that these men were evil or they were doing things to these women, but most of these men had mothers, sisters, wives, and didn't realize that possibly their mothers could have gone through things that they didn't even realize. And they look at the girls around them on the streets and now they're looking at them with, with different lenses, thinking, you know, I should be more, you know, sympathetic towards these people because I don't know what they have gone through. Because the World Bank said that one in three women in the world today has been assaulted one way or the other. So it means that for every three women you see walking on the streets, one of them has gone through hell. And you might not understand how, why she's the way she is or why she responds the way she does. And the fact that it's always this marginalization of African women from going through um, circumcision to, to early child marriage to not being able to go to school because you're female, there's no point taking you to school, to depriving you and, and having, having you become a wife and a mother at 13 or at 12, and then your pelvis is not ready for children, but you have to push children out and then you end up with VVF, a, a, an incurable disease, and then a lot of girls are dying every day. And it's just crazy how it's still happening and women are being beaten in their homes being 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 victims of acid you know because of of a disgruntled boyfriend or something and you don't hear enough of it being reported because we still stigmatize these women when they come out to speak and then when children tell us this uncle when he come he's touching me and the mother will slap him come on that's your uncle don't say that come on you want them to disgrace us hey you too why did you why did you and then you ask yourself what would an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old do to make a grown man want to touch her. What can she wear that will make your mind think that? You know, how How can you fathom this? How do you, when you hear these stories, you're, you're like, how? And then you see people online bashing people who come out to speak. You safe. Why do you wear short skirt? You safe. Why do you smile at him? How is this what's on our minds? And to think that till today, we still don't have the authorities empower the law enforcement agents and teach them how to collect rape kits and sensitize the people that if anything happens to you or you're raped, don't wash it off. Go straight to the hospital because every hospital knows how to collect a rape kit so that you can prove your case that there was forced entry or that there was something left of somebody else's DNA. When you talk DNA in Nigeria, they'll be looking at you. Hmm? DNA what? Who has time for that? Who has the money for that? Who has the technology for that? But this is why these things go unpunished. And if you make a mistake and report it, they don't, they don't, nobody punishes the perpetrator. Guess what's going to happen to you? When he comes back in anger for disgracing or embarrassing him, it becomes worse. So what do we do? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, it's, it, it was something. Um, uh, what about your daughters? Did they, did they read the book and what did they think? Yeah, they read the book. In fact, it was because of them that I, I, I started feeling guilty. I was pushed to, to publish it because they were like, Mom, this could have been any of us. If we were in Nigeria right now, it could be any of us. It could be our cousins. It could be someone who's related to us in the village and you probably don't even know that that person has gone through it. Like, put it out there. And I'm, I'm glad at the fact that my children are so used to the fights that I, 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 I fight against child marriage and all of these things. I'm raising them to have a voice of their own. I'm raising them to be bold. I'm raising them to, to speak up for things that they stand for and believe in, and believe in because we've been silent for so long. We've been, you know, kept, they will tell you, ah, as a woman, you shouldn't be heard. Just be seen, prepare yourself, package yourself for, for man, package yourself for, for marriage. That's, and it seemed like that's how we were raised. We were raised to be a wife to someone, not raised to be humans, not raised to be women who also have dreams and aspirations and goals and a purpose. No, we're just, I, I refuse to raise my daughters like that. And I'm glad that they saw the book and they were like, well, with you all the way, please publish this and let people see it. So, yeah. <laughs> you touch on everything, the, the plight of widows, because it's something that um, most people don't think is um, it's very um, mm -hmm. common. Across Nigeria, but it's it's very common. And, it's and, common, oh! It happened to me, oh! Mm, moving on. <laughs> it happened to you. Of course, the widow who practices cuts across. Whether you're inside the village, you're in the city, wherever you are, I had to wear black. I had to sit on the floor. Some people were not allowed to come near me or eat from the same plate around me. I wasn't allowed to go out. I wasn't. Okay. I had to be stubborn to defy every kind of conformity to define every kind of societal expectations and i had a backlash for that there were publications written about me they called me the merry widow that i did not wear black for up to a year i started working after a few months and i'm like shabby you people will feed my children or you pay their school fees who, who will feed them for me i should sit at home and cry every day while my children are being hungry Ah, uh -uh, that means you're happy that your husband is not i'm like can you can you hear yourselves right now Ah, Stella is living well. She's not living like a widow. How do you want me to live as a beggar? I want I should wear black and cry and be like this so that people come and say, let me go, do it's okay yeah, every day. I thought you were in Lagos. They they brought it to Lagos or what? How did they didn't bring it to Lagos? It's inside Lagos. It's inside Lagos. It's inside everywhere. People will not speak up because it's not something that people want to talk about because they're afraid there'll be backlash. I'm, I've gone past fearing anything or anyone. I went through it, but I said, no, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do my work. The first job I did as a widow <clears throat> was an event that was already paid for before my husband passed. It was by a bank. I had to do their end of year party for them. I had to do their end of year party for them. He was already paid for. Do I want to be sued? No. I know how much they paid me and the band to do this thing. Am I going to tell them, oh, I want that, I can't do it. Do I have the money to refund them with? No. This was money that they paid months before. So I had to. I wore black to climb that stage to perform. In the middle of my performance, I was crying. I had my friend with me, Kate Henshaw. She was standing on stage with me, performing with me, knowing that I would break at any point, but I had to fulfill my obligation. It was the manager himself that called me and said, you don't have to finish the show. Let the DJ finish it. I just wanted you to show and let my overall boss know that we didn't just throw money to somebody and the person didn't show. It's okay, you can stop singing. I cried in my black, I was wearing black gown and I tied my black top and I went home. I was working so that I didn't have money at that time. And then I will not be sued on top. Where do I want to start from? But of course, who will understand that? She's a woman that just lost her husband. She should be on the floor crying, not going to perform show. So I was labeled. Not everybody, not every woman wants to go through that. Not every woman can handle that because at that point, you are still living in denial because there are five stages of grief. You are still in denial. You are still angry at God. Why me? You are still in shock. So some days you cry, some days you'll be numb, you're like this. Some days things are happening in your head. Some days you're just looking at people, not believing what's going on. You're asking yourself, is it me they're coming to tell sorry? Why? What happened? Then I'll remember, oh, my husband is no more. It's not possible. So many things going on in your mind, but who cares 
about the mental state of a widow? Who cares about her emotional state? Who cares about how she's going to survive with her children? Who? Everybody will go home after the first two weeks of coming every day to tell you sorry. Everybody move on with their lives and you are left with your reality. So what happens after that? It's in Lagos. It's everywhere. Did, did the family of your husband try to uh, take position of... of... Mm, there, there are some things that I'd rather not talk about. But when I tell you I went through it, I went through it. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's all I can say. But it is happening. That's what I said. It's not just in the villages. It is happening everywhere. Yeah. So uh, the book, um, you know, she went through everything. And at the end, I, I can say that um, she, she triumphed. She was able to uh, bring about, uh, we hope, change to mm -hmm. her own community. Mm -hmm. So um, is there any uh, connection to what you are trying to do now in terms yes. of... Yes, because the story is gut-wrenching, but I always want to give you a glimmer of hope because it is possible that there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's why I ended it with that. Because that's also my dream, to build my own school. That's also my dream. But because of I look at my life now and where I used to be. I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm not where I used to be. So for me, the life that I have now is the hope that my character is bringing, not just to herself, but to her family, and to her community, the, the changes that I can make, the impact that I can have, the positive way I can transform people's lives is the hope. And that's my connection to the character in, in, in my book, that at the end of the day, she didn't, she didn't give up. Even her own daughter was the one who gave her the idea of how to push this community forward for the women to fight for themselves, which is what my life has been about. My own daughter is encouraging me and pushing me. And I'm looking at their generation being bold and confident to say, we're not going to make the same mistakes you guys made. We're not going to cower down. But they needed to know the history. Because without history, you don't know where you're coming from and where you should be heading. You know, So I'm just glad that at least people can see that it is possible that no matter what you have gone through, that experience that you have had, you can transform people's lives and make sure that more people don't go through it. So what can you do to change your environment is what I'm always about, solution. I like that um, you touched on, I said everything. When I mean everything, I mean everything, including pastors mm -hmm. who will pretend that they are going to help people just to they end up um, taking advantage of people, which is very common in not just pastors, but at least you touched on that because sometimes people will look and see this is the hope. This is someone I could run to, and then yeah. the they are running to will become the one that will exploit them. So, did you get any um, um, any kind of feedback from people in that in that area? There were there church people that said, "Why did you throw us under the bus?" Funny enough, no. Okay. Because the truth is, there are a lot of people who are in churches who know these things. They know this is happening. Some of them, it has happened to them. They might not come out and say it publicly. But they'll come and tell you, thank you for speaking up. This was my story. This was, I experienced it before. Where a trusted man of God looked at me in the eyes and told I was much younger then. And I just became, I think my husband had passed. It was just two years after my husband had passed. And because he felt like I was a widow, I was single. He looked at me and he said to me, my dear, you look so beautiful. I will, let me give you bellies to drink. Let me give you bellies so that you can feel free. Loosen up and dance for me. And I told her, I said, Pastor, forget. <laughs> Belly is not water. We are there. If you think that this is what will make me high to dance for you, you are wasting your time. Because then I was, my relationship with God was all over the place. I, was, <laughs> I looked at her and I said, So of all the things, it's bellies that you think will make me get high and lose myself to dance for you. Are, are you paying me to be a dancer? And I walked out. I didn't go back there. I'm like, nah, this is not. Because at that point, he he was standing for me, like, oh, praying for me, making sure that I was okay. You call me, is everything fine? Your children, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, you want to give me alcohol to make me lose, to dance for you, so that what next? The Holy Spirit to hold your hand. No, I left. So it happens everywhere. But who can talk? Who will say it outside? Nobody. Yeah. yeah. No, it's wonderful what you did here. And um I hope more people will uh, get the opportunity to read the book. The book is on Amazon and uh, in Nigeria. I saw that it's on some websites in Nigeria. Where could yeah. people get it in Nigeria? There's a, a place called Purple Shelves. They can get it there. There's Roving Heights. Um, there's Book Nook in, in Lagos. It, there's another Book Nook in Ghana. They can find it there as well. 
Um, there's so many, there's so many bookstores that they can find it. If they just Google the book, they will find the places where they can get it from. Yeah. All right. So we are going to bring in our, our audience. Um, they've been waiting patiently. We don't normally do an hour and a half before we bring them in, but today was special. Uh, so let me bring in uh, our people who are here. Uh, welcome to the show. And um, when you, when I call you, you please um, find your best question. And then you can ask if we have to go second round, we will, but let's uh, start first round. And let me start by welcoming the flagship. Flagship, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Damages. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Yeah, nice to have you. Thank you. So we have our guest, Stella, uh, who is an actress, a writer now. She's an author and also um, she has a podcast, two podcasts uh, out of her life. All right. So, any questions for her comment? Yeah, yeah, I do have a question. Good afternoon, Stella. Uh, uh, I see or heard that you're in Atlanta here. Yes. Uh, it's good to uh, hear you speak about the whole life experience and try to uh, uh, wrap it up all in 90 minutes or an hour plus. That takes a lot. Uh, I have uh, some questions, but I'll ask one, uh, just as Rudolph has said. Uh, you've gone through a lot listening to your story, and I've watched a couple of a lot of movies about you uh, from back in the day, and did enjoy them. Uh, your advocacy for the girl child is is a laudable project, and uh, I, I believe personally that any um, oppression against the girl child or female should have some special place within uh, the law to get a really good punishment for that because they are a part of our society that we really need to pay attention on and protect a great deal. Uh, here's my question to you. Uh, you've written a book, you, 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 you go out to speak. Uh, I have seen that a lot of times when mistakes are made, they are made from a place of ignorance and lack of knowledge or proper education. Have you considered putting up a program uh, to properly educate people, most especially the male or, or general public on what it means to be a female, the expectations, mm -hmm. how they should be treated, uh, put it properly in a formal way of education and, and either speak of this publicly or um, uh, go to forums to talk about the girl child and what we need to know, perhaps, coming from a different perspective. Uh, like you said, a lot of people read your book, Mill, and they were like, thank you. That means it did, it did touch a part of them. Yeah. Uh, have you really considered coming out from the perspective of, of proper education to give us uh, an overview of what it really means to be a female? I have thought about it so many times. So for the past 10 years, I've worked with a lot of organizations, but we have, we have been focused on sensitizing young girls and women to know that they have a right to education, you know, to, to know that they can report cases. You know, if you're dating someone and he does this, this is what you can do. We're giving them helplines that they can call, shelters and stuff like that. So everywhere I go to speak, I speak about this. However, the the part about talking to or formalizing this type of advocacy and you know directing it at the men has been difficult because i remember there were two occasions in nigeria where i said okay i would like to start off because i can't just start a formal um education atmosphere or, or a conference that's very formal with men without actually testing the water. So I remember the first time that I said I want to invite a lot of men to sit down and let's talk about these things and all that. It didn't work. They didn't show up. <laughs> they didn't come. The second time I tried to do it in collaboration with someone in Abuja, a few of them came. And trust me, when we started talking, you could just read the room to see how uncomfortable it made a lot of them. They didn't want to participate or speak or say anything. It was just like, okay, we have come, we are talk. When we are finished, we will go. And I, I, I totally understand it because it's new. It's not something that a lot of men are used to. There's some men who have a different ideology when it comes to gender, you know, because if you notice, I don't use the word gender equality. I just talk about rights you know, we're human. So 
a lot of people confuse it for feminism, especially men. I'm not going to lie. When you want to talk about, okay, this is what we go through. This is how we feel like you should treat us and things like that. It is already branded feminism before they give you a chance to talk about it. So I feel like it's a gradual process that might take a while to start sensitizing people. That's why I said maybe this book will start opening their minds to what it is that women face and then it might make them start to accept the fact that it's important to come together and have conversations like this. So there's an organization that I belong to. What we have done, it started off as a women's organization to talk about these things, but now we have included men as directors so that they can listen to us in the conferences and then go back and talk to their fellow men because sometimes they say men will listen to other men first before they will have a female come and sit down and tell them this is how we are this is what we are thinking so it's a gradual thing thank you thank you so much and just to add i think it would be great in your podcast to have sessions where you have these conversations with men you, you all you need is just be one or two men and and trust me it spreads like wildfire so thank you so much. Okay, nice. All right, so if actually if we have a chance, you will come back again. Let's um, go around. Uh, KJ, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, thank you for inviting our dear, delightable Stella. Um, I had, I'm one of the few people who had a very slim opportunity to work with her uh, many years ago with the Christian Broadcasting Network. Yeah. Good to see you again. <laughs> You. No, please still remain. Let it finish. Thank you. Yeah, God for you. I listened to you and I followed your discussion, and I think I I I love your approach to issues. And the question I would have asked is just what you answered last, which was how do you differentiate it from feminism? Because that's the other extreme which we are trying to let not let our children go into. But I said I want men to respect them and also listen to them. I know that. And I think I enjoyed, you know, you, like an artist, you have been able to sell it. So there's very little conflicts with what you have said for anybody who is open-minded like myself. So I appreciate how you've been able to sell, uh, you know, yourself this morning. And uh, God be with you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Let me, let me, first of all, first of all, apologize for people who have made feminism seem like a bad word, like a negative word, like feminism is meant to fight men or fight the authority or the power that God has given men. Let me first apologize for that because that is not the meaning of feminism. Feminism is not meant to be a gender war between men and women. It's not to defy gender roles. The men have their roles, the women have their roles, and I believe in that. But for me, I feel like when you think about your own gender and see that from time there have been some issues. And let's not even forget, most of the time, like widowhood practices, like I was talking about, you don't find that it's the men that sit in front of the women and tell them, drink the bath water of the dead body. Oh yeah, shave her head, or let her sit on the floor. Most of the time it's the women who do it to other women because it was done to them. And sometimes when we see some men, because I always believe that men are different. You cannot generalize, not every man is a mother. But we also see that some men were raised by women too, making them feel like, you know, you can you have to treat a woman like this for you to exercise your power. So it, it goes both ways, but feminism in, in itself is just caring about the rights of women, their womanhood, protecting them, and knowing that there are challenges that they face that have to be corrected, you know? So that is what it is to me. So when we mention the word feminism, I'm trying so hard to make sure that people don't see the original meaning as a fight between men and women. That's not what it was meant to be at all, <laughs> so. All right, thank you, um, KJ. Let's go to Marzi Prince, California. <clears throat> uh, well, it's good morning now here, and uh, good afternoon, Dr. Rudolph. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Stella. You will definitely not know who is talking, but just like KJ, mine is not uh, with Christian broadcasting. Mine was you growing up um, in AGGS, you know, then. Mm -hmm. So we go way back then. As a matter of fact, uh, I want to put you to be a sister of mine because you were my sister's friend, mm. you know, uh, in the person of Angela Anyafulu, you know, 
aha, aha, that's what it is. You know, <laughs> and my simple question to you is, do you have it in Kindle? Um, I think it's in Kindle. Yes, I have it in Kindle. I have it in Kindle. The only thing I don't have right now is the audio book because I'm still recording okay. that. But it's in Kindle, yes. yes. Sure. Good to know. I'll check it out. All right. Thank you, um, as a Prince. Uh, local. Local P, you're next. Hello. How you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah. Um, doctor, how long do I have? <laughs> I have one question. Because, um, sorry, my question is deep, um, is turning towards the girl child, which is, for me is very important, all right? And I'm talking about the girl child in Nigeria. All right, so there will be, the question will have some like kind of backup. There's a question, but backup. I just want to ask, ask, ask what she's doing about that. First of all, I'll come from this angle, like um, growing up watching, you know, Nollywood then, or before Nollywood or whatever, where you have the likes of, um franca brown um what's got them um liz benson about it took and you know what i'm talking about will you say the kind of good moral values of bad thing that it passed to your generation of actress i'm talking about female actress that says you're a woman will you say is the same good moral values of batting your you pass to your next female actress generation the one we see these days that if they don't have you know breast augmentation or butt lift or chance of kind of exposure they will not be able to act because I'm asking this question because this generation of female actors we have in Nigeria right now, the batting that they were going to pass on this female gender you are, you are protecting right now, don't you think it's going to be worse than the batting that of good mothers that the likes of Jenny of um, Franca Brown is best gave to you guys? Because it's like the more we are going to better so called better Nollywood films, right? The more we are seeing too many exposures. Cleavages, you know, bot leaves and whatever. You understand? And I can tell you this that happened. You, can, you remember the story of a girl child who they took for excursion to Dubai and they were on a tele too. And what did we see? We saw videos of her doing what adults do to, to her classmates while the rest were cheering up. So you can imagine at that age, who is protecting that girl child? The one you're fighting for, who's protecting her? And whatever she, she did, she got it from skit making Nollywood where if they don't expose themselves, you know, I, I believe 100% you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. If they don't expose themselves on TV, I don't think they're going to make sale or whatever. So what are you or your your fame or your, your movement, what are they doing to make sure that these current actresses we have in Nigeria right now, both in music and movie, mm -hmm. that this, these shenanigans that they are doing, that if they think they want to copy these white people or foreigners, that they did exposure like they want to be Nicki Minaj, Cardi B or whatever, that this is not the Nigeria that we men are craving for. Mm. Just, this will not help our girl child. This girl child that you are protecting, what they are doing will not help them. So what are you doing to make sure that your female girls or female colleagues stop this kind of stuff they are doing on our TV? Okay. Especially in Big Brother Nigeria. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I, I appreciate your question. Let me first start by saying, you are right about the fact that the women who came before us in Nollywood, they passed down decency. Um, and let me also say that somehow it will be unfair to feel like we are the ones who passed down this, this mentality that they have. Because I cannot attribute what young girls are doing today to our industry or us. Like I told Dr. Damages earlier, a lot of parents have allowed their children to have free reign, free access to devices, to their phones. And you cannot limit what they are exposed to because the BBLs, the Brazilian butt lifts and the augmentation didn't start with us. These, they didn't see it in, our, in us. They saw it from abroad. Even a lot of Nollywood actresses who are doing it now, it didn't come from my generation of actors or my brand of films. The films that we made in those days, I'm sure a lot of you saw it and loved it because we were at least decent. You know, even me till today, I still try to make sure that when I step out of my home, I look decent enough that if anyone looks at me or my daughters look at me, I'm not an embarrassment to them or I'm not showing parts of my body that I shouldn't be showing. So that's why I said it all boils down to 
the home. It all boils down to the upbringing and it all boils down to the mental state of people. A lot of girls that we see these days, they have low self-esteem. They, they do not have body positivity because they are having info overload. They're looking at a lot of people all over the world looking different. So they feel like the way to stand out, the way to compete in the industry is to have all of these augmentations because that's the only way to do it. So the competition is so high, but it's not just in the entertainment world. It is everywhere. A lot of people are doing unthinkable things just to get out there, to get the uh, ahead of their peers. What I can do as one person is what I have been doing and will continue to do. First, I have a book out that's talking about most of these things. Secondly, my lifestyle, because I have to start with me. I believe in when you see what I do, if I inspire you or I'm your mentor or you're my fan, then you see how I am, you see how I dress, you see how I talk, that's good. You know, I can only talk at events, create things from my foundation. I have a foundation called Star the Masses Arts Foundation. And we mentor a lot of young girls. And the people that I mentor, they know what I stand for and what I believe in. So I can only do my best from where I stand. I can't speak for the others. Um, if you look at the Genevieve's of this world, Omotola, Kate Henshaw, Stephanie Okereke, Rita Dominic, I don't think you will look at any of us and see any form of body augmentation or trying to be vulgar. You maybe, know, maybe, maybe, maybe because you're getting old now. So you have no, to it's not that. We had an opportunity to do what we want to do. We have the money to do what we want to do. But the thing is, we are at this point in our minds where we grew up at an era where it wasn't, social media was not so bad. We didn't have exposure to all of this. And even at that time, how many plastic surgeons would you say you had in Lagos to come and be doing body lift and all of that? We didn't have all of that. So we grew up at a time where this is you, this is your tool that you will use to work. Your body is what you have worked with it. But now that people are exposed to what they are doing abroad and we're having more and more plastic surgeons and more and more people who can pump stuff in your body, People are able to go to these people and have it done. So it all boils down to the mentality of these young girls who are struggling with body positivity, who are struggling with self-esteem, who think that, oh, it's three women to one man or seven women to one man. So for me to get the sugar daddy or for me to get the guy that I want, I have to look a certain way and get the attention that I want. It's not a, an easy thing to deal with, but in my own little way, I did, I, I did try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go try pass that one. You know why? Because these women, they are not to write to me about. Sorry to say, and I believe you know what I'm talking about. So for right. this girl chat, please protect her. Thank you, Loco. Thank you so much, Doctor. Backstage, take me to backstage. All right, Exera, your next. Uh, Doctor, good afternoon. Please, yeah. I, I would like after after I ask the question, you can take me backstage so I don't because I'm at work. I just had to come in to to meet with uh, Mrs. Stella. I am. Um, Good evening, Miss Stella, and uh, it's, it's an honor to be here with you. There was one time I met with you, I don't know if you remember, there was this lady, may have so rest of this, uh, Tessie Yembra. Yes. Who introduced, yes, yeah, so rest of this, we met in Ikeja. Um, I have a question, I have so many questions, but the, the one I want to ask now so that um, you really use this to impact on the lives of people is the one regarding, after, after all, uh, um, one of the reasons why why a lot of people get to know you apart from acting is also your losing your husband and i know that must be like you explained here it was a tough period a lot of people go through a lot and you just explained to us that it's not just the women in the village but also people like you i'm shocked you know and i, I don't know if dr rudolph can remember i sent you a picture of um, a very you know the wife of a governor a, a, a governor who passed and we saw the news that she was being bequeathed to the governor's younger brother. Um, it was unbelievable. So I further dug, I dug and did, did research, and the family kind of, they didn't actually deny it, but they said it's a tradition to hand over the wife of a deceased to the younger brother. So you see, I don't know what's the difference. Please, I want you to give us your take about this tradition of handing over somebody's wife to the younger brother. What's your take on this? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much for that question. So this is, this is how I see it, because I always go back to the law, and that's the issue that we have, in, in, especially in Africa, where a lot of people 
All they know is their traditional and customary marriages. Now, they make sure that these traditional and customary marriages are not um, governed by our constitution. They're not governed by the law. A lot of them don't have the, the mental capacity to say, oh, we're going to marry in court. They don't even have court weddings in most villages. So they go based on the tradition. Now, that is one of the most difficult things to even begin to understand or talk about because based on their tradition they almost did it to, <laughs> to my mother which is crazy because my mother was in she was 77 or 78 when you no know, she was about 60 when my dad passed away and at that age the, the next person in line after my father was supposed to be a 13 year old boy so they actually had to do like a fake marriage ceremony for her to be married to a 13 year old boy, even though they would not be together or anything, you know, but it had to be done because of the fact that they were married in that customary way. So it will be hard to even begin to change things like that unless we are able to get to community leaders, you know, and village chiefs to say, this is not how it's supposed to be done, it's barbaric. Because if you're married legally, under the law, then this is this is illegal, what's happening. But how, because I've spoken to a lot of lawyers in the past, and I've spoken to a lot of police, law enforcement, with what they're trying to do with these videos and all of that, and they keep saying, we cannot interject, we cannot do anything, especially if they married traditionally. It's their tradition. We cannot do it. It's the same way they, I had a backlash when I was fighting somebody who was in his 50s, and he wanted to marry a 13-year-old, and the first thing they told me, their religion allows them to marry as young as they want. It allows them to marry even five, six, seven. So what are you saying? So it is a hard thing to start to do. But I always say there's a way at least to start. And we have people, like I work with Women for Women International, and a lot of their people are spread all over the world. In Nigeria, they're in the north. And they've been doing programs, talking to men, village heads, husbands, and all of that as regards their archaic traditional practices and, and allowing their wives to go and learn trade, learn business, learn this, and how they can see how it can help their communities. And gradually, some men have, be, have begun to see the benefits of letting their wives have education, this and that, and understanding that the traditional practices that they've placed on themselves is detrimental to their communities than, than it being good. So it's going to take a lot of work. And a lot of times we depend on organizations to do it. But I keep saying, all of us, men, women alike, if we have family members, village members, whatever, if we ever travel to the village or anything, it's important to sit with some people and just bring some of these things up, ask these questions. Like if somebody dies now, what happens to the wife? What do we do? What do we do? What happens to the widow? Do we take care of her? What happens to her children? If we can bring up conversations like this and listen to what people say, it might give us an insight to where we can start the journey from, at least start in our own communities. That's, that's what I can say. All right. Thank you, uh, et cetera. Um, Ibo Bezix, you next. Yeah, um, it's good to see you all again, uh, Dr. Damages, and uh, our sister, Stella Damasim, if I use that word. My question is very simple today. I haven't listened to you all this while. The last question you handled at masterfully, really masterfully, because in Igbo tradition, they call that Nkuchi, and that is a subject for a, a different day. Yeah. So we'll leave that alone, but you handle that very masterfully. Okay. I see you have an organization called Global African Filmmakers. Yes. And then you also have uh, the uh, Stella de Mas Foundation. Yes. I just have one simple request, and then my question, that simple request is that uh, if I could uh, get your contact through the damages after the show, uh, that would be appreciated. That's one. I also wonder why all this while I've been on a Jala travel all over the world, and if I, maybe I've run into you, but I'm not sure that I've seen you or met you or anything like that, but it's all well and good. Good to see you here today. Thank you. But my question is um, in the industry, particularly referencing to Nollywood and the artists. If you were asked to nominate a female to a board referencing 
the well-being of artists, preferably of the northern or western Nigerian stock. Who would that be? Hmm. I would nominate Kate Henshaw. Kate Henshaw? Yeah. All right, so um, that's just a starting point because what will happen then is that um, uh, through the, the damages, uh, actually something that we have set up, mm -hmm. uh, looking out for the older artists, we are more interested in the older ones. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps when we talk off stage, we'll be able to uh, get, because we wanted to bring in particularly a female, if we can, yeah. because we already had male here and there. I'm mm -hmm. sure you know people like Zaki and stuff like that. Yes. Um, with the, everything else that you have presented here, it shows me that you are not only deep in what you're doing, uh, your book, which is already out, um, I, had, I mean, they already asked how do we get it. There's some way some of us do act is that as we're speaking after, after this conversation, we probably want to other one yeah. and get it going. So, in referencing to the young child, animation, I have kids that I could like to refer to you to maybe uh, function with. Mm -hmm. Kids who have met almost all the artists in things like, what you call it, General Hospital. Yeah. The, these kids have met all of them. They know these kids. Mm -hmm. But some of them come with autism. And autism is a, a, a specific issue that yeah. you are you're about. Yes. Is there something that you can do in order to harness the talents of these younger Africans? I'm talking about Africans now, born here, to harness their talent in order for us to be able to dig deep and get the the, the uniqueness of the animation that. Some of them are just interested in animation as a result of what is happening out today. Is there something you can do in that direction to help out so that the younger ones, because long after we are gone, yes. the younger ones will be in place. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. So two things, let me first just briefly tell you why I chose Kate Henshaw. First of all, she is someone that has been politically inspired before she's done politics before so she understands a lot of red tape a lot of things that can happen with things like this she's also a women's advocate and she's on ground she's hands-on she, she works hard she's one of the few people that i can tell you for sure that when you put her on a board like this you know she will give it her all she always does that's one and then secondly as regards um harnessing talents for young people especially in the areas of animation and the rest of them Again, there's so many things that I want to do, but like I always say, I'm one person and I'm praying to God to provide resources to do it. I've also set up something called GAF Academy, GAF Academy, um, Global African Film Academy. So it will teach people how to make film, not just ordinary film of analog, but digital filmmaking, which will also include animation because it's, it's the way the world is going right now. A lot of people are making use of AI technology and all of that and animated films are going, they are growing by the day. And this is what children enjoy with their video games, with everything that they do. And a lot of them know how to, they, they are interested in coding. So for African kids to be able to code, for them to be able to do animation and use them to create content and all of that, these are all the dreams that we have dreams and plans that we have. My prayer is that, you know, I'm able to find people who would work with me, partner with me, and support the dream and the vision. Because no matter where I live in the world, my first goal is what can I do for my people? I've, I had a conference where they invited me as a guest speaker. And I said, look, I live in America now. I know the American dream. For everyone who lives in America, you will know the American dream. Buy your own house, pay your mortgage. That's a dream. Pay your student loan or pay off your children's student loan. That's a dream. Be able to have a 401k, your retirement plan, and be able to travel twice a year at least. That's a dream. Have enough money, pay your debts. That's the American dream. Then I asked them a question. I said, what's the African dream? And there were a lot of African professors there looking at me. And they're like, this is the first time anybody has asked them about the African dream. And I said, we don't think about the African dream because as Africans, we are not even having the capacity to think about our dreams, 
about the future of our people, the future of our children, where we're going, how we see ourselves. We are all focused on how to survive now because of what life has thrown at us. So I struggle every day to try and think about the African dream. So everything that you have said, sir, these are things that I've been thinking about, I've been faced with. I'm setting up structures in different places. I'm starting small because it's, it's me and my finances. I don't have a financier, I don't have investors yet because a lot of people will tell you the economy is bad, I can't just invest money. Start first. When you start and see how it's going, I will enter. Uh -huh. So <laughs> what I'm doing is start first. So I've started it and by God's grace, in the next five to ten years, we will have a thriving industry where young Africans are able to come in there, learn the things that they really, really want to do and use that to take care of themselves, their families, and their communities. So, so just to close out, uh, did you, in your head days, have the opportunity of meeting people like Ovilaria, uh, Zebrudaya, and uh, people like Laura Sumbojibwe? I didn't meet them oh. in person. I couldn't. My older sister did, because she was one of those people who did Bassi and Company and all of that. So I knew of them. but. And that was my childhood, village headmaster, new masquerade, Bassi and company. But I didn't have the opportunity to actually meet them in person. And I, it really broke my heart because they were my mentors, my idols, <laughs> and all of that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Stella. And we'll talk backstage. OK. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Bob Bezix. Uh, Chim Yonis. Uh, good day to everybody. And uh, pleased to meet your acquaintance, Stella. It's a pleasure. Um, so I wasn't here at the beginning when you, you know, you started. So um, in fairness, it would be very odd to just throw a major question because I only caught up with towards the ending when you were talking about uh, shortly after your husband died and a bit of your experiences. So, uh, but the, the question, I, I guess the, and then thank you also for clarifying your stand on issues of uh, feminism. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it has become one of the most uh, hydra-headed yes. uh, issues in our generation. And prior to today, uh, Rudolph and I had a conversation on this, and he, he knows where I was coming from when, when he told me what the topic of the day was going to be. But what I wanted to ask is, so uh, on the issue of feminism and the book, is it as a result of your widowhood, or is it as a result of uh general life experiences you had gone through mm -hmm. and then um i've had the benefit of working with women and mm -hmm. in that in in the industry where you you uh have been uh to lots lot of women mm -hmm. i've had good female bosses but i've also had some very not pleasant bosses and it has nothing to do with uh male aggression towards them mm -hmm. it's just Totally, something totally different, you know, yeah. and you, they just want to crush a man. Sometimes even when you're trying to be as supportive as possible, you just find this person who is dark-hearted and mm -hmm. you know, wants to prove a point. I'm a lady. And I'm, and I'm saying, you don't need to prove any point. You're the boss already. You know, so um, listening to you where you were talking about having to, you know, uh, change the mindset of men when it comes to the kind of things you're trying to push. Now, mm -hmm. my own question is, don't you think we need to start even changing the mind of some of our women mm -hmm. to begin to understand that there is a role for you, there's mm -hmm. a role for the man. In some instances, you will be on top. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to see today we will have a Nigerian female president or female governors. I want to mm -hmm. see those kinds of things happen. Not everybody wants it. I don't feel happy when I go into a board meeting and it's all men. Like mm -hmm. today here, it's only Mbori. And I'm Mbori is only showing up because <laughs> of here. So it's largely a male... <laughs> male dominated um, um, panel, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't know why the ladies don't want to come. So my, my, my point is, what can we do to begin to change the minds of the women? Like you rightly said, when a woman becomes widowed, the people on the forefront of trying to push some of those cultural things are not even men, they are the women. Yeah. And some of them are not even doing it, like you rightly said, just because it's been done to them. Some actually believe yeah. that this way it should be, and that's it's this way or nothing, not because they've necessarily gone through it. Mm. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, when you started talking, I knew that your question will not be easy at all. <laughs> okay. So let me first start by explaining 
why I did the book, like I told him earlier, um, it was based off of my experience, first of all, and then me working with uh, an organization called Project Alert. It's a, an organization that takes care of women, abused women. They, they have a shelter for abused women. So I, I met a lot of them. I met a lot of their children. And I started traveling all over Africa and had the opportunity of speaking with most of these women who have been through crazy things, different types of assaults and all that. And, and I gathered their stories and it was so heavy in my heart, I wanted to tell their stories. And I thought that writing a book that would speak for them, but I didn't want to do nonfiction I, because people might not take it well when they see a book and there are different, different people with different experiences. It will be too, you know, complicated. So I told their stories, including mine, through one character to make it fictional, but at least you get the idea of what's happening. But as painful and as gut-wrenching as the book was, at the end of the day, my take on it and how I ended the book was I gave it a, a form of hope that no matter what it is that you've been through, if you stick to what it is that you believe in and the changes you want to make, there is hope at the end of the day because that's my, that's my story right now. I'm not who I was. I'm not the label that they gave me or I'm not who they, I'm not when they label me widow and all of that. That's not what my life is. Is about it's an experience that I went through so it shouldn't define who I am so that's why I wrote the book now <clears throat> going to the issues that you have seen some women have and I'm glad that you did not generalize I'm very grateful let me tell you this for a fact that I have said it in countless places that unfortunately for some reason God has sent me to advocate for women and help women but women have been the cause of my major issues in my life the people who troll me the most are women. The people who dealt with me as a widow were women. The people who have done the worst to me are women. So at that point, I kept saying, God, please, can I do something else with my life and mind my business and just be my own person? I don't care about all these wala that you are pushing me to do. But for every turn that I take, everything that I want to do, he's always pushing me to help women, help young girls, help women, help young girls. So I have to do it. It took me years of speaking to these women and understanding these women that most of the time that you find women who are arrogant or who are hard-headed or who are very, you know, vile sometimes that you wonder what is wrong with you? Are we fighting? It's the fact that they cannot express their emotional baggage. A lot of these women, like my, my mother used to tell me, when you have a woman who really hates you for no reason or who just wants to do horrible things for you for no reason, it's the fact that they wish that they had your life. They are, they are, they are going through, so they are suffering. But this is their expression of it. Because we are emotional beings, highly emotional. And we see people, especially when you see someone who's intelligent or good looking or something, and the first thing you want to do is put that person down. What the battles in that woman's mind is a lot. You can meet the woman on a bad day, can be hormonal imbalance. <laughs> Our hormones are crazy. Sometimes it's a monthly imbalance. You know what I mean by that? Sometimes it could be that they just had a fight with their husbands, or they had a fight in their relationships, or they don't chop breakfast, as we always say, or something is wrong with their kid or something. And us being able to have the capacity to balance our emotions, especially in another environment like work, a lot of women find it difficult. And because we don't embrace therapy, we don't embrace sharing with someone who can help us understand what we are going through, accept it and deal with it. It's a problem, we lash out. That's why sometimes you have a wife that, you didn't do anything and she would just nag you from beginning to night and she will lash out at you. It will take you a while to say, Oh, now this thing they do you since where you come, they put down for my head. Am I the one who offended you? So um, forgive us. Sometimes we are, we are crazy <laughs> because sometimes we also don't know what we want because we were not raised to want. We were raised to be a certain way. We were raised to do certain things. You have to learn how to cook. You have to learn how to clean. You have to learn how to take care of a home. You have to learn how to make sure that you package yourself so that man will see you and marry you. You will become a mother one day. Is this how you will be? Is this how? So we were raised to be. We were not raised to want. So because we don't know what we want, but we have an idea of what it should be, but we are not seeing it, we lash out. So... It had. <laughs> Even me, I face women wala too, but I'm, I'm really sorry and I applaud you for bringing it up. Thank you. <laughs>
All right. Thank you, Chim. Uh, before we go to Mbore, let me, uh, there's a question on the comment section uh, from Polata, and it says, will you make your book a movie? Um, and uh, if you should do that, uh, you may consider non-linear narrative. You know, he's already a producer in the movie. In his mind, I'm telling you, I get that a lot. And I can see why people will feel that way, because as an actor, I wrote it with images in my head. You know, so when you read it, it, it just you just put yourself in that environment that you can see it. So I think a lot of people expect to see it visualized. I wish to do it. I would love to do it. But again, it's another battle to find investors because I have to film in Africa. I have to film it in Nigeria. So I have to come home, set up a production plan, get a production team, you know, and get it done. But I'm, I'm already thinking about that, but I have to adapt it into a screenplay from the book itself first before I do that. So yes, I am thinking about and, it. And you have to deal with the character growing from being a kid to... Yes, so that, that's casting. We have to cast people who look like almost the same in different age ranges. So it's a lot of work, but we'll get there someday. All right, thank you. Uh, Mbore in California, you're next. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you, Chim, for reading my mind and knowing why I do what I do. <laughs> um, Stella, I salute you. Thank you. I do. Um, I know Dr. Damages had said it's one question. In that case, I'll have a sub question before the question. Okay. <laughs> um, please, do you, if you don't mind, uh, do you have your traditional name other than Stella? Or yes, ma'am. Yes, ma please, may I know what that is, if you don't mind? Obiagili. Obiagili, no! Damn the uh, uh, colonial juggernauts and what they have changed us to. You see, my, you see, now you know why I don't come. When I come, I talk from emotion and everything. I don't give a. Mm. Mm. Now, when they came, they made sure they raised us to the dust. My the name that I was given and whoever gave me is Victoria because and my last name is Carlo. But when I found out that my traditional name is Mbore, it's either you say it or you say it. Because <laughs> when you have you are, when you have difficulty saying it, you've said it already. I just be going. <laughs> so our language, our names, our everything which is a big blessing to us any time, any day. I don't care what part of the world you come from. If you have your traditional name, it's a big crown of glory. Right. I am so proud of you, girl. Ibo Nasi Itimuko! I am extra, extra proud of you. Thank you. Yes, I call that which befell women worldwide. It's not only in Africa. It's not only in Nigeria. It's worldwide. I call it acting from the fright. Mm. That's what I call it. Anxiety acting from the fright. Because the women are remotely controlled. Mm. And that control makes a fellow woman tell you you should, you just scraped your head because your husband died. You should also rob charcoal. You should also, because they are remotely controlled by men. If they don't do that, they are in big trouble. The same man that has asked that you uh, hand down to women, what will make them not dress the way they are, will go after those women who have pumped their breasts, pumped their butt, do everything, I'm coming to blame you. I mean, you, you're like, so who am I dealing with? So my dear, 
I thank you so very much for doing what you have done. Thank you. Thank you. With thank that you. book and everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Bori, uh, from uh, California. Uh, Eagles Air, you next. All right, Eagles Air is frozen in, in India. Uh, let's go to Ngozika. Ngozika, welcome. Why is there nobody can name me? Good evening, welcome. gentlemen. Good yeah. evening to our special guest, Ms. Stella. I can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Um, welcome, Miss Stella. I've had a huge crush on you since I was a child. Welcome to our show. Good evening, gentlemen. So, I have a, I have a quick one. I, I joined the show when you were talking about um, your 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 experience with women how they've always been the one to come at you at most point in your life even though your mission is for them or something and i have a simple question and i'm speaking from my encounter with most women it will seem that women generally give more grace to men than they would to women you would see a woman have a fallout with her female friend and for that, she will say, oh, oh, I don't keep female friends. Female friends are this. Female friends are that. Well, you see a, a woman heartbroken by a man. And she goes on to love yet another man. She won't condemn all men to the abyss. Why is it that women do not give their fellow women the same grace they give to men? That is just my simple question. And have you had any personal encounter where you can, if you did an introspection, you can say, oh, yeah, it seems I give um, more grace to women. I, of course, I do not expect you to be 100% um, yeah. on that because that would be like shooting yourself yeah. in the street. But I just mm -hmm. want to know, do you okay. see it as a problem? Do you have any mm -hmm. encounters like that? Thank you. Thank you. I I'm not going to sit here and act all sanctimonious and tell you it hasn't happened to me. Of course, I've experienced it. As a woman, you, you give men more grace than women. And that's one of the major issues, one of the major reasons why we are a certain way to ourselves. But uh, like I said, for me personally, it goes back to how we have become, how we were raised to be. We're raised to reverence the men more than ourselves. We're raised to put them above ourselves. And it's not like it's the fault of the man himself. It's the fact that we were raised that way. Even our mothers will raise us just to be somebody, just to be good enough for a man. So definitely you grow up having this unconscious comp competition with other women around you. It's, it's an unconscious thing because you tell yourself, I'm bold, I'm confident, I don't commit myself to anybody. But the truth of the matter is, if there's a guy somewhere involved, for instance, and you are fancying the person, and another woman comes in, and you look at the woman, and she's all that and more, your first instinct is not to say, ah, this woman is so pretty, or maybe he will like her. No. <laughs> your first instinct is, hmm. Problem if you do, well, sha, you know, kind of things like that, even in the place of work. I've, I've, I always say when I pick up the phone and I want to call my phone company or I want to call uh, a Georgia Department of, of, of Child Services or whatever, uh, sometimes I pray I talk to a man instead because I just feel like they're nicer on the phone than women who go, yeah, what you want? I ain't got, I ain't got time for that. They just, they just like run you off. The damage is, you know what I'm talking about? Because they, it just seems like, and the fact is when I sit down and I listen to these people, I don't hear this is a bad person or a nasty person. I hear this person is frustrated. This person is not happy today or not even happy with the job. Or this person may have carried baggage from their house into the office. And whoever speaks to this person the whole day is like that. But with the guys, it's kind of like, we keep saying this thing, but we don't realize that men know how to, comp they know how to compartmentalize very well. He can fight with you, his loving wife, right now and get to the office and be the nicest person to all the females in his office. Because he knows that I'm going to the office now. Let me face work because I need to make money. I can't afford to make these people mad. I'm coming home as I'm walking through the door. Kai, my madam is waiting for me. Another fight. He will brace himself. 
But they, they are able to control that. And that's not because we are weaker. That's because of how we were raised. It's, a, it's the dynamics that I cannot even speak too much to because this happened way before me. And like Madame said, Antin Bore, I'm, I'm actually happy that you spoke because a lot of people might listen to you talk and find that it's, it's aggressive. Why is she saying this? What has the white man got to do with it? But based on history that I know, before they came, women were warriors. Women were kings. Women were everything. They were supporting their families because they were working hard. They were, they were respected and revered. But when they came, it became something else. You know, it was patriarchy that they came with. They didn't come with a balanced lifestyle. So everything changed. The way women were raised became different from the way men were raised. So a lot can happen. And the truth is, we are who we are. We can only try to be the best version of ourselves. And as we grow older with maturity, with understanding human beings and understanding psychology, like there's a green book behind me. You see, is it green? Yeah, that's it. My, my go-to psychology book. <laughs> I try to understand because if you try to figure out women in an instant, you will go crazy. I will go crazy even though I'm a woman. So it's not easy what we have had to endure growing up and who we have become. It's not easy. So all of us do inside. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you, Ungozika, and thank you, Stella. Let's uh, go back and see if we can hear uh, Igu's air before we go to Ifoma Chukun. Uh, Igu's air, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, okay. good evening, everyone. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, our special guest, you're welcome. Uh, thank you so much. I want to go to another direction, the opposite direction. I want to ask question on opposite direction because. Uh, most of the time, you have a program. They will, uh, you program most of the time that advocating for uh, women freedom, how women uh, is maltreated, and all rest of them. But there's something I want to find out. When a man like Dr. Damage, he has spent many years every day he think how to create a program, how to get a guest to make sure that the program works well. Now, if you watch some time, for instance, I just give you an instance, something like a on Mugo time, you find out that uh, after all this struggle, Dr. Damage is passing through. Then his daughter will get married, and the wife will go for Mugo. After going for Mugo, the only thing that Dr. Damage will get from that uh, Omugo is one bottle of schnapp. <laughs> one bottle of schnapp. All, all the struggle that is going, one bottle of schnapp. Now, and he will accept it with good faith. I use it to pray for them, one bottle of schnapp. Now, when you look at, because personally, I didn't grow up in a, in an environment that you are living in a mansion. There's one popular place, it's so called Face Me, I Face You. Mm. That's where I started my life. Before I get to the certain level where I get myself. I have a neighbor there. When the husband and wife is, fight, is fighting, the wife will be beating the man and be crying. And they shouting. And when the neighbor gathered, they began to raise voice against the man. Say how you have maltreating your wife. Say how you have in in inwardly, is woman that dealing with that man seriously. Now, if you go to Europe, if you go to Europe, most of us are in diaspora. If you find that a wife that you bring from Africa back to your house, immediately she just see a light. You see how the the, the woman will maltreat the man. Because you know, the woman has the power to take the man out of the house. This one coming to this way that I, I heard you clearly when you said that uh, uh, you are trying to get uh, some men in your organization so that you'll be able to talk to their fellow men. In that organization, have we talked, have we get a woman and talk to them what the men pass it through? Because if you watch men die so quickly, because they don't uh, uh, relate what, what they have in their mind. So they die of depression of what they're passing through. So in your organization, have we created in your mind or created a, move, uh, a movie or a picture how this thing needs to be handled so that the men can live for their family? Also, have people that advocate for them. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Go ahead. Um, yes. Earlier, I had responded to a question where I said I was a part of an organization where um, it was basically for women before, but then we started inviting different men to be on the board to listen to us speak and hear our issues, our challenges and all of that. 
But in the course of doing that as well, the reason why we needed male representatives is to also understand from their point of view why things are the way they are. Um, when you have things that have gone on for decades and centuries and you're trying to make a change, it doesn't it doesn't happen in a day. It's a gradual process. And I understand the story of the Amugu and the one snuff and everything. Unfortunately, it is, like I said, it is the way tradition has created these things to be due to no fault of ours. Like why in the world today, this is, these are things that we met when we were born. These are things that were happening. And the issue of women in Europe where they can send you out of the house or the law protects women more, I think it stems from the fact that a lot of things have been done to women a lot of complaints have been done, you know, women are, and I'm not saying that men are no victims because trust me, I know that a lot of men are raised to be quiet about their emotions. Don't cry, you're a man. How can you be letting somebody do this? Don't so you raise boys to become men who are hard, like who know how to like internalize their emotions and their feelings. So they don't talk, but they're going through so much. And you see a lot of men committing suicide now and they're so depressed and I totally understand. However, in the grand scheme of things, you know, when they do the research and the World Bank and they tell you that people who are victims of some of these things, it is 60-40. It is not a balanced scale. So for a long time, women are the ones who have been the reported victims because men will never come out and report to anyone that his wife is beating him or his wife is this. Out of, I'm a man, which mouth do I want to want used to tell somebody that my wife is doing this to me? It makes me weak. So reported cases that have been received most of the time are from women. So it makes it feel or seem like the women are the major victims. So when they try to do a scale of it or a percentage, they tell you it's women who are higher in number when it comes to victimization. And that's why it seems like the law will protect her from any harm. If she cries wolf, you're in trouble because of how it has been in the past. It is a difficult conversation to have. That's why I said, whatever I do, I try to make sure that it's not a battle of the sexes. It's not a gender war of do women do this to men and men do this to women. It's a matter of, I'm a woman, I, I represent women, and I just want us to have our rights being affected. I want us to be able to say, send your girl children to school. Let them go to school. Let them learn something that will help them in the future. I'm trying to say, don't marry off your children at the age of nine or 13. They, they don't even know themselves yet. Don't throw them in the house of an old man and make them mothers before they even realize what life is about. That's what this whole advocacy for me is about. It has never been about a gender war. Because when I talk about widowhood practices, it is performed by women. And it's the mentality of, it was done to me, it was done to my mother, it was done to my grandmother, you will go through it, you're not an exception. It is the way the world has been, but can we at least just pay attention to the fact that there are a particular group of people who just want a right to be educated, a right to choose their husband, a right to marry when they are old enough, you know, a right to live a normal life. That's all we're saying. So uh, it's a long journey, but yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, before we go to a former Chupu, I wanted to make Eagles and know that our Sophia already went to Omugo and we know that it didn't come out. <laughs> uh, we don't want any more men doing that. <laughs> okay, if former Chupu, go ahead. <laughs> You're next. <laughs> you don't want to ask a question. Oh, okay. All right, that's good. All right, so can I, your next? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Damage. Uh, good day, everyone. And uh, welcome, uh, Mrs. Ogageli Ojuku. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, is well, it from my own end? I think it's uh, from StreamYard. It's moving yeah, on. sorry. Why I address you that way is because uh, I think some of uh, our commenters here, they, they must have known why. Uh, you are one among. Uh, few Nollywood uh, actors or actresses that I have a tremendous respect for. Uh, the likes of uh, the lady you just mentioned, Kate, Kate, uh, Kate Henshaw. Uh, we have the other one, Genevieve Naji. Ah, there's this other pretty one. What is her name? She got married recently. I think she lives in London. One... Uh... Rita. <laughs> Thank you. You know? And uh, so... Um, then growing up, uh, you are one that always uh, I admire you so much, but I hate it when Tony, Tony Mez 
calls you darling, you know, it gets me angry, you know. I don't know why. <laughs> well, this is it. Um, good to have you here. So I while listening to you, uh you were saying something about uh, the hassle that you guys face trying to penetrate the uh, U.S. movie industry, right? And that got me thinking, instead of trying so hard to penetrate U.S., uh, I mean, Western world, uh, why not use that energy to try to work on our indigenous movie? As you, as you rightly um, you know, said, that... Uh, you have no place. They told you that you have no place in their market, right? Uh, that you didn't sound like an African. Uh, why not make it, it, it try to make it so obvious that you know uh, moving forward, you will sound African. You will sound a Nigerian in every ramification. And this is how you may try to do that. And thank God you are one working on uh, uh, the right of women they call it a uh, feminism i don't even know how to pronounce that word because it gets me angry whenever i hear that but this is it um and i know i know the emergence of uh, this... <laughs> that is the, that is the, that is how it's called so but i know i know it's for a good cause right i know the emergence of uh the feminism is to uh, advocate for the right of women and also fight off whatever factors that would deprive women from enjoying their few uh, full human, um, human rights. But it, when you go to today's uh, Nollywood, especially Nigeria, um, you know, N Nigeria, you will see that uh, a lot of uh, men characters are taking the place of women. And I wouldn't want to call their names because it means me trying to glorify or market them here. We find a lot of men taking the place of women. And recently, one of them was even given an award of being the best dressed uh, woman. It makes me really angry. I was like, what is really going on here? So I think um, you, as an individual trying to um, help your, you know, uh, your fellow women, should look into that as well. Because if not, if care is not taken, instead of going back to... Um, uh, putting, I mean, having your platform just the way you were told, uh, uh, and you know, from the other side that you don't have a platform. Instead of instituting that platform, you're about to lose it. You are losing it gradually. Women are losing their position. So why not try to get a way of deterring these people? I mean, our fellow confused men trying to take the place of women. Uh, why not deter them from, you know, taking your place? And secondly, uh, Though I don't think it's that important, but I just felt the need to say something about that. Talking about tradition uh, versus the westernization, right? I think some tradition are, has come to stay. And uh, in as much as there are some traditions that I don't really, really, um, you know, I want to hear that, you know, hear that happening. For example, where you have uh, underage girls getting married to one old God-forsaken human being, um, I don't like that, but when it comes to other tradition, I don't think uh, it's that bad. You know, for example, where a man uh, is allowed to marry more than one wife, I think it's something that we as Africans should actually, you know, commend and support, you know, so that uh, everybody will be happy at the end of the day. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Kenny. Okay. <laughs> So Stella, uh, just so yeah. you know, there are our concourse from Tin Solar Part who reincarnated and they are here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but let me let me just touch on a few things that he, he spoke about. First of all, <laughs> he addressed me as Yagili Ojuku. I will remind you that even though Ojuku was our name, but from the time after the war, my family formally changed the name to Damascus, and that's before I was born. So I was born into the name Damascus. And the reason why my name is Stella Damascus, not Obiagili Damascus, is because of the brand. The brand was created as Stella. So if I go and start doing Obiagili and Stella, it will confuse people. But my, my family, my sisters, my friends, that's what they call me, Obi. Geli Geli, Ovia all of that. But for the sake of who I am, that's the name that I have. So um, when you talked about 
trying to break into Hollywood, why don't we create ours, is the reason why, like I told Dr. Damages, is the reason why I set up Global African Filmmakers, so that those of us <clears throat> who are filmmakers, who are Africans, who are African immigrants all over the world, were able to come together and talk about our own projects, our own distribution, how we can protect ourselves, and having our own aggregator, so that we stop hearing even if you're in America and you want to make a film, as an African, you have to go back home and shoot 40% of the film in Nigeria before you can have a category because we don't have a category for you in awards and film festivals. Even in the cinemas, you approach the cinemas and you say, oh, I made a film. I'm an independent producer. And they say, what category of film is it? Is it a Nollywood film? Is it an African film? Is it a Nigerian story? Is it an African in America story? What kind of story is it? We don't have a category for that. Unfortunately, we live in America. This is where we live our lives. A lot of us went to school here. A lot of us work here. Our lives are here. We are doctors, we are nurses, we are, we are pilots, we are different things. In fact, some of the best doctors in this country are Nigerian. So why can't yep. we tell normal stories of Nigerians who are doing well? But no, they will tell you they want the, the village thing because they don't want to think that we have intelligent people who can be represented. We don't see ourselves in our films. It was only until they made Black Panther that people started to embrace the fact that, okay, there should be authenticity. So Africa is good. Then they did Woman King. Oh, wow, okay. Africans are really a lot of them. They're, they're supporting us. So we can now start to introduce you know, these people. I just finished filming in Houston. It's a Netflix series. And they decided to put me as a real African mother. So they consulted with me for a change. The wardrobe department, hair, everyone, they were asking me, is this authentic? Is this Igbo? Is this this? Now they are beginning to open up and write more things. But it took a long time. It took a lot of struggles. It took a lot of meetings, a lot of talking. And we are getting there. Um, you also talked about the transgender thing and um, somebody winning an award. I usually don't talk about other people's things because for me, it boils down to morals. If it's a crime against humanity or a crime against the Federation or the state, then we'll talk about that. But if it's people's choices that they don't want to be men anymore, they want to be women or they don't want to be women anymore, that's not, there's nothing I can do about that because if they've changed themselves already, I cannot go and say change back. You know, and I do not have the power to tell producers, don't put them in your film, don't put them in your premiere. I can't do that. It's it's everybody's choice. What we can only do is make sure that we know the difference between right and wrong. We raise our children to know the difference between right and wrong. The people we mentor, we tell them the difference between right and wrong. And it's dependent on the individual to agree that this is right and this is wrong. Because some people will tell you, it's the way I feel, it's the way I want to be, it's nobody's business. I didn't use your money to do it, you know. So... Talking about that aspect, there's little or nothing any of us can do. And the fact is, if we even look at the Bible, the Bible has said it that in the last days, these things will happen. So they don't shock me anymore. The only thing I can do is pray for my own soul and pray for my family and friends. And I, I wish everybody would do the same. I know it's all about tradition and how men should marry more than one wife. I can't speak to that because I was raised different. My father married one wife. My grandfather's married one wife each. And that's what I know. But to have a man marry more than one wife, and people are doing it, and they're doing it comfortably and successfully, if it works for them, it's fine. But all I'm saying is do not bring in a 13-year-old or a 9-year-old and say that person is a wife. That is the one that I will not accept. So whatever it is that everybody wants to do, we praise the Lord. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Bumi. Bumi, welcome to the show. Yeah, good day, Dr. Damages, and thank you for having me. And good day to every other person, especially the the guest, Miss Stella. Um, I unfortunately couldn't tune in earlier, so I'm not sure about certain things you both have discussed. But my question before I deliver my question, I'm going to give a little bit of background to why the question even exists. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't grow up watching a lot of, you know, Nollywood. Mm -hmm. I watched some mostly when I have aunties around that loved it. But if I should go back to the type of Nollywood I watched, it was mostly those movies that are more centered to like a rich man marrying a poor girl or like the wicked mother-in-law and she's a witch or or like you go to uni or high school and 
is about oh you're in the court or you know in the court is or it's around centered to like romance you know but i didn't really grow up watching tv shows that are like i don't know if anyone knows the good doctor for example yeah yeah so i didn't really grow up watching nollywood that is centered around things like that mm-hmm. or like suits about being a lawyer and how to solve and mm-hmm. i know yes it's due to the fact that we might not have those infrastructures for you to have a TV show or a movie that's centered mm-hmm. around that. Mm-hmm. But don't you, my question is that don't you think that at some point, mm-hmm. if we really do, because you did mention about having Nollywood and when you go to like in America and they ask you, oh, what's the category? Yeah. And don't you think at some point, if we do, want to start not necessarily pleasing the international community but pleasing ourselves as a nation to grow because we all know where nigeria is as itself Mm -hmm. we need to start making movies that are centered around well-taught careers yeah for example there's a tv show called station 19 it's all about Mm -hmm. fire yeah service Mm -hmm. when are we going to start making that because I think one of the panelists talked about how this generation is like not the best, but when we grew up watching, you know, like romance and all that, how can we be better as a society? Okay. That's kind of my question. Good question. Thank you so much. Um, so the truth of the matter is when we started, when the industry started, don't forget that the industry started with people who had no idea about making films. The industry started with marketers. We call them marketers because they have shops in Onitsha, Weri, Aba, and all of that. They figured out that a lot of people were consuming content, film, from India, Indian films that they would show us every Friday, you know, and we were watching TV shows from the BBC and all of that. And then NTA was like the first major television station that we had that will show you uh, plays. You know, they will put, they will record plays as if they were films. So they will record these things and put it in there because it wasn't home home movie, it wasn't film. They just recorded things. They had studios. They would shoot inside their studio and make it look like a film. So this was this was what was happening. And then these Alaba marketers. On its marketers realized that oh we are importers and exporters we import videotapes for all these video for all these small small cinemas because then the, the cinema industry before home video even came was huge so they were importing these things to record and dub foreign films right so then they realized that if we can import tape nta is doing this thing on tv why can't we carry what nta is doing put it inside tape and start to show people that was how Nollywood started. It didn't start as a formal institution where we learned how to write, where we had good script writers that would understand terminologies from court or from the hospital or things like that. It started out as people who were businessmen who decided that, okay, all these NTA people that know how to do things, come and shoot this thing for me, I will give you money. When you shoot it, we'll put it inside cassettes that we are selling already, that are empty. Instead of selling empty tapes, let's import these tapes. You do this thing that you are doing on TV, do it for our tape so that we can start doing it as a commercial venture. So we did not have that formal training from the beginning. That's why we could only tell stories that we could relate to. We could only tell stories about mother-in-law that will come and be stressing your life, or the romance here, or this one married poor girl, or you went, one prince came from America and married one village girl and things like that. Those were the stories that we could tell. But I will tell you that over time, we started doing professional uh, uh, TV series. You mentioned Station 19, I see all of them, Chicago PD, SVU. We have Castle and Castle. That was on Netflix for a long time, and that was purely for the legal sector. We had another one that was done by Endemo. It was done years ago. It was about doctors. Ketensha was in it. Um, um, This Raka girl was in it. There were so many people that were in it. And we've had a lot of TV shows that center around the medical field, law, even people who do farming. We've had a lot of different things like that. It may not be as big, because again, 
our platform might not reach you. You sound like someone who was raised in the UK, darling. So maybe you didn't get a chance to see these things. Well, trust and believe that we are pushing. We are doing it now that the market is opening, now that we're open to traveling and learning and doing online courses. Our writers are beginning to write these things more and more to create who we are. The problem is not our writing or our storyline right now when it comes to the divide with us and the international market. The problem is how they see us as Africans. There's a girl that I follow on Instagram and her whole page is about telling the world, it's about responding in a sarcastic way, but telling the world about Africa. She climbed the tree and says, so for some people who are asking me if we live on trees, yes, I've climbed this tree, I'm coming to collect Wi-Fi. By the time I catch the Wi-Fi with my binoculars, I will throw it down so that it can catch my Wi-Fi in the basket. I cannot put the Wi-Fi on my phone. That was a sarcastic way of telling you, how can you think that we live on trees in this day and age? Do you understand? So, it is the way we are seeing, and we have to continue to tell stories to show ourselves that we are workers, we are professionals, we are this, we have to keep doing it. But now that, like I said, we have Black Panther, we have Woman King, we have different things that are centered around Africa. We have Lion King. Lion King is based off of a South African um, um, story, a myth from South Africa. But the whole world has embraced Lion King. So gradually, they are beginning to see and understand it. So we will get there. We will get there. All right. Uh, thank you. And uh, Bumi. And uh, let's go to Chim. Oh, no, sorry. Not Chim. CM, sorry. CM. Okay. Um, I hope I'm coming out clearly. Thank you, Rudolph. And uh, good evening. Um, our guest, Stella, welcome to our platform. Actually, to be honest with you, I don't usually listen to some main interviews, but you, for you, I was blown away with the depth of your intellect. And I'm not missing words. You are very convincing and logical in your presentation. In fact, I, I wanted to go somewhere, but each time I get up to move, I said, no, let me listen. I'm so impressed Thank that you. You, are, you are just a, a bunch of brain deeply very very you have, you have deep thoughts i didn't know i did because i take you know people going to do nollywood maybe just to show off and make money but you talking like a grandmother <laughs> or great grandmother deep very very deep with deep thoughts no it's true innate wisdom so as only do not be, do not be carried away after all we Igbos in Nigeria, we empower women even now more than men. The mm. leading lights in Nigeria that are women are from the Igbos. The leading mm. lights, I stand to be, I can hold a debate. So mm. if, if I can say, if I can say that, I can also say that, yes, you can count among them with time. But Jideki, you on the right, but I'm so impressed by your, what you've been doing, your, your career in Hollywood, your projections, where you are looking forward to, in fact, your worldview, let me put it there, your worldview, it impressed me, but I'm not mm -hmm. a woman, I'm a man. So I can only thank you and thank you and thank you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. All right, this is the first for CM not to have a question for our guest. Um, that, that must be wonderful. All right, uh, Alaba, you're next. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, greetings to all the panelists and uh, Ovia Geli. Can I call you that? Uh, Ovia Geli. I, I was born Ovia and Geli. Geli, so I know what it, you mean. <laughs> yeah, can I call you that? I have yes. to call you that. You know why? I've been I've been getting comments on the comment section that I purposely dressed up just because I want to ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Not, we've seen all the hair. Uh, we're not so. <laughs> So. <laughs> I, I was surprised at your heart myself. I was going to ask you what happened. I mean, the comment says that uh, Alaba went and dressed up big time <laughs> just to tax this woman a question. Anyway, um, you're a very intelligent woman. I want to ask you a question as a very powerful, uh, beautiful, intelligent woman and an artist. My question is centered on, on the subject of women. And on and on the on the art of artistry in Nigeria, which you are a part of, you have a stage, and um, 
I am interested in, I see you are using your stage, but I am interested in how you're, in future, you're going to keep using your stage to influence policy in Nigeria regarding the rights violation of women. Are you, is it in the offspring somewhere where as notable women, you want to have an association of women that will push for powerful policy influence uh, policy makers in Nigeria to continue to strengthen the, the rights of women. And also the movie business, you just mentioned about how um, uh, Hollywood tends to mistreat Africans. Um, we as Africans, Nigerians in particular, we are 200 million strong. That population in itself, it's market, it's money. But the first thing that has to happen is that we have to make our people wealthy for them to be able to afford the joy of uh, art, you know, that we, we are not there yet, we are working towards it. The movie business, um, how is the association of actors or actresses, how, how are they influencing regulation to reflect, influence our lives, particularly our politics. Also, when I was growing up, I used to read a lot of Nigerian or African authors, like pace setters. I remember one particularly, too cold for comfort. A lot of pace setters, too cold for and pace setters move. Why are all these beautiful things not turned into movies? Uh, is there work in the progress to do that? You know even if it has to be expanded. The, we can't wait for Hollywood to tell our story. They cannot do us justice. We have to tell our own story. We have to make them come to us and beg. We don't have to go to them. We shouldn't go to them mm -hmm. because we are population strong, mm -hmm. 200 million. We just have to give wealth to our people to enjoy what God has given us. So just as a woman and as an artist, what's uh, your position and influence on this. And uh, they are right. I did dress up just for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your effort. Thank you so much. Um, let me start with the first question in terms of um, effecting policy changes and all of that. The reason why I am here doing what I'm doing is because of the policy changes, this th same things you're talking about. I'm a part of Women for Women International and they have branches all over the world. Like I told Dr. Damages in the beginning that most of their volunteers are in the North. They've started to sensitize the women there, even their husbands to talk to them about the rights of their wives, let their wives learn, let them you know, understand business, how to calculate their money. The women there are now putting their money in, in a bank to save their, their lives have changed. There are so many documentaries that are available for people to see how transformative these things have become. You know, So we're beginning to talk to the community leaders to let them know that there are some traditional things that will have to change to favor all of these things so that things can change. They can allow the law to, to handle the rights issues as opposed to the archaic tradition. So I'm doing the little that I can now. I'm not based in Nigeria right now, but I am a part of organizations that have hands and boots on ground who are doing the major work. And we sit, we talk about these things and the, the changes that we want to see. But like you know, with every uh, political arena, there's red tape everywhere. You will meet a, rot, a lot of roadblocks. You talk to some people in government and the, the way they will push you, talk to this person, talk to this person, send this document here, send this letter here, and you have to grease the palm. For, that, for people to even read a document that you have put together talking about a policy that you want to change, for people to read it, the amount of people that you have to bribe and talk to and beg and cajole is crazy. But like I said, everything starts with a gradual process. And that's why I joined some of these associations because they were already pre-existing and they already have a stronghold in, in, in different places. Um, you also talked about the Guild and what they're doing to regulate some of these things. I, in, in our earlier conversation with Dr. Damages on the show, I, I talked about a lot of things that I knew would get me into trouble and my disagreement with a lot of things that they are doing, you know, in terms of taking care of the actors, the, the, the regulations that other people have, the number of hours we should work, the barest minimum that we should accept, the fact that we don't have health insurance, you know, as actors, 
putting our lives at risk, going into the forest and everything. The fact that we don't earn royalty. They pay you for a project and that's it. But the producer can go on and show the film everywhere else in the world, change it to French, change it to whatever, make their money and you don't get a dime. So it is a lot of things that is in battle here. And there's so much I can do as one person. I've, I'm trying. And I told him about Global African Filmmakers, a union that I just set up with its headquarters here, but will cater to African filmmakers all over the world, not just actors, but filmmakers from Ghana to Kenya to South Africa, Canada, Dublin, wherever you are as a film, filmmaker as an African, so that we can sit together and talk about our projects, you know, telling our stories. Like you rightly said, um, we should tell our stories. We're over 200 million strong. Um, the, the problem with that, like you, you said about the books, why don't we turn some of these books into films? We, in the industry, we say you option a book. The thing that we find difficult is to bridge that divide between authors who have written great books in the past and those of us who are filmmakers now, because to option a book is not cheap. It's like trying to talk to the Kuti family that you want to have rights to do Fela on stage. That is why Fela on stage was not even done by Nigerians. The first time that they did Fela on stage, it was done by Jay-Z and Will Smith and some of their investors. And they did it in New York and then brought it to us in Nigeria. And we paid money to go watch Fela on Broadway done by Americans. The truth is, it is not as if people haven't asked or we haven't. But the fact is, we still have a long way to go to understand the meaning of taking someone's intellectual property to turn it into a project that, that will belong to both parties or that you are given an exclusive right to tell the story. The problem we have is to be able to construct proper um, um, agreements, you know, proper documents as a, sign, as a contract to say, okay, if I'm optioning your book, this is what it is. A lot of people want to pay off these authors. Let me pay you 20 million for your book and do the film and the film belongs to me. And the author will say, this is my life's work. This is my intellectual property. It can't happen. Unfortunately, we don't have proper structures on ground to create proper contracts that will protect the author and also protect the producer. When you bring up these things, they'll tell you, we have contracts, we sign contracts. I look at a lot of our contracts and I shake my head and I'm like, I'm not a lawyer. All I did was, I did, before doing my degree in theater arts, I did business and industrial law as a diploma course in Uniland. And even as small as my knowledge is in, in the legal department, I look at some of our contracts and I shake my head and I'm like, this is not happening. When are we going to have more entertainment lawyers that will sit down with everybody and do what we're supposed to do? The structuring of the industry needs work. But if I say it, they, they always come for me and call me all sorts of names. And I say, no problem, but we lack structure, proper structure in every department, whether it is legal, whether it's financing, how we can finance, even the medical medical aspect of it, why some actors get to the age of 60, 70, immediately zero to 100, there's a terminal disease and we're begging for money to be flown abroad for surgery. When we could have sorted these things out, if we had health insurance that can help people even do medical checkups every six months. We have consultation fee and tests sorted by our medical insurance. We have the small, small money that we're paying, our royalties, let it go towards our retirement plan. The way people have 401k, Let's have a retirement plan. A lot of us don't have. A lot of people haven't saved enough money. So if I start this conversation now, we will not finish the next year. <laughs> There's, a There's a lot. All right. Th thank you so much. We have done three hours. We initially planned two hours. So what I'm going to do is uh, a question, a comment I got. I will tell you about that and then ask the flagship to ask the last question and then you can give us your final words. Uh, a friend of ours on this show, Dr. Alexander Gomez, said I should thank you for helping Enabella Elebowa. Enabella Elebowa. that for helping him in his last days, that you were very helpful to, to him. He's a friend of uh, Dr. Gomez. So he said I should send thank you to you. Um, all right, the flagship. Now, I'll meet yourself, Flashy. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, uh, Ms. Stella, it's it's really awesome. I just sit down here listening to your responses. It's, it's beautiful. Um, and this is surprising to me. Almost all the questions that I have, uh, it's either one person asking it, and in your attempt to answer it, you throw light on my next question. 
So I'm not going to go back to those. But let me ask this. Uh, your last uh, answer now, you talked about many ideas. And you seem to be on the right track. You have a clue of what needs to be done. But just like every other aspect of Nigeria, and as Nigerians, we always like to wait for someone to start the process for us before we jump in into it. You have the ideas to begin the preliminary work on putting all of these uh, uh, bulk projects together. And I'm sure that there must be one or two that think like you in the industry uh, in Nigeria or maybe here. Mm -hmm. Why have you not thought about working with this one, on, one or two and putting this idea, start the preliminary work together and maybe some somewhere down the line, others might buy an into and expand on it. Yeah, uh, that's that's what Global African Filmmakers is about. I've already started the process. I've said it from the beginning of this interview that I just registered a union that will protect the rights of filmmakers, whether you're an actor, producer, director, your wardrobe, gaffer, light, whatever. And that's what we're doing. We're putting things together that will serve as things to protect us, protect our rights, things that we're supposed to do on time. You know, we're getting entertainment lawyers to look at what our constitution will be, to know that we have a barest minimum for what people should earn as, you know, their work for the, for the projects that they do. Think about the health uh, insurance thing that works for other people and, and even an actor's emergency fund that we want to put together. I even give an example with the way SAG AFTRA works here in America, where if you have if you are a SAG member and somebody calls you to do a job and they pay you, they have a certain very tiny percentage that you pay to SAG and they save that money for you. You have your own accounts there for, for emergency cases or for your health or for if you have an issue with rent or your home, whatever it is, every actor who is a member has something, you know, that will protect them in case of anything, in case of unforeseen things. And at a point when you don't want to be a member anymore or after a certain number of years, you have your money sent to you because it's not for them to keep, it is yours. But all of these things I'm learning now because I am in America. I can study SAG, I can ask them questions, I can do all of that. So I'm thinking, I'm always thinking, how can I help my people? How can we effect change? You know, so this is why I set up Global African Filmmakers. And we are at the beginning stages where we are putting the constitution together. Because for you to have a union, you must have a constitution. And trying to work with different entertainment lawyers because it's not easy i'm in america right now i can work with an entertainment lawyer but the things that work here may not work in kenya they might not work in nigeria so i have to work with different people to say this is what we usually do this is what is acceptable in our country and things like that so um things like this is an enormous project that's bigger than me it's not about me it's about a whole industry and about a whole new generation that will come and ask what did you guys do to keep the environment of the industry safe enough for us to benefit from. So it's a, it's a lot of work, but it will take time. Thank you for doing Thank that. Thank you, Stella. Uh, Chim, there are a campaign on the comment section that I should let you talk, that you have something important to say. Rudolph, you're unbelievable. You're really very unbelievable. <laughs> I don't read it. I see it, that Chim must say something. Please, I, I have nothing to say. I've, I've probably enjoyed my Sunday, I'll be honest with you guys. <laughs> All right. Stella, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any final final words, you can say it now to us. And um, for those who are looking for the book, you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, it's only, uh, how much is it? I've not looked at the price. Um, okay. Yeah, it's $25. So uh, it's on Amazon. You can buy it there. Uh, Stella, uh, final comments. I just want to say thank you. It's unbelievable that people will spend three hours listening to me. <laughs> I never thought that this would be possible, but I just want to say thank you. And for all the questions that you've asked me, I've answered them, but also you guys made me think of even more things, you know, and you've given me a lot of ideas and a lot of hope that there are people like you who think this way and um, you are you are also helping by voicing out what it is that you're thinking about and the, and your thoughts. So thank you so much. And to those listening who are not able to ask questions, I hope that we can chat or talk about whatever it is and we can help each other, at least help ourselves and our country become a better place. And uh, we hope that in a few years to come, the industry will be such that you will all be proud of what we, what we create. So thank you.
so much. God bless you. Actually, right. Now I want to speak and say, please bring more of these kinds of persons because it's been a wonderful time on the comment section. I've never seen this before. So thank you for yeah. being here. Just to say, uh, Dr. Rudolph, um, somehow the panelists didn't go wild today. I mean, everybody has been acting up. I mean, acting in a very severe, in a very severe manner. So, so there's something about Stella that uh, is magical that will get everybody at bay. So, well done. Uh, please, uh, Rudolph, please, next time you bring a man that will advocate for men, <laughs> uh, that will advocate for the right of men. So that right. of will be going to Omogo. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the things. Men are passing through hell. And some of us here now may, may, be, may be passing through depression, but because of the, the kind of things we see, we just pretend nothing is happening, but the men are dying. So bring a man that will also we ask some questions how to advocate for men to uh, get rid of something that's going wrong. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, and Dr. Damage is from the Association of Senior Citizens. <laughs> including in Bore, California. <laughs> All right. I just, want, I just so want to make sure that Stella, uh, we truly appreciate um, your presence. And let's hope that, like I requested in the backstage, there is a whole lot to unpack. Yes. All right. Very, very last. Yes, okay. very, very, very let's go. We'll, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> lives in the UK with her children. Mm -hmm. I, I did widows months before my husband passed away. Um, so, and I, I saw the lady that I played. And so when the movie came out, the movie came out after my husband had died. It didn't come out before, but I shot it way before. So when it came out after, everybody thought, oh, that's her story. She was telling her story in a movie. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't my story. I wasn't upset. I was actually grateful that I did such a great job that people believed that it was me because as at the time I was doing it, my husband was out. In fact, he was the one dropping me <laughs> off on location. So right. it means that I must have done a very good job for people to actually feel it and say, oh, it must be her story. How do you feel at times when... Now you know, now you know, if you know, you know, the big ballers in town. Now you know, now you know, never ever get booed. Television debut, yeah. this is his most uh, recent album right here. It's called Spirit of Love. We're very pleased to welcome Majek Feshek. <laughs>
a made up each year. When we used to live like prince and princess. Remember, remember, my dust me. Who are the dream for New America? Oh, I remember, remember, Martin Luther King. Who are the dream for New America? They say you are black. They say you are brown. They say you are black. They say you are brown. Only the angels of child is quiet now. Only the angels of God is quiet. So long. Too long. So long. Too long. We've been sitting down. Africa, arise from your sleep, America. There's work to be done, Africa. So much work to be done, America. But 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 if we unite, hey hey, we will be free so long. Welcome back, everybody. Um, <clears throat> thank you for staying and um, hanging in here. Let's do a recap or get a view of what people think about uh, Stella's. Uh, oh, the studio is full. Wow. What can I do? There's so many people. Um, from people who are here to speak and uh, join us. Uh, so, four fathers, you yeah, first. Thank you for having me, Dr. Damages. Uh, greetings to you and to all the panelists, the chats, and uh, especially to the viewers. Why are you um, laughing? Yeah, I deliberately stayed off now. I don't want any mob attacks today. They were getting ready now. So that, yeah, was a good, uh, that was a good thing. You stayed off. Good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you to do I don't want one. I've had enough for one week. Um, yeah. Um, if I was to ask any questions, I would be asking. You know how she talked about feminism. Um, you know the way she's. Her point, her, her point of view is very, very fine. There's no issue with it. And same thing for uh, polygamy. However, what you tend to see is the similar stuff you see with uh, Islamization, where the, after you are Islamized, then you get the Arabization coming later on. So the idea is that you have some of feminists that sound quite reasonable now, but the actual agenda is still full-blown kind of uh, uh, copycatting of what is going on in the West. Yeah. And it that is one. Me. And uh, yeah, is there is there any specific caution that our women are exercising when practicing feminism? That would have been uh, one of my questions. Mm -hmm. And um, regarding um, Nollywood, I would I think something along the lines of the question um, Bumi asked um, about you know kind of not seeing a lot of technological, scientific, or uh, intellectual approach to um, our movie making and showing our people 
a different way to perceive the world other than um, a witch bewitched this one and uh, mother-in-law did this and all that stuff. So, and I would have asked, but is there any, a kind of vision to look into maybe sci-fi, uh, African sci-fi and serious African historical um, uh, dramas? Because we don't necessarily get a lot of them. None of, we, I'm not sure we've ever covered the colonization wars in enslavement period enough. Um, some of the great um, events that has occurred on the continent um, or the, the, the story of Haiti. Nobody has ever made it into a movie. And, but the one they made was the woman king, where the women became woman turned into a king instead of queen and ended up being slaughtered by the British. I don't know, or the French. So I'm not sure the kind of films they are making for us. So those are the kind of questions I would have asked. Are, are you but, sure me and you watch the same woman king? Uh, yeah, of course. You, you, are, you have your own lenses that you see it through now. But what I saw was, if you know the true story of the woman king, you know that it wasn't a story that we should be glorifying. All right. Thank I don't you. think that we meant to glorify a woman king, but let's not detract. Rudolf, go ahead. Thank you for for this, uh, Dr. Dominic. Go ahead. You know, I, bear, I, I, I was like, oh, let me jump on. <laughs> And then she left as soon as I was, as soon as I was about to jump on. But um, I didn't, hello everyone, I didn't um, have the opportunity because I, I was at work. I didn't have the opportunity of uh, listening to her all through. But the one thing I wanted to ask her, she covered, you know, which was the whole health insurance thing and how to make sure that welfare of actors are taken care of, you know and with the pay salary and things like that. So I think she covered that beautifully. I'll go, probably go back and listen to it. Um, otherwise, I didn't have any other questions. I was going to come and, you know, and uh, sort of, um, uh, let me not say, let me not say more than that. All right. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, was, I know where you were going, but. Mm. I don't know where <laughs> you're going. Let me ask you. How, how, let me ask you. How did you get her to come to this show? Oh, I read her book. I actually, I, 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 I read her oh. book. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Dominic, what is wrong with you? Are you telling us that we men, yeah, we're not capable of receiving that kind of woman? I don't understand. No, no, no. You know how, do you know how hard it is to get some of these people to show up on the okay. show? Okay. I, that's okay. what I'm asking you, I know okay. what I'm you're looking at. So like maybe the I, I read again. her book, but also I, I, I know somebody who knows somebody. <laughs> it, it, it requires, uh, it's not that easy. You're right, you know. Some of them may, they may not even know who you are, you know. So, uh, some of the, but in her own case, I met her before. But there are some of these um, Nollywood and even the musicians who think, you know, they don't they don't have any idea who you are. But I, I mean, no, no, no. we should always give Rudolf his accolade. I mean, <laughs> first of all, I always give Rudolf his accolade. Thank you, thank you, Dominic. Thank you so much. Uh, the flagship. We're now talking about reviews and. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it was a great, great session. Uh, she spoke very well, uh, quite impressive, uh, so to say. And uh, the, the other thing I wanted to uh, talk about, or uh, wanted her to speak on, somebody speak brief, spoke briefly about it, and it's the influence of the Western culture and lifestyle on our movie making industry. Uh, what they are planning to do about it? Do they are they concerned? that the originality of the Nigerian story and the African story is gradually eroding. We're replacing it with the Western lifestyle and uh, uh, ways of life that we're depicting on our movie screens. Although trying to put a little bit of uh, the African side or tone to it, but most of the Nollywood movies these days are uh, pretty much portraying the Western lifestyle in Nigeria with a, with a little bit of uh, taste of what Nigerian culture or originality is. So I wanted to know if she could have spoken a little bit in detail about that if they are concerned. And if she thinks that that is the reason why she encountered producers and other folks here in the States who said, uh, you are not original. You don't speak like African. You don't act that way. Could that be the reason that we're doing too much to try to portray the Western lifestyle, which they're already used to and not our own? But other than that, she spoke very well. She touched a lot on most of the questions I was going to ask, uh, which, of course, a few of the panelists did ask. All right. Thank you. Uh, Chim. 
Uh, thanks, Rudolph. Uh, they said we should give you your flowers. So I've been looking around if I had some flowers to <laughs> give you here, but but none. What I have is my daughter's uh, graduation flowers, which I can't give you. <laughs> Are you sure the flower is for Rudolph or for the for, for Stella? Don't be deceiving <laughs> us here. <laughs> so, Jim, you brought a flower. You should have shown it to her. I know. You it's you so guys are unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all those people in the comment section. Maybe like, maybe like close mouth. No, but honestly, to be honest with you, I want to doff my hat for the comment section people. Everybody that well behaved today, I'll be. I don't know. Maybe you need to you need to go bring these kinds of people where there will be no. Then I think, no, then I think should be next. <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, Obuni will fly all over the place. Anyway, I think it was a good outing we had. Uh, you know, the honest truth is she's very, very articulate and uh, intelligent. And I don't want to sound patronizing, but the truth is she knows her stuff. You know, she knows her stuff and perhaps even beyond. Uh, the one other question I want, the one comment I wanted to make to, to her, which I didn't get to, and I just said, okay, it wasn't necessary, is, you know, when she said that, uh, talked about the fact that the way we behave as, that it is men of ladies in Nigeria is, as a function of our upbringing and all that, which I don't think is a bad thing in itself. You know, um, I believe squarely in the fact that we, we, everybody is here, whether it is male or female, there are roles we have to play. Um, so when you're raising a lady, yes, raise them to also aspire. Uh, they shouldn't necessarily be raised to be looking forward towards being somebody's wife. I'm not into that kind of perception. Um, however, that doesn't take away from the fact that raise ladies to be ladies also you know you could still be an engineer and still have all the you know the still preserve your feminine perspective detail for the men also and that's why many of us also are also raised to respect women know how to treat them very well and all that i don't think there's anything wrong in it so if the world suddenly wants to move in a different trajectory well it, it will move in that trajectory without me i'm very certain about that um so but um, Forfather has raised a good point, which I also think uh, perhaps would have asked her if we had the opportunity. So, like, I've been in that industry. I actually worked for my last job was with Mnet uh, in making movies and all that. I wasn't in the movie section. My job was totally different. But I worked. I was in the heat of everything that was going on because uh, I measured movies, you know, and the the work I did helped the organization know where to place its dollars. So I know there was a thinking towards uh, making movies around our legends, people like Queen Amina, you know, Jaja of Opobo. Um, uh, what's the guy in Ife? I'm trying to remember the the guy who, uh, popular legend now that the uh, Fulani Zobaran, there's a popular name for him. I'm trying, please, Ferrari, if you can remind, remind me. The, Is it Moremi? No, no, not Moremi. Moremi is Edo, that's Bini. The, the, the guy in... Who is it that he sold out to the to the Fulanese? I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, yeah. Quara, Quara. Yes, yeah, yeah, we're still a Yoruba person. I'm trying yeah. to remember his name. Okay. Afonja, thank you. Afonja. Afonja, somebody has just posted it. Afonja, you know, and you know, even the king, the Aruchuku. We've had a uh, judge of Opobo, like I mentioned, the Kosoko and, and Akintola in Lagos, the battle of the kingships and all those things. We've had ideas about trying to make those kinds of movies, but I don't know if it is the funding. Or, or, and that's why someone like uh, Kunle, what's his name? Is it Kunle, uh, Kunle Afolayo, Afolayo. Who, who tries, who tries. I won't take away his efforts, but I don't think the quality of the things he comes out with exactly does justice to those personalities. He did independence. He's done a few ones. I know there's an effort to do something about Wole Shoinka, which I have already seen a snippet of and all that. But I, I think... The challenge we have is with funding. And then the other thing is that our producers are not depth enough to stay the course and produce something that will, you know, it might not be exactly it, but we will say, wow. So we, sometimes we see rushed work. You know, it doesn't exactly speak to the, this thing. So I think that's one of the things. I'm one of those who believe we shouldn't go. Uh, Bollywood didn't go running after Hollywood. Bollywood is busy doing their own thing. And Hollywood is busy running after them. I'm of the view that Nollywood should stay his own course, be depth enough, do quality product that will make just the same way these American musicians are now coming to our musicians, not the other way around. We need to stay the course and do 
you know, our own thing. Those are otherwise, I think it was a wonderful outing we had with her. She was quite intelligent. I, I'm looking forward to similar kinds of uh, depthful uh, uh, guests that you will bring on the show. Yeah, talking about guests, uh, we know that P2P is coming this week. Um, I haven't narrowed it down to what day. It might be Sunday, but he has an event on Sunday. So um, unless we want to agree to a short time. Let him come on a Saturday. Yeah, it might be Saturday, but he's coming from Boston to New York. So we are working on the time, but it's happening this week. Uh, we'll let you know by. Hey, Rudolph, you want to have him in person or? Well, I don't know. Do you know? You know, those are the kind of details we don't know oh, yet. Okay. He may be at his hotel, uh, but he will be here live, wherever I am, wherever it is. We, you know, we'll after, the, after we've all gone around, there's a comment I want to raise over what somebody posted, but I, I'll leave that till everybody oh. has, has gone. Okay. So, so that I will let everybody know, those who are on my uh, mailing list, we get it and we will put it out there as soon as we confirm the dates and the time. Uh, also, we, should we also be restricted to? Sorry, I wanted to ask a question to Jim. Should we also be restricted to making programs only within that happen in Nigeria? Because Oyibo people, nothing stops them from making programs about Egypt and about they shall say, Papa, they made the one about uh, Benin Republic to the human king. I, I, for, I, for I agree with you, but let's tell our own story first. Let's tell our own story. Project. Let them see that we have even the fella we're talking about. If we, we can do a fantastic movie around fella, that would be. That will really capture Fela's essence from how he moved from being Fela, what is uh, Ransom, Ransom to becoming Anikula or Kuti, what led to that and all those things. Let's tell our story. We, we have beautiful stories before we tell, talk about the Japanese or the Egyptians. Yes, but the, all let's, the ones you mentioned are the ones where we are in trouble. <laughs> all the ones no, 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 I just mentioned a few. Well, there, I mean, it does not it, limit, it, it, no, it, it doesn't limit to that. It's still a story, but let the story yeah. be. I, 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 I agree with that to an extent, but I just feel, feel that nobody has told the story of the Haitian Revolution or the story of Queen Amer Amerinus. These are great stories of black people doing great things. But the yeah. ones we are going to be telling yeah. are yeah. colonization yeah. ones. Yeah. 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 We are telling some of it already. No, we haven't done enough. So we'll it, tell it, all of them first before we tell any other story. I don't mind. Papadas. Why Why do we always do that? Anytime we want to do something, we'll say, let's do this one first. We can do all of them at the same time. No. No, no, no. Okay, hold on, for fathers. It's not about we. I want you to say uh, most movie makers are not really professional. Anybody can be a movie maker. You can you can be a producer. You can so you can actually decide what you want to do, what you want to see, and, and do it. All right, let's go on. Mbore in California. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, thank you. Thank you so much. Is that a hibiscus flower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> we don't give uh, you, your, your meeting. I, I, I to give. We don't give uh, roses to men. We give them verbal encouragement, and it means a whole lot. Mm. Yeah. Um, I am so thankful that the entire panel has tolerated me this long. I I don't know, and I'm not working hard to paint things up. I don't do it. <laughs> um, I just say things the way I see them. Might confirm my primitivity, and I'm so proud of it. Yeah. Um, I am thankful to you, Chim. I really am. I, when things are said, I do look into them. It was like when I stopped going to church, my first reason for stop going to church was that a whole lot. 
So I said to myself, if you think you're that good, why don't you go there and give them the goodness? Why don't you go there and convert? If they can't convert you, convert them. <laughs> but the reality remains that I, from what you have said, Chim, will do my best to hang around, especially the reason I hung around for this long was not to leave the woman alone in the panel. <laughs> and that's just exactly what you say, that, that, you know, confirmed, betrayed that point, you know, <laughs> that I came because of her. It's true, I did. <laughs> Um, originality, what I get from everything is to remain and encourage authentic, the authenticity of wherever. So if I, she, and the entire, um, entertainers, go on in life, they maintain originality. I, I won't, uh, I won't be the, I mean, I don't have that type of money to say, I'll give them all the money they want, but I'll support them to the best of my ability because yes, them instigators that we helped to put us where we are today. I don't call them white because like I said the first time I came here, I know my colors. I've never seen anybody this color. So no, I don't call them white men because white men or women because no, they are not. Um, but we helped them to to totally incline and hold on to what they hold to be good and condemning us that's one of the reasons i like listening to chimbori arikana chimbori the honorable arikana chimbori um yeah most of us who know the entertainers, maybe from what we watch and the encouragement we give them, might think twice in uphold and lean towards upholding our original um, uh, values. Otherwise, Agamasea Jidankoji, I will always tell her, Girl, you know what you do. Girl, you go on ahead and do what you do. Okay. Come on, come on, say your neighbor. I submit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. We, we appreciate you. Uh, Alaba, you're next. Yeah. Two things. Two things. One, use of power. Yesterday, I went back to watch yesterday's show. Alaba, sorry. Somebody said that you will be a finer boy if you remove the toothpick. <laughs> okay exactly i wanted to tell you i'll give him a signal move your toothpick okay um two things use of power i reviewed yesterday's show dr rudolph and um i have um two issues with your moderators forefather and show show was a pacifist did not help matters forefather was a dictator you need rules for your moderators for the panelists, let me say this to you all. When you see injustice, please react. This is how Nigeria became what it became today. Because those who know never react. When you see injustice and authoritarianism or abuse of power during moderation, react by either vocalizing it like Tone did. I want to thank Tone and I want to thank Loco P yesterday for a great job. By turning off your camera as an indication that this moderator needs to learn. If he can learn, let's leave that. Now, let's go back to uh, beautiful Stella Damascus. There's a Yoruba proverb that says, kwani to kwani. that is, if the dead in the house don't kill you, 
the one outside will not touch you. According to Stella, when, she, when I asked her that question and she listed the laundry list of issues they face as artists regarding regulation, welfare issues, legislation, legal issues, the problems were so huge, it points only to one direction, the failure of government, of our government. If our government had not failed, they would be there for these artists. They will be there for these talents. And our artists, talent, and skills can be global competitors, not running to Hollywood to beg, but Hollywood running to us to beg us. That is the summary of this interview with this beautiful woman we had today. Now, we have so many stories to tell, untold, from all our traditional leaders to our political leaders. We have their stories that Nollywood could tell to the issue I raised about pay setters we read when we were young. But they can't do this. They can tell stories of our political leaders without embellishing it. They can be truthful. They can, they are, on how our politicals live, how they love, mm -hmm. how they die, how they relate with society, who they mm -hmm. are as a person. This is the story movies tell. Now, like I said, back to the mm -hmm. issue, if the death in the house don't kill you, the one outside cannot touch you. All these failures of our artists, not that they fail, the artists have not failed, but the fact that we cannot be global competitors points only to one fact, the failure of our system of government. Thank you all. All right, thank you, Alaba. Uh, Ibo Basics. Yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody who's been here. I know I've been at war for quite some time. You guys have done a great job. And I will always encourage you, uh, Chim, uh, KJ, uh, flagship, you've been doing a wonderful job. I mean, what else can I say? Uh, for me, since I went on and did my traditional retirement, age grade retirement, everything else that I do is voluntary. Everything I do now is voluntary, including contributions or whatever. But to be here and see people like Tone, Dominic, I haven't seen you for quite some time, but um, Mbori, California, uh, is doing a little kind of bomb which brought out um, Abegedi, which is uh, by that name, you know, it was really good by Mbori, California. So I would have asked Mbori California if she was still here, because when she says she's Carl at the end, and I know that the people from my area, Bende, answer Carl. I don't think that people from Anambra answer Carl or any other thing like that. So anyway, she can answer that later on. One of the things I picked up in this whole process, she talked about agreement. Um, Stella is very well vast. Thank God for who she is. Uh, we have some more of those kind of human beings around who speak from their heart and from their life experience. She talked about agreements, making agreements. Some of us who grew up from the school of hard knock, I come to that agreement issue by an agreement we entered into with Nigerian Television Authority in 1984, NTA. That agreement was for us to produce Zabrugaya in pictures the new masquerade. But the Nigerian system has a way of killing its own institutions. We signed the agreement with Mazu Okonu, who was then the general manager, the founding general manager of NTA. They were supposed to relinquish their VHS tapes to us so that we can get from there, convert them into pictures, and preserve, and they, whatever else they were producing, they were supposed to do that. But within a month, they retired Mazio Kano. You know how our, gov our government do. You come today, they take you out tomorrow. When they retired him, that story is told in uh, Zerudaya's book. When they retired him, the result was that Mr. Okere, who came next as general manager, Either craziness or whatever happened to him, they go into the library where they have the VHS tapes. Instead of buying new VHS tapes to 
do their job. They just go in there and they just take and they, they wipe out the whole series. You go, you can still find what you call it, uh, village headmaster, or you go in the lot, you can find uh, the other one. That's, you can find those, but in this particular case in Alba, they wipe out that. So it became a situation where people have asked me, why is it that we don't have this service running? That is your answer right there, because they wipe them all out. And it's a tragedy in the system. But the only people who can have it probably be BBC. I will not be surprised if they have it. And for us to lay hands on any of those things, it's going to be something else. So what am I trying to say? Agreements, agreements, agreements. But on top of agreement, our Nigerian system ought to take care of its institutions. The people like Stella Damas that just came on, and I threw in a question here about autism, and I talked about animation, and I'm quite sure that some of us know that we have wonderful children who are first-rate intelligence around here, and by virtue of what we are growing, we are growing up with. But one issue I have here is this. Some of us who are in the social circles, the political circles, yeah, they say monkeys everywhere in our home. We spent a lot of our time on our own Igbo this, Igbo that, for instance. In retrospect, realizing that we could have put in a lot of energy in the place where we live. And probably that will make a difference. So there's a, a, divide, a gap that we're having here. Because when I asked her a question about, do you know uh, uh, Zebi? Do you know uh, uh, Valeria? Do you know? She said, those were the people that we heard about. So now we are repeating the same thing here. We have a bunch of children here. How do we bridge that gap so that these children will not suffer the fate of what some of us suffered as we go into our, not even to realize days because we're just beginning with the journey. So originality is what Stella really addressed here. And originality comes from when you have the experience yourself. You're not painting pictures, you're not telling stories. You're saying it the way you know it. So with that said, Mbode, California, I just wanted to ask you, are you from Bender? Now you quick, let me go. You went to Bender? I'm going to go to Bender. I'm going to Guy, a head, the don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. So now you did it. Eh, Abu Monye, old Bende. old Bende something. province. Abu, Abu, Okay. And um, Oh, Yamba, Mba, we been real mad. In your mad, in our labor. Okay, so, so, so you definitely know Inyanga logo, or you definitely know Akuma Kalo, the founder of People Village in Virginia. Teacher Akuma. Okay, hmm. what what was the first one? Inyanga logo, one of our greatest broadcasters. Inyanga logo. Wow. Wow, I may know about them, but I don't know them in person. What about teacher Kama No, teacher Kama no. Kalo in my place is like Jones, but Kalo particularly. The law of retributive justice. Kalu bene bene me ya siya siga kele nyango kwa eme halelu ya pusrangin. So that is it. Thank you. It's well. It's well. Thank it's you. well. If you don't know Teacher Kalu, Teacher Akuma, he is the founder of Ibo Village, wow. which is in Virginia. Wow. Thank yes. you, sir. And you see why I say, You see why I say I come here to learn. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ibo Basics. Thank you, uh, Bore. And let's, uh, I think, so I skipped some, or uh, local, I think you were removed. You were next online, so go ahead, local. Okay, um, because I know 
this session was always was supposed to be about review of what happened like, yeah, yeah 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 because some people just mm -hmm. Just took us to one one zanga that we don't understand. So <laughs> let, me, let me bring us back to the review that we're supposed to talk about. <laughs> yes, then. okay. Um. Well, anyway, another question I wanted to well, I'd love to ask anyway was is just um that being yeah complaining about the stuff that we put out there about ourselves, which in, in the, um, talking about Nollywood movies there, because it, there was a point where the what we, the content we were creating was interesting and it was selling to all of us until it got to a point whereby we cannot predict what they were acting and it was like it was too much like when you look at the poster of the actors you can tell the, the storyline and how it will end and believe you me that's how the story will go so uh, we've had that over and over and over and over again we got tired of it and we abandoned the um nollywood so-called nollywood that we once cherished you stand like i told her the one we're watching, the checkmates, the um, um, old legend, OG led on Hollywoods, the um, um, what's it called, um, um, village headmaster, um, new masquerade. They were looker, but they were far, very, very, very rich in um, educating and fulfilling when you watch them. You understand? But these days, you try to watch the type of content we put out these days, despite the technology and the the clean camera, the, the so-called camera they used to, to, to record these things. Still, the kind of content they put out there is something that most, maybe most Nigerians cannot take home. So if they don't have sales or patronage with what they are putting out there, I think what they should do more is the story. That's what we're talking about, telling our own story that we can resonate with. Yeah, we know the action movies, the war movies, is sometimes interesting, but our own is our own. You understand? If we were able to embrace the OG Nollywood kind of content that we are putting out there, I see no reason why we cannot embrace it now. You understand? Now that we need it more, so that we can, the new generation that is coming in can also learn from how things are done in terms of moral values and um, you know positive vibes and all that stuff. But um, what they are putting out out there right now, for me, oh, I don't know if any other person is nowhere near what I expected to be. So. Um, I'll ask her to like, okay, what is she doing to make sure the OG, the content she grew up with that made her fell in love with acting, you understand? What she learned then, what is she doing to make sure that she's also putting that out there for her younger ones to learn from? You know, that's what I would um, love to ask her. Uh, all right. Thank you, Doko. KJ. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rudolph. Um, Dr. No. Back, back, take me backstage, please. So no, somebody uh, but before you go, so that you don't think I'm talking behind you. Uh, you be wish now. Nah. I know that you be okay. wish. Uh, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I know that you professional. be wish now. Um, <laughs> now, I think uh, Stella answered majority of those uh, what you just said, and I, I will, I will uh, cycle back a little bit because I, I was also in the industry. So now, that when you walk into a theater, I want to pick a video, uh, you know, a, a film to play. You you activate what we call a theater. Willing food, dis, uh, willing food disbelief. Okay, suspension of, of your, in you know, willing food suspension of disbelief. In other words, you are telling yourself that you know this is a lie, but you just want to agree that it is, it is true. So that way you can enjoy the movie and not feel like, oh, what they are doing is just normal play. So now, that is for people who were trained and who know how to write those scripts. Well, one of the problems we have always complained about Nigerian. Uh, Nollywood is that the those who read the, the play give away this disbelief even before it gets to that point by either their stupid song you know that they sing to tell you what's going to happen or by even the person the character even portraying himself to tell you what he's going to do in the next thing you see can I, can we, I, we, we had a problem with this we tried you know those of us who were involved we try as much as possible to say look it's not the way to do it it's Look, in my community, for instance, every every December, when you those days, every December when you go, they have a theater that they do at night during the moonlight. You, you know, it starts at about 20th of December to 25th of December. They will play for you all the evil people, what they've done in the community. So if you wanted to know, know what anybody have done in the community, just wait for those nights. You go out there and they have their own local theater tools that come out and perform everybody's, you know, everybody whatever does. evil they've done. Those, especially the people who have done evil. Okay, you will see it there and you see how it ended up. Now, some of those things were also moved into the 
the film industry. Because remember what Stella said, these were local businessmen. And I had the opportunity of working one of them. I, I told the, the, his name is Chief Eze. Okay, Chief Eze is, is an nature guy. They're not any, they don't know anything about the movie, is what you tell them. But they want you to write the story and shoot it the way they want. Because they tell you that they are the executive producer. If you don't want, they'll take their money and go. And if you want to make money, you have to shoot it the way they want that give them their movie. Okay, that is one. Two, I also, I also said on this platform, the Nigerian government regulated the Nollywood industry because they didn't want the people to play evil, corrupt government officials. They didn't want you to go into the military and portray some of the things going on. So there was a narrow, you know, narrow, uh, it was narrowed down to a particular uh, kind of stories you could tell, particular things you can say, and the particular, you know. So even at that, even to make for further, uh, you know, checkmate you, when you finish your, your movie in Nigeria, you take it to the movie censors board. They will now watch it. And they may even tell you, go and move this scene, go and move this scene, go and move this scene before you, you release it. But people who see it, sometimes they say, oh, these people don't know what they're doing. Are they, is this only a story they can write? That's only the story they are allowed to go into, at least for now, until that space is expanded. Again, but what, what, what I, again, I wanted to say to, you know, and I think Stella did a good job um, by explaining exactly how it works there. Some of them are big names, very big, popular in all the, you know, Nigerian home, home, uh, homes, but they have no money to back it up. So that's why you're surprised that someone like Mr. Ibu is sick and can't treat himself. So you wonder, uh -uh, how can somebody this big be asking for this? Because I've seen him all over, played a very important role. And now he has to go in. And, and then we have very selfish government. Very selfish government. Because if our government is, you know, has some sense, people like Mr. Ibu shouldn't be coming to. How much will it cost the government of his state to take care of him? Because in the first place, remember the role of entertainment in the country. It helps to keep your people from all kinds of vices. Because the happy people will not think of crime. and will not think of attacking the, the, your government. So the mere fact that you help to keep that part of social life going, help to stabilize whatever you are doing in your country. Again, like, like we said, one of the problems that the industry has not been able to move is the role of government. Government itself is the, the one holding down the industry because they reduce entertainment to when the governor is going to visit a uh, commission, uh, uh, a roadblock that he just built or a small gutter. Then they will gather all the people and come and dance. And after that, that's what they call culture. That's, that's all the value they attach to it. Beyond sit, getting, you know, technocrats to sit down and, uh, and, and, you know, map out strategies that this can become an industry as big as the ones that are in other nations that are bringing resources to them. But you see, when they go that route, it will take too much, it will take too long, and they may not be in government to enjoy the things, the fallout that will come from it. So it's better for, you know, just throw money there and then continue to do, do their normal government, to, you know, government run. So I, I, I think, basically, if you go out to, to criticize them and not have... Um, this background, you may, you may totally not be in the right. In the right. Um, that's my. Yeah, but, sorry, sorry, but why, why don't you think maybe because of the way the government is doing things right now is because of the way they've, you know, um, disrespect themselves. Because like you can imagine where by like let me use this last election for example now, like Tinubu were contesting or Tinubu were contesting. You see members representing Nollywood. You understand? They say they are going to go and pay courtesy or support, so that support for Tinubu or for Buhari or whatever. Don't you think by that put that them putting themselves in that position will now make the government like no, these people are in my payroll. Without me, they cannot do anything. So look, look, I don't think yeah. that should. Be. I don't think that. I don't think that should be. I don't think because, because being, a, even being an artist does not take away your your freedom yeah, to... because like in america or like uk i don't see act actors and actresses funny the same that's, but that's not true true. local that's the no, point that, i wanted that, to make that's not yeah. correct american actors are very very partisan very partisan yeah i can give you an example the neuro are all democrats yeah sorry majority of american actors they mm. lean towards the democratic party yes and and even even to what you're saying in nigeria Remember that once, because Hopefully. I'm not take away your your own rights to be 
you know, to canvass or vote, be vote to elect to be elected or to you know to elect somebody, you know. So it, it doesn't stop you. But this is a professional job, not like doctor is sitting there, you know. Uh, he's a doctor, and he, he cannot come to speak because his doctor cannot go and you know stand for with Tilibu and support Tilibu if he if he so wish. That is his that is his wish, you know. But I think that the, if 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 that's if we are working with the people who are thinking, we are working with the government that is thinking, the the Nollywood can can attract a lot of these youths into that industry, and we can even go ahead to say this is the modus of operation. Okay, you write it down. For instance, I used to have a theater troupe, and I told them, being an artist does not make you to be irresponsible. So if you come into the troupe and you're not properly dressed, I'll send you out. If you come into the troupe and you know some of the, you know, of course, artists go wild sometimes. You are dating this guy. Okay, you will know that I'm dating this guy tomorrow. And this, I'll call you. I call two of you and say, look, this is the last one I'm giving you. The next time, that's it. Okay, so when you in fact, it, 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 in this way, I told you that it was a law. You can't come there with tattered clothes because you're an artist. Okay? So people behave. So we can write a code for everybody, you know, and that is where we address the societal fallout that we think our youth are getting into. Sorry. Before if, we... I may, if I may interject something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's not go that way. I want to hear from Tone so that we can round up. We can then go. If, if, you, if you give me a second, what. Keje just put on the table. We try to gloss over it. Keje just put on the table originality, styles at night, and stuff like that. And I just said that during my mother's burial ceremony, the women of the village actually shocked me, took me unawares. What they did was they recreated her life right before my eyes, unscripted. If she did judgments, whatever she did, it was like theater. I, I was taken on our ways. If it was today, I probably would have recorded that whole thing completely. And that is where you see the sources of these stories that we are talking about, that when you put them up, it's unscripted. Oh, by the way, I'll leave it there because this is my last trip that I made, and I went with the hunters into the bush, and everything, everything about that journey was unscripted as it unfolded with the kings, with the hunters, I was shocked. So those are some of the things that if we can reach out and have the opportunity to harness the power of those theatrics, you'll be shocked what happens. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to say a word or two. All right, thank you, uh, Ibo Bezix. Uh, Tone. Yeah, hello, everybody, again. Um, yeah, I unfortunately, I missed uh, Stratomascus. Because uh, uh, we finished very, very late. I uh, went to bed about four, got up for um, to go to. Right, Tone, uh, you have to go out oh. and come back in. Uh, we lost you. Okay, yeah. let me see. Have we gone around, Rudolph? I think we yes, did. We yeah, you have something to say? Yes, I wanted to. Uh, two things. Oh. One is um, somebody has said that we, our, our review, is not capturing the essence of today's conversation. That's one. You know, someone said it was about girl child, but that uh, we have uh, somehow tactically thrown away the girl child. That's one. Then the other thing is, um, when Stella was still on, somebody posted something, but I didn't want to disrupt the, uh, you know, the flow. The person said that you should try and get panelists who are intelligent and know about Nigeria so that it can help influence the mindset back home. I took it serious, but not to heart. So my question is back to you. Um, do you think the panelists are very unintelligent and that you need to go sourcing some new... No, you, you see, sometimes... I, listen, we need to be very honest and authentic and candid with ourselves. This is a comment by somebody who is not coming on air, may not come on air, even if the opportunity is given to her. And that, by the way, I want to give thumbs up to a, uh, what's, what's her name? Uh, forefathers, the lady you brought on yesterday at a black beauty. She said something yesterday, people countered it and she came on air to clarify herself. That was courageous. And I, I have respect for that. So somebody's at the panel on those sides and says the people who are on the panel 
are not intelligent enough to be able to help influence the minds back home. So um, you're the one who brought us here, Rudolph. So I don't know if you want to be considered <laughs> that. Work. And, uh, I saw that. I saw no. that. I saw that. I saw that just like you, and and what what you know, I see a lot of things that people write. And do, do well, I, if you you know, if you need my help, you can always say. Uh, okay, Dominic, 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 help me. Yeah. <laughs> I know, see, when you guys put you off on the on the hot seats, and he starts uh, talking around in sectors. <laughs> no, no, I have an answer, easy answer, but oh, okay, I, go ahead. no, no, my answer was simple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, calm down, calm down. My answer was simple. I saw that and I thought the same thing Chim was thinking about, which was, you know, uh, this is an open for I just shared the link again just in case that guy wants or the person wants to come in and, and give us what what we don't have. Um, we don't react to these things, you know. People, I'm not reacting, but I needed to bring it to the floor. <laughs> Very easy to stay out there and think you. It's like watching football. People stay out and tell the players, you know, you, you are not doing. You don't know what you're no, doing. But, but Rudolph, I have a different view. Mm. So, uh, sorry, Alaba, sorry, my brother. Please, we all play draft. I don't know if anybody here hasn't played I, draft. I, I'm good. I will beat you. I, I play draft very well. I don't play uh, chess, Jaybo one, but I play draft very well. Play all of them. I, I also know that when you're playing draft, sometimes the person standing outside of the game sees the moves. And he's right. He sees the he knows the moves that this person makes. He will kill everything. But he's outside of the so that's what I'm saying. I'm actually deferring to that person. You are seeing the moves that can make this program beautiful. Please come on. And I would quietly take a back, back seat, you know, so that you can bring that intelligence that will help us change uh, our mindset back home that's, if, that's my that, perspective the fact that he thought that anything could change the mindset of people at home tells me that he is here to understand the people at home <laughs> it's not easy it's not there's something you can say here that we transform that the way people think you know um there are many platforms out there you can have your own youtube channel and say that thing and the world will transform but i don't think it's true so anyway uh i love her. Go ahead. Uh, I have a wait. Alaba, Tone just came back. I don't know if his internet is going to drop in a few seconds. Can Tone go on? Okay. Yeah, yeah, on that issue that um, Chim raised, the, the the person might not be relevant, but it's important we pay attention to comments. I believe we have intelligent people as uh, panelists and moderators also, but there are times we. We take the discussion to a very childish level. And I think that responsibility, it's on the panelists. You understand? Sometimes the panelists can control the moderator by just simple. I just, I just outline it. You think somebody is doing too much or doing too little. So he verbalize it. Don't did yesterday. Look up he did yesterday. Turn off your camera as a protest. Hold your panelists or moderators accountable the moderator has a tool to hold panelists accountable you mute them or you take them off when this tool is being abused the panelists should also respond by either if they are not allowed to verbalize it they turn off their camera that's a message because these are mature minds extremely intelligent people but if we want to be corny we get to be we get to direct the discussion only where we want it to go. And that's what that person is seeing. And that's what most of the people on the comment section are saying. You keep doing that, you will kill this thing just like they killed the NTA. I keep telling you guys, just like they killed the Nigerian journalists, just like they killed the Nigerian press system. The joy of what we have is that free speech aspect, not somebody lauding it over others in terms of the direction that discussion should go panelists can respond show a little protest show a little backbone you know we don't get the problem with every moderator but we get it with some moderators so panelists are the only one who could curtail this show to go in an intelligent direction they want this thing to go because this is about their country that's all i got to say thank you thank you Alaba. um tone I have breaking news, but I want to turn to talk first before. Yes, I'm back. Thank you, everybody. Hello again, everybody. Um, like I said, I I uh, I missed the earlier uh, broadcast because um, 
I didn't have enough sleep from last night. We finished rather late and it was very interesting. I learned a lot. Um, I must say to uh, Black Beauty, thank you for coming on. I learned a lot about the Boeings and the and the Airbuses as well yesterday. Um, everybody seems to be complaining about forefathers. I don't think, see, listen, what all we just need to understand is each and every one of us have our own character. Forefathers is more poised or he he's, he's, he leans more to an Africanism. But what I'm going no, to just say. To my comment was not about blood forefathers, please. My comment no, no, no. This is no, no. This is me. I didn't hear okay. what you were saying earlier. Okay. But what I'm going just going to say to forefathers that if he could play back uh, the broadcast sometimes and then reinvent himself so that people don't um, start uh, attacking him unnecessarily. I mean, I mean, learn to talk a little bit more. So if you say, for instance, if you're talking thirty percent, maybe you need to drop down ten percent and allow. And, and allow free flow and all that. Alaba is not a troublemaker. He 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 owns his opinion and um, he he says it. Even when he tells you you're being silly or he uh, doesn't mean he's not he's not a disrespect. You know what he's talking about. He's a social critic to the core. You know. So the way I will do say I will tell people don't be silly. It doesn't mean that I'm telling you that you're silly and all that. You know. But we just need to we just need to respect each other's personality um my brother flagship is a very good listener a very keen listener he listens he he scans the room listens to everybody and when he speaks i know that he 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 delivers uh very professionally and now with uh, with a good voice that god has given him you know kj is the media man so let's just um Let's just um, appreciate everybody's uh, unique uh, personality. Olumide will come with his buzz moves and all, you know, and just say it um, uh, as it is. But let's just learn how to appreciate each other. But we shouldn't lose the fact that the purpose of this and uh, this unique opportunity that uh, Dr. Rudolph has given us is to is to um, project our opinion out there so that the people in government will hopefully see it or people that are related to them will hopefully see it and think as hey i think this is what the people are thinking about and it may help to uh to get them to do uh, some sort of a rethink uh what else yeah um the entertainment industry i don't know it i don't I'm, I'm not involved but i um over the years many many years ago i, I used to remember uh Kokura Dawn. why how come we don't have it this were very, this were this, this it was a brilliant brilliant uh, so, but because uh, because we don't realize one thing, these dramas, uh, all these drama, all these productions are tied. They are telling the story of our uh, uh, our cultural heritage. A lot of things I regret I did not ask my dad or discuss with my dad before he passed away. But it's gone. They don't document things. Even we have a group for my for my clan and all that WhatsApp group. We're trying to. We're trying to document stuff and all that, you know, and um, what our forefathers, because it used to be at this thing, we, we, with the Yoruba people and all that, we, we had a fake Ogmo, I mean, Yoruba. You, but right now, look at the the kind of thing that they're producing and all that with the Yoruba movies. It's like, it's so westernized. It's, it's lost that spice, you know. The Yoruba movies used to capture the very essence, the rich culture, the rich uh, cultural heritage of the Yoruba people. How many? Of them, do we have these days? It has been, it has been, um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's. Uh, I don't know what's happened. So, um, it's, it's. Uh, I hope people that are movie makers and all that are here these days should we should all go back to our roots. We have, um, we have the technology to uh, preserve these things for the next one hundred years or two hundred years, so that the generation unborn might come up and. Um, and uh, watch this thing so yeah that's all uh that's all i've got to say for now thank you all right thank you Tuan. uh let me thank you rudolph um i i watched the i watched um your guests from the beginning till the end at the background and uh, stella was fantastic i enjoyed every bit of it and i hope she keeps up a uh, good work um I, I i the reason why it came in was because of yesterday's um incidents from 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 the beginning so the 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 program took a turn when black beauty dropped a bombshell on the comment section and then 
that that comment their forefathers was about to take and courage of the program and that comment was like we were talking about alex um alex Onyema, the air nigeria the um job i mean the issue about the isiagu and how it will benefit or not benefit the system and, and i mean we were, we were talking a lot about it and then when she dropped that comment you know that see the free speech i do agree that free speech should be allowed but it also has you know sometimes it can have un unintended consequences i do agree you know because whether we like it or not you, we can say that pe people watch a lot of important people watch we don't know one who is watching at the background nigerians back at home or in various parts of the world who are influential you understand and if she had if if if, if most of us had wrong with that comment I'm telling you that would, that would bring the guy's business down. You know that message that his, his planes were 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 going to be a catastrophe. You understand? And then when one or two of us saw the comments, we said we we pointed it out because she was pointing to a reference, an important reference at that. Maybe forefathers should realize the importance of what it does being the anchor of the program oh forefathers knows what i'm talking about forefathers ask him and then some of us saw it and we said oh forefathers she's saying that you you are you 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 do have information and then he, he kind of wanted to he didn't see anything i noticed it's quite nice when we were all talking about on yema and giving praises and you understand and he, he, he but he prefers that black music come in to speak for herself and and raise the issue so what I'm trying to say is that sometimes, as an anchor, the way you, you when, see, when you have an op opinion, I, I don't know how to. I mean, I can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. I can't. Like I said, I can't. I can't control what people think or what opinion people hold. We might be adversaries. We might not agree, but it, it shouldn't be a do or die affair. And then maybe, I mean, at some point, we, we, there will be a we, we may not even have a meeting point, but. But when, when your views become extreme, for me, it's really bothersome, especially when those views are not helpful. You understand? When this lady dropped this thing, she, she, she dropped it with a bit of a half truth and half untruth. Until Paul came, we started talking about it and our fears, our concerns. You understand? I'm not saying don't raise issues, don't raise concerns. Until somebody who had a, a bit more information, um flagship added a bit of information based on his own experience and then paul working in the industry came and added more information to the context and that kind of disabused our mind and we all got a picture and we we you know we all agreed that okay maybe safety it is it, done a good thing but safety but if if she had if we had run with what she dropped without necessarily i mean if she hadn't pointed to the fact that our oh, forefather explained to us oh you know about it you have information we would have run with what she and some of us would have gone maybe on a nigerian platform to say you know what this guy you are running you know you know this information can, and it can bring that business down to local piece um 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 own point you know i, I would say you know so this, this free speech should come with a bit of responsibility and then when we went on and on and on and on and on um into the night in fact i had to i had to pansa to be he's not here I told Pansa, Pansa, please. I mean, if you're if you if you're sensible, just get off this platform. When they were talking about Israel and, and the Gaza issue, they were just talking nonsense, nonsense that had nothing that has no corroboration. And that same black beauty that that I commended earlier on was coming and and, and throwing nonsense into the air. Oh, I met somebody in the coffee shop. They're, they're going to take over the South Sa Sa Saharan Africa. They want our resources. They want this. They want this. And some of us were trying to ask questions and it was putting us backstage. Who are those people that want to take over the Sahel, uh, the Sah Sah Saharan, the West African region because of the resources? Tell us those people. We know the Fulanis are, and, 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 and some people are killing people in their villages and in their farms. We know about that. Give us any other one you know. Oh, it's the white. It's the, the, things that don't make sense. It was, it was really shameful. It was shameful. All in the name of Israel Gaza war. 
throwing up things in the air without evidence on this platform. Nice. And Jago, Jago, you too, I'm disappointed in you that you were part of that discourse. Oh, thank you, both. You know, thank you for your disappointment. So disappointed. Yeah, right. I thank you. I thank you for that. Because uh, I don't like to be on the same side as you, generally. Uh, you have to be, but speak truth. <laughs> That's what I'm at. Speak truth. Okay, Olumide, thank you. Um, Jagan. Hey, guys, thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to be with you guys today. Yesterday, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was overly, overly, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, in prison. Um, uh, a discussion was happening yesterday, and there was a free flow. Um, but when certain things, I, I stayed quiet for a lot of the time, but when certain things were said that people just aren't used to hearing or just can't grapple with, then everybody came to the point of of uh, editing and 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 reconstructing how the conversation. All this is very poor, um, and then using really weak arguments. And then at the, when they stopped me from saying what I was saying, they still continue with the argument. So a lot of the hypocrisy that goes on in managing the discussion here is awful. Uh, people don't see it that they, they they would happily say everything that they want to say, but soon they will start editing what people should say very poor very poor in my estimation in any case because you can't take um Olumide and co because you can't take a difference of opinion you just blemish it rubbish and i think that's awful speak if truth we, i'm not saying those let me, let me your, just learn let me just learn speak, mind. speak truth i didn't interrupt you once Olumide, please yeah i didn't interrupt you you spoke freely and i will i should be allowed to say i'm saying that your comments are comments biased on just the way you think but because somebody else doesn't think like you, you just can't handle it. And you not being able to handle a different thought shows the weakness of your intellect. So let me just leave that there. Um, Jagun, Jagun, we are, let's let's be a little bit careful with that because with what, sir? Please don't talk any, any, any more editing. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have uh, Rudolph there, who I believe has the most balanced mind of any um of of uh, the moderators balanced it doesn't get hyped up unnecessarily it doesn't overshout it doesn't only speak it has a most balanced way so if Rudolf ain't speaking i beg you be quiet thank you what i really want to say in terms of today's discussion and the young lady who came on board i didn't watch all of it but i got off voice um and I like to think a lot of her submissions. For me, however, where industry, are, where industry is concerned in Nigeria, uh, my criticism is that she said that we don't have enough stories. I, I didn't like that at all. Because basically Hollywood has taken half our stories already. And for us not to be able to say, look, the way we see this particular thing, let's say the story of Samson, which is a very old epic, in 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 the hollywood terms um uh, a story like uh, a story like samson for example that really is an african story if we understand it but because of our mindset that is so damaged and further damaged we don't tell our stories africa's got a million stories how can you say that we don't have stories hollywood right now uh, sorry the so-called nollywood right now in this planet it's, it boasts the third or second biggest um, of, of the film industries globally. Yet a place like South Korea putting out much more films that get real crossover between what happens in their society and what happens globally. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at us as a worldwide people, people of the Caribbean, people of the Americas, people of Europe, people of Africa, who are black and of African stock generally. This being the case, the amount of stories that a place like Nollywood should be gravitating to, because there is talent out here galore, but we don't know how to operate our talents. We don't know how to operate our industries. With all of the gamut of talent that is supporting the industry, the direction and the production and the, the projection of who it is that we are, who, what is our culture, what is our fantasy? There's not just one line, there's not just one genre 
of film. Um, and for us to have such a wealth of talent, experience, storyline, we've got culture, we've got too much. Uh, and I don't believe we're, we're putting it out there in a organized fashion, which is again, just the African thing. We're not organized as people. We accept a lot of disorganization actually. And in, a, in our acceptance and, and in our failing of being principled in what we do, we just do anything. And whatever comes out of it, fair enough. That's how we behave as a people. But we don't say these things. So in not saying these things, we don't structure ourselves. And then those of us who are capable of structure, um, we have everyone around us tearing us down because they don't understand what we're trying to do. And, and I, I find that these are the, these are the poverty uh, mechanisms that are attached to our culture. Uh, I will just leave it there. All right, thank you, uh, Jagun. Uh, let me start by just make some comments. The first thing is um, to remember, if you can, uh, support uh, our guest by buying her book. I said that it was $25, that's the hard, hard copy. You can get uh, the soft copy for $18, I believe. And there's Kindle version. No, uh, twelve dollars, Rudolph. Twelve ninety nine. Twelve ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. Good. So please support. Uh, is you know some of these things they do or we do. It's not easy, and people um expect a lot from people like her. But you know she needs resources, and this one way you can support. So please, if you if you can, that would be good. Uh, and read it and maybe write a review. It's always important to write us. Uh, after spending a lot of time writing this, they want to hear from readers, and um, that will help. Then the other thing I wanted to say is about contracts. I, I actually, she said something uh, uh, about the reason why pesetas. Somebody asked why pesetas are not part of, um, are not being converted into movies. Um, I don't know how the laws, and one of the things you find out in Nigeria is that if you want to say a particular peseta, oh no, who wrote it? Who owns the right? Uh, how much is it? I know a Nigerian movie maker who wanted a right to a short story by a Nigerian writer, and um, this, this movie maker has been paying $2,000 every year for the option uh, uh, of that short story. Um, the um, New York, uh, not New York, the American standard is that 10% of the budget of the movie will go to the writer of the book, if it's based on a book or, or, or maybe a short story. So, so these are challenges as they face sometimes uh, in terms of uh, making movies. But things are improving, things are going, uh, I think we are moving in the right direction. There was something else you mentioned, and you guys talked about it here, I think KJ and Chim which is that Hollywood, uh, no, Hollywood actors are Democrats mostly, and that they are political. Um, you remember the one in Nigeria is such that, um, you know, Shea Law, he came out in support of Tinubu and the backlash was, was quite a lot. Um, Edoche's son also, I think he came out in support of Tinubu. Um, so it's something that you see across the board. It's not just in America, in, in Nigeria. Um, before you speak, Chim, I know you are eager to say something. I have a, a breaking news, uh, just to calm things down. Um, you know, how many of you know Portable? Portable went to London uh, recently. Who are you laughing now? Now I hear, I don't know whether this is a real story or, or an April Fool, but um, it says that he's going to make a, a song with Cardi B. Did you guys read this story? Portable with Cardi B. You people are laughing at people like that. So in the news I have as breaking news, um, Indaboski finally made it to London. So let's watch. Oh yeah, I saw that. I have never been defeated. Mm -hmm. I have been performing incredible. I have never done anything fake. Prove it to me or ask me, and I will show you more. I am fully loaded. I am fully prepared. And I have so many parts. And many I have never touched. Many I have never used. And I am in London 
for actions, for activities, for demonstration of power. And don't forget, I'm still the lion himself. I'm still the liquid metal. I'm still the war himself. I'm still the fight. And I'm still in the bush. Oh, <laughs> that's sad. Uh, I just well, I, I, I love I love the guy. The guy is a real show man. Someone <laughs> sent it to me and said this is breaking news in Dabowski in London. Finally, he made it. Or Sophia went. Uh, portable went, and um, you know. All right, so <laughs> that's that's all I have here. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Uh, yesterday I was not here because I went to a funeral. Uh, yeah, this is important to me. Um, I went to a funeral. And and a lot of things, um, you know. Sometimes we don't um, we don't remember a lot of things, and and then something makes you to remember. So there was um, this lady uh, Amaka Modebe, um passed away. She happened to be a family friend, but um, she, she also I I I wrote a tribute to her. Um, her median name is Ahmad Amaka Obiofuma. Um, and I didn't know that um, it touched a lot of people because, you know, I may not be, I may not be coordinated what I'm saying now because it's emotional, but um, she also happened to be a writer uh, at Hints Magazine, Hints. Most of you probably read Hints. Um, she wrote a column there, uh, uh, called um, Frank Talks with, with Amaka. Uh, she was the executive chief, I think, executive director at Hints. So it, it reminded a lot of people of those days and people who have contributed to our knowledge, uh, like someone who mentioned past pesetas. We don't tend to remember these people and, and the contribution they made to who we became. Uh, for me, personally, I, I was reading them uh, people like Mel and Ezekiel, and I really wanted to be like them, just to write a column in a paper, and that was all I wanted to be. You know, they influenced me a lot. So um, we lost her, and um, that was why I wasn't here yesterday. I went to the funeral. So there are there are people like that that sometimes, and some of them are old, and there some of them are sick now. The people we used to read in the those who read in the eighties and seventies, um, you know. Um, it's not just the actors that sometimes we see and we hear about them being sick and people needing help. Uh, but in general, I think that as consumers of information, news, whatever we consume, uh, there's that part that we should always think about. So if you have an opportunity and you have the means, like supporting someone like Stella and her book or any of these people who write <laughs> the book, you know, it's a way to say, you know, we appreciate, especially if you're in a position to do that. That's it. That's it from me. Thank you, guys. Thank All you, right. Rudolph. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you, Rudolph. Um, a couple of things I just wanted to raise. Number one is when I made the comment earlier, um, I think it's good if we can stay on topic. We can occasionally digress, but our digression shouldn't take away from the core of what we're talking about. Um, the today's topic was supposed to be about um, the girl child and what the girl child goes through. I, I do appreciate that. And of course, womanhood and, uh, you know, when you become a widow and all those customary things we have back home. We dovetailed into uh, Stella's profession, which is acting, uh, which is not wrong because even the book she has written, you know, her, lays credence towards that direction. However, our review has not particularly, I, I think I've touched a little bit on the girl issue, but lots of our reviews have, have centered more on her profession and the uh, um, the Nollywood part of things. And somebody raised it, which is why I brought that up, so that we could also, but I'm not sure how we got into, and I'm not trying to say the other things anybody has said is not important, but I think sometimes we need to stay on topic. That being said, um, the one question I was going to ask her is, why is it that if uh, Americans do come into America, Nollywood will want to do a version of that kind of thing back home? I, 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 it, it always annoys me when I see 
those readaptations we do in Nollywood following after American movies. So that was one question I wanted to ask her. Then the other thing I wanted to say is, KJ mentioned something about reg regulation um, because I, I just recently saw a poorly done movie and I, and I keep repeating it because somebody said, uh, I said uh, Kunla for Lions movies are poorly done. No, I'm not saying they are poorly done. I'm saying sometimes there's no depth into his movies. I give Kunla for Lions a thumbs up. I give him his flowers. He tries. He's one person who tries to do movies around our independence, around our, uh, you know, our legends, as it were. But I always think his movies don't go deep enough. And I'm not talking about deep enough in a controversial way, the kind of things that KJ said that maybe based off regulation, the regulator will say, take this off, take that off. No, I know what I'm saying when I say his movies don't go deep enough. And my excuse for him is perhaps in the area of um, funding. Maybe he doesn't get enough funding. So whatever funds he has, he manages it within what he's doing. I'm, I'm saying our directors should begin to, if the day somebody wants to do a movie on Fela, please go deep enough. Absolutely. You know, go deep enough so that we will get context. I know we will not cover everything, but there is deep enough that is deep enough. The day we choose to do the story of the uh, Lagos, uh, because I mean, that one, I read social, social studies in primary school was one of my, my most interesting classes. And the fight between Kosoko and Akintola used to be an interesting topic for me whenever the teacher comes to talk about it. So I want to see a movie when they mm. do that that will show me, you know, how, you know, the role of uh, Madame Tinubu and all those things. Do that kind of thing. Go deep enough. Right. That's, well that's said. Kind of, exactly. Those are the kinds of things I'm talking about. So, and then um, I can I, can I just Can I just add to that? I, I beg your pardon. I, I, I thank you for what you said, because, you know, when, you, when we say there are no stories, what you just underlined there in terms of a storyline, and, and how interesting that is, and how pertinent that is to our understanding of how we go forward for what we've already passed. It's intrinsic, and I fear that both, well, all entertainment industries, including our music industry, which is performing extremely well across the board, right over the world, um, there is a lack of depth in our music as well. What do we talk about? It's all a welcoming sound, it's a great beat, but there is no depth to it. And that is my worry about this Afro beat thing, sensation. It, it, it could die and there's nothing to come on top of it. Um, it's about depth. I, I beg your pardon, Jim. I just want to do that. So just before I run off, uh, thank you to uh, Alexander Gomez. I mean, Akintoye, yes, but it's Kosoko and Akintoye I meant. You know, and then I want to end by saying, um, and somebody has made, raised that, and I agree with the person who raised it on the comment section, we might excuse um, our early actors and actresses who were predominantly on the payroll of MT, uh, NTA back in the days when we had the Cockra Dons and the uh, Blazing Masters of this world. But we can't excuse our modern day actors for not taking care of themselves. So it is not the responsibility of government if uh, a certain actor with all the money he's earning doesn't make appropriate plans for himself and he falls ill and can't pay his bills. I agree. Let me just conclude and then you guys can come in. Why I'm saying this is this. I once flew and was at the lounge at the airport. Uh, to God be the glory, my being at the lounge, not that I can't pay for myself, but I, I mean, since I was on a corporate, on a corporate ticket, my organization had paid for me. So I was flying enough to be in the lounge. And then a certain old actor who has been mentioned somewhere here today, so I will not miss his name, walked into that lounge but couldn't pay. So when he was told that he wasn't free, and of course his celebrity status couldn't get him in, he left. I was curious, so I approached the uh, desk and asked the lady, why, why did this person walk away? He said, oh, he doesn't have the money to pay. So... I said, so how much exactly are we talking about? And she told me, and I said, okay, if I paid the money anonymous, you don't tell him, can you go back and bring him in? Because I mean, I was like, how, how can this person I grew up watching not be able to pay for a lounge? Because he, he wanted to come to the lounge, you know? So I said, 
let him in and this is money for his drink and food in case he wants if he doesn't want the food give me back my money but if he says he will he will do all that collect it give him the drink. But don't tell him i'm just going to sit where i am don't tell him don't point me out oh. and she did that and brought him back in yes we got to our destination i had a vehicle to come pick me up and i could notice he was going to go you know bike out of the airport or you know hop into a public at that point of course there was nothing i could do so i could have gone to give him, but i didn't want to embarrass him so i just let it be so my point is those kinds of people i can excuse it because they come from a civil service angle they were the responsibility of the state the state didn't take care of them but the latter latter day ones we have honestly i will empathize but the person has no reason not to be able to take care of themselves and at least i know we may not have a fantastic um uh, medical insurance system back home in Nigeria. I agree, but people still save money for themselves, put away some amount of money, even if the money might not be able to go far in taking care of yourself. So at that, for that, at, coming from that angle, I will not bash the government when it comes to that. The only thing I will say, and I end here, is when you become a journalist, when you're a journalist and you get to public service level, you have been a journalist on the field, and suddenly you become minister use your power to change the policies to make life better for the next set of journalists coming if you are an actor and you get into the role of minister of communication where you can change the regulatory laws so that those coming because you've seen it you've been there you've seen the constraints do that that is what i see happening in the western world you see people who have been on the field the day they get into policy making they know the constraints they go there with the knowledge of those constraints and push for policies and laws that make life better for the people coming underneath. What I don't see is I see an Abikedabiri, and I'm sorry I have to mention the name here, who has been a newscaster, who now appears in, in government and can't do anything and just blends in with the people there. I have no respect for those kinds of people because the days of your field work was all a waste. That's just my submission. Uh, uh, yeah, Rodolfo, I just want to make a point out to what Chima said um, <clears throat> with, with respect to the, to the entertainment industry. I want to say that uh, two things I want to talk about. I want to say that that industry, regardless of the challenges they're facing now, things could be better. The production could be better. Use of technology could be better. The astronauts could be better. This is an industry that I, I mean, before I even left the country in 2010, we know where they came from. This, this is an industry where they've been able to self-regulate and they've been able to improve themselves. It is that industry that has flourished, that is trying to compare and measure themselves with world, world standards. We see our artists going abroad. So I'm not saying things can be better. And these guys have been able to make so much for themselves without relying on government support. Unlike all, all our other, I think our other institutions should take a cue from these guys. We should, we should see how they evolve over time. If our other institutions that should serve the people work the way they should work and not koto to the executive and not koto to, 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 I mean, to, to the powers that be, maybe the system will be the better for it. And with regards to that, it's true. Whatever money they make, they should try to take care of their health. But I think they are a victim themselves, like the rest of us, of the order of the healthcare system, failure of the healthcare system, failure of our other sectors, our institutions in the country. You understand? Um, Dr. Um, Dominic is here. Some of these people die. If you look at all of them, all of these artists that have been dying over the years, they die from chronic medical conditions. These conditions are conditions that need to be managed over time. There is no cure. You understand? But perhaps if they understand this, I, I've seen it, I'm coming. So, so, so perhaps if there's a better education, better understanding, this is the job of the healthcare system. The money they make, they will realize that, you understand? They will realize that that this this is a long time, long, long life management, and they will. But the way the system is structured, it's a rent-seeking system. Everybody just want to grab from each other, make profit from each other. You understand? Without really understanding 
the basics of it, you know, people not understanding where they should go, their rights, how they should allocate resources. Even the rich men back home, you you will find them um, is a supposed supposedly rich person, senator, uh, as a rep member, we're supposed to be well to do and no better, dying from a medical condition that that can be properly managed, and you find a a, a, a person, an average citizen, Daddy. living living to a good lifelong age. You understand? So it's all about it's all about the field of our system. But I think they've done well. I've heard. I I think it's a, it's all about our system as a whole. It's all broken. But these guys, I'll give them kudos. The entertainment industry, the actors, the I mean, some of them they do a film. They gross one fifty million. Like um, that girl who did uh, what's her name? That young lady that contested under PDP, the deputy governor. I forgot her name now. Okay. But, yeah. So so they're doing very well, but. Um, uh, yeah, uh, but like I said, self-regulating, they, they've been able to independently on their, with their own um, uh, talents and, you know, and, and, and the sky is the limit for them. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Olumide. I, I'm happy that Olumide is having the kind of problem he's giving us. So so we're happy that <laughs> it's not just coming here to bother us that he has people who are giving him enough. Thank you, Olumide. Uh, KJ, you are then Dominic. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you also, Chairman Olumide. Um, I, I just want to, you know, put certain things in place. Uh, from what Chim said, why why I make that comment that government should do much more than they're doing, is because in the government circle there's what they call the social security, which is money for you to intervene. Uh, I know that NNPC used to have a fund stretched out for such interventions, but you need to know it to be able to get it. Now. Now, like in, in in when I say that again, for instance, let's let's say let's say somebody is from Abia State, and she's a she's of there for instance of of Lera Urejamobo, okay, who is from that side. It will not cost the government anything to be able to give her a package, knowing that she had worked, even though the system was not set up at that time. It will cost us nothing. It will not even be up to the money they take for. Esther could when they go for their foreign trips to be able to maintain and keep such person in health. It's a social, it's a social uh, 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 function of a government, you know. And and just like again, just like um, I said earlier, I mean you mentioned also, majority of the people who have hold positions of ministers of, of uh, information and even beyond have come from journalists. They, most of them are journalists, okay? But unfortunately, when, when people like us get into such positions, that's when we see and to even do worse to our colleagues. It, take, take, for instance, look at the university system. Do the, they, 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 they professors come from outside of the system? No. But when they get there, it becomes an avenue to deal with their colleagues who are either good for one reason or another had opposed them in college boards and all that. So you, you find difficult they, they even want to, you know, take the investment beyond where they found it, okay? Take it downwards, you know, one step downwards, okay? And, you see, you, you can't even blame government. I, I, for instance, look at all the people. Somebody was mentioning o, Oshoba. Oshoba was one person we all respected his writing. But when he got a position of being, what did he do? He didn't do anything. And that has been the ban of Nigerian society, Okay. The people who make noise, oh, Adam Zoshomole, he was shouting. We, we are all hailing Adam Zoshomole. We loved Adam Zoshomole until he became governor. And then he turned against Labour. The same level on which he climbed to become in that, that, that important position. You know? And so, so coming back to you know, the topic, the girl child is not suffering much more than the boy child in, in Nigeria, if you ask me. Because much as we people are taking advantage of the girl child, so are also people taking advantage of the boy child. The boy child is also been taken care, of, uh, 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 you know, advantage of. Before now, you don't you don't see much of it, but now it's it's, it's everywhere. In fact, I was looking for one video to send to you know to Rudolph some minutes ago. A friend of mine sent it. The woman was seriously beating the husband, beating the daylight out of the husband. You know, and they, they now the question the, the guy was asking me now should we now go and get a lawyers to take her to this thing as a you know, okay? This is happening constantly. And for the male child, but for purpose of emphasis, yes, the girl child has been unfairly treated, all right? But now things have changed. In fact, many men now like to have more women, more girl child than male, male children because they say 
when they make children grow, they forget their parents. Okay, it's the only the women that remember their fathers. So um, things are getting better, and I think that as as, as we progress, you know, it will even get much much better. Thank you. All right, before uh, Dr. Dominic, uh, let me just do this. I think I did it the other time. Uh, I want to get by raising your hands. You know, how many would like to come back as uh, say a girl? How many people here? They are all men. How many of you will want to come back as a girl? Great question. Not me. So. So what do you? Why do you say what, that? What do you mean? So what, that would mean I'm not happy being a man. No, no, it's not that you are not happy. That you don't have any problem coming back as a girl. I don't have a problem coming back as anybody, male or female, black or white, Chinese or Indian or whatever. I don't have a problem with that. Chim, but, it's subject to our own interpretation. Yeah, no, 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 Just make I up I your agree, mind. I don't agree with. I don't agree with Rudolph's angle to that one because <laughs> saying how was allowed to come back. Would mean I'm not happy being a man. Would mean a woman is not happy being a woman. No, I think all Rudolph, before we get too complicated, all Rudolph is asking is if we believe that the sexes and the pains of the sexes are truly balanced, yeah, same. Yeah, then we are we able to come back as the other sex? It's a simple yeah, thing. It's we don't have to complicate it. It's a simple I, I thing, not, man. It's not, uh, Jagu, I'm not complicating yes, any matter. I'm also, I'm also being rational and okay. thinking. See, you know, it's fair. Your point of view is fair, but you, you, me, I think refresh. we must take you from the essence of yeah, what was me, meant. Jagu, not what was me. If I was born a woman, I would be happy coming back as a woman. Okay, okay, Chim, let me rephrase this. If you are given the option, choose. If I was given the option to choose, yeah, I would want to come back as a, a, a General George Washington. It's a man. How about, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's what I'm getting at. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Dummy. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I feel this question was very simple. All you just had to say, oh, you just have to raise your hand or keep your hand down. <laughs> you didn't have to make it, you didn't have to give us a treatise on, <laughs> on the question. Um, I always try to address. Um, the topic whatever topic is being discussed but I, I i always find myself getting sucked back into the whole moderation i don't know hula balu i don't even know what to call it i didn't mean any disrespect jagu all i was pointing out was you talked about someone's you evaluated someone's intellect and i thought that that was going to be a segue for people to start arguing that's why i wanted to sort of point that out and temper that Intellect, no problem. I don't know if I went to intellect too. I, I went with I was speaking strictly about the job, how the job should be done, and who does the job the best. Very, very simple things. I I I I don't think we're able to grasp language sometimes. We just want to take an insult or do some kung fu and judo in language. We don't it's not necessary. Take it from what's meant, take it from what's been said, not from what you the aspect that you are frustrated with so you can't you can't take a different objection you know let, let's just be plain we, we we're here we can we can see what takes place you know um we know where to duff our cap um you know it, it can be these things can be made plain you know where forefathers is concerned there's nobody who would not duff his cap to the stamina the the, the level of um um the, the level of interchange that he has in discussion. I can't sit here and discuss all the things that we discuss as though I'm interested. Somehow, forefathers seems interested in anything. That's a skill in itself. But it doesn't take away from how I see everybody's performance as a moderator. As a moderator, you're supposed to allow a conversation to flow and develop. If you are disturbing that, there's a big issue. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll move on from that. Um, Good. Thank you. So, uh, Rudolph, I the thing about the movie, the movie industry. Um, I feel like I've talked about mm -hmm. the girl child. You know, every once in a while, even other topics, I've always mentioned like, you know, the VVF issue in the north. And quite interesting. I've never seen a movie, but I don't watch Kennywood, so maybe Kennywood may do those type of movies. But I haven't seen those type of movies being being made. But I'm going to pivot a little bit to talking about the movie industry. I think the biggest mistake um, the movie industry um, will do, or maybe is doing, is trying to 
have the government dictate things. The government is there to sort of weigh in on the regulations and provide an enabling environment. Like if you look at some of what Samuel is doing, I'm not particularly a big fan of Samuel, but I will say, you know, when he does stuff, I will always, you know, you know, give him his accolade. He's setting up a good environment in Lagos, creating an enabling environment for the entertainment industry. So that's what you need governments to do. You need government to lay, you know, give you the green grass, you know, sort of, you know, whether it's making, you know, creating tax, you know, tax uh, low havens, where, you know, you can come and build um, like a theater, just like Tyler Perry had, has in, you know, you know, in Atlanta, you know, tell you, okay, if you make this number of movies or whatever, you sell this amount of movies, this is, will give you a tax rebate. So you create an enable environment. You don't need the government to be involved in the nitty gritty of things. Same thing with the healthcare. The healthcare should be managed by the Actors Guild with some level of input or regulation and encouragement from the government. You know, for example, if um if you have if you have an actors guild with 200 nigerian actors and so for every act for every two for every two naira so i keep saying dog for every um five thousand per month that the actor pays into the actors guild um insurance system the government will support it with, with a two with a, let's say 100 naira that is how the government encourages things, right? You don't need the government to weigh into, you know, getting into nitty-gritty because is there anything the government knows how to do well and manage well in Nigeria? Nothing. Look at the oil and look at the refineries. It always has to, the, the, the crux of the issue and managing things should always come from the private sector. And in this in this case, the movie industry. Um, like I said, I was going to ask, Stella about you know what she thought about the way actors are being treated and things like that, which she already um I went back and saw that she already covered. One thing I wanted to point, I'm just I'm just gonna read a small blog. Just read off, allow me to read a small blog because I was looking at into like some medical journals on like cost of uh dialysis and things like that in Nigeria. Because like I mentioned yesterday for those who were here, the the what is killing a lot of Nigerians now is no longer the infectious diseases because we've gotten advances, advancements in medicine. We have antibiotics. What is killing people now is non-communicable diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes. Those are the two major ones. And so what I've noticed in the last few actors that have passed is always, it, the, the, it always has to do with kidney disease, you know, mm. circles back into you know, diabetes. And this is what I found when I was looking at some medical papers. I'm going to read it just a little blurb. It says, despite the high prevalence of end-stage kidney disease in Nigeria, that, that means you are at the level of, at the point whereby your kidney can't filter out the toxins anymore, you need dialysis. Only 2% of these patients receive dialysis, which is most widely available in form of RRT. I'm not going to go into those details. The overarching reason behind this devastatingly low dialysis rates is the out-of-pocket payment of health services in the country. Reports from 2018 revealed that only 3,000 patients in Nigeria were receiving hemodialysis nationwide, right? And 80% of these 3,000 patients do not sustain treatment beyond three months, hmm. resulting in repeated hospitalizations of people that have end-stage kidney disease, poor quality of life, high morbidity, and premature deaths. And I looked also into the cost of dialysis. It cost about 40, as of September last year, 40,000 per dialysis session. And anyone that needs dialysis needs three dialysis sessions a week. So this actor has to pay 120,000 every week. So in a month, do the math. What is 120 times four? That's 480,000. Am I doing it right? 480,000 per month times 12. That runs into the millions. Does the industry have enough money to even make movies? Talk less of paying these actors and actresses. I had someone mention something about these actors and actors aren't take are not really taking care of themselves. Yeah, but do you, you know, you can sort of handle the, the little things, but when it comes to things like this, which is far reaching into how horrible the healthcare system is, they, they can't handle it. The government has to have some level of buy-in into this. Which is why when I when I see once I see some of these actors come out and start begging for money, my my conclusion sadly is always like this person is not going to last more than a few months. And it's Dominic, really, it's Dominic sorry, um, I'm not against them. 
perhaps you misunderstood me, but you've actually just made my point. So I was reading a blog just just past week where uh, the popular bright Wanachi, uh, uh, aka Basket Mouth, was writing a tribute. He was praising um, Davido. I think was it Davido or one of these other musicians? I'm trying to remember which one of uh, that people say he's uh, the guy was proud or whatever. And he was explaining why the guy is not proud. And it came down to the fact that the guy was supposed to come for whiskey. A, 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 a whiskey. Whiskey, sorry. Was supposed to show up at an event and uh, and then couldn't do it. And then offered to pay another person to do it for Bright, to do it for Basket Mouth. And the value of that event was 40 million. He said the guy dropped the money, 40 million cash. Now, why did I tell you that? I'm trying to let you know there is money in that industry. I've been in that industry from the administrative angle. So the point I'm trying to make, unlike in the days of the Cochra dance, this generation of artists, musicians, and, and actors have money. For instance, RMD earns 10,000, uh, 10 million, is it Naira or so? I'm not sure which denomination. But shoot. By any movie, he's the highest grossing Nigerian actor, and they met they showed it. I saw it recently. So, what I'm trying to say is this while I hear you on the government side, and I'm, your points are valid, I'm saying in the same way they all live, we all live in the same country. I mean, Nigeria generally, the same country where there is no health system, the government hasn't involved themselves in infrastructure, so everybody is suffering it. But people who are earning money are making plans just in case you face similar challenges then you're able to take care of yourself. So we're not going to absolve you, who is in the modern day industry, from not from not saying to yourself, hey, this is how it is. I live in Canada. There is free healthcare, but to a limit. So to that limit, I'm able to buy extra insurance for myself just in case. In right. case I find myself incapacitated, then that my money steps in and starts taking care of me. So thank yeah. you. No, no, hold on, hold on, Dominic. There are people who are yet to win. Well, I, sorry, I, sorry, I, I, but I just wanted to clear that, please. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Dominic, you know, I wanted to just 30 seconds. Let me go into something that you pointed out right now. I, and this is something I admire about, about the, the actors and actresses here in the US. And um, what I've noticed, if you notice someone like 50 Cent, he made a couple of musics and a couple of um, songs. And then he stopped really making that much. But a bulk of it is one of the highest grossing um, entertainers in the US because he decided to channel all his money into private investments. And so maybe what's lacking here is financial um, education and knowledge, where these folks, all they're doing is for 20 years is just getting salary from movies rather than realizing they should be di divesting or diversifying their investments so they're able to make sources of income from other places. So they will chop money. your money, Doctor. No, hold on, KJ, KJ, hold, hold on. Your money. Ask me why they will chop your money. Nothing KJ. will happen. KJ, hold on. I, I, it's not fair to love so many people. I, 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 this is. Let me just explain the the structure. It's in my head, and I, I, somehow I can't communicate. I didn't communicate it to you guys. So after the show, we will do um, feedback. You know what we think about the show, which will go anyway. Um, in the case of our guest today, it could be about her career as an actress or a girl child. But then after we've gone round, the expectation is that if there are additional inputs, people will raise their hand and say something. So it looks as if there are people who are talking, some people who are not talking. But I know that everybody will have, probably have something to say. I didn't think that we should go to two rounds and, and we should move on to other discussions. So... But I, I want to give chance to flagship forefathers uh, while well, they've not said anything. Before I come back to you, Alaba, I know you want to say something. You know, uh, and yeah, why it doesn't mean that they don't have anything to say. So, um, and then I see you, Pansat. I can see you. We'll get to you, uh, forefathers. People are just saying some weird stuff in the chat. Yeah, um, thank you um, for <laughs> thank you for your time. See, I think there was some, there's something I wanted to address. Um, you know, uh, Jaguar, I heard what you said. I think, like I said last week, that you do have your moments when you have some, you know, the way you put your words are quite good. Um, I think there is a kind of pull of censorship that I tend to hear to an extent. And I'm sorry to say, Dr. Damages, you are, uh, you do that. And um, 
I think Show did that uh, sometime last week to where if somebody tries to suggest a solution to something, they say, go and do it yourself. One could say what Dr. Dominic, uh, they say Dr. Dominic sorry, did ju said just now, that he should go and do it himself too. So in other words, what that means is that the person should not talk about it. You see what I mean? He, I, I think there's something to be said about that because I noticed that you say that quite often, especially when I say something, you say, oh, um, there's a way to do it, go and do it yourself. And um, she came the other day and said, oh, um, if I say something, if I want to say something and I have a solution, I'll go and do it myself. I'm not going to be here talking about it. There is that element of say, saying people should not talk about something else except they want to do something about it. I thought that was the point of feedback. When people give feedback, the people that are experts in those areas take those feedback on and maybe discard it or use it to better whatever they are doing. So I think we should see it from that point of view instead of just telling people to um, um, go and uh, do it themselves. Because in a way, you're telling them, when you're not ready to do it, don't say anything. So that's my, that's my take on that one. I just thought I should give that friendly um, uh, this thing thought on that uh, this thing, uh, issue. And I also think um, that um, when um, I said something about us branching out, I don't understand why I can't for the life of me see why we have issues with that. We have stories, true. But we have, if there are stories within the, the world, we shouldn't limit ourselves. Why should we limit ourselves? There's no reason why. And I'm, I'm for me, one of the reasons why I'm here is to feel to say some of the things some people don't want to say. We are the most restricted people in terms of movement. We don't move freely like the other parts of the world. That's a massive disadvantage from the point of view of evolution even. Because you don't have, our people don't have as much freedom to do stuff. And somehow we've gotten used to it and accepted it as a way of life. And hence, when I say there are stories out there that people will tell that it's not even theirs at all. They even use their own actors to act something that is not even theirs. They will, they will go into the Middle East and pretend as if they are Middle Eastern people and put blonde hair, blue eyes. Jesus Christ is added by people in, the, in, in Europe. So they do this all the time. And for some reason, we feel like we have to limit ourselves to our own. Why? I don't see any reason why we should respect any, any boundaries at all. So that is all I'm saying. And I really wish that we are more open-minded instead of just pushing back. I know I'm not a very likable individual. So that too makes... Um, uh, my opinion is very, very uh, problematic to get across. But I really beg that people actually take the opinion, not the person, into account, uh, because that's what I do to everyone here. Hence why I don't go about attacking people individually. Because the opinion and the quality of the opinion is what I'm after. And if we talk to each other honestly, we will, become, we will be enriching the viewers better. The, the viewers will be living here enriched with better information every day, and the audience will grow. I think that is the best way to um, for us to do things. And we will not be fighting each other all the time. We are all on the same side, aren't we? Some people think <laughs> we are moles. Some people are um, uh, all kinds of stuff. But we are all on the same side, we like it or not. And we have to find a way to communicate our thoughts honestly, instead of blocking opinion and attacking each other constantly. Thank you. All right, thank you. For By the way, you're likable forefathers. You're, you are you are yeah. very likable. Just you, do, you just don't know it. Yeah, but but let me let me just uh, for further just in case I'm not defending myself. I don't do that. I don't really do that. But I I think it's important to know that apart from what we do here, which is important, which is talking about this, I always channel people, not just you, to think about: Can I do that? Can I contribute in that industry? Can I be involved in that industry in different mm -hmm. ways? I've talked about production. Anybody can be a producer in a movie. You don't have to write a script. You don't have to be an actor. You don't have to be there. But sometimes you'll be surprised what you can bring in. Um, in any problem we have, someone can decide, you know, let me be an, someone that will invest in this. And you never can tell. You might become a passion, something you don't know that you have. Uh, I think thinking in that way will make us, it's more or less trying to get us out of the box. It's easy for me to say, uh, politicians should do this. I, and I've organized a, a, a demonstration. You know, I kept writing articles about what people should do, what should be done. Somebody said to me, why don't you do that? Why are you just complaining? And one day I said, okay, I will organize a demonstration across the world, Nigerians. And I learned a lot from that experience about how difficult it is. So sometimes when people say things, I think about it like, what can I do? Is this something I can do something about? 
If it's something I can do something about, you know, you learn more when you try to do that. But it's always easy to end in this, uh, let them do this, let them do this. Uh, you may have the secrets, the plan that other people do not have. So I'm not, when I say do it, I don't mean you alone. It could be anybody here. It could be anybody watching at home. The person can see this is an opportunity here to, mm -hmm. to do this, and they will do it. I don't know what people have in terms of resources. It may not even be the money. You may have an uncle who is rich, and he said, this is a movie that we should do. And, and I think this will sell. This will even sell in America. African-Americans will watch it, people in the Caribbean. And that's it. That's how it starts. Absolutely. You can hire somebody that will go and write the script. I don't want people to think they are limited by, I'm a computer expert, I'm this, I'm this. No. You can do as many things as you want, you know, in this world today. All right. So that's the, uh, it's not just about you. It's, it's just my frame of mind most of the time. All right. Mm -hmm. Who is next? Uh, the flagship. Uh, you're muted, flagship. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And just to piggyback on that, uh, I think it's it's ideal when we sometimes think that uh, an action requires not not always, but uh, corporate uh, or combined effort. You'd be surprised to see how much one individual can do. And also, if you if you want to be fair to yourself to know that you cannot complete the process you can just initiate it and it could catch like wildfire and spread uh, i've always come from the aspect of education because i believe knowledge is power if you know something you stand a good chance to survive any situation most especially when uh, the situation revolves around what you already have knowledge on or about uh, i think two or three shows ago we were talking about the same thing. And I said, uh, you could reach out to those in your constituents and talk to them. And I, I did myself. And uh, as we speak, uh, I've been able to meet someone who knows someone that is trying to schedule a call between me and the Commission of Education of my local government. So, uh, and, and, and my, my, my joy is that I may not be the guy that will hair out the, uh, the uh, project, uh, handle the management, and onward to completion. I've just initiated the process, and he's willing to talk to me. And if I share my ideas and tell him the prospects and the possibilities and how it's going to benefit the people, perhaps maybe he could take it back to the cabinet and say, hey, this is an idea. Let us work on it. So that's one, one step. I don't have to complete the whole thing. So when I come here and I share an idea, it is to say that, look, this is what can be done. I'm not waiting for everybody to do it. You can start it. You'd be surprised. It could be a little tweet on the guy's Twitter account, and you may be contacted. It could be a conversation with a friend who may know someone that knows someone that can get you there. And, and believe you me, they don't have all the ideas. You have the solution a lot of times to the problems that they confront. And because they are at the forefront of the battle, they don't seem to think solutions all the time. What they do is management. How, how do we manage this? And I've, I've come to find out that solution is not in their mind frame or thought process. That's why they have special advisors and personal assistants. But when you, when you bring this in and it goes to them, they take action. I saw a video of uh, Shei Law. I think it was uh, a Rise News, I believe, uh, an interview that he had. And he mentioned that he's always on social media and his closest access to the government is Shei, the son of uh, uh, Tinubu, the president. And whenever he sees a great idea, he takes a screenshot sends it to him and say, hey, look, I think this would be something good to put in front of your father or whoever you can, and let's do something about it. This is what the people are saying. Here it is. You know, that's how it works. So if I, if I come here and I have this idea and I'm expecting forefathers uh, or Rudolph or Chim or anybody here to listen to me and come to talk to me to implement it, it will die the natural <laughs> with me. So you need to go beyond who for how you can send it out, who it can be beneficial to. 
if if someone has a listening ear that would be willing to take it and run with it, give it to them. Let them take it and run it with it. Even if your name is not on the list of those who implemented it, trust me, you know you are a part of the solution after it's been implemented. Having said that, uh, Dr. Dominic said something that was in my mind and I was going to uh, talk about uh, briefly, and that's financial management well, within the Nigerian movie industry. Uh, the same thing, the entertainment industry, and, and nationwide in all sectors of government. We seem to have a very bad management ethics. We, we really don't know how to. When it comes, it goes. It comes, it goes. I'm talking of finances. You, you hardly find people who sit down and say, okay, I've got this. Let me form a strategy of how I'm going to man manage and invest. I'll take 75% of these resources, use it to take care of everything that I need to take care of, and let me put 25% somewhere else. Lastly, I, I watched a documentary many years ago of Magic Johnson, and uh, um, it was a, one of his teammates in the Lakers. I've forgotten his name now. But it's, it's, it's a, I, I wouldn't call it a sad story, but it, it looked a little bit uh, sorry, in, in my opinion. While Magic Johnson was in, at the Lakers playing with this teammate of his, they were all making big money. But Magic was putting his money into an investment. Today, you and I know he owns movie theaters, Starbucks, and all of that. And this guy that he played ball with is flipping burgers at McDonald's. You can find the, the interview and, and watch it. When they, it was a little documentary. When they brought both of them together, at the end of the documentary, Magic was crying. And his tears was looking at the guy sitting in front of him, talking to him. If only I could have shared with you the education I had, all the knowledge that I had about financial management, perhaps you would not be in this position that you're in today. So that's what one thing we lack in Nigeria. We need to begin to invest more on education, knowledge gaining. If you gain it, no knowledge gain is useless. It can never be lost. It may not be useful now, but there may be a time when it comes handy. So we need to get into that as that that drive to get ourselves in our minds educated on anything and everything, most especially financial management, and in the case of Nigeria, as it is uh, healthcare-wise, well-being. Uh, our people, uh, two things that is ravaging our people right now, which we're trying to figure a way out to get the people to turn their backs on, is the massive influx of alcohol in Nigeria and uh, what do you call it? Uh, gambling, uh, betting. Everybody's, it's the, it's the in thing in Nigeria. There's one form of alcohol or the other that is being pumped into the, the, the society and people are ending up with all these chronic diseases by overdose and it's, it's so crazy when I think about it. So education is a great tool. I always like talk, talking about it I will not stop talking about it from any aspect, education, finance, business, whatever it is. Education is key. We need to start telling our people, whatever information you find, consume it like food. Your brain needs it. It will help you in the long run. Never shy away from it. Go for it. Be aggressive. Get it. It will help you navigate your way through any circumstance or situation you find yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Flagship. Sorry, Flagship, there was something that you mentioned that I just thought it would be something key. Um, and people don't talk about it a lot, but when I, Rudolph knows me when it comes to like music, crit, you know, criticizing music, but I'm not going to go into that. But here's what I wanted to say. Um, there's also something of intellectual property rights and entertainment law in Nigeria, because those are also uh, important things. If you look at the recent, I don't know any of, I don't know if any of you follow like um, pop news in in the U.S. when it comes to music, Taylor Swift, and when she realized she actually doesn't own proper own um, intellectual property uh, rights, master, 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 piece. master, so, master record of uh, exactly, uh, exactly. So what did she do? She, she went back and remastered all of those songs right, right. in her own right, and those songs even had more popularity. Yeah. And she made more money from it because those yeah. are important too. So, because maybe we're not in the industry, we don't know to what extent any of these things affect the 
the remuneration some of these actors get. Maybe there's, you know, they help make the movie, they're supposed to get 50, 60 percent, but they get it out of it. So I think it's a little bit more nuanced. But the entertainment law, intellectual property, that is something that the West, you know, has more when it comes to uh, making the entertainment, entertainment industry flourish. Because remember, when you have those things, people are encouraged to even do more. But when you don't have that, it's just like, you know, things that still remain stagnant. Sorry. <laughs> And, and just to add to that, you know, for, for those of our, our, our folks who have been privileged and opportune to come to the West and study these things, just like our guest a few moments ago said that she's not in the West, she can read about these things and ask questions about them. I think it would be beneficial and helpful if they can take it back home and, and let it be part of their contribution to society, to the rest of their crew who are in the same industry. To, to educate them about this thing so they can do the same, have the same knowledge, privilege, and accesses as they do. Lastly, uh, David Doe, uh, I think I heard uh, two, three years ago, there about had a contract with Benson and uh, is it Benson Records or something like that? Uh, and it, it was amazing to me to see how he was able to get, I mean, this is a rec record label here in the US but was able to walk his way through rights and privileges of all his songs. That he's not just there dropping records that are global hits and staying on the charts for weeks and making a lot of money and he's not taking anything out of it, but was able to learn these laws, get all this information, implement them. There are also many great minds and musicians, actors and so on that are back home who have these great talents, but it can easily just like our resources are taken every day, natural resources, their talents are also sapped. So when they bring them over here to the West and they feature in an album or two with the popular artists here in the West, they're excited about it. Oh, I featured with uh, Drake. But what happens to the returns that you get from that tr song, that track? If it sells for the next 30 years, how much of that is yours? The excitement of being on an album or a track with Drake or Drake being on a track with you is the the exciting thing to them that they don't really think about the business aspect. Are you this. alluding to Thames and that song? There are many of them. Thames, yeah. Thames was one. Uh, uh, I think there's another one now that I heard about that just featured him uh, not too long ago. It's, it's big for them. Oh, yeah, I did this song with this great artist in the U.S. But the benefits of it I don't hear that part in the conversations or the interviews that they have. So more light need to be thrown to them that before you do these things and sign these deals, make sure you look at the contract. If you don't understand it, get a lawyer to review it for you before you, you pen that, uh, put that ink on, on the paper and, and get into any form, formal agreement with them. All right, thank you, Flatship. Um... I will hear from Alaba and then Fansat uh, and I will have to take my leave. Uh, Alaba, go ahead. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, in my head, when we when we talk about uh, problems, issues, and Nigerian situation, artists, and all these things we are talking about, the way things work in my head is like compartmentalization, and uh, it forms brick, just like my glasses brick brick and then you put them all together you have a glasses you know boxes here box there you know that's how things work in my head and um as we are talking about these issues today one yoruba proverb again hits me like a rock that is um on town je lagba on lagba kilaoshi what we will eat in old age is the elder of what we will do today what we will eat at old age is the elder of what we will do today. As Nigerians, whether we are artists, civil servants, soldiers, politicians, or whatever we are, sometimes we don't put ourselves in a, we don't view ourselves in the holistic view and then say, what is the big picture? And that happens that, you know, we are a people whom God has blessed. 
individually and also collectively, but yet we are struggling. Now, there are some people within the Nigerian context, yes, they have, Nigerian has not favored them, but yet they've been blessed in such a way that um, they've been hit with money, like uh, the wave of Babbage, you know, like a wave of water. And over time, that same wave would wash away. So what has been missing in us is that there are roles for government, which is always failing. And then there are roles for individuals, and then there are roles for groups, association. Let's take the artist conversation that we are talking about today. The, the Nigerian artists or guild of actors or whatever name they call themselves, they have to be the ones, Rita did mention a few of their obstacles, but I'm not usually interested in obstacles, but more of solution. They are the ones who have to be at the forefront of their own struggles. First of all, the first thing they have to do is to form an organization. They have issues of contract, issues of uh, copyright, issues of maintaining whatever uh, artistic rights they have to their, to their production. So they have to come up with this. And coming up with this because of the type of education we received, from elementary to high school, they are not prepared for the world they find themselves. So in situation like that, when we find ourselves in situation like that, we invest, you have to invest as a body, let's say Nigerian Guild of Actors. They have to invest, Let's put money aside, invest in research and say, what are the other parts of the world doing in terms of uh, let the internet laws, copyright laws, these, still get ideas. So they can come forward and say these ideas, they will use it to establish a goalpost for themselves and say, this is where we want to be. And then be able to mark their protest. Now, that's step one for them in that compartment as a group of Guild of Actors. Then the second step is that, okay, once they've established their goalpost, they now look at the whole holistic political scenario and say, which party, organization, or political movement is going to help us achieve this goal? A second group. Okay, there's none that is viable of all this political lineup. What should be our influence to make sure our goals are established? Because whether they like it or not, without rules, laws, and order, no matter how much they make, none of them going to be able to keep it. No matter how much they put in, they will not be able to yield the return in retirement if they don't have a stable political order. So it is in their interest at the moment they are making that money to use either half or a quarter or 5% of that money they are making to invest in where they want to be down the line. If it means supporting an, under, uh, an organization on the ground that will take them there, they need to do it. If they means hiring the best of lawyers, whatever they need to do. If they means canvassing vote for those who they think will take them there, they have to do it. This is what goes on in developed world. That's why you have lobby groups, lobby organizations. I'm not saying they're not doing it. I know they have obstacles, but there's that, where do I fit? in the whole question that Nigerians don't ask. And Nigerians, clearly those close to the corridors of power, are only focused on the now. There's no that 100 years plan, that 200 years plan, that plan down the line. You not only do it individually, you do it as a group, you do it collectively, then you do it as a unit, as a professional body. Not just the artists that are doing this, the journalists are not doing this. The medical doctors, which some of you are, are doctors here, are not doing this. My uncle was a top-notch member of the Nigerian Medical Association. I know how that man tried so hard while they're doing a bachelor to try. That man tried so hard. Dr. Uh, Dr. Cornell retired, Cornell Ferreira, tried so hard, keep going to Abuja to talk to Abacha to see how we can get a national healthcare system insurance. I don't know how that ended, 
before he himself ran for president with the Mobas on Jordan in the first era. You understand? So we don't have this long-term plan as organization, and I'm talking professional organization, the law organization, the artist organization, the drama organization, the journalist organization. But the meet, little mega they give them by politicians, you know, those little things they sprinkle on the ground because of the survival, it still goes to that same proverb. They have to survive. Survival can make people do a lot of crazy things. You understand? They take those mega sacrificing the future. There's a lot of people I know who had worked as soldiers can get their pension today. Who worked at NEPA, uncles I know, can get their pension. Who worked at NTA, NNPC, civil servant, can get their pension because nobody is investing in the future. Everything is about the now. Yes, the government has to do its part, but they are not. So the, poly, the body policy of your organization, of your professional body, has a role in itself. And they might not be educated to know what they need to do. This is why they have to invest in research. The medical association has to set up a body to go say, go to Russia, go find out what they are doing there. Go to Belgium, go to France, go to um, uh, USA, go to Saudi Arabia. What are they doing there that we can copy, that we can push collectively to make life better for us when we get old? The problem of Nigeria and the reason it's like this is because everybody's scrambling to survive. But the biggest scramble, according to that Yoruba proverb, is the scramble for what things would be when you get old. Kill out je lagba, un lagba, kill out she. What we will eat at old age is the elder brother of what you will do now. Until that gets into the head of every educated Nigerians, not these miseducated fools that run things. They have millions. They are building castles on the moon. Like Okoje, uh, Okoje, I'm not Okoje, I'm one of Nigerian singers sang, uh, which way Nigeria, I can't remember the man's name. Of you know, Okosu, you know, which way Nigeria, you know, they're they, they building castles on the moon, but there's no roads that lead to their castle. There's no electricity in their castle, but everybody has a castle in Abuja. They had a castle in Lagos. Those same people with castle, will end up selling their castle to feed their old age if they are not careful. So Nigerians got to... Ah, that's the third time the bell has rung. Oh, I don't know if you heard it at all, my brother. That was the third time the bell rang. The third time, bro. You're just going over and over. You're not trying to truncate your talk. You're just giving us a monologue of God knows what. Ah, uh, Alaba, thank you so much. We appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Uh, the only thing is that I planned, to, I was going to leave at six. I had to leave. But um, so um, I will, just to put, before Pansar speaks, um, uh, there's something um, that I think maybe we should also, when I leave, you guys can discuss. Uh, I have it written down. The this General Vasil of uh, Redeemed Christian Church uh, said that um, they produce over 200,000 pastors in Nigeria. 200,000 pastors in Nigeria. And he also said, this is in today's paper, that uh, I am nothing, that's I'm putting him, but don't mock my God. So uh, I'm saying this to say that things we talk about on this platform and other platforms all over the world, people is, the message is getting across, you know, um, to some of the uh, people who we address them to. So um he's saying that it's okay for you to criticize me but uh don't mock my god uh, so we start our criticism next week on that don't mock my god you know but <laughs> for now we are they're hearing our message all right i'll hear pansat and then i'll take my leave jagun i know you want to speak but let's hear from pansat he hasn't said anything uh since then ed welcome go ahead pansat yeah uh thank you rudolph uh, and the fellow uh, panelists those in the comment section and uh, Nigeria and Africans as a whole. Of course, my beloved dear friends. Let me say that, um, Rudolph, I can thank and excuse you right now. You don't have to 
Well, uh -huh. We appreciate the hard work you put in. You don't have to be here for what I have to say uh -huh. because you're not going to do anything about it anyway. So uh, I, I thank you. And well, I you know, yesterday I got some reports. You know, I'm going to watch most of the what happened yesterday. But uh, you were mentioned that you were a very good good guy yesterday. That um... <clears throat> I'm, I'm usually not measured in that currency. I'm not measured in good or bad. <laughs> I'm measured in true or false. Oh, okay. Let okay. me say that um, a moderator. It's um, the way we, I understand it. Now, because we're, we're not, we're, we, uh, people have said a lot of good things about Forefather Two Niger, who are not Two Niger here. He, he lasts long, he's here on time, he's um, hardly scratched, no matter what we said about him. So he has a lot of virtues. Now, the vice is now we have to balance it out, okay? Because we're not here to play. Obviously, in good times, I probably won't be here. I have a lot of things to be doing. So we're here on a serious business. Uh, so I want to get a clarification. If two Niger is a moderator, the way I understand a moderator to be someone who controls and leads a discussion between a group of people, but does not take part, doesn't take any side in, in, that, in it, in the discussion, right? Uh, I see him as somebody who used to participate. He has to contribute. Um, and that's okay because he has his ubiquitous on the internet, as you know. I, I was in another platform maybe a few days ago, and he was a moderator over there. And over there, he was a moderator. So here, all I'm trying to get, uh, if he's a timekeeper, fine. He could time people in, time them out, and uh, uh, and uh, enforce policy, uh, your policy on the platform, right? That's all that that should be what it is for, and then he could participate in the debate and have an opinion. We cannot be in a platform where we are debating, trying to get to a solution, recommendation, like you just said, people listening to us back home, and then you're gonna have some super panelist, a participant who has an is on our bash, and this increases with time, you know. Second law of thermodynamics, entropy increases with time. I, I, every day, he gets more wink. He's even challenging you now. I believe you've, uh, you, you, you give him that admonishment that uh, uh, somebody in the comment section, Ennely, hit him, jabbed him with it, and say, hey, look, what Rudolph is trying to tell you is right now, go, you know, uh, be quiet or go open your own. Uh, and then he he used it. He was awked by that, and he was complaining to you, right? But the the way I was here when forefathers when he's going to address you, Doctor Damages, and he was respectful because you are the super, you you are the host, and he's just helping, albeit without pay, right? So you get what you pay for, right, Rudolph? So he he now he's almost about to challenge you on this platform, which makes us nervous because at least I put up with it and I, and I say, okay, I'm gonna call Rudolph and I threaten him and say, look, if you don't if you don't behave yourself as a, uh, on this stand, I'm gonna call Rudolph. But now if if he's got you whooped, then what am I supposed, what am I gonna do? Where's my hope on this stand? So I'm saying that if he's, I said, I want his, let, let's get the role because yesterday he was quite, Clear, but he did a good job overall because when you're a dictator, you do a good job. Okay, democracy is messy. If somebody's got that ability to determine true or false, move people in the back, like Olumide, for example. No matter how, uh, what an irritant he may be to you, right? Olumide is a very, very, very important person on this platform. We don't want his butt nuts cut off. We don't want his knees cut off because if you throw him in the back a few times, that it's uh, that is unacceptable to me. I don't agree with him all the time, but uh, you know he he's here to tell the truth. So I'm what am I? Why am I talking to you? Um, and not him. And I'm happy you decided to stay. Uh, obviously, I was being courteous when I said I, I would thank and excuse you. Uh, I was hoping you get a lesson when you're driving, but what I'm saying is that, and I will end it with this so I could talk about more important things. I'm saying that it's not 
forefathers. It's you. Right? The same problem we have on this platform is the problem we have back home. Leadership. Now, maybe I should have emailed this uh, thing to um, flagship to say, because that's a way flagship talks, right? I don't talk that way. Therefore, I don't get the uh, the gravitas, the respect I'm supposed to get out of it because he's going to take his time and talk about leadership. So the leadership, if you're going to make forefathers a leader here, he has to display those qualities of a, a leader. Uh, just like we talk back home. Somebody's going to be agile. Obviously, he's agile and, and capable. And a lot of people have said that. But he, he has to have a com the communication skills that it takes to do this job here. Uh, be able to resolve the conflicts that... Uh, people look at conflict as a war. Conflict doesn't mean war. Conflict means I'm thinking this and you're thinking that. And then we have a conflict because we're not thinking about the same thing. So what we don't need then is a super uh, uh, pan a panelist who's going to dip his thumbs on that scale. right? And then if you don't do what he says, then he's going to throw that person in the back. Or even threaten it, like he, he does in my case, to shut me up. So I'm saying that you have to resolve it because you see you every time you take on advisement, but constantly people tell you. People tell you, and I have a brother like you who tries to be the gentleman or somebody maybe, especially when we're growing up, if you insult my sister, then I'm going to punch you in the nose, right? But he doesn't do that. He, he would try to uh, find, he'd be a gentleman, which is what you're doing here, to be a gentleman. But I want you to address uh, forefathers back there. We're not just saying this so we could talk. We're saying this so we could then resolve it and then move into that debate. I was here. But let me uh, um, go to, I'm gonna, I was going to talk about the megalomaniac quality here. But I, I don't think he deserves that today. He, he, he's not all bad, right? I was going to talk about, uh, even talking about him, he's so narcissistic, obviously, and pompous that, you talk about him, even if you're insulting him, he doesn't care. And I gotta be honest with you, uh, I, a case like that when I was growing up, I like to engage him because they would say, You're gonna kill me today, and then I'm gonna kill you today. He, he, no matter what you say about forefathers, he doesn't care, he doesn't get upset. You, you look at his face right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, but it's on you, it's not him. He wants us to talk about him, even if we're here abusing him or complaining about him, that makes him happy, and that. I'm going to leave that out. He, he doesn't deserve that today. Let me end up. There's a guest that we had yesterday, and I got to tell you, it's a beautiful uh, black beauty. It's her name, actually, Black Beauty. It just wasn't, uh, it's not a noun. He, she, she was a, a black beauty. But uh, unfortunately, by, we had a, lot of, a long interaction, even when overboard into after our sessions. But I, I won't, I'll let what happens in after hour, staying after hour. I'm not going to reveal it here. But but, but then, but I, I have to summarize it. I'm forefathers here. If I say the wrong thing. <clears throat> now, she came here and she was um, talking about um, Nigerian airline, a bunch of Nigerian. Okay, okay. Um, Pansan, yeah. sorry, I have to take my leave, but I, I had a little bit about it. I watched that episode, what happened yesterday, and then maybe next week we can talk about it. Thank okay, very well. Thank you everybody that, that is here. I appreciate all of you. Uh, Ed, right. thank you. I'm sorry, but I will, I will catch up what you said. Exero, thank you. I will see you guys next week. Now, remember, not next week, this Saturday. Remember, uh, Peter B is coming, um, but I will let you know whether it's Saturday or Sunday. All right? Thank you, everybody. Please, I must, I must be on that panel. Happy to be panel. Thank you for coming, John, and everybody that supported us. All right, see you guys. Mm. Um, Rudolph, okay. have a great, have a great day, and make sure you have gas in your in your tank. You know the eclipse is coming, so you don't want to be caught. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wow. Well. Okay, the dictatorship has started now. All right. Yeah, all these people that like to call me dictator. All, all these people that like to call me dictator. I don't know where. They, they are the ones that don't let me talk. They will tell me I'm a dictator. Uh, Hitler. Yeah, don't, don't mind, don't they like to call me JRB and all kinds of names. Um, okay, who is that's next? What I, uh, is that's, it, that's why I came to the panel. That's why I came yeah, to the panel. Come and right. call me dictator reach, again. You don't reach uh, you Stalin not, and Hitler level. Just, I don't know. Can you well, I, I'm not, I, I never said I was going to be neutral. I have to side with this side that I believe has more evidence on your side. That is but my even own. When, even thing. when you do that, let it go and don't just 
every okay, quarter, every fine. Now, I hear that one. I hear that one. I will try to. As you see, I, I might be doing what Shu does because Shu, what he does is uh, he will have his time to talk, you know, 30 minutes or more. Then when he's done, then he lets everybody talk. But my by mine, I come in and I don't have my opinion. I've not said anything, just like you all, that you will say I should shut up. You know, it doesn't seem fair. No. So I have to no, share my opinion. When people are not on the panel, before you let people in. But when we are here, what, what are you telling us that we don't know this? Yeah, but that's the thing now. Now, okay, everybody's here already. I can't kick everybody out and let me just talk throughout. But you've minutes. spoken ever since the show, since you took it over, you've been the one talking, right? I, I, well, whose time, where are you getting that time that you've been talking with right now? You, you know how many minutes you've been it's talking? It's just two minutes. It's not even two minutes. What am it's I 100%, though. It's 100%. Yeah, let, 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 I think it's, uh, it's 100% uh, of your time Ed. so far. Can I, can I let Ed go or who is who's next? All right, thank Ed. you. Um, um, Ed, I please go ahead. Going by the progression, it should be me. Mm. Um, yeah, um, it's been a very um, interesting conversation that we've had today. And I I mean, I came from church and I just ate and went to sleep out. I've really loved to hear from Stella Damascus because she was one of my favorite actresses um, growing up. Um, but the point that's been made, and, and I think everybody has actually uh, spoken on that, the issue of thinking futuristically whenever we, we are having a career. Um, I think that's very important because as much as we want to think of ourselves as a capitalist society, we tend to actually think the government is responsible for every single thing in our lives, especially when we're in a position where we think we're, we're bringing pride mm -hmm. to the nation. So for example, if you're an athlete um, and you have that platform to represent the country, you think that yes, in years to come, the government should take care of you. Um, I actually used to think that way until I, you know, maybe I moved outside the country and I found that, you know, athletes, when um, when they represent the nation, um, they, it's it's a thing of pride. It's a thing of pride that, and it's also a, a kind of, they, they've been given a platform. And so that platform could be the beginning of, you know, probably connections to, a football club or some sort of other sports club, which actually pays them, pays their bills, right? And so from there, they start planning, you know, as flagship said, the whole issue of um, what happened with the Lakers player, um, the Lakers, the Lakers uh, basketballer. But in Nigeria, it's more like, you know, oh, I, I have served the nation, which I'm not going to take away from that fact. You have, but the nation also gave you a platform. So it's left for you to now build off that platform. Um, and I'm not, I'm not here to actually absolve the government of everything that has to do with how they deal with um, our entertainment, our larger entertainment industry. Because for example, we've had cases where the government does not even, you know, take care of the equipment needs of athletes. And I'm sorry, I'm using athletes because um, I'm trying to just expand the discussion. Um, Ferrer actually started the expansion by talking about um, other types of players, doctors, lawyers, and all of that, and people who could actually be in professional guilds. But I, I'm, part I'm particularly interested in, 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 in athletics, right? Not like I'm an athlete. So I, I think th there's needs to for, for athletes to start planning. And, you know, for example, we have most of our, let's use football, which is like our national sport. Most of them actually start off in the lower ranks of um of of, of our foot of, of football maybe he starts representing the under 15 and then they, they climb up the ladder and so at the end of the day they get into clubs maybe in europe or other parts of the world you know it, those people should not expect that in the next 20 years it did not take very good care of themselves and maybe take good care of their um of their finances um you know they can just use the, the fact that they wore the green white green as a means to um, obtain help from the government. You know, there's 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 the need for personal agency in determining your future. Is what I'm trying to say. And I'm not saying that the government should not help. We know the government does not. To be honest, anybody that depends on the government for anything in the country, you're really wasting your time. <laughs> so, so when you say personal agency, do you say like in the, like in the case of Nollywood, does within the Nollywood industry, they should support? You know, take into the future for their actors or the individuals. Yes, yes, and I think and I think Ferrer has made that point um, 
very well. The need for them, the guides to actually educate them, you know, because some of them actually do not, they actually think this stream of income is going to come for a lifetime, you know, but mm. in the real term, if you're not in the civil service, you have less than 35 years to really work. If you're a footballer, you pick at 40. If you're an actor or an actress, you, you're going to pick maybe, you, except you, if you're you, a footballer, you do what? You're going to you pick at the age of 40. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, you're going to like, but I mean, your career is going to end at the age of 40. Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you for not seeing that. Uh, but, but but my point is really, you know, those people who are more in the entertainment um, field, they, te they, te they tend to have a very short career. In, mm. And they have to plan within that short career for more than half of their lives. Because yeah. let's say if your life starts at 20, 25 in whatever um, entertainment, um, you know, job you mm. do, <laughs> you're going to do that for like maybe 10, 15 years. You're a footballer you, at 40, except you're going to start playing in Saudi Arabia. But even then, there's, you know, you can't defeat father time, right? So mm. at some point, you're going to exit the stage. So, but then at 40 is when your life really starts. So most. So to do these things then, because <clears throat> in Nigeria, they tend to be very difficult to organize things because i remember the other day there was a musician a footballer that was online begging for i think he's a known footballer that played for nigeria mm -hmm. begging for help i don't know whether he got it uh, for medication and stuff like that and um it's like what i'm saying is like all these footballers that go overseas that make a lot of money one would think they would have thought about it and created a kind of a health kind of uh, insurance system for yes. footballers at home as a way of giving back and then the same thing could be said. I don't know what our do our Nollywood actresses um, go overseas like footballers do. I don't know whether they do that. But if they don't, maybe they can do something like that to, to protect their own, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So so here is where the government has a fault. You know, for example, um, if you were to do, let's say, if you were to be an insurance provider, right, um, you need to be able to like, you like say leverage on the economy itself, right? To be able to provide returns, should people, um, should, should you have indemnity for a particular um, problem that comes up with whether a player or a company, you know, and that's where it's, it's really a problem because if, if you look at our national economy, for example, it's not really robust enough to, to, to kind of, um, you know, incentivize insurance companies. You know, so that's where the government has its role. The government also has a role in terms of um, providing the, the necessary sporting infrastructure or maybe even entertainment infrastructure. You know, there are some mm -hmm. things you want to shoot a movie in Nigeria. Of course, you want to have a very good location, right? So all those kind of things, those are some helps that the government might, might, might you know, even the, the, the cost of actually producing transportation, all of these things, they could be reduced if you just had good roads. For example, if you had electricity, you don't have to power um, your your production using generator. You know, so all those those are more or less structural issues that the government should take care of. You know, but when it comes to personal decisions of of those involved, like you're an actor, you're a footballer, I think there is a need for personal agency in that case. Uh, you you should probably start investing. We see people like Kano Wank or um, people like. Okocha, they, they, to, to an extent, they're still able to, um, you know, they're still doing well. Um, again, you, you remember the story of Okocha when he invest, I think he had some money in Savannah Bank. And he took the intervention of the government to get that money back. So those kind of issues might also come up. And that's why I'm saying that that's where our national, not just national infrastructure, uh, we have some structural issues in Nigeria that also needs to be done, done properly. But I haven't said that there is need for personal agency, don't just think because you wore the green, white, green, then you become, um, you know, um, you come become beholden to the government for the rest of your life. You know, that the, 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 the state is also helping you by giving you that platform because that's where you're going to get your contract into Europe, for example, from. KJ has something. Yeah, go ahead, KJ. So my question would be to Ed, what makes the governor who serves the state for four years to not be entitled for pension from the people's cause. If you have served the nation of Nigeria as a footballer 
for more than 10 years and you're not entitled to anything what makes the governor who or the the yeah the governor who just had a four-year term in government living on government laches living on government rent driving government cars and yes. then and after that you still have entitlement of that for the rest of your life what will you call that and secondly mm -hmm. i want to oh, i'm coming sir and then secondly i just said this and i'll, I'll move Secondly, I, I, I am happy you mentioned the case of J.J. Okocha, who is well known in Nigeria, and what happened to him. I sitting here for one, I can tell you, without even having to look at anything, every investment I made in Nigeria all have gone to zero. Yeah, true. I and, and I have not been able to hold anyone mm -hmm. accountable. In true. fact, to let to even know the last one of them that is even more painful to me is a is a guy we all grew up with. We grew up together. Okay, who owned that pension scheme? I'm sorry, that a uh, financial, uh, you know, management uh, scheme. Everything he used it to buy a Homer for himself and driving around with mobile police, you know, chasing him around in another Homer. And so nobody could do anything. The police couldn't do anything. My friends were even, uh, uh, you know, army colonels couldn't do anything. They couldn't do anything. The guy told us to our face, "We can't do nothing." Okay, now this, I'm just telling you my own personal experience. All the all of them, from asset savings to whatever you call it, all of them is zero, zero, okay, and nobody comes to your help. Now this is something that's happening to these artists. They have witnessed these things. Now we, the ones that I mentioned, I'm glad you mentioned the um, Kano Wanko. They didn't invest in that that uh, geographical location we're talking about. Yes, yes. They all they invested outside. If you invest out. Outside, you have some confidence that even if something happens, you can recover something. But in our own, I'm telling you the truth, the, you don't even have anybody to run to. The court will not help you. The police will not help you. Nobody helps you. Well, you, you, can I, you, can I, what can if I you invest response? in the property? Yeah, please go ahead. Um, your points are very, very legit. You know, and, and you know what I said was that where governments could play a role is in the structural issues. So those structural issues includes legal issues right because we're looking at the system so where the law does not pro, um, protect the citizens that's an issue and that's where government comes into play also the fact that the economy you know um you're talking about recouping your investments if the economy is not robust you're not going to recoup your investment so i, I mean for me i'm really I, you know people my friends they always call me like oh we have this nice business idea in nigeria i have to really evaluate it Am I going to get return on investment with the way, with even looking at the currency fluctuation? You know, so those those points you raise, they are legit. But I'm just trying to say that we should also think of the fact that when you are called to play, for, I'm, I'm using football. There are some sports where you can only probably represent your country. You don't have um, an opportunity to probably leverage the, the um, your participation nationally in terms of maybe playing for a club or something like that. But for, for something like football, for example, if you play for your nation, that could give you an opportunity to also play, you know, and you will, you're you going to even probably earn more money from, you know, some other clubs, some other private um, um, engagements. So I'm saying in that case, you should be able to think of your future and not just say yes, because I don't see someone like a LeBron James, even though he represents the United States, I don't see him, you know, like holding on to the government of the United States years from now to say, um, you guys didn't take care of me. Because people would even like, you You had the opportunity to take care of yourself. You know, that's that's where I have a particular issue, where we're just making the government the end or and be all. I, I, I do not necessarily agree with that. Thank you. Um, have you, are you done? I wanted to add on the second question he asked about governor's entitlement i think that's just pure stealing so, sorry sorry it's, it's a it's a zero stone please um yeah yeah i'm not just adding to what you know you have two please, questions let, let, you, let you answer that question because let i really me answer that question please i believe there's a feedback from somewhere i believe that the governors giving themselves pension for serving four years is nothing but stealing from the people's coffers and these are the type of laws we're trying to fight and change like ot did in his states now you know these are the types of abuses 
that these corrupt politicians have brought on our country, on our people. When you are a governor, you're still a civil servant. You're just the head civil servant. You should still be subject to civil service rules of engagement and remuneration. So you shouldn't create a separate rule for yourself. That's nothing but legislative stealing, using the pen to steal from the people. And these are the things we should be politically aware as a people, educate our people to make sure that this change in future and down the line. This is, should not be accepted. Thank you. Um, Exero, thank you for joining us. Um, you did come to say yeah. something about the, about the lady that was here, you know, and uh, everything she said. Please go ahead. So we're talking about uh, uh Obiageli. Yes. Stella Damasus, uh, right? Yeah, yes, Damasus. Yeah. I was at the panel, I was on the panel. Um I wanted to, you know, because I was at work, so I couldn't really I didn't want to stress it, but I wanted to also ask her a particular question about how she dealt with the family of her deceased husband. Because I remember then, I think there were stories flying out. I think the family was also a powerful family and they were fighting her in, on the media. She couldn't stand them, you know, because they were very powerful. And uh, it was just, it was just, a, you know, she, I think she was more silent, but I'm quite happy that she took that step to relocate. And the seller, the masses I see today looks like a person who has collected herself, finally found clarity of mind and is able to now you know pen pen things into a book you know so um i think we should we should we should really look at what we do to women really in our in our in our space in nigeria when a man is on our life the wife what they go through the culture puts them to series of unspeakable things. You wash dead bodies and you give them water to drink. They shave their hair, they sit on the floor, they do all manner of things. And the worst part is a husband's family comes and start to take properties. What are what, what, what happens to the children? Some of us say we have we be like, ah no, these things can never happen in my family. You would, th you would think it's like that until it happens close to you. Because when these things start happening, the family is also entrapped in this culture because if they don't perform these rituals, the whole town will ostracize them. We say this family did not complete the ritual. The, you will see the kind of, you know, the way the way they will treat you in the, in the, in the whole village, that you'll be forced to now start like she said, the hidden hand. I don't know who said that. There's a hidden hand that pushes families to treat women this way. Because the, the family the family that these women are married into don't want to look bad in their village. It's the family elder, the, fam the elders, the, the village elders, those umunas. You know, we're pushing families to treat women like this. It is unacceptable in today's world, but how many of us can stand up to these things and say, this is wrong? How many of us can stand up in our family meetings and say, look, we are not going to treat our you know, like this? How many can of I us can stand up? Can I just add something for you to consider? Um, yes. You see, when that unfairness you are describing is happening, the mm -hmm. there is another set of women that gain from it. What I've seen in Nigeria is that when a woman joins a family there is this kind of dynamics that goes on that they put their family first that they are in first for some reason they, they, they are, the family they came from seems to be a second story for them while the men exactly. hang around that dynamic so that resource they are taking from one woman robbing from one woman they are taking it to another woman mm -hmm. you see that's that's mm -hmm. that's what i thought you should consider mm -hmm. A lot of us here, a lot of us here have, we have a battle waiting for us in front because we have sisters. We have mothers. That it is only when things happen to, in the family that you now start seeing uncles 
most of us here will now travel back and to go and fight our own wars because it's a battle waiting for all of us. We are, we are enlightened and we think it's unacceptable. But we have uncles. You think you just escaped from that place and came here and they are living a better life and they are there. And you, you think you have, you, have, you have not escaped anything. You have battles waiting for you. You will still go there to face them when they start treating your sister or your auntie or your mother. This can this way. You know, me, I cannot accept it. I know that I can never accept it. I know what I would do. So these are things that well, I'm waiting also, for. Also, also, do you think... They, 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 let, let, let me ask you again. Do you think the culture is also part of the culture that a kind of... is a way of discouraging um, wives from, from a kind of taking their partners out? Just like, like when a king... Uh, is in uh, is in office in many African thrones. When they pass, the people that are around them are also sacrificed with them uh, in many different thrones. So, in other words, it's a kind of culture that built from a kind of discouraging people that are close to um, any a major, like a man, not to do away with the man somehow. I, it, do you think that is what is going on there? Because it, it because it, it, this thing didn't evolve for no reason. There's a reason why it evolved for quite a long time and it stayed. And um, do you think that is playing a role too? I don't think that is it. You know, if you look deeply into our cultures, our mothers wanted to stay in the family. They don't want to leave. Do, do, most of us here, we have two parents' family. Our, par our parents don't divorce. I don't know if you noticed. That is, what do you think? Why do you think a lot of European people... I say, I say, no, say what you know. Don't say most people here. Yeah, they have two parents. Most Many people most here, I'm, telling, I'm saying most people here because I know we are Nigerians and we know the truth. So no, it's not, I'm not talking no. about European life. I'm talking about Nigeria. It's a few. I'm talking about Nigeria. I'm talking about Nigeria. It's a few Many, that many. Come from it's just referring to the panel. It's just referring to the panel. I, I mean, it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm referring to the okay. panel. And even if, if you want to go percentage wise, most Nigerians come from two parent homes because we are not we are not of that generation mm -hmm. that started doing. The, the Western breakup, divorce thing. I don't know. If you want to argue, you can argue from here to tomorrow. No, most no, you're us, correct. If I can say, yeah, you are, you of, ask, you, let me ask. Wait, wait, can what, I, can what I just mean, say to you, Exedo? Wait, what do you mean to Peretum? Please explain, I, please. What do you no, mean? no, no, don't explain. That's very simple. Brothers. Very simple. Uh, my brother, Exedo. Let him, let him explain now. Don't worry now. Ask what do you mean you don't know what two parent family is? What are you complicating? Business. I'm asking. Let him explain to me. Which means it's not my business, bro. Bro, honestly, you're coming okay. at this from a point of view of pure argument, not knowledge seeking. If you don't understand what the brother is saying, if you don't understand what the brother is saying, that most Nigerians of our of our generation were born of two parents, and they those parents didn't divorce. If you can't understand that, then it'd be like saying you know be Niger. Be like, say, be outsider. <laughs> so be quiet. Now, all I'm trying to yeah, say to my man, all I'm trying to say to my man is that Nigeria yeah, is full we, 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 of we, we, different we, we, tribes. Yeah. So what you yeah. speak about is not commonly in our tribe. Your brothers are not like that. Ibos are like yeah, that. Are like but your brothers are not like that. So I'll <laughs> allow you to continue. So, and you know, most most families, no matter what the women go through, they stay. And that is why we have two parent homes. It is a taboo <clears throat> for women. It's still a taboo in that this is our own parents' generation for a woman to live. And that is why they are, we are from two parent homes because our mothers, no matter how our fathers treat them, most fathers are very, you know, they are very, most, they are behave, they are characters. Most, some fathers, I mean, some fathers are characters, not most, some. I know my father is a gentleman, but you know, some fathers are characters. Yeah, but do yeah, you yeah, make fight of experience? Me. Sorry, you're thinking of experience. Okay, you are not, don't yeah, judge me. I come be, from a good We way. have to choose our so, words a bit more carefully. So, so some, some, some characters, there are some characters. We come from, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from a middle class family. So I've, I've seen people from, from different homes. I have friends. That's what I'm saying. I've seen people who have issues. Their fathers are problems, but their mothers still fight. <laughs> to control and maintain that family. And that is why a lot of us come from two parents' families. So you cannot yes, tell, you yes, cannot no, say let, me let me ask a question. Yes, mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. This, what you are yes. saying now, right? Does is this come up within the, maybe the man is rich, or is this come up with that, where the, where the man is poor? 
Is it common? Is it common all around? Because I feel that this most issue I was talking about always having an issue when a, a guy that comes from a very rich family, right? Yeah, and eh? you see now the contradiction. But it poor? generally, generally, our culture, no matter what, even if you are rich or poor, the percentage wise, a general the generality of Nigerians come from two parent families. And it is just no, common I, I, knowledge. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about that to parents' family. I'm talking about when a when, when a woman has lost the when husband. When a widow is being mistreated. Yeah, when being mistreated. Yeah, okay. 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 That most okay. Of the, this happened mostly within the, the rich family. family. The family of the man is very rich. You understand me? And they're not accusing mm. the woman most of the time that he's, she's responsible, right? But within the, the mm. low class family. It happens, Blackstone, for both, even the poor. I, I know of an instance. It, of... it happens both ways because I don't know any of us here who doesn't have a land. Yeah, no, I'm not asking a question. I'm not asking a question. That's what I'm coming to. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to answer you. I'm coming to answer you. Let me answer you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you guys understand that we are unique. We are a unique generation, and I don't know if the upcoming, our children's children, I don't know if they, they are going to have the kind of privileges we have. I don't know any of us here who doesn't have a family land in the village. And you see, so there's always something at stake. There's always something at stake. If you are not rich, you still have land in the village. That land is at stake when the woman is the only person surviving. And you start seeing family members stealing, taking from her. There's always something to take, you know? So, but uh, what I'm trying to answer is for father's question that is it because they are trying to prevent the women who on alive their men? I think I don't think it's so because it is the women who sustain these homes. So, what, a generality of women trying to sustain a home, trying to keep a family united, cannot be on alive in their men. Oh, okay, you but understand? hold on. But what you are seeing could it be as a result of the tradition in the first place? Because if you look at the West, where women have the option of stepping out easily, they do step out quite easily. And yeah. so you can see a situation by the context of Africa where uh, there's a lot of, you know, difficulty. There's, the resources are not that readily available. You can start seeing a situation whereby, even as it is right now, so women still do that to their husbands. So it's not, human beings have frailties. We have problems. Men have their issues. Women have their issues. So... Yeah. There's a reason why it existed for so long. That's what I'm trying getting at. That maybe that's that's why. Because I've seen in families where women, when they leave the family, they are approachable. Like this is your family, you know, but you are acting as if it's not yours anymore. Completely gone to the other, to their no, husband's no, family. No, I think, I think you are, you have to understand something about Nigeria. I don't know if I'm the only one who understands this. Why, why, why? <laughs> Nigerian Nigerian women don't like to leave their home. It is a general knowledge now. It's a thing of shame. They still have that that thing in them. After everybody has celebrated your marriage, you know, it is the last resort before a woman leaves the home. It's a last resort that they know that okay, this thing cannot. This my life is at stake here, and it is not even this generation, this this time that they are now encouraging women to leave before you get on a life. You know, otherwise. After you look at the way we they, they buy us will be the way they show off in their weddings. So, so, it, 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 so mm -hmm. as us indirectly now, you are preaching that whatever happens, any, any little quarrel, you must pack at this and leave a husband home, go back to practice. no, I'm not preaching, I'm just saying that we are no, the no, 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 I'm trying to reply. Can, 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 can I bring a different example? Guys, can I can I bring a different example? Can I give a different example than the one Xero has given? No, Jago, I just can't. You can't. I have to speak. So you can't. Sorry. Okay. You want to say something, Loco? Okay. Oh. After Loco, then no, no, no. maybe uh, 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 They will come back no, to you. If, uh, if Xero let... is finished, let me know. Uh, -uh. Uh, you wanted to say something about Xero, or you want to have your turn? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Now, see, if he's finished, I want to come in there. But if he's finished, I want to. I want him to finish first. Okay. okay so... to... Sorry. Sorry, Xero. Sorry. Hold on, Xero. It's because Jack wanted to add something to it. That's what I will. I, I okay. all I wanted to do is be very, very quick, which is to say that. Within the Yoruba culture, male and female inherit land and monies equally. And in this, my great uncle who brought us to this country, he suffered death by his second wife. His first wife could not give birth and everybody was pushing him to make sure he leaves a legacy because of his wealth. So. 
unfortunately, his first wife, was, which was a brilliant woman, could not give birth. He then divorced and married a very younger woman. She gave birth. Um, and then the next minute he was dead and she took all of the property, the property that she could not run. It was my side of the family that were running the business. So th these things happen in different ways. We, 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 when, when we're talking about women in that Nigeria, we have to understand that there are yeah, cultural aspects yeah. to women in Nigeria. Well, you don't get too tired. Maybe I've got something to say uh, local. You know, you, yeah, you, thank know, you. you, thank you don't you. have to get too stressed. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, think, I think there are, there are exceptional cases. And of course, when you talk about relationships, relationships are different, you know, but a general, the generality of the people of our parents' generation are together. My father and my mother are still together. And I know that a lot of us here, we still have our parents together. Is it bad that they're still together? No, or that this is going to no, no, no. I'm just, that's what I'm, that, I'm just highlighting <laughs> the points. This is your problem, man. <laughs> That's not what he's saying. What, so, what I'm saying ahead. in a nutshell is that, in a nutshell, what I'm saying, bro, because you said from what you said, uh, for father, so you get the true, the true picture. And then lastly, I'm happy that that uh, our guest today is now in a space where she can talk, and no family member of the late husband can just because the noise from that family, her late, her late family, her late husband's family, they are very powerful. They are very popular big family they they were able to drown her voice but now she can speak from a safe space and she's able to write a book i'm so happy for that woman and she's still looking beautiful i, I, I mean she was busy writing on the comment section man stay beautiful i was, I was like hey <laughs> this woman you know i'm so happy for her because i know that this space is a space where she can try you know so i i guess that is what i i want to say so everybody can just uh, chip in their own I must say, um, Exero, you, you, you are more than you look like. I must say, um, sometimes some of the people you know, the things you know, surprise me. Um, the local, please go ahead. Um, yeah, um, I will say I didn't hear your question, but judging from what Exero was talking about, um, I guess these things, right? I want to say it's a culture. Yeah, it may say it's a culture, but it's not the real culture. Um, this thing happens to only when there's poverty in the family. And when I mean poverty in the family, poverty in the extended family, whereby that extended family that is poor is looking up to one of their sons that is rich, that they've been trying to make from. And they've been seeing that woman as obstacle. So when the man dies right now, it will not seem as if like it's a revenge. One, or they will use it as this is an opportunity to deal with her, I start demanding, I start claiming, I start all that stuff. It started long time ago, not because it's a culture. Some greedy and poor family start, oh, some greedy, greedy and poor uncles started it because of the financial gains, and other women or other siblings of the deceased man saw opportunity to make money, and they started it. Then when it happens to another of their colleague, of their relative, they'll say, oh, and this was how we did it in the last barrier. And the last time somebody, okay, yeah, then we also do the same thing. Before you know, it starts repeating, repeating, repeating itself, spread across, go over generations, generations, they now believe it's a culture. I've seen situations whereby the person who, who died was rich, the siblings, the uncles, the family at large, they were all rich, and nobody was asking to bring anything. Nobody has nobody told the woman that hey um, she's the, you should bring um goods to come and tell us that your husband died. You sh your children should go and bring um uh, whatever that your husband died. No, nobody said that. All what they were doing, the husband died, oh, it's a breadwinner. What if a certain family were doing? They were bringing money, uh, food, stuff, and other stuff to support the family. You know, those are also cultures in Nigeria, but you say that is a culture, but these are people who like no, this is how things are supposed to be done because the breadwinner is no more. Now, we as the same family is supposed to support the family by bringing to them, not taking. Mm. We've seen Especially whereby, when, there's, when there are children involved. Involved. But we've seen whereby when the breadwinner um, 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 transits, uh, transits, we see a standing family to say, oh, we'll sit, the kindred, we'll sit and expect the children to go and, go and kill one goat. You understand? The breadwinner is no more. You are supposed to be thinking of, oh, how are we going to support the family of our late brother? Instead, you're not thinking of how to take from them 
by asking them to come and kill one goat. You stand to come and tell the family that hey, their brother is dead. You ask them to bring Shinab to come and use it to tell to tell them. Then by the time you are not inviting them for dates or burial or you know, whatever, you still have to come and kill another goat to invite the family because you're not only telling one, one family, you are telling the whole family they have family meeting. You go and tell them at the same time so that all of them will come here. Invite them, you are killing. So all this bringing, 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 this started from poor families. But over time, since it happened to one family, one uncle, one relative, oh, this was how it was done in the other time, in the other village. Oh, let's do it. Let's continue. So that's how it has begun. Then the, the idea of barbing hair, it's, 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 I think that is, we will see that as punishment. It's just haircut. It's a culture. You understand? We make it's just haircut. Yeah, it's haircut. <laughs> it's, haircut. It's, haircut. It's, haircut. it's a culture. Make her not be attractive now to the next no, man. No, 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 no. Hold on. Listen to me. Hold on. Now, what do you mean unattractive? Ugbore came here. I mean, is she ugly? It's not no, no, I'm saying that the, uh, no, I, the point no, is no, that maybe that's it, how they understood it then. No, 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 no. Like I said, you, just like... It, 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 in Hong Kong. No, time, just, like when, the when somebody, yeah. after that, just like when somebody dies or when you see somebody in hairs carrying the cross pass, what do they do? Men with cap, they remove their cap. Why are they removing the cap? You understand? It's just like... Yeah. I'm, I'm just it's, so, not, it's, not, it's not going against the person's will. Sorry to interrupt you. Sorry? Is not going against the person's will? No, that's what I'm saying. Now, because look, 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 is okay, but you wouldn't remove your cap. You understand? Because you are doing that smart of And if if you are not removing your cap, the key, word is voluntary. Cap, the key word is voluntary. No, no, hold on. That's what hold on. If a culture says, look, it's mark of honor. Because mm. I'll tell you this, right? Because of the fact that we are looking at men as husbands, men are lord of the house, lord of the family. They are seen as lord. I remember some family call it hey, my lord. My lord, in the early days, not even because he's a, he's a king. Oh, my lord, my lord, ah, uh, my lord. So we say my my so we say my, my owner. I've seen in Nigeria. You get my point. So if you say oh, haircut, the, it's not only the woman I do. Sometimes the family, the whole the whole children, the extended families. Oh, somebody died in our family in our village. All the women are asked to cut their hair. They're not even blood. They're not even like blood related. It's just family. It's just like honor. You understand that I can say okay, but saying to like um drinking of um um the uh, beating the uh, of um, um the the body water what do you call it that sometimes is it's is it also comes from a a a wicked uncle relative. <laughs> who, 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 no, no. See, I let me. I'm giving you the history. This is wow, happening. dead body it's water. It's wicked bad, uncle yeah. who went to like who was going to bribe like the chief priest to say um yes if you know you did know you're innocent. Come and drink this dead body water to prove your innocence. You understand? But you can't you just can't accuse my, somebody. You can't my friend now, so few years back. You understand? So it's it's so it's, it's not it because like like is um 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 it's a culture. It's a, it's a cultural thing. Somebody started yeah. it to punish Juma to say, okay, you have to drink this um water for your innocence. But it started, you understand, from a family who is using the the influence of a a, a chief priest. You understand? Well, all, 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 all culture starts from someone. Mm. No, that's what, that's what I'm saying. So when you say, so when you say, no, this culture, yeah, like it's not like it's the real culture. The bad one started from somebody, somebody that is greedy. But they may have used yes. it to cut yes. a few uh, husband killers, though. Sorry, you know, as they, you, yeah, have they yeah, used yeah. it to so cut I'm a few husband there. killers. Hold on, I'm, hold on. I'm going there. Mm. I'm going there. This idea of water drinking is because if in so many cases or few cases uh, or even one case has worked before. Against the woman, to like after drinking the water, she confessed and this and that. So people will not complain that. Uh -huh, what if she yeah. refused to drink? If she refused to drink, what happens? No, you're not supposed to ask her to drink. Okay, so but what if they do that? and she refused? No, that's what, hold on. It's just like you now say, if you refuse to kill good for your uncle to tell your uncle that your father is late, what will happen? You give me a point. It's just the same thing. So if they, you, they, they will consider the violation now, and they will find no, out why why you didn't kill the goat. That's why I say that's, that's where the poverty comes in. You start. It's not a violation. It's not a culture because look, I have lost my dad. Nobody came to the house to say, "Come on, do this. Come on, do this. Come on, do this. Come on, do this. You understand? The only thing you ask is, "Okay, yes, you do it for the first son. Uh, you come because you are the next who is, who is taking the mantle or this and that. You you come and do just like it's like entertainment of your kindred." You understand? There's no same tradition to say if you don't do it, you must die, this and that. You understand? Because your father also partic partic partook in it. So it's like a ritual or just like, just, just like a ritual, but it's not, it's not, it's a ritual, but it's not a ritual. Like something that they do, because you understand? So your own son will still do it to like that. Then maybe they will say the first grandson, just like that. They will, there's nothing spiritual or traditional about it. It's like 
you must do it or not. If you don't have, you can call one or two uncles or like uncle, ah, you know, they, they don't have money for that. Okay, what do you have? Okay, don't worry. Just bring whatever you have. Don't worry. I speak on your behalf. Um, it's our sons, our brother. There's mm. nothing to do. If you just say that, please just take this on on his behalf. They're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. We need that. Let's pray for you. You understand? Mm. If it's not, it's not there. There's nothing anybody can do. That's true. But the idea of drinking bad water, that one is totally out of it. Like I said, it started from when one uncle, you understand, or when one uncle uh, tipped um, or bribed a, um, um, a chief priest to accuse her or to do this to her. And I say you must drink it, but it at work one time, and everybody just capitalized on it that you must do it. But majority of the time, they are used to punish the woman. Mm. Majority of the time, they are used to punish the woman because the woman maybe they saw that she stood as a stooge from the siblings not to eat from their but, but the, but the question is, what did she refuse? Though I did ask that question. And, 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 and by the way, by the way, sorry to hear that you've lost your uh, father. I'm sure everybody. I, know, I, said, I, I, lost your father. Yeah. I, know, I, I thought you said you lost your father. I said, I said, we'll have a for you. Not new today. Yeah. I'm not. You're sharing it for the first time. Now, why? I'm just trying to say sorry to hear that. I'm saying sorry to hear that. So that I forget that you still have a father. Everybody has a father, but when somebody mentions it, everybody. Um, black story. You're probably about that. How many years? You can't assume <laughs> that. You can't just assume no. that. No, yeah. I, just, I, just, I just see some people face that is almost that, that face look almost look like grandfather's face. So I mean, like, 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 like. So, no, oh, for father, no, my dad. Hey, so, like I said, so like I said, so these are all these how all this um nonsense culture started. Like I said, I've also seen a situation whereby um a poor um extended family let me let me let me let me, let me say they are poor right somebody died and the family gathered to like extended family which is the kindred to like in the family house to say um yeah um uh, you are coming here to come and tell us that um your your father died uh, don't you know that you will have not be attending family meeting this and that your father when your father was even alive he wasn't even attended the way it was this it was that so they were trying to like you know punish the children luckily for the children one of them or two of them, a few of them are very rich. So as we arguing, 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 this like, the first son sat with them. Oh, please, okay, 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 okay. Then sent the English younger brother to go to the market and go and charter 22 bars of yam and 20 20 to 20 goods. He goes for that matter, 20 matured one, put it in a van in a truck. As we were holding the meeting, they came and they were like, uh, oh sorry, um, yeah. I said them just come and greet you guys with um, this gift of water, just to tell you that my father died. Immediately, the meat is scattered. These people that were gathering, thinking how they will punish this guy, you just have to take whatever they want to take from him. One just came back, I'm um, sorry, okay. Um, oh, you say one goat and one yam is for me. Okay, okay, yeah. Just uh, sorry, I have one or another cousin. Their family died, though. Um, come here, come here. He just took his own share and left them there. This was the person that was saying, uh, No, uh, your father was this, your father was that, your father was whatever was that. When they saw it, it's not time for them, for them to share um, whatever they brought for them to give. All of them took their own one by one and left. That was how the, the meeting ended. Nobody asked them anything again. So you can uh, see this most times are most Hold on, local. Back... Hold on, local. Sorry? There's somebody on the backstage. Uh, George, can you um you know turn your light on, please? I can't see it clearly so that you can I can put you on stage. Uh, sorry, please go ahead, local. Yeah. So, like what I'm saying, trying to say in general is like most of these things come from poor family, poor mentality. You understand? The, the poor, poor, poor family, greed, greedy uncles, greedy aunties, yeah, greedy aunties also... to say sorry. Someone also called out of wickedness. And that you see, look, if you if you are rich, you can't be wicked if you are rich. You only want your poor when you be wicked. You understand? Because on a very good day, if you are rich, you know before you became rich, your mentality is towards business, how to make money and whatever. So you can't have that space to be wicked to somebody else just because the person is not loyal or just uh, because the person is a family person. There's no time for that. Trust me. Wickedness or not, no rich and poor. If you are wicked, no, no, no. Wicked, when it right? comes to family, hold on. No, when it comes to family. Mm. You understand? Wickedness can be outside business or maybe just to put the best. When it comes to family and tradition, you have nothing to like. When you are rich, you will not come to like. Okay, no, you must do just to punish somebody that's poor. Your family, no, 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 no. For person that mm. did not do you anything, no. It's only mostly when the family, the family is poor. And check when the rich person do not come to the family, they just meet him. Um, um, uncle, uncle, and you need to come to family eh? and just please and just give us money so that you just eh? nobody can shout. You understand? Because they know if he's rich, you can't just talk to him anyhow. 
he just come yeah. drop his money and leave. So anyway, um, from our experience, I oh, um, 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 sorry, sorry, um, the Blackstone, but me, you know, whenever you need to say anything, just raise your hand so that you can be able to speak. Um, all right, um, look, uh, if you are done, then um, it's the uh, the Blackstone. Um, so what do you think so far about you know the lady? Let and, them, let them continue. Huh? Which lady? The lady that came on, you know, um, Stella Damasos about movie industry, the girl child. I yeah. think right now we're talking about, you know, how, you know, uh, when somebody passes on the way the women are treated. If you have other things to say about, you know, the girl child in Africa, you can go ahead. Well, thank you. Um, anyway, I didn't list, I didn't um, listen to her. It was when she was uh, taking some questions. That's when I came in to listen to her actually. Uh, I thank God for her life, and um, so I don't. I don't know so much about her, though. I know that uh, she was an actress in, in in Hollywood. So, and um, I have nothing so much to say, right? But about was about the Nigerian um, industry. You know, somebody like I was saying that um, the truth is this, right? When we are complaining that the Nigerian government or government is not actually supporting the Nollywood industry, let's not forget that this is a, a business venture, right? A business venture is you are responsible. Nigeria is a, a capitalist system of government or called a, a capitalist system of uh, economy. If you are a private venture, you have to take care, you have to prepare and plan for yourself, right? And we know that. In Nigeria, when all these people just maybe just shoot one film or they have start making them, they go about buying expensive uh, houses, living in expensive areas and everything, they forget that tomorrow is very important, right? And they should also, they also forget that they are not going to trend all that throughout for many years. So they forget to plan ahead and prepare for the future. So when anything struck them, then they begin to call for help, right? So that's also one of the problems. It's, as I would call it an individual problem. The good ones that, I, that, I, that are wise, they plan ahead, prepare for the future, right? Also in sport, Right, so uh, Ed was big reference to sport and everything. Yes, also it's, it's sport. You serve your nation, right? But you also do your own personal thing as an athlete or as a footballer, right? Every footballer playing abroad receive good money. Some of them even receive more than the governor. Normally, salary of a governor they receive higher. Right. So, but if you cannot plan for yourself, you have nobody to plan when you fall into issue, when you have issues. Right, so there are many ways you can plan for yourself. There are many ways you can plan for the future. There are many ways you can put money aside and investment and so on and so forth. But when we do not, when they do not put those things to consideration, then you expect somebody to come from nowhere when you have problems and need to support you. It doesn't happen because we are responsible for our own self. Right, if you play for Nigeria in in in. in a, in the competition, just at that moment, Nigeria will they will respond to you, they will they will uh, reward you as well and so forth. After that, you are left alone. You are, you are your own business, you are your own. It happens else all over the world. No country says that they are taking care of their, of their athletes 24-7 or paying their salary. No, you have contract, you sign contracts, you have uh advertisements, contracts, so on and so forth. So you get more money from there. So then you have to plan for yourself. So that is that's that's all that, all that. So we should always put the blame on the government. Not only blame, but one thing I so see that the laws that actually regulate these things are not being put in place or are not being implemented. So we have issues in implementing our laws. We have issues in putting our laws into work. That's where we had comes the the fault of the government in all these uh, industries. Right. So, like uh, what she was saying, the the Atos Gate or what they call it. What laws are they put in place? How do, even their regulation and how do they implement it? How do they now actually um, check and balance 
the industry, right? The, I think there are another one at the, we, we are hearing so many corruptions in this industry. The the president or the leader were corrupt, they were partying with them, suiting themselves and so on and so forth. These are the issues of Nigeria because when you get to that um, position of leadership, you find it just turning around automatically. What you used to see when the person was not there, you be able to see it. Because now the money is not in, in charge or in control of the money, right? And now in law. So this is why some of the things doesn't work. So we have to put all these things into consideration before we start actually putting all the blames on the government. The government cannot take off everybody. Nigeria is, is, Nigeria is not a, a socialist state. We are not socialists. So that's what we want to understand. So everybody that is doing business, you are doing it on your own. It is a for survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest. So I think what the government can do, or not even the government, even the people in this industry, in sports, entertainment, and so on and so forth, they have to come up and have a very robust uh, implementations of the laws that are guiding them, right? And uh, she was saying that uh, she has found an uh, uh, um, organization that try to bring all the actors together. They can be able to save. Uh, if you remember, you save, you keep money aside, so on and so forth. And uh, so something like that, you know. It is a good thing. But what I have an issue with in Nigeria is the implementations of these things. Implementations of things are very, very important. And when we cannot implement very simple, easy things, so are we going to be able to implement a complex things? Generally, so don't you think that generally private, when people do things privately in Nigeria, it tends to be more solid? Like, instead of relying on government. How many private things have you seen that is more solid in Nigeria? Dangote. Dangote. <laughs> Zed it back. Uh, does, uh, does Dangote deal with, deal with, deal with okay, the, the, Dangote is not in, in the field of entertainment. It's, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a business. It does its own thing, right? Mm. But when you are dealing with um numbers of people coming together, it becomes more more complicated because we, like like this platform, we we, we hardly agree on anything. Mm. Have you? So sometimes we argue, 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 mm -hmm. and we, we we sort ourselves and everything. We have agree on anything. That's that's an issue. So these are private business, understand me, right? Mm -hmm. And these are not actually dealing with uh, what I saw, like the uh, okay. Let's, for example, the insurance companies in Nigeria. Are you sure that if you put your money or save money, maybe in a life insurance in Nigeria, at the end you will get that money? That's a good question. You see, I think the insurance companies is highly, highly underrated, the, the importance of insurance companies in Nigeria. Maybe instead of Nigerian government focusing too much on banks, they should look in that direction a bit more because it affects so many things. The way we behave, it affects the way we behave even because if you know you are covered, you are more likely to take risks. You are more likely to focus on your profession. Can you imagine a Nigerian footballer in Nigeria playing football? He doesn't want to break his leg. And it, it means the way he plays, he will be a little bit more careful because he he's not going to go out with all the flair. And if you don't go out with all your flair, how do you grow? I can so I can so assure you that if he knows that he has an insurance, that if he breaks his leg, they will pay him more than the club is paying him. He might break his leg. But if he, if he knows he's going to get treatment, proper treatment, maybe it will allow him to be more adventurous. Uh, that maybe just pay for retirement. That man that took people's retirement money, my now or what? Have they found? Have they cap, uh, caught him? Is he in prison yet? Which one? Uh, is he finance or which one? Uh, no, not finance. There's a man that stole our uh, 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 retirement uh, funds in Nigeria uh, now. Uh, what's the of a Nigerian pension? Pension fund, yes. Pension fund. The guy did the uh, I think a pay back gain and he paid some money back and uh, they left him. So that's it. <laughs> wow good for him um thank you um uh, the blackstone uh Bumi, thank you for joining you know, us i'd like um, to also contribute to what uh, the issue that uh, ezra brought up right that issue of uh, 
the family issue when it comes to okay uh, okay if you want to say something from my i think uh, all this is about no, first of all it's not a a culture right and i think that most of all these things from from a tribe to tribe it it differs right and it differs from from tribe to tribe mm -hmm. for region to region in nigeria but i think one of the major things that is so i would like to say is wickedness and poverty right because there are some family that once they lost their their person they never have it they don't find any issue of argument any issue of money right and also how does the person treat the families when they when before the death of maybe the father or the mother or so on and so forth also that's also also, also plays a part how are, how do you coordinate how do you relate with your family members family members that's also is there because when that anger is there they bring they find, they are looking for the opportunity they are looking for that time whereby they find a way to trap you down you understand me and when that thing happens they come out all those angers are brought in but like what the uh, that, that when that when, when the bank went to brought brought the he, the ghost as one of everything they all cool down because maybe that, that was what they, what, what they were aiming for you understand me it's like the, we have got what we want you understand me you know because maybe at that point those family the, the children of the man or the woman we are not actually in good communication with the extended family right and so when they are coming they're coming with ah okay it's time for us to get our, sometimes, our, sometimes it's not just about greed, whether they are in good communication or not. Greed, no? It's a part of a bad greed, it's a part of wickedness. You know? When mm -hmm. you were saying that uh, when somebody drink the, the water they use in washing the dead body or so on and so forth, right? That is pure wickedness. Right? I have a friend who, who it happened to. Mm -hmm. Right? And they gave her three years that if it does, if not happened to her with, with it, between then and three years, then she's not even responsible for the death of her. Wow, nice. <laughs> so if anything happens about within three years, that could have been yes, so, 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 natural. She's possible. guilty. Yes, it's that's guilty. ridiculous. You know, so this is this are some of these things, you know. So but this is happening okay. different. Sorry, sorry, Blackstone. This is happening in different ways. Uh, Betty Akero Delu, you know, the wife of the late governor of uh, what's that state? She's currently oh, no. the younger brother married her now. She married <laughs> yes. the younger brother. Is it, is it, is it, is it? And then they, she had some, her, it was public issue now. She had wranglings mm -hmm. with the family. They were coming after her. So you see, it's not just poor people that are going through this. And this is a rampant. You know, no, 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 no. This no, no. brother marrying um, somebody not married, like, say, I think we need to debate it tomorrow. it's a good idea. <laughs> it's, no, a good idea. Yeah. it's a very old thing. It's a very old thing amongst us. It's, 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 yeah. it's actually a proof of our Hebrew traditions. If you look in the Bible, it says exactly that culture. Yeah. Exactly. Well, well, they copied right. us in, in other words. Eh? I'm they not saying us. that. I'm saying that we are biblical people. That's what I'm saying. But you can say what you want. Yeah, they copied us. I don't like people saying we, we, we are. That's up to you now. That's, 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 that's up to you. That's 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 if it makes you feel better, if it makes yes, you, if, it, if it pleases it your it ego, better. if it's no, not, good. it's not about ego. We are older. The idea that they we copied from them seems no, no. It's not. I, I, it's not an idea of copy. It's an idea of what was written. What was written? What was written? is only seen in certain parts of the world. It's not about copy, copy. It's about who are the people that they're speaking of. Before okay. it's egotistical. But they, are saying they are, but they are saying they are speaking about themselves. Oh, no, but but oh, but oh, you oh, see, oh. but you see, you have to understand that there are too many practices that belong to the Hebrew that are still with us more so than anyone else in the world. This is what is this is the aspect. That's why I'm saying they are yeah. copying us because the people that wrote it that we are you are mentioning from, they are talking about themselves. No, the people that wrote it, the people that wrote it, my brother, are not the Europeans. I know Those aren't the people that wrote that book. You have to yeah, get these things oh, clear. Jew, Jew, Israelites. Are you saying we are Israelites? Bro, I'm saying, I'm not using the word Israel. I'm using the word Hebrew, which is before the word Israel or Jew. The word Hebrew is what we traveled from that part of the world as. We traveled down as Hebrews before we knew ourselves as Jews at all. And then we fell into our Yoruba, Igbo, Coastal. I'm not so uh, sure about that one. Well, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. But I'm saying to you that we are still the only people in the world that do what's written in that book. 
more than anyone else. Full stop. We are the oldest, uh, so it makes sense. Oh, oh, Father, just That's to add one more from. person on that list. Just to add one more yeah. person on that list. Bianca Ojuku also had problems with the family when the, the man died. So you see, you see, these things are rampant in, in Nigeria. No, as, no, as that was, what do you expect? No, I think, uh, there are situations in which this is happens. Which Your one family. is the, Which one is the Edo uh, culture? Uh, well, that's what uh, local P. Edo doesn't have culture. Have look at your story. Some of them, <laughs> what is wrong? How dare you, 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 you say that? How dare you say that? No, no. What I mean, the culture of this barrier, understand? It's quite different. We have that culture, right? When somebody dies, the family member comes and so on and so forth. It depends on the family. To what extent the family will take it? You understand me? Some people will say, okay, like the the royal family, or the the, the the chiefs, as well and so forth, we say, we have to bury your, your husband, we have to move for seven days, right? Mm. Be on blasted down for seven days. But some people don't do it. You know, it just depends on the family. So that was, it is, I said, they don't have culture. So it's not, it's not like culture that everybody has to do the same thing. No, it depends on the family you belong, or the ideology of the family. Okay. That's it. You understand me? So if you have a family that is very liberal, they don't care about those things. You just come, you do what I have to do. They, are, they need peace and everything. They go. Um, my father, sorry to bust in. Local P, I beg, please retract your statement. They didn't uh -uh. marry your father to lose widow to younger brother. <laughs> oh my God. Where did you get that fake news from? You have, you have started again. No? <laughs> Hold on, eh? you are going to have your chance to respond, please. Hold on, Olumi. They just came in. He want to start the fight already. Oh, um, he went on to perform oh, traditional. Olumi, no, Olumi, they hold no. on now. There are really quiet. Ukraine. Yeah, you create. Come to the same very younger brother. Are you done? Just not your ganja. The Blackstone. Are you done? What up, idiot? Okay. Anyway, you liar. Okay, let's move on. All right, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Bumi, um, thank you. You, 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 you don't feel fine. Let's move on. Let's move on. I put him backstage now, I'm a dictator. What do you mean stop now? A dictator now. Go call the Canada now. Why are you not cold? Why are you not dead? Why are you not cold? Call the Canada, they beat you. Okay. Let's go. This one, we don't miss drugs. Drink any other. Black on the crate, boy. You crazy. Olumi is not in a good mood today. Um, Bumi, thank you for joining us. And look, uh, this is Olumi. If you do that again, where while Bumi is talking, you're going to end up backstage. Sorry, uh, Bumi. Um, please go ahead. Um, hi everybody. Uh, Hello, I, Bumi. I, I think there are two topics. One in terms of the Nollywood industry, and then the other one in terms of this whole traditional things and i don't know which one i should kind of start the discussion on but i think i'll probably start with them. the sorry any of them you are free any of them yeah um i think i'll probably start with the the cultural one and to be honest when obviously i'm not a big person when it comes to you know culture because i would like I don't know if people know, but I'm a Gen Z, and we 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 have a different kind of. Let me put my that word Gen Z. I wonder what <laughs> what the people are talking about. <laughs> it just it just means it's, that it's we talking were about born, the unity of the world. <laughs> yeah, it means we we're born in a in a different generation, so we have uh, a different perspective. The, 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 the AI generation. Yeah. So for me, when I reflect on that, I just think when it comes to like. Oh, drinking the water of the dead person. I think it's just the way of how they solved an issue back then. Whether it's effective or not effective. Back then, it's probably our present day police department or detective. So I just would see from that aspect in terms of like, if someone told me to drink it, if, let's say if I get married to someone, a family <laughs> or I have to drink the cups of my partner to prove I didn't kill them, then I could just tell them, get an investigator and investi investigate it. If I'm proving that I killed him, then so be it, I go to jail. But if, I, if I'm not, then I'm not going to drink it. So I feel like that's where that comes from. 
And I feel like most people in our generation are not going to do that because we don't see as an effective way to prove something because we have other ways of proving things. But if I should reflect that to like the whole marriage thing, because I think Mr. Loku, I think Mr. Xero brought out that we in Nigeria, we're most, we in Nigeria, we mostly have a two parents house, household. And the only reason why that is very common in most African countries, but specifically Nigeria is because of how we see a man and a woman. You know, when you see a man as, like it's even in the name, when you see a man, it's like it has this power to it or like this whole control. And then when you see a woman, it's more or less like an object. And that's why you see most women would stay in a very abusive relationship because they're not seen as important piece to society. The only importance that is given to them is, you know, procreating. And that's why most women kind of limit their existence to just, I can't leave my husband. If I leave my husband, I have no value to society. So they keep on staying in those things. And I think that's what, where you also see when women tend to transfer that so-called wickedness to other women because they don't see their self as valuable. And because you've limited yourself, it's like you're oppressed. So you have to oppress the next best thing. And that's the next woman that's below you. And that's why you see mother-in-laws and everything, they tend to oppress their, their daughter-in-law because they were oppressed. So just to transfer that, they don't see themselves as valuable, but they become valuable because they're the mother-in-law. So it just keeps on, so I feel like, and most people keep on saying, oh, it's the West, the divorce thing is such a West thing. But the difference is that most women not value themselves in society. And if they don't see meaning in that relationship, they leave. But yes, of course, you're going to have people who are going to abuse that divorce. And that's why you can say, oh, the West has a high rate of divorce. Yes, you can say that. But you also see people who are fortunate enough to not stay in an abusive household because it is true. We are in a very, like... Can I just ask you, Bumi? A, yes. a, 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 a question or two i'll be snappy do you ha, are you aware of the statistics of the breakups in the west and why divorce takes place and who initiates divorce uh, have you seen those statistics i have heard about it but i don't know the numbers exactly but i know it's high without okay the other thing i would ask is the fact that women have been oppressed over the years, which is very true, and we, we, we add to that. But the, the union of Nigerian marriages, especially in our fathers and grandfathers' generation, on a one-on-one -on -one relationship, those who stay together, was it all bad? Was it just out of oppression? Or was there no love or intention or growth do you consider? Because you're not considering these things. You're just being one-sided. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I feel like it's just a different value, okay? So those people back then might not see it as bad, okay? In my generation, we might call it red flags. There are certain things that you see in a relationship that are red flags and you shouldn't const constantly be in that relationship. But probably, let's say my grandmother doesn't see that as a red flag. For example, maybe when a man beat his wife a lot of people older generation might not see it as like oh something that should not happen because understand that's the man of the house stop talking he has every power he's the one directing the family so it's just the different in values between the older generation or the other generation and then this generation in terms of like okay the women are like okay this is what we but me sorry one question what about if, if the wife is beating the, the, the husband? See, that happens, okay? But 
the reason why people don't tend to pay attention to it a lot is because of when you look at the numbers in, what, in when that the statistic to the, like the difference between a man beating a woman and a woman beating a man. It's, it's just different in terms of like there's more impact and more negative um, consequences for when a man beats a woman and then when a woman beats a man. You know, men tend, sometimes when they try to exp, uh, express frustration, they tend to go physical. Where, where women, because they don't have the physical advantage, they might be more verbally abusive. So you would see women in relationship who are more verbally abusive. But you have some women too who would wanna, you know, lay some punches if they see the man is not gonna retaliate. But it does happen. Don't, not, I'm not out here excusing women's behavior, but they are just advantages. Men have more advantage when it comes to laying hands on a woman than a woman. If I should punch, let's say, uh, forefathers, I don't I'll be behind you. All. No, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think my punch. Everybody will support you. Everybody will support you. Don't worry. <laughs> we are behind you, Bumi. We are, we are right there with you. You see, you see how you, you all are behind me. <laughs> you will put you will put the flood gates now, so they can all start. Yes, you very well. So we we are behind you. The reason why you you all are behind me is because you know I might not be able to beat uh, for uh, Mr. Forefathers very hard. That you will not be able to come anywhere the next day. But understand if. Uh, four fighters decides to lay his hands on me. There's a possibility that I will lose my life. Mm. So the ch the chances of he me losing my life probably goes up to like ninety percent compared to when let's say four fighter loses his life. It might be let's say twenty percent. Mm. So that's where people tend to value more that men are more abusive than women. But that's just what I have to say in regards to that. But let me go back to the. I wanted to add something to what you said regarding uh, women valuing themselves more now. Um, I'm not sure they value themselves less before. Um, otherwise, um, most of the achievements that society went on to do and the fact that they stayed in homes and they raised it, well, the men and the women, they raised them all. The women often raised them. And there is a reason why they are still around. If the men were busy beating, killing their wives uh, before now, you wouldn't have, there would be miscarriages and all kinds of nonsense happening all the time. The children will not be safe. They will not be around today. So I think maybe an we have to also take into account the, the proportion of the people that behave like this, that actually take violence uh, into their homes and exert it on their wives. I'm sure, I'm almost 100% sure during that time, there is a procedure, a process whereby men are admonished for attacking their wives. And I think that aspect is not often highlighted, but I'm sure it's there because you would have seen madness all over the place if that wasn't there. Men must be holding other men accountable to stop that behavior. So that's my point. Maybe the family members, like if you are married to a woman, you, you, you misbehave with a woman, the family members will come at you. So there must be control mechanism to stop that kind of behavior. Otherwise, you would have seen families won't be together. Family. And and yeah, also, yes. for me, the mindset of women now that you said they value themselves more, I think the, that's the illusion that, that is created. But in reality, what is happening is that there are many of them are ending up 50, 60 alone. Mm -hmm. And they are not doing anything. And nobody's going to be there to take care of them. And I think there is a level of um, an illusion that is being created that you value, it's just more of a selfish society because of what the government have created and made them think that somehow getting out of the home, living the life of a man somehow is more valuable. I think there is an injustice that goes on when a, a husband passes and the woman loses their property, especially when she's got children, the man's children. She should be protected from those uh, losing all the, all those resources. However, to say move from there and say um, women should um, necessarily they should just go and break homes because seventy to eighty percent of them are the ones initiating divorces now uh, in the Western society. 
the reason why they did it is for their own reason they are not us so and i believe that the role that they used to play before is just as valuable as whatever role they are playing now i don't I, that's why that, that the point i'm trying to get at is when you said they value themselves more now i still believe that women did value themselves before but it's just in a different way um please go ahead i don't know if you had the uh, statistic the guest gave in terms of one in every three women has been abused what whatever form of abuse you want to think of that that has happened to a woman you know and in terms of when you made a valid point you made a big point in terms of like you said oh those women are going to end up being alone and i think to you it seems like loneliness because the society has given the value of women in terms of you're you're supposed to be with a man your 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 existence in life is to procreate and that's why you say it's loneliness because you're not doing those things if i as a woman i'm not married and i don't have a child then you're lonely based on your definition but if i as a woman has said no what i don't want to fulfill that that doesn't make me know because i have chosen that for myself it's not loneliness at least to my definition true true but most women want to be with someone if you go on dating apps right now they are always saying i want relationship i want they always want to be with someone they like vehemently want to be with someone because they understand that there is meaning to being with someone it's not because they just want to um you know show they should be respected because they are with somebody they they see the value of being with somebody especially at an old age to spend time with that person so that is one and that part if if sorry that the point i was trying to make that if they say they want it and they can't have it that is the point i'm making not that um if they choose it then they should what they, they should not have to choose it because it's a shameful way to be if they want it but they are not getting it and they also most of the women if you if you take the polls at least before now anyway you will see that the polls is showing that most of them prefer to be homemakers than going running nine to five and all the rest of it the poll is shifting towards like in recent i think this year or last year it's shifting towards so women preferring to work now but before now especially in the uk still if you give them the poll most of them will tell you they prefer to be homemakers than running around so that is the point i'm making it's not about them wanting to be alone and i'm saying be ashamed that you want to be alone they too want to be with somebody but yes, they can't but, find somebody but yes exactly they do want to be with someone but if the statistic says that one in three women has been abused then that, that shows you. i think men too can, are, can we quickly just, just yeah. jump in you see yeah, sorry guys sorry it, it would always depend on this matter of abuse i i agree with you in my experience there have been many women that I've come across that have been heavily abused. But then every man and every woman would have to look at their own aspect of growing up and was what they were doing in terms of trying to get to know the opposite sex, was it abusive in any way? And I would say by today's reckoning, the way I grew up, we would have been all guilty, we would have been all put in prison for what we engage with with women. You see, I think we're, we're at a hypersensitive point in the world today. And a lot of the things that we are being sensitized to are given to us to be sensitized to. It's almost organized for us to think about things that possibly could be think, thought about in a far different way. Now, what I'm speaking about is that if we recognize for all the pains of growing up in a family, that we have, there are so many more blessings to be taken. We have to ask ourselves, do we want to grow up in a family? Was growing up in a family beneficial to us? Would we like our children to grow up in a family? These are the real aspects. All these personal things that women are coming out with and men are coming out with, uh, I'm sorry to say, are of personal, um, um, idiosyncratic um, misfortunes that they're now put in as though it's mainstream. But they're not mainstream. A lot of these things that happen between men and women generally in life are natural. It's natural. So we, 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 we have to understand how we're speaking about these things and how one-sided we may be coming across. Where is the nature? Is family under 
under a critical um, um, crisis at the moment? That's what you have to ask yourself. Because anytime we're speaking about personal issues, we have to see how these persons attack the institution of family where we are concerned. And if we're not really do looking at that, then I'm afraid we're not speaking from any balanced position at all. I, I think I think one thing I, I get your point in terms of like yes family is be, like the lack of a uh, a well strong family household is becoming something is that you get to see less but the thing is that it's just people are starting to understand what they want in a family if if you really because i you can listen to a lot of nigerians say oh we've been married for 30 years but when you really ask like you start having conversation in terms of like okay what's your marriage life like it will really baffle you it will baffle you how like you're literally in a toxic relationship and you're building and having children who believe that this idea of a marriage is what marriage is about you know i was watching a youtube a uh, um, video about, you know, married people who are for divorce and people who are against divorce. This is Nigerian debate, you know. And this woman was basically saying that if her husband, she would not divorce her husband, if her husband goes ahead and abuses their daughter, she's not going to divorce the man. She's going to still stay in that relationship. And you ask yourself, like, are you she okay? Has for, she has a reason for that. So did she give the reason why she has to stay? Because she believes that marriage should not be broken. You, it's a two... It's, a, it's like, just like Mr. Jagon says, like, family. She believes in family. And if she leaves that husband, she has actually destroyed the family... Unit. That Unit. Exactly. So she's gonna. She says she's still gonna be with that man that abuses your your own you and the man's daughter. Can I, can I put this to you? Can I put this to you, Top uh, Bumi? Yeah, yeah. I just want to put this to her quickly, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, it, it, real quick. I just want to say, Bumi. Bumi, we are coming to you, yeah. Bumi. <laughs> please, please, Jago, please, please. Thank you. Thank you. Please take him out. He's sleeping. Please take him out. He's sleeping. Where is he? Where's it? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That one is sleeping. Oh, and cutting and speaking for two minutes. Just right, let me break in real quick, please. We're having a conversation now. Um, Bumi, I agree with you that for the woman who is saying that she is in a toxic relationship with her husband for possibly allowing, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Abuse, uh, sexual father. sexual abuse, abuse. Or on his daughter. Um, however toxic that might be, would you agree that it can get toxically worse if the family broke up? Because I, I don't know the necessary family structure, but I do know that when families are either brought up by one parent family or the family is broken in some way, the needs of the societies to support this these individual families is now adding to the costs now apart from the cost matter it goes into the society where we have damaged children coming through into society is that not more toxic and is that not what we see in the world today absolutely not i don't believe that we have a better and stronger society where you can say it's justified for a person who has been abused by the the person when you I'm not just trying to I'm no, just no, keeping the balance. Yeah, but there is nowhere that that balances anything because you can still have a divorce, but us as a society needs to have. And I think this is where we lack that in terms of like having therapy to balance it off to make sure that look, we broke up not because oh you should just break up a family. Well, we broke up because this is not the right thing to have in a family. You cannot have a family for 40 plus years till you die. And that is the values that you keep it on. 
It I'll, I'll put my last it. statement hold like on, this. Hold on, hold on, hold I'm on. So let, sorry, let, let, let I'm so sorry, Paul. I'm so sorry. You had two goals. Let's let let me have, let me have you know, what, 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 This is getting interesting. What, 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 <laughs> because then, uh, then you only to go to the village and and have the elders <laughs> to tell you about the family stuff before you talk, you know. None of us have a lot of experience of it, but no, uh, it's yeah. just just um uh, let, sometimes but as me look for father, for father, for father, one at a time for for, for father. But me speaking from Jay Z world is not is yes. not real. That, that, that's what I that's why I saw that. Yeah, that's he said I, something that's about. The olden days. Let me tell you, in my place, eh, if a man beat a, a, a woman, the woman go back to his, his parents. That man have to take a wine, bottle of wine, to go and beg before you, the woman will come back to the house. And your brothers who must do what must escort you. Not only escort you, they will call you, bring color, and say, hey, guy, they will punish you a lot, or you fight. That is a, is a problem. So there were a lot of like laws and something guiding Balances, uh, guiding things that time but these days now it has no more law there's no more marriage what i know that if i love the man i will woman i will just pack my loot mm -hmm. go meet the man any man decide mm -hmm. he will be to go back and look come on i divorce with that no marriage before divorce that's why we are there's no marriage everybody will just be in boyfriend i got him i call him boyfriend and girlfriend any day the man tired the man will the woman will pack his load I go to a bar and they break divorce. The other person they celebrate divorce. They drink ten shots because I'm divorced. Yes, so. Something to celebrate off. So yeah, we, we, for me, let me. You are talking from the zoo world, but um, we are seeing things. And I would just like to add, it's not balanced because you, you see, you, you always add, men, you men add. and women, men, <laughs> men, men and women, men, men, men and women have their own difficulties in this world to bear. Continue, please speak. Continue, please. Speak. Okay, let me tell, let me ask all of us here. Right? Stella, uh, I listened to Stella Rabaskowski said, men, men are also abused. All of us here are married. We That's are right. abused one way to another here. But we can't say it. We will swallow it. All of, most of us are married here have faced pan abuse two, three times in our marital time, uh, in our marriage by our wives. But we can't come out and say we are abused. We take it as a bar, as well as like a bar. We touch, we correct our soup. That's what they happen. And keep on dying. So, so she said it right here. It's only woman, like, only woman that can say and be, uh, be abused. People have pity. But men are also abused. I have so many stories here. Mm. I have a guy that just killed the, in Dallas, he shot, he shot the wife, shot the wife mother, carried the picking and, 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 and drive off. Because abuse. Mm -hmm. you, you, can't even, you can't even like hold it anymore. You say, let's, let's edit. Mm -hmm. So let me, from my own point of view, you're, you're, you're okay. uh, Mr. Mr. Omadio, uh, wait, let me, I... let me come in. No, no, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to interject. I just want to ask you, can you please elaborate why exactly can't man, men express why they're being abused? Man is, is a nature. Man is be that way. It's a nature. You cannot cheat a nature in this life. You cannot cheat a nature. It's the nature of a man. If I come out to tell my focal man that I did on my wife, they will start laughing at you. They will be sorry for you. They will first of all start telling you a stupid guy. They will start making jokes of you. You'll be a talk. Ah, say, uh, woman uh, woman <laughs> you my point. <laughs> so it's the nature. Can, can I add to that? Man cannot open mouth. Mark an open mouth to say what they are facing. They swallow it like a bar. We call it a soup. But I don't think that is nature. It's not nature. Sorry. Can, can I? I mean, can man, I nature is yeah, to keep saying to die in silence. That's what I mean. I know. I don't say they are. I, 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 I think, think there's there there an element yeah. of nature in it. I think. Yeah. Let me just explain. What, what he's trying to say is that men is are that, socialized that way. Men are socialized. Yes, that, that's, yeah, that's, that that's 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 part okay. of it. Let, let me just add, okay. let me just add something quickly. Men generally experience their own kind of abuse from external factors. Even the first thing I said, don't go through so that. Wanna, if, 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 you, if, you, if you hold on, if you look at the conflict going on in uh, Gaza right now, um, it, it, this is unusual. The, one of the main reasons why it's unusual is the high level of children and women. Normally, the men are the ones that are get that get slaughtered in that uh, that high ratio, and mm -hmm. that too should open your eye to the people that define what is an abuse is and what is not. These people were willing to sit there and watch women get slaughtered and women get slaughtered. That is the aspect that I always say, Gen Z, is when you are believing certain things that these people tell you, 
what is wrong and what is right you you have to calibrate it with a and with an eye of originality like when you came on uh, the first time you, you said you said something about yeah you said something about um the water drinking thing that's dead body water drinking thing you try to approach it in an original way you try to go into the eyes of the people that practice it and why they did what they did no 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 first of all let me correct you let me no correct you. no it let wasn't about you, you. It wasn't... Dead, dead body, no no body, yeah. let, listen hold on let me let me you, you gotta be saying this that's not real all right mm -hmm. let me tell you sir. We, we we want to watch hollywood movie too much no, 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 no. We, 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 we take it that way. Let me let me tell you my place. Somebody said this. They know somebody happened to me. Let me tell you my place. In my place, see what happened. See what happened. Come down in my place. See what happened. See what used to happen in these cases. All right. If you are being accused before, before now, the only law in the in the community is the chief priest, the king, or, or one or the three people make the laws. They decide what happens. All right. There's no courts. There's no government. Nobody. They are the law. They are everything, all right? So when a suspect, so it's on the road, when something happened, all right, they would take it to the chief priest. Chief priest will say, this is how we treat this issue, all right? Then he will start doing that. But I tell them that. And people that are going to, do you know people that are going to make her do that thing? They are co women, oh my other, her co women that will make her do that, also do that thing to prove her innocence. Her co women, not men. But more we see, uh, okay. men will see. I'm, I'm men will make us to do that. My now, friend, my friend. Wait, excuse me. Let me correct you. My friend, eh, uh -huh. is a young, is a young girl, and the husband is a young man. She's okay. She's living in abroad. You understand me? Okay. husband died in Nigeria. The bad, I don't been to abroad, but they accuse her as person responsible, and she went to Nigeria. No, how did they accuse? They just accuse you. You're responsible. Eh? They just accuse you. You're responsible. Okay, a person is living abroad. We don't live together. No, they don't like, no, don't go back and ask people. No, yes, of course, no, of course. They can't just, let me tell you, I don't support this. No, I don't, so, me, I don't yeah. support that. It's an evil. Yeah, you don't support it's, that, but it's, 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 it's everything. You don't know what happened. You don't know what happened. You are not there. So you cannot support, can't say you don't support that. That was not your, uh, you're not part of the family and everything, right? So no, and I was, no, 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 no. It was a culture. It was a culture. It was a culture. Of some, no, you're talking about your own side. I'm talking, I'm talking, no, no, excuse me. Yeah, you're talking about culture. what your own side. I'm talking about what, what, what I know, what took place. It was about four years ago. You know, do not even like uh, century, but four years, four, four, five years ago, and it happened. And she drank you that. Me? Yes, and she did it. She did it. <laughs> now, you know, got the next uh, uh, forefathers uh, continue from where he was. Yeah. Now. He yeah, just disturbed the place. Mm. The point she was making, she came from the point of originality, tried to understand where they came from and try to um, use that to um, give her own opinion. However, when she started talking about women issue, which is on the feminist kind of side, she started using the terms uh, value and um, abuse 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 and i think that is one one thing that's why i think uh, amadia is talking about you know uh, gen z uh, thing i understand the um the, the that's how you see the world but i would prefer you go to the originality of the situation because that will open your eyes to the fact that men actually go through worse situation there's a reason why they, 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 there's a reason why they have lower life expectancy if you think only women are getting abused even the earth is abusing men constantly <laughs> <laughs> even the earth abuses men and our job yeah. is to take the heat and still keep the women safe as that's, as that's my right. very point mm -hmm. yes, so sir. please hey, go ahead can i ask can i ask a question so you can elaborate more in the in the direction of where men face more um abuse okay miss um mr madio has said that men go through more abuse than women and they tend not to i didn't say than women no i said men also go can, through abuse. Men also go through abuse also yeah i didn't say some women but they don't say it okay but my question is you say that is is men's nature nature not to say it okay so now if me as a woman I have changed that nature of women and I'm saying it saying look one in three women are being abused why is it that I am not a problem for identifying the fact that women say they're abused because you, you um it's like men right here you can also 
point out your I, I tell again. you why. I tell you why. The yeah. law support the women, but the law frown against the men, frown on the men. That is it. It depends. So, it, it depends. No, no, no. It depends. No, no, don't say that. It let me know. Let me feel. That's what you not, not, not correct. Not true. The, see, I, I, I can I'm understand. As I mean, well, you know, if you go now to, to, to your social office and go and report your wife's abusing you, it depends. I've seen, I've, 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 seen, I've, 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 I've seen somebody that a woman called police. You don't know that the camera recorded what happened in the house. And she claimed that the man was beating him. Because he has a him. camera. It's quite different. The, the, he has the, a the camera telling you, the, the, the law may turn. It's what you told the law. The law will agree on. The law may turn against the woman instantly. Yeah. Also, excuse so, me. Can, you, just, you just said one thing. You said a camera recorded it. If you don't have an evidence, do you think the law will take your own story or they take the woman's story? The, the, the law wouldn't. The law. This. The law wouldn't also take the woman's story. A woman cannot just wake up and say a man abused me, and they'll just take it like that. You have to prove how he abused you. Whether you're showing bruises or whether you're showing. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I have an experience that two people just have a misunderstanding. The woman called okay. the police and they, they asked the man to leave, leave the house. No bruises, that's not that's that's normal, no, yes. that's normal thing. Yes. Yes. That's normal thing. So, 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 so that's, 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 that's some, of, some of the abuses we are talking about. Yes, some of the abuses that women are abusing men. Some of the abuses. Are you talking about is it about this abuse? emotional abuse. It's even worse than a physical abuse sometimes. Emotional abuse is no. more than physical abuse. But, but that's what, see, and if you listen to what I said, that there are two, men and women also abuse each other. Men tend to mostly abuse women physically because they just have the advantage physically. It makes sense for them. Why women tend to abuse verbally? Because it doesn't mean that, like I said, I'm not stupid to come and lay my hands on, let's say, forefathers. It's just stupidity. So it's like women mostly go through other ways to abuse people in terms of abusing the law, whereby they might call the police and the police might favor them. But Sorry, the man will not do that. Like oh, stop using <laughs> that. Stop using <laughs> that. You're that you know, to think about it. Like I don't know. Question. She keeps trying to encourage them. Uh, uh, emotional abuse, verbal abuse. Understand me? You may, you may agree with some of this verbal abuse that less, less to physical abuse. Abuse is abuse. Words are like, are like two edged sword that tears you up heart apart. And when Mr. That Blackstone, happens, you lose abuse control, is you lose abuse. Control. You can punch someone, and they could that they they could be brain damaged for the rest of their life. Who might say that? Who might say that? You will not wake up. Save you that. Uh, 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 I am not making an argument. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Speak about yourself. Let me speak about myself. Speak about yourself from this kind of abuse. All right. You don't know what other women can do. Don't talk about yourself but, only. I'll let you. I'll let you. you, know, let you Adria, we are talking about different different generations. She's a Gen Z. We are not, millennials she, and above. Yeah, I love so, it. I'm, so. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm at the middle between Gen Z and the old. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, some of us need to go to the village and meet the older people to tell you stories. How things have been done. We just watch movie. Not movie like this. How things be. No, 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 no. No, no, my mind my, still they don't they don't do they my mind is the law of the land to do those things. Mine mine is that so, uh, again, again thing, things that like, we are speaking like, about. Like, oh. let, 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 let me take this point here. Let me take this point here. When a brother died, a woman they forced her to marry the brother's uh, um, the husband brother. It's not a force. They would give it option. They want to go. All right, don't stay here and start bringing men into the family. It's better for you to marry this or you go. It's not a false. So people think it's a false. So, so that, that, that means, that means, so that means, sorry, hold on, let me just share some information that that might shed some light to the point I'm making. It's not a false, yeah. They give options. Let me see, um, where is this information? Okay, that's it there. Let me just let me your share some light to this. You see, um, this is what I was talking about when you use the term abuse. And this is what I was trying to express to you that men go through that is not necessarily taken into account. Look at deaths from gun violence in the U.S. Uh, last year, or I don't know what year, maybe 2021. 
um look at the men the casualty rate among the men and look at the casualty rate among the women and all through the same pattern repeats itself so if you look at society men go through nonsense far more than women do but because of the way they paint it now most women walk around thinking that they are the most abused people in society men abuse men far more Look at the death, the death toll we are talking about here. <laughs> that so death, that's right? I mean. that the best but, death to Niger. But the die half of you. No, 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 my, 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 no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to show that we are all in the same world. When we say that yeah, women yeah. are abused in the home, we forget that because it's in the men, most of the abuse is not happening in the home. Doesn't mean they too are not going through stuff. That's why oh, they die earlier. Can, 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 can I can I quickly come, come in? Can I quickly come in? Because I'm not sure where my go is, and I've got a bit to say on what forefather is dealing with. You see, when we look at the fact that we live in this atmosphere and in order to get covering from the dangers of the atmosphere, you know, we know that the world is a ravaging and, and dangerous place. Th those who actually activate uh, community, household infrastructure and such like, they're men. But it seems to me that men aren't given any respect in the aspect of what we have created as men. If you look at Dubai, if you look at what they have done in that Dubai, there, there are hundreds and thousands of bodies of those who have died in those buildings. They're there. People are walking up and down and in uh, having mouth to abuse men anyhow. All I ask is that there should be balance. All I ask is that we should know that there is a difference between men and women. If we don't pay attention to these differences, then we lose focus on what it is that we're speaking about. Because if we expect a man to be a woman in this world, that is the aspect of Gen Zism, I'm afraid to tell you. But that Gen Zism is spark nonsense. And I'm here to tell anybody that wants to give me uh, the attitude of, of not being a masculine individual when I'm a man, I, I would have to try my best to educate if not shut that thing down completely because it's not it's not accurate it's not balanced and it sends no love now the the position that most women are in today is that they just have to back women's issues whether they agree with them or not largely we just back women's issues without thinking that there is men's issues you don't know you don't know half what men go through in this world you don't know half of it as any woman in i don't care where this woman comes from, she doesn't know an inch of what it is to be a man. She doesn't know an inch of what it is to have a serious day's work. And the way we are, if we don't balance what's in our minds, which is why a lot of men sit down in silence. At the time of a man sitting down in the silence, to hear a woman yap, yap, yapping, not knowing what he's going through, not caring about what he's going through, but yap, yap, yapping about our issues. Just like you said, um, um, uh, Bumi, my dear, you did say, that women are more verbal and possibly verbally abusive than men are. And men possibly would be more physical abusive. That's accurate in many ways. But we have to wonder that, do we understand that a woman's abuse, a woman's tongue can be so sharp that it would react in violence? Because there is such a thing in this world. There is such a thing in this world called violence. We can pretend it's not there or it shouldn't be there, but it is there. And this, this reasoning has to be applied to women's minds to know that, look, we don't have to cross the line every time. We don't have to cross the line every time. Most men of the last 20 years would have adjusted their behavior so much so that they are not their fathers or their grandfathers. We've adjusted our behavior to suit or to further, to further soften the atmosphere within the society for women. But I don't even think women pay any regard to that at all. These are my pains when women speak on women's issues. I just need to end there. Thank you. Well, let me tell yeah. let me tell um, let's, let's allow me about. to talk now. Jesus Christ, we'll now let her talk again. I, Lord, I will tell you something that's very funny. That would be, you're going to like this. It's very, very funny. But She's supposed to have the mic whenever Brad, she releases you are pushing, her you are pushing in a lot to You are pushing in uh, a lot. Please, please, let her speak. You guys are I'm talking for really Finish, finish. Take over my tongue. Father, you made you you showed us a graph, and you showed us how in relation <laughs> to men's death compared to women's death. But you mentioned gun violence, okay? And I would really like if you would point out who are the ones doing the gun, because when I hear about the things that happen in America in terms of like, oh, there's another shooting happening, 
I don't hear is a woman doing it. It's a man. So you my just mother, how... Not my two Niger. But that is an abuse too. It's not about this but, against that. It's still an abuse. Yeah, but, but why did you read your on American it. statistics? We needed no, Nigeria. Because it is to show no, and yeah. the same thing. If you no, change yeah. Nigeria, you're going to see the same pattern. No, but that's that, graph, the that graph that you brought mm. is very, very uncomfortable. It doesn't go anywhere. Why? Let me tell you, let me tell you for, for, for no, that. No, please, no, let, let, let her finish, for, please. For, 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 let her for, for, finish. For let her finish, please. But my argument when it comes to abuse, okay, is not against whereby I'm saying, oh, a woman is abusing a woman. My argument is men abusing women. I want you to give me a counter argument of when women are abusing men and show me data because now you you you're proving the point in terms of you say men are more aggressive. Yes. So that data just well, so please, when you say you're going please, to please abuse, please try to deny the fact that the women abuse us in Nigeria. Let her finish her point. Please let her finish her point. Please let her finish her point. Let me give you a statistic. Let her finish her point, please. You're not understanding. Last one, I'm not going to put her head before me. I am not disagreeing. I am not disagreeing that men go through abuse. I have never disagreed with that. I do think yeah. we're in a very abusive society. Whether you're a goat, rat, you are abused, period. Mm. But when my argument is when I talk about how, because you mentioned forefathers, that when I was giving my submission, you said I started sounding feminist and I started mentioning abuse. Yeah. But I was mentioning abuse that affect us as women. Now, you mentioned abuse that affects men, but now you're bringing data that men do to men. Yes, yes. That's, that's fair, but you uh, know, I brought different data. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me address her. Why are you going for the, the, let, the let, weakest let, one? Let, let me address that's directly. A... I will address right. The reason why I'm saying that, because whenever we talk about society, like the way your generation talks about it, they talk about it from the point of view that the men are the boogeymen, the boogie guys in society, which is true in so many ways. But what you also have to understand is that men too are going through those things. So, for like when I showed you the um, uh, this in the casualty rate, I and I try to let you understand what I guess what I'm trying to paint is that men too are going through it just as much as women are going through it. That's what I'm trying to do. So, you should be on my side then. I'm I'm on your side from that point of view. But but the if I should go to the extreme, if I should go to the very extreme feminist in terms of saying men are the problem, I could bring up that graph and it will back up. Okay, let point. me give her a number. She said she hold to on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to get somewhere. We need to get somewhere. If you, if you back that number in the sense that um, there is violence going on in society, I remember that men are created. Yes. Yeah, the, the, the same men, because of that <laughs> violence, is the reason why you have the luxury to say men are violent. Yeah. Because that violence is why we have societies now. So the men have done their job. The spillover that you are seeing is what you are seeing, this aggression that you are seeing. If you say you want to turn the men now to become more feminist or um, no. kind of feminized. No, no sorry. Crack, that's not feminine, what I'm talking about. Feminine. Crack, 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 but, but that is but crack, that is what is crack, happening crack, now. Yeah. But that is what is happening now, whereby from, from the research that they are, that has been shown that because society now is founding on masculine men and the women are taking on ma masculine roles, even due to their birth control and everything, they're having more testosterone in their system. Because they have more testosterone uh, male hormones in their system they tend to start fancying feminine men. So you can see no. a decay that is going on on both sides. So, but it, it's they, just, that's the point. There was a research done whereby mm. they asked single ladies, what are you looking for in a man? And they mentioned, oh, they want a man to be sensitive. You know, they want the man to be in tune to his emotion, all those things. I wanted to reference, reference that research because I would like to read it because I mean, sometimes we use that word. That research is nonsense, though. We, no, Just wait, like no, any other research that comes out. Jagun, wait, Jagun, wait, Jagun. We use the word. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely send it to you. Okay. That would be good. I just want to see it. I just want to see it. Okay. 
but one thing that the women also mentioned they wanted man men to be strong and like people were like, oh wait but <laughs> So people were like, so people were like, wait, aren't you contradicting yourself when you say you want a man technically to be soft, but then you want him to be strong? But it turns out what women are, are, mm-hmm. are actually, what they want from a man, they want a man to be able to protect them because mm-hmm. one of the things women tend to, why what what women tend to face in society they just feel unsafe so even can i can, I, can I back in four father and four father can i can, want, can i go after her please wait, wait, let me ask something I, is it financially I just want a man to be able to protect oh come on my brother financially protect or uh, to protect both. Both. which one uh, both sorry what did you say is it financially to protect them financially all right, or physical, I guess, of external aggression or what? Most well, women some... actually, uh-huh. most women actually don't want, you know, Bill Gates kind of riches or billionaires. Or they, they just want nah, you nah, to nah, be nah, this, 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 this is where I cross the line. This is where I cross the line. This is, most women don't you, have you, the game. You, you, I did do research. What a man wants from a woman. <laughs> they've done that. Of course, they've done that. They've done you see, that. What, 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 Bumi, if I can, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, but what if I can assist you like this? You know, these things that we're speaking about, where men and women are concerned, where femininity and masculinity is concerned, they're primordial. They are fixed. They are within us. They are as they should be. Which is to say, in the, let's say, cave days, cave, cave time, when... Uh, 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 dinosaurs and all kinds of treachery was out there in the physical where people are now having to huddle themselves and hide in caves, build fires and such like. The protective uh, mechanism was from men and the nurturing mechanism was from women. So women used to see the strong, big, masculine, aggressive individual as their best choice for a protector. So they would warm to such men. And this is what we have today however in where we have trans transmuted from to today we are still the same men and you are still the same woman but women now want men to be as soft as 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 women women want men's language to change just for just to suit women and these things have happened over the years but women have never been able to stand back and see what men have done in order to create an atmosphere that man and woman can coexist, and this is my my fundamental uh, put. Whilst you are coming from a point of view of where a woman is suffering, can can you not balance that with where men suffer? <laughs> no, I'm Somebody just I'm here. just providing evidence of what I say now. So it doesn't look like I am. But me, have you have you had this word? What was the and last of all? Yeah, I wonder what that last one was about. Just a word. I have to ask you this. Have you heard this one before? Yamunina Wamuni, Mamuna Mamuni. Have you heard that before from women? Why should, why should she hear that before? That's not her language. Have you heard it before? Like, <laughs> I don't think women yeah, in Nigeria. No, this word is very important. It's not, I, this word is what killing so many men. Let's like in America. Yamunina Wamuni, Mamunina Mamuni. Have you heard that word before? I, 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 know I what think it I. I think I have. That's what destroying men, killing men here in America, half of men here, yeah, are dying of high blood pressure. Is that is killing them like bullshit? Like, when you work for uh, 18 hours, now I'm money. But when you work for 18 hours, now my money. You know, that thing is. Let me tell you, I want to discuss something that, 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 that make, making men to die. Men are dying heavily by what? High blood, uh, high blood pressure, heart attack. You don't want killing men more. All of us, you know, not only men know what they face now. Married, mar- married men, you go do one, one go one. My wife will tell you, say, you know, do. The men go go out hey there, checking for, checking for, looking for something to drink, satisfy the woman. And he's killing. Who, did, did, they they ask, did, did they ask anybody to no, go take anything? I don't tell you on that. Yeah. If you see the mouth, eh? Look, no, you're killing me. Yeah, this thing here is is killing like, our men a lot. But we don't see it. Then the woman uses the opportunity to abuse the man. 
That part of their bills they are talking about. The man will close from work after 18 hours. You are, you are, you are expecting him to ride to from drive from London to Nigeria. The even man don't feel drive, he reach right away, he like yeah, because they yab up till daybreak. The man go wake up, who close from work the next day without pride, he go run, he go carry something without anything, put for mad, but because he fit, I be man. Yeah? Before you know, and, before and, man don't be 50, man don't die, see, throw away. See, and, and you know what is happening with this data now? The feminine yes, men yes. that they are marrying, they don't like them. They, they end up divorcing them at a higher rate. And then the men yeah. go on. I've met a man on the street. Uh, that's, I was in the park here, and he was in tears, flood of tears, about right. what has happened with him, that he's not with his family anymore. He's lost everything. And you you even, like when I go on uh, like dating uh, apps, you will see the pressure everywhere. That the men, the women want relationships, but the men, nah, they don't want it because they don't see any benefits in getting to a see, relationship. Now. To Niger, I know the rate of uh, in America, the rate of uh, divorce for Nigeria women in America is very high. Sometimes, all of them, if you go to Paris, you see all of them sitting in one chair, about seven of them. All with mm. divorce, I'll call my friends, see them. Go ahead, go ahead. Exero hasn't said anything for a while. Let Exero say the word living together. Have you heard the word living together? Living together, living together. Yeah, I've heard the word. Yeah, yeah. So that's not the trend. Let's let Exero talk now. They're living together. Yeah, yes, I think I I will keep quiet for a while. Let let Exero talk. And Ed hasn't said anything for a long time. I wanted us to remember that Bumi is a, is a lady, and even if she's Gen Z, we should use this opportunity to ask her a question, which is very mm. important. And that is, what do women really want from want. men? Yes, from the men of in this today's world, what do they really look forward to in a man? And then I just wanted to remind us that yesterday's uh, man of value it's no longer today's man of value. Yesterday, you talk about strength. You have to have a big farm. You have to have the strength to protect physically. Today, values have changed. Today, a man of value is entirely a different beast. It's no longer that same man of, you know, yesteryear. You have to so go, like to, hear you have to, go to, you have to go to manicure, pedicure. For you Actually, it's, it's that same man. Those men that accomplish a lot, they, they tend to have a peak of the women. I just remember they don't even settle for anybody in the end. Sorry, um, yeah. um, um, okay, um, Ed, you want to say something because so that for me, ask for me a question. For me, for me, for me, for me, the host, right? Is technically she's like the guest right now, she's on the host, and the head of a Gen Z when it comes to the relationship. Please let me tell us what they look for in a man. Wait, wait, let's boom me answer that question. And okay, because, okay. because what I want to say might actually take away from okay, the, I'll take us away from this topic. Okay. Um, so I just want to clarify that I cannot speak for the how many billion women on this. Ah, you are now. Take my I words want you. with a grain of. <laughs> Sort or however they say it, but I would say that based on based on like the research yes, that has been done, you know, I did send a link of a a interview that was done on to um um I don't know if I should call them scientists or not scientists, but to dating aspect and all that. But it turns out, obviously, women do need safety you know they they did mention that when it comes to let's say sex men don't tend to think about safety when it comes to sex men can have sex anywhere anyhow but women will always think about safety am i safe first so they need safety from a man first however form it comes whether it's financially physically you know they need to know that this man can be able to, because they cannot physically do that. At least some women can, or at least most women can. So since men have that advantage, okay, I need that, is to complement each other. I, I, I um, Mr. Madia did mention in terms of like- Call my name again. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> mentioned that like, you know, men tend to go through a lot in a relationship, you know, and I would say yes, because women tend to always, like women are the ones that actually keep the marriage going. I think men sometimes, majority of that are just there, they believe I'm just supposed to provide. And that's why if you look at majority of families, you see the men tend to provide a house, to provide the food, like resources to get the food and provide financially, but they're never actually really present in the household. Do they have I don't know where that comes from. I don't even know where that comes from. How, that's, 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 that's your that, understanding that, of marriage. That's it. Well, that, that, yeah, that, no, that doesn't we, follow my, my parents. That, that doesn't follow my aunties and uncles. It doesn't no, follow I, I, anything I, I, of my I, experience. I said majority in terms of like actually, because major everyone has mentioned how women are the ones that raise the child. Yeah, but so you've got to saying, speak from it. You've got to speak from aspects that you not just read about, no, I'm, I'm, or you, I'm but you saying, experience. Have you, is that what I, you experience? Yeah, from your mom and dad, from your mother I, and father, I, I, you experience I, a one-sided relationship that, between them. No, speaking. you're not getting what I'm saying. I do not I'm say not, we not. have. We, I'm not saying that we have men that are not, that are just absent, like they're not existing. But I mean, there's a difference between physically there and actually being very much present. In most, that's why you see that majority of them, children tend to go or like have this bond with their mother because from day one, majority of the time, the mother is always there. And this is not to say men are not there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying men are just, but society has kind of conditioned that forever what about the mother you? is always there. Forget society for a minute. What about you? What is, is that your experience? I, I, not necessarily. What, well, I would say. What, what, do, you like? what, what do you like? Of course not. You're just speaking. You. You're just no, speaking. No, no. I, I, I'm, I'm about to answer your question. I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to answer your question. Okay. I would say that my mother was very much yeah, you, present. Not to say my. I'm not to say my father wasn't present, but if I should really divide it. Based on. If I should divide it based on 100%, I would say my mother is 70% more present than my father. Not to say he wasn't present, but my mother was there. Like, I saw that woman every single day. And you Compared understand why that is essential but, 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 but society. But me, but me yes. tell me the truth. Eh? Between your father and your mother, who do you, who do you, who do you, who do you, who do you like more? Who do you like? Hey, mama, more? Nah, you don't talk now. Say that in mama. No. Uh, to be honest, I, I can't choose because I love my parents equally. <laughs> Who do you like talk to? Who do you like? She she likes that that's more. that's she not likes a necessary question. That's not necessary. What are you talking about? She's already answered the question now. Don't worry now. Your mom is guys. Guys. She's not doing it. I bet my lips will be alone. This thing that Amadio has said now, this thing that Amadio has said now, is really something that made me actually, I will just say it here. Something that maybe break up, you know, a relationship I was in. Because the mother tends to be making the kids feel like she's providing while mm -hmm. there's a joint account, account. where you are providing. <laughs> you know? so so you, know, you find out that these kids don't know who is bringing this money. You understand? <laughs> but because of that, I put out, now I, take, I can take my kids to to places and spend. I just have to show them that this is coming from you. Don't go and spoil my, my future for me, you know? So that is key. Men are suffering. I will not lie to you. Men are going through a lot. But I understand the topic on women and I understand why women are getting a lot of attention because truly we are stronger physically. And then there's a large, you know, it, it's been going on for centuries that it is their what time. A what a what I, I, I don't always believe. I don't. I don't always believe that we understand what we take from our parents, especially from a male and and female aspect. My my mother was a businesswoman. She was a commodity trader. So the majority of the money that came through our, our home over the years was through my mum. But my father was an academic. He was a professional. He was a biochemist. He was a man, a cerebral person. What I got from my dad was 10 times more than I got from my mum. No, not based on, no, I, I won't want to make that competition. 
but the what the balance as a man that I took from my dad. My mother um, is rather a, an emotive person. It's not to say that she's free from him. Uh, she doesn't know she because she was a great businesswoman. And as I said, she brought the majority of the money into. We knew where the money was coming from. We're not stupid. As children, we know what's going on in our family, unless unless we are truly being oppressed in that household. Now, I, I ask all of us as Nigerians to speak for, about ourselves accurately and not to join in with the full bullshit that's swilling around in the world. If your parents are two people who loved each other and brought up a family and you cannot see the objective passions that they poured into the family, then you start calling man and woman. Nah, nah, nah. I, I'm afraid I don't know who you are, what you're talking about. You don't, you're not talking from an aspect of experience. You're talking from an aspect of what you read and you, you're not able to combine the two. I, I don't know what we talk about at times. Are we stupid? I, I'm listening I to all this folly, folly going on here. Think, when, why are you speaking folly? You a, Speak the truth of who I you think, are, my persons. I think you, you have a point, but you know, T.D. Jakes, I just say this one and hands up. T.D. Jakes, I don't know if you know this pastor T.D. Jakes. She, she, yeah, yeah, he had this preaching, he said, I, I'm a man. A man cannot provide for you and be present all the time. It's either one of the two. It's either I'm present, but I cannot provide. Or I provide, but I cannot be present all the time. A real man who provides for his family cannot be there all the time. So I said also, uh, you listen to men, oh. uh, men of God preaching. My wow. <laughs> yes, please, Bumi, go ahead. Please go ahead. I, I, I would really love to understand what you all understood from my delivery because I feel like we're kind of saying the same thing because I'm not out here to shame men or to shame women or to uplift men or to uplift women. I'm just trying to state what I see, what I have seen too. Mr. Jaggi, you did say talk about experience. And I would say I have seen abuse from both men and women physically. Okay, and this is not me see it's there. I'm not out here just saying oh, I watch Nollywood drama. It, it's it's there. Abuse is there. Okay, and it's there is no lie to say that the woman has more connection to the children. It's literally chemistry. And the breastfeeding of a child is literally there. There are hormones and all those things there. Like we it's the science there because I can tell you this, Romeo. I can tell you this. As a man, I learned obviously from both of my parents, and I took. I, you know, you don't even know what you're taking from. Um, um, but, but from my, it, wait, wait, wait! Can I just can I just land this point. real quick, real quick, bro? Please. Okay, try to keep it brief then. Sorry, I didn't hear you, bro. I said try to keep it brief then, so that you can finish up what she's saying. Because Ed wants to say something. I don't think you can hear me. Ah, uh, you he can't hear me. Um. Let me um, carry on. Either way, sorry. I think he's back. Yeah, you couldn't hear me. I was saying that you should finish it quickly so that she can finish what she's saying. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, oh but me, I, I, I'm not speaking to you downly. Um, I understand that you're a young person and you're finding out a lot of things. But I would implore you to look at your parents and what they have actually done. And us as Nigerians, I, I feel strongly that I would know much of what your parents have given you as a Nigerian. And as such, sometimes we need to come from that aspect of understanding. We know where there are problems and issues. You see, as men, we lose our, as boys, the love for us is different from the love for girls in the family household. The love for us finishes by the time we're between 10 and 13. They don't, they don't love us the same way as children anymore. They leave us a lot to our own and we have to figure out a lot as men, emotionally. Whereas men in, women in the family, they maintain their modi coddling, if you like, throughout the ages. They, they maintain that, you understand? And these aspects, you, one has to really understand the differences between a male and a female, because these things don't happen by accident. They happen for real, for real reasons. Men 
have to work things out emotionally from a much younger age. That's why we become more stoic than women. That's why we hold our emotions differently from how women, because we can't be blurting around crying and bleating all day long in the street when we've got work to do. We can't behave exactly. like you guys. We just can't. We can't afford to. And if you don't put this into the aspect of your speech, then it means that you're not understanding what the roles of male and female are. And that's that's the bottom line. Thank you. Thank you. So no one is disagreeing to the aspect that men and women are different. I think we are just talking about, about how we as a society have run for generations. And there are always side effects to certain things. In terms of, like you mentioned, as a man, you can't. You don't have the luxury to be crying anyhow because you need to be a man. You need to find to provide. But understand what that does. It basically limits you from your what's actually happening inside of you. You don't have time to focus on that. So you have a bunch of men who are unable to regulate their emotion. And why do you think they die early? Just like Mr. Maria have mentioned. Had breath, had blood, uh, high blood pressure, depression, because they're going through a lot. I ask the question: Why is it that men cannot talk about when they're struggling? Because they don't have time for that. It's seen as nonsense, and this is what people are trying to talk about. That we understand that you have to be provider, but this is the side effect of you being that provider. You're dying early. You're, it's becoming impossible to communicate with a man. And that's why, as when, when I say that when they ask women, what do you want? We do want men that can provide, but we also want a man that we can able, we would be able to communicate with so they don't die early. Mm. That's I, I, what we're talking about. What is the solution? What is the solution? What, what, what are I telling us? So I won't die early. <laughs> what, what, basically what ma majority of women is like as much as you want to be a provider you need to remove that idea of is our nature to just be aggressive and not talk about anything you might not be talking about it with every single person but at least there are certain people you should have in your life your wife your your like you should have some that's why you see women are so open-minded we don't die from depression easily because we will talk if we're angry we'll tell you we're angry and you will ask and then you figure out how to solve that uh, 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 that's where I'm, the I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether whether being metrosexual is the reason why men are dying younger they are dying younger because they live more hazardous lives they are dying no younger. Them. No, for father, don't change it. But, I don't but, think you're. Let, let, right let, let me let me let me finish my point. The reason why I, there's more pressure on them from the I don't I'm not sure. See, there's pressure on women. There's pressure on men. It's just that the, the, the pressures are different. The men they are dealing with their elements themselves most of the time. When there is a problem, they have to address it. If there is a famine, they have to deal with it. There is a hurricane, there is a security threat, or that is that they deal with that's hazards. That's, uh, Hence, that's the not the approach... major reason. That's not, that's not the major reason. No, no, like no, a man doesn't they, have yeah. peace at home. A it man, to be. excuse me, a oh. man doesn't have peace at home. Is Your the reason why they die? If you know, excuse me, if you have done all the hard work, now you come home to find mm. peace, and your wife. Is giving you the, that hot fire. How will you feel? Even if the wife is your wife is perfectly fine, still most men die before their wives. So that is quite so, that that so it isn't only because what they do as this is because of as that work. Even we may go through the natural mm. as that everything. We may also do very hard oh, work. I, I, okay, if you okay, if that's the point you're making, genetically so, they, they are also of they mind, are, they are more fortified biologically. Most to, to anybody, mm. peace of mind is most important thing. Because you find try to find comfort in your wife, and when you come, you don't find that comfort. What will you do? Peace of mind is a state of for, mind. For, for, for so for that. that can be the real reason. For, for 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 let me for let me shake for the for table a little bit. From what you do, from what is mm. deep past table shaker, table shaker, shaker. Let me shake the table a little bit. Let me shake the table a little bit. You know that's what I do. 
I, I think Ed wanted to ask, say something before. He said he was, he was going to change the topic. Oh. So yeah, don't change the topic table. yet. Don't change the topic yet. Let me shake the table a little bit. You know, they say men die earlier from uh, emotional problems. And forefather said he thinks it's because of physical hard work. But let me shake the table a little bit. How many men? A combination of all of them. If I they say men is. should do, I'm not, I'm not instigating anything now. If they say all. All, all men should do DNA tests for that children. How many will find out? How, <laughs> how many will leave us? Have you done your own? Have you done your own? Have you done your own? This is what should be done. Why do your own tests? Collect why? Why do your own tests? This is the reason why. This is the reason why. You see what he said here. Prefer masculine. They go and sleep with the masculine guy and go and pass the, the, the children to the feminine one. That is what is causing it. Because genetically, they are wired. They understood genetically. Something that is not spoken in words, that they need to go for the stronger man than the feminine one. They go and use him. And, I, and they still divorce them in the end, though. After they marry the metrosexual man, they are done with him. They, they divorce the guy. And the guy goes are on they, the street. And even, I meet him on the street and he's crying. No, I don't even marry for the first place. Hmm? Oh, yeah, they, the they don't know. Sometimes they do marry some of them. They, they do get married sometimes. Yeah, but you know mm. that some of them don't be married. Just I love you, I love you. Don't carry loot. It's not the bumpy thing. You can come back. No, that's why. No, please, I want to tell you something. Listen, I want to tell you something. Why marriage lasts those years back is different for higher. For if I to get married years back, it takes like a year for me to put it through the process. All right? Process in a way that even the day you're going to do your marriage, you chatter like two buses, carry the whole music, everybody will follow. It's got to go and come. After looking at all those, then someone going to tell you, say, divorce. You come and say, <laughs> you know, all, the process of getting married years back is, is like you're going to school. You're going for mothers, like, so it's cool. You're going to another land. You see, the people will call you in different in the morning. Your mother will call you. Father will call you to tell you what it. My, my, my father called me say, now nah, woman, woman is like this. It's like this. Treat her like this. Treat her like this. Do this. Do that. All right. They will take you every day. Your mother. Yeah. Everybody will always advise you so many things to do, but not when you don't wake up one morning. God says, I love you. I love you. Can you back enter the house? He said, Mommy, I'm not married. I'm thought I'm expecting a, a baby. Before you know, so, two don't drop. So, mm, anyway, let me show, say, let, let, yeah, let me show me done. this. But me, you share this information. Um, you said some women tend to be more unhappily married. 96% of non cuddlers have an awful sex life. And why one night stands are dangerous. Uh, this is an audio, this is it's almost two hours, something long. So, I'm we can't necessarily play it. But I thought I should share that since you shared it at the backstage. However, okay. look at this information okay. here. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Let me share this information. This information indicates that the divorce, the reasons for divorce is what I searched for. And top of the list, lack of commitment. Infidelity or extra money. Look at where domestic violence comes in. Yeah. So, and when you talk about relationship diseases, it's often... Abuse, 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 they talk about. But at the core of the problem that is going on, and most of that, those divorces, I think they say there's one poll that shows 70 to 80 percent of uh, divorces. The women are the ones that trigger it. Mm -hmm. And if most of them is due to lack of commitment, it shows that they are marrying the men they don't even like. These are, no, these no, are, no, these no, are no, the questions no, no, no. I put listen, to listen, you guys. Uh, let, me let, let me tell you, don't like what Billy is saying, all right? What a man, uh, what a woman would do. A man will ignore it. If you a man do it, a woman will divorce you for it. So that's why they say that women trigger it. All right. I, I, because, one thing again. Okay, let me ask a question. Let me ask, let me ask a question. Bumi is yeah, Bumi can help us out with some information. Let, let me, Bumi, let me Bumi, ask, Bumi is not married now. Why should we help you for information? Let uh, she's speaking on behalf of how many billion women today? Uh, I've so told that. I've told that. Let me ask a question. What about in a country whereby that was not allowed? Uh, which what? country is that? What kind of country, which kind of country is that? Know. I don't know don't which know. country is that one. I don't know which one. The, the country is, is your neighbor. Hurry up and pronounce it, my it's friend. Ireland. Get, get Ireland. 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 I was not allowed in Ireland. I'm not sure, you know. I, I didn't but know that. Country, though. Because if I thought that was in, I had to go to UK. They go and that was in the UK. I didn't know that. Before. I think they would do that with abortion, not with marriage. 
Please, Ibumi, you are here. Please, I, I, there's also a, a, a thing no, 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 I, I, I want to clarify. Also, divorce is not allowed. I, think so. I want to clarify. I, 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 I want to clarify. 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 I want to so I think you should be allowed to uh, divorce. Yeah, now. okay. Before it was not allowed before. But, yeah, there was a time it was me, illegal. Let me ask this question before I wow. leave the panel. In Catholic Church, the divorce is not allowed. I said it being ministered by the a, a, a bishop. Please, so please, let me ask this question so, before I leave yeah. the panel. I beg, Gumi, you are here. Is it true that women women get together with a man, with a man, but the real person they want is not ready for a relationship? See, because you don't know marriage or marriage. Not today. So they just get <laughs> not today. Is this, is doesn't this know that this? yet now. She has not. She has not made such decisions uh, yet. How How is How is her answer? We are not aware. How is her answer going to give you? Any question? Ask your girlfriend. The question. No answer that question, Bumi. They can give us the answer. Okay, I think let's uh, this is there's a second lady on the on the panel now. Oh, so Bumi, you have more, more representative yeah. sharing the load now. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, 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 uh, welcome, welcome uh, a black beauty. Hello, ah, you don't you don't run. Good evening. Good evening my dear. No, no, I was trying to fix my microphone. I really was going to just relax today. I didn't, you know, I think one thing about being a woman is um you have to create a mind of scarcity. People can't always have your time and you can't always be available. I wasn't planning on joining this this uh, this panel because I want to be missed and missed. <laughs> and I want men to, to love me when I come around. So I don't like to make myself too available. But and that's probably why I turned off my camera uh, yesterday because I was fully prepared to not have my face on the panel for 10 hours which is so much easier for a man than a woman because we got to refresh. We got, you know, it's different for us. Um, but I, I think a lot of things have been said and I'm still listening. I don't really have any input right now, uh, but I will say that, you know, to Dr. Damage's uh, question earlier about would I, would I choose to be reborn <laughs> as a man? That is a hard pass. Uh, life is wonderful as a woman. Beautiful. And that's all I have yeah. to say. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 that, 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 no, that is true. And the, the truth is, uh, I, I can't say the same because if I say this, the people are going to be thinking at me weirdly. But point is, <laughs> point I, is, I, I life is wonderful. Life is wonderful. Is life wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you, are you uh, seeing uh, the aggression uh, out there? Blast to the better go sit down outside. That is life. That is wonderful. See, now, now, see the, you're at the court of final. Get out of here. I slide wonderful <laughs> as a woman. Uh, okay, it's a fair question, actually. Okay. Um, well, imagine you grow up and you have a big family, you know, and then you have your mom. And see, I'm my dad had many women. So my mother is a, like his third woman. All right. Mm -hmm. So you grow up and you have your dad and he, he dotes over you. And your grandma loves you, and your mommy loves you, and your half sisters and your cousins love you, and you grow up just being loved. And then you get into relationships where men love you, where they want yeah. you to create. They want. This you is to what I've been saying. Ah, so what I'm saying is, is that depending on what your outlook is and the life that you have as a woman, is how you will perceive it. For me, there are tough spots as a woman. And I think the tough spots are when I'm trying and deliberately going after something that would be traditionally seen as a masculine thing. So for example, like Jagun said, I'm probably a lot like his mother. I work in finance. I'm a real beast, but nobody has to know that. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's one of those things where as a woman, if you have been afforded that that and it's not about money, right? It's about the way that people treat you. Even when I come to Lagos, the way that people fawn over me and love me, the way that even when I'm in Sierra Leone, the way people love me, the way people love me here in Brooklyn, the way people love me in the Bronx, 
anywhere I go. That is something that I wish you all as men have had. Some of you have, depending on what you've done in your life, how many people you've impacted and influenced. But I wish you all have had the opportunity to feel that warm embrace that comes mm -hmm. with the life of a woman, that some of you will never feel it. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh my God. Beautiful. You see, you see, Bumi, you have been hiding yeah, all these yeah. facts, eh? No. So they have been loving wonderful. on you everywhere. Wonderful. And you can tell us if life is so hard for women. You see the kind of stuff Bumi is doing. <laughs> this is a real woman talking. <laughs> you guys are getting me. You know, but, but you want to know something, Bumi? Mm -hmm. You you're so beautiful. Your face, your your skin is so you're so young and beautiful. And I want you to understand that because you're so young and beautiful, you gotta let loose of the old lady problems. Let loose of any of the old lady rhetoric that would seek to hold you down as a woman. Right. Them old ladies' problems is not your problem. Your only problem in life is to stay young, stay healthy, stay flexible and stay inspirational. You know, you're you're not here to solve the problems of grandmama and mama and all that. You're here to do for Bumi what is done for Bumi and you're here to make the men and you're here to make the men around Bumi respect Bumi and love her every time she steps in the room. They must love her. That's not for you. You're not here to solve their problems. If they were getting abused, something in their heart and soul allowed them to be abused. Because when my grandmother got abused, she did pick up the frying pan and bust mm. him in the face. You understand? <laughs> so what I want you to understand is that's, that's not your problem. That's not your problem. more Trini to me. Yeah, that's Trini not, girl. <laughs> that's not your problem. Your only problem is to stay healthy. And, and intelligence is important, but you don't have to lead with it. Stay healthy. And healthy is key, right? Because I'm much older than I look. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay light and jovial. Light, light as a feather, wow. right? Free as a bird, wow. jovial, as, jovial as a teenager, and you That's will be right. healthy as your life. That's oh the, no, 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 the, the better crazy. advice hasn't been given on this platform. <laughs> Wonderful. Can I add to that? How is that? What are that going to do with me? Eh? Is it Bumi wants to add to that. Bumi wants to say something. <laughs> yes, please. I totally agree with what you just said, because to be honest, when I do hear some certain statements from certain people, you know, because for me, I know the kind of life I want to live. You know, I know the kind of person I do want to settle down with. So if I hear someone making an argument, I'm just like, well, you're definitely not what I want. You know, if a man says, oh, he, he wants me to stay in the kitchen and, you know, cook for the rest of my life. I know I don't want to do that, right. you know? So I know what I want. So I 100% agree with you. But yeah. for me, it's if we're talking about a broader sense in terms of, like, what we have in society, mm -hmm. that's where my opinions are coming in terms of, like, okay, this yeah. is what things are. You know, society I'm not trying trash. to... Sorry? Society is trash. Exactly. So I'm just talking about based on society. This is where we are, you know, and mm -hmm. the thing is that my argument is not necessarily that oh, women's lives are the worst. Mm -hmm. I actually believe that both lives are trash, mm -hmm. you know, and but I feel like when women tend to talk about how trash society is, I feel mm -hmm. like men just feel like, oh, she's only addressing her problem. Mm. It's like I'm also addressing your problem, and a good mm. example is when forefathers brought up that date that graph that shows how men die compared to women. I'm like, right, that was too much. Why are you trying to shock us with that information? That was sensational. And, and that I actually no, no, because I felt like she was one sided. That's why, and, and she's right. That that's and what that's, I thought, and that's what majority of women. That's like your, the argument is like, look, we need to change this stuff in society because as much as we tend to cry a lot it's like mm -hmm. when you look at the numbers you're dying the most mm -hmm. okay not be me and i go still like 80 90 i did my beer <laughs> i got my color my beer but that's the problem i was just having my wine drink I go still no, like 90, no I know that monk. so that's that's where my argument stems from in terms oh. of like Yes, we we talk because we tend to like 
us women, when we have a problem, we will voice it. But mm -hmm. men don't tend to voice the problem. And that's what continues this generational... That, that's not true. Say. That's not true. You see, amongst, amongst... You see, what happens in terms of friendships, men keep friendships for far longer than women. Women Very don't true. know how to be... Women do not know how to be friends between themselves. My friendship group is from the 1970s, the, the strongest friendship group that I have. And the way we as friends, male friends, the way we love each other and the way we um, confide, the way we analyze each other, the way we tell ourselves the truth is the sharpening of our wit in this wicked world. All these things that you read about aren't true. If you have a look around you, you will see that they're not true. You'd see your male counterparts forming friendships. You see those guys in 20 years' time, they will still be together, but it will be different from your female friends. I guarantee you. Then then talk. Then talk about this aspect of, of men not, not voicing their opinion. Then, men don't always voice their shit to women because women have a level of understanding where men's issues are concerned and then it cuts off whereas men we can actually speak out to each other what you're speaking about is european men african men are not like european men they're different so please all these things that you're they, they, none of them are apparent in my life none of them thank you hey, um, you're me wrong i'm not saying this is what happens in every source like 100 percent. obviously they're outliers I might be talking about this, but it's not something that I would say has directly affected me, but it doesn't mean it does not exist. You can say this doesn't happen, but then we had a guest that literally wrote a book about what goes on in society too, about things like this. So it might not be present in your life because thank goodness it's not present in your life. It's not something I'm wishing to spread out or I'm spreading, hey, you have to you know how Nigerians always say, let Nigeria happen to you. I don't want Nigeria to happen to you before you believe it does exist. So I am very happy it doesn't, it's not present in your life. And I'm very happy that you had a healthy relationship when it comes to your father and your mother. But it does not change the fact that it does exist. It doesn't change the fact that you do have abusive women. You also do have abusive men. It doesn't change yeah, those actions. Uh, you know, you allow Ed to speak, please, because he's uh, been waiting to okay. speak for a very long time. Let's yeah, respect the time. Uh, sorry, Ed, uh, I've yeah, uh, no really, he's, he's just been reverting some of the conversation. Why are you telling so. you sorry? Why are you telling you sorry? Because yeah, I wish, uh, there's a lot of time we've taken <laughs> from him. <laughs> yeah, 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 speak. Speak. Maybe allow him, allow him now. Yeah, yeah. Speak, um, it, speak, it's, been, it's been a beautiful conversation, and, and thank you, um, a Black Beauty, for coming on. Um, it's really good to hear, like, you know, a very robust um, conversation from different perspectives, and um, that's what your coming in has really afforded us. <laughs> you know, um, talking about because our conversation now is about gender. I wanted to kind of pivot a little bit to the conversation yesterday uh, about <laughs> Bob Risky. <laughs> I wanted to come on the platform to speak, but. I just got you know busy with other things. Um, so why I really wanted to come on was I, I think two some some of the um, panelists yesterday were making the point about how it was um, not well treated by the Nigerian police force um, in in the sense that it came to the it came to the courts um, on like the way it would normally as in appear in public right so i was wondering if there was any um information maybe media information about that because I, when yeah, i thought but... about it my mind my my mind was like my boy when we see bob Risky, okay? there are two there are two personalities to bob Risky that i i i see there's the bob Risky that is idris okuna someone who sees himself as a guy and then there's the bob Risky who you know in 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 a bid because that's that's what he does for a living in a bid to sell his content actually expresses himself in another way now i'm not here to pass any moral judgments on on it i'm just really wanting to speak on the issue of what the nigerian police force did with him 
because it's good to know how he, how he sees himself. Because I remember that Bob Risky at, at, at some point has actually, um, when it when it came to like um, occasions or events involving his family, you know, there's a way he's expressed himself, like in terms of his dressing. You know, for example, when his dad had his birthday, Bob Risky was there as a man with a face cap and a jalabia. And I think that was also the case when the father had his funeral, although this time he covered himself. And then he, he's also had some run-ins with the law where he's come as a man. So my whole point is, are we, in as much as we know that our Nigerian police force can be really funny, are we not unjustly um, accusing them of, you know, taking away this person's rights? You know, because it could just be this is the way he knows who he is, you know, that's that's one part, you know, and then knowing that he's going into enemy territory because most of us see a police station or a court um, of law as, as a very hostile territory. So you don't want to, you know, um, aggravate your situation by also like dressing in a way that is, you know, not in line with the laws of the land, right? So I just wanted to point that out and also um, say that, now, as much as I seemingly am absorbing the, the the Nigerian police force in this case, I also want to bring a case to, case against them because what we see here just really points out to. Uh, Eddie, before I go fight, EFCC, not police. EFCC, I beg. Yeah, yeah, oh, EFCC, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, because law, police, police, law, police, police, police. Yeah. No, sorry, sorry. EFCC, law, not police. Law enforcement yeah. generally, and, and what you said is really. It's very important because it's it's going to the next point I'm trying to make. Does it seem it doesn't? Oh, seem they are the same them. people. They are the same people. Yeah. Does, no, does the not, same people. Wait. Let me let me land my point. Does it not seem to us that our law enforcement because this the real contention here is that our law enforcement seems to be for the highest bidder. Because if you're tracing what's going on in our social media space, you see that there's this squabble between Bobrisky and a guy called Very Dark Man. And of course, there's there's a lot of extensions of this issue with Portable and all of that getting into it, right? So in the first case, Very Dark Man was put in prison recently and, he, and there was this whole idea of, well, um, this jargon, calm down now. <laughs> I, know, I know this is not a topic you want to talk about. And I, I, I had already kind of given a preamble that I was going to Take it as a they come out offline. Yeah, I, I, I already said that to I mean, so please just just give me the grace for, for now, right? So um sorry, did I say anything? I saw you say something in the comments. <laughs> I know you <laughs> <laughs> Jack, but calm down. I'm not I'm not, I'm not me, why, Eddie, you say you didn't want to talk about it yesterday. I was talking about it today. I don't no, think I you understand. I, I don't think you've understood what I wrote in the comment too. But anyway, continue, please. Yeah, I was not here, so and it was a topic I really wanted to talk about, right? I'll, I'll you guys can come back to the topic, but I just wanted to express this this um my opinion on Speak yes, your mind. right? So okay. okay, so my point is, does it not seem like our law enforcement is for the highest bidder? Because you see, this old very dark man actually um being in prison and he accused um or he alleged that Bobrisky and some other people were involved in his ordeal, right? And then when he's released, he actually um, said something that suggested that he was going to go after Bob Risky. And then a few days later, we see another um, arm of our law enforcement, this time EFCC, accusing Bob Risky of a crime, right? And actually taking him to court. So it just seems to me like, you know, I know some people also said, oh, um, the law is actually against the weak, but Bob Risky himself is not so weak as he's, um, he was presented. As he's not so weak. He also has his own connections. So that's just the, the little thing I wanted to say. Um, and I thought that it was a bit off the point, but of the point of what we're discussing today, but we're still discussing gender roles. And I wanted to kind of bring everything together by asking... But if okay, you, no, no, no. I want to bring Ed, if you are yeah. speaking about strength in our society, anybody that identifies as a transgender or gay or lesbian is weak in our society because no, what I mean is 
frowns against you from a, from every angle. So you you're can right. You're, I'm not talking of again. You remember that I distinguish between Bob Risky's personalities, mm. right? And I'm, the point I'm making here is that we don't. Uh, guys, uh, Bob Risky himself is not. Yes. So I think there, though. Come, right. Right. Thank you, bro. Thank you for, thank you for coming, Yeah, we're back. Nice one. Yeah. Nice right. one. Yes, right. sir. In in the sense that he has a lot of connections in society too. So that's yeah, the point right. I'm trying. That's the point I'm trying to make. But yeah, that's, then, what saying. Saying. that's what I'm saying. Sometimes, even even if he has connections, he is coming from a weak position in our society. Yes, the yes, yes. I agree, I agree on that. Strong. I agree on that. But then, we, but then, but then that also. Do you know, you know that I also made the point that is it might not he might not be a person of that community because there's a way he expresses himself when it comes to like family issues because you, you your real expression is when you're with your family, right? So, and there's a way he presents himself in the media. So I just wanted to start, account for those two different personalities. But then let's let's forget about my little um, of, mm. of keyism, according to, to Jagu. If, if and you're saying something about whether the law, law enforcement is, you know, for the highest bidder, it's true. That's obvious. Um, and I think if you have a capitalist system, that is simply what you have to remember. Even without the capitalist system, you still have it, even in communists and all systems. Because people that are at the top of society tend to get their way within these uh, systems. It's just how society is. It's just a matter of degree. That's, that's yes, the only yes. measurement you have. That, 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 that's yeah. So in Nigeria, maybe it seems like it comes across as if it's stronger in Nigeria. That it, like people, you know, they first 20 to 30 percent of top people can influence the legal system while in the uk you will see that maybe it's the top 10 or the top five percent that can actually influence uh, the legal system so it's all a matter of degree but I personally i'm not too forced about how whether they took him to court wearing a certain clothes i don't know why people are because yeah, they that's they, what I people, wear, people wear jumpsuit to 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 court in america all the time like those orange stuff that they wear so do we say oh why are they dressed like that they should wear suits and stuff like that you don't necessarily have the luxury if you are being accused of a crime uh especially if you have been no, what, detained. What, what the truth is you have to be well taken care of even on TV. taking care of is a different yeah, thing, so, not, so. but i'm just trying to point because it's made it look like he was being deprived of his rights because of what he represents. But I'm saying that that could actually be his personal decision mm. because he's, we've seen him in other contexts where he dressed exactly that way. And also mm. he knows the fact that he's going into enemy territory because that's the way we see our law enforcement. But then mm. I wanted to quickly bring us back to our, the topic on Grant. And I'm sorry that Black Beauty left due to my of keyism. But I wanted to ask mm. you, yes. you my like, brother, please, my brother. I, when I wrote off key, I didn't. I wrote it in the in the public forum, not in the private. If I wanted to address you, I'd have done so in the back. No, I'm, so not, that I'm, was not, not, I'm not even. I'm not even mad about. No, it. that like, wasn't I'm, for you. Is all I'm saying. No, it's not about offense. It simply wasn't for you. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. So, bringing it on a light note to Bumi, Bumi, we've asked this question about um, I would like to come into the world if we are given a second chance. Do you think that it gives credence to the other um, arguments that someone like Bob Risky would like to be a woman in our Nigerian society? Do you think it's because there, there is some advantage that accrues to being a woman in our society? And, and I mean this lightheartedly. Um, I, I can't really speak for Bob Risky because I do have some question when it, when it comes to Bob Risky. Um, so I, if if you're talking about other, like in the Western society, probably, but in Nigeria, I can't really speak on that, because I don't really know what Bob Risky stands for. You know, I know Bob Risky tends to say, "Oh, they're trans," but I sometimes see Bob Risky being a hypocrite. Hi. No. That guy, man. <laughs> Why are you showing us now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that woman confused me. That, that, that guy confused me. I, tell you. I, I actually thought it was a lady. I didn't know it was a guy. I didn't know. It's very in that police video, uh, this thing. I thought it was a lady there. I didn't know it was a guy. It's crazy. Can we take it away? <laughs> I feel like Bob Risky has seen a, a means to entertain or like find another source of income and it's just rolling with it because that's, that's how I see about risky because I don't I can't really say if 
truly, truly deep in Bobrisky's heart that they actually believe that this is this and this is that. I just don't. So you don't think it's actually LGBTQ plus? No, because Bobrisky made one statement in terms of, I think there was an arrest, is it last, I think it was last year, at the end of last year, whereby the police came into a gay wedding and they arrested them, you know, and but Brisky made like a comment saying that why would you be having a gay wedding in a in a country like Nigeria, whereby it's against the law? And I'm just like, what do you mean by that? When you're lit, you're literally your existence is basically against the law. Mm. But you you you're still existing in that country. So it's just like you're trying to have your cake and eat it. You're trying to be the only center of attention. You're not actually advocating for the whole LGBT community. You're advocating for yourself. So yeah, that reminds me. That, that reminds me of a program in the UK. I'm the only gay in the village. I don't know whether Jago knows about it. Um, oh, really? That's that, that why like I'm the only gay in the village. Maybe that's what Bob Risky is doing. Can, can I wait on the Bob Risky issue? Mm. Can I wait? And you know, many, many, many who aren't who are fashionably gay or fashionably transsexual. As opposed yeah, to exactly. I wanted to say something really looking that, deeply. That, that, let, let me just say, let me just say, instead of looking deeply, that this is their aspect. You know, you know, I don't believe in all this transgenderism. I don't really follow LGBT. It's just, it's just, just magu magu in my eyes. However, however, when I when I do look at uh, the aspects of somebody's psychology, I mean, you know, the problems that we have already just being a human being. Imagine being a human being who had this aspect mentally that he or she is of the opposite sex. Do you know what kind of loneliness that must be? I mean, my God, I, I can't fathom it really. Um, and I, I agree that Bob Risky is not going through this. I mean, um, if, you're, if you're a transgender and you're not doing the, the, that therapy that changes your sex and actuality, then I think you know that there is no such thing as transgenderism, basically. Can, okay. can I just weigh in on the Bob Risky issue? For me, I think I think you will you will be amazed at the kind of things a lot of people are exploring, especially when you come from the gutter. You know, let's mm -hmm. take for instance a man who looks exactly like a man who is a man told us that he has given somebody a hand job before. That's VDM. That guy's a guy. Oh my you God. Yeah. So you can Are we see... saying all this live now? No, hold on, hold on. Mm? He explored that when he was broke to the core. He wanted to, you know. And then look at the Bobriski. Now imagine how much more Bobriski explored when he was broke. Because he was broke. I saw a picture of this guy when he was actually beating Blue Black for stealing something. I don't know. And it was actually there was actually a short uh, picture of that on the internet. You know that was where this guy is coming from. And you know they say that every human has a male and female side. And God help you that you don't mistakenly explore the female side of you. Then you you now because of the cash and the you know survivor you now explore it more. I think that's what happened with Bobrisky. I believe he explored his female side. And he exploited the opportunity, and he found he found out along the line that there's so many people who liked it. You know, this guy, this guy, like you said, Ed, there are some powerful people behind this guy. You know, who will never reveal. There's this powerful guy in Dubai that has a, a brutal change. Who Bobrisky made mention of one time, and the guy was coming after Bobrisky to never say his name anymore because I think they had a they had a kind of relationship. You know. So these are the kind of monies that this guy was meeting along the line of exploring this is feminine side. And somehow he decided to take it up a notch. Since the social media influencing is what is what is the fad, you know? And that is why why we have a Bob Risky today, you know? And I'm, I'm quite surprised, actually, given that Nigeria is very, you know, they, yeah, the yeah. Law, they are very uh, anti that. And oh, you he, find you find a lot of people exploring that. certain things. If you are, if you allow people, they will explore their feminine side. People are so broke in that country right now. They will <laughs> explore, 
<laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, see, I, they, they you know, about, you know, you have a feminine side too. We all, we all have it. But, we, we all have it. The, the, yes. the point is, what are how you express it? Because society still needs to function, you see, because people have all kinds of weird things going on in their mind. You don't always express them. Like I mean, that would not want to hear it. There are some part, no, no, there are some aspects <laughs> of us. No, no, you, you can't do that. You no, know, it's it's true. Jago may be coming across as being um, a kind of stiff on that side, but if you feel that from the other point of view, almost every aspect of society, there are some parts we decide that it's a crime. There are some areas that is unacceptable during certain periods of time, and being a uh, trans in the West is seen as okay now, but in the in the African society is not. And you, I think there's an element of you should respect the rules. It's just what it is. Some like you know, you, you, like pedophiles now. Some of the way people think about pedophiles in Western societies, the way they treat it now is worse. I think it's probably worse than the terrorists right now, <laughs> especially in the UK. <laughs> But in some in other societies, it's different. So people, societies have certain things that they, that they find completely abhorrent. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, uh, it's okay to just, because it's okay somewhere else, you should do that in that society. Like in Nigeria, they don't want it. Don't do it. You don't have to forget that some of these things start with abuse from childhood. And then maybe... Well, father, the I, just, I just put a link there. So, sorry, mm. Xer. I just put a link there of his picture during his father's birthday. Um, I, oh I I want to I want to disagree, but at the same time I also want to agree with the last point that forefathers made in terms of like. At the end of the day, I feel like we do tend to choose what we do accept in society or not. I think the whole idea of what is natural, or not natural, is just based on what your society deems Jesus. right or wrong. You know. But this is not, but if there's one thing I will disagree with 100% is, you know, the whole pedophiles, young and extremely old people, that's just wrong because there's no way you can justify that because a child does not have the ability to say yes or no to certain things, you know, to consent. But if it's totally between two con between two adults the, it's your life do what you want to do yeah. but but just like forefather says that certain communities tend to accept certain things and also not accept a certain thing you know i wouldn't force anything on anyone like to say oh Jeez. force anything on you or then kill you or be the same person sorry <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy man this black guy has gone far. I'm um, sorry, um, uh, um, uh, Bumi, go Yeah, but, but, but what actually baffles me the most is when the whole topic of the LGBTQ pops up in most African countries. It's like when, when you say that word or when that comes in, there's this kind of like, <laughs> like everyone stands up. <laughs> like everyone is just so like, oh, oh and hell no. We're never going to have this. But I find it so interesting how we're so strong about that opinion, but then every single thing that also goes against humanity also exists in all this country. You talk, let's talk about Nigeria, for example. I, I put in a comment once. In 2023, more than 9 million children are going to die from my, my nutrition. But we're all here. I don't. I didn't see anyone flinch. But imagine if I say, "Oh, a gay person has every right to marry another gay." Everybody, in that, they are all hey, like they will. Why not? Stand. Why? Why? Why not? What? What are you? What are you arguing for? What? What is your position? Do you believe that that um, somebody th th can't hold their own mind in the in the subject matter of LGBTQ? Do they just have to join in with what's going on when obviously they're talking rubbish to us about a man can become a woman? That's rubbish, folly. Now you want me to put my mind in that space and start championing that? Would that satisfy? <laughs> you know, let, let my, my my argument is that I feel like you can have the same anger about 
not liking the people in the LGBT. Hundred percent. That's you can have that opinion. I'm not against that opinion, but I wonder why that tops the fact that we as a society are not functioning. But, but, but we, no, we, no, no, you don't know that. You don't, you don't you, know that you're part. making a false comparison, my dear. Yeah. You no, see, you know, let me give you an example. This, this false this, comparison. This, this, Let's let be serious. Just, just okay. to put, look, look, look. Just to put forward. You, instead of you saying that this is what I think about LGBTQ, and I think X, Y, Z about it. Instead of doing that, you are now reckoning something else that has nothing to do with no. LGBTQ. And complete now it's the false equivalence. I'm sorry, okay, you shouldn't do it. Gavin, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I recently saw a, a protest. The Nigerian student did. You know how education is in Nigeria. You know the current state of Nigeria. But Nigerian student went, skipped school and protested against the LGBTQ, which is mm -hmm. fine. I don't, I, I, that's your right. I 100% agree with that. But I have not seen the same fire given to the fact that we live in a society that more than 9.5 million Nigerians, children for that matter, are going to die in 2024 of malnutrition. I want us to, the same anger we give about this, the LGBT, we should give it because this is I, why I, we... I, I do understand what you're saying. You, you just That's repeat. what I'm saying. No, no, I do understand it, but I still say it's a false equivalent because I don't know if you saw this program, um, Stephen Fry, and there was another British um, journalist or some sort who went to East Africa. I think they both went to K Kenya and Uganda, and they were trying to let uh, the priests in this area um, have an understanding of homosexuality and LGBTQ. And the priest, thank God for him, he stood his own ground. He was asking them, straight questions whilst they were pushing to him that he should adopt this understanding which is not the understanding that he would have as a priest a catholic priest who who not only has his afrocentric ideas but on top of that he has read in the book that this is an abomination so he's now not only within his rights as a cultural individual but as far as he's concerned this is not the intentions of god as written in the book that you people brought to our shores. Now, how are you making sense of a promiscuous lifestyle of a man with a man? And the guy was going back, he said, oh, some, a lot of us get married. He said, yes, but the majority of you are promiscuous. Have you been promiscuous, he said to him. And he said, oh, well, I've had, a, I've had a whole heap. He was kind of boasting about it. Now, you see, one thing that we don't measure in our mind is what is the aftermath of people who are pushing this agenda those people who have self-mutilated those people who have lost their families those people who have suffered a lie and they've stopped halfway we don't hear anything of those bring that as your argument because that is the real argument okay you're saying lgbt is natural and good okay now within five to ten years of those people who grew up in a in a two um, parent family. Do, have you heard about the children who have suffered under this two-parent family issue? You've not. Uh, you don't ever bring it up, but you no, don't no, know no, how no, mental it is. That, that one you were talking about. Uh, I think I we remember this video. This one of the <laughs> that, that wasn't the one I'm talking about, but there is this as well. Now, thank you guys for Julian uh, Onzima. Uh, uh, all right, thank you for coming in, uh, Ed. All right, Why yeah. are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay. You are a transgender. What, 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 what shows that I'm gay? You are a transgender yes, and you're a yeah. gay rights activist and an outspoken um, uh, uh, lesbian, homosexual. How can I describe you? Now, we're looking at the raging debate. Uh, you're a gay rights activist. Why should someone be gay? You're having a girlfriend. Yes. Do you perform the natural obligations? Uh... <laughs> I'm not sexually active right now. So what are By you doing with this lady? By choice. By choice. Yeah. I've just not, uh, I've chosen not to engage. Doesn't that make you gay? What do you mean doesn't that make me gay? I am, I am male and attracted Confusion. to me. So who is gay? 
to Rask. So um, I think the question I was uh, you were t trying to touch on was the fact that since society decides what is good and what is not good, you can one can argue, um, Bumi, that people that have transsexual, uh, transgender feelings or gay feelings should contain it because society is not accepting of it, even if it's uh, this is with consenting adults. You see what I mean? And as a matter of fact, Western society don't accept certain things with consenting adults like polygamy. They still don't accept it. So, um, and I'm sure there are other things con um, um, Western society that tell us to accept um, uh, consenting adults doing these things. Uh, they don't accept, even if it's between consenting adults, they don't still accept it. Being like like even uh, uh, euthanasia and stuff like that. There are many things like that. that, 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 that. So it tells you that societies can decide what is good and what is acceptable and what is not based on their needs. You see what I mean? So, Indonesia is accepted in uh, Holland. But yeah, that's but not, exactly not what I said, though. But not, not everywhere. Um, I, the, the, I, what did you what say? What about, what, about, that, what about Forefather's point as towards um, um, marriage between one man and three women and marriage between men and men? What, what about the aspect? How is marriage in the West seen in that respect? Is it not frowned upon? I think he's yeah. asking you. Yeah. Oh, me? Th but that's not my argument, though. My, my, my argument is not advocating for... My argument is that, why is it that when this topic comes to... I'm specifically just going to focus on Nigeria we will riot for this but the things that actually no really no no don't, don't repeat us, yourself, don't don't repeat yourself because i understand it. i understand where you're coming from i'm yeah. asking because the equivalent equivalent that you're making in your argument i'm saying they are two completely different things and they shouldn't be forced together just to make a point mm. why i'm saying though is that when you look at the se sexual desires of male and male, which which happened, we know it happened over generations, but in today they actually want to get married, and then there are um, um, traditions that say a man can marry more than one wife. Is this is an equivalent equivocation, and globally it is seen poorly if a man has more than one wife. Globally, that's how it's seen. Yet, where a man and man can marry. Does that make sense? My, you know, it's like, well, it's, it's like not it. globally, though. It's mostly just in the Western country. If you go to other societies, well, the, the, West, the West is what holds this whole planet, if you're not aware. The uh, West I think the, the Asians are bought into it, too. Uh, the, whole the whole world has. Yeah, but the whole that, world has. That, but that's what I'm saying. Point, you know, I get his point because, um, not to cut you off, Bumi, if did you have something you wanted to finish saying? No, no, you can continue. Um, I get Jasmine's point because I do find it interesting how here it's okay for two men and then it's not okay for a man to have multiple wives. That is perplexing to me. If a man want to have two or three wives, that should be more permissible than my son having to absor absorb that which you put forth in this society, which is inhumane. In my opinion, so um, and that's just my hey, listen, and I don't want to say too much because I said a lot yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, yesterday we we're struggling to keep people one, quiet. It's, it's one of the reasons why it's one of the reasons why it's one of the reasons why I chose to, to marry a man from and living in Nigeria because I plan on having my sons raised in Nigeria because I, I don't need that influencing my sons i don't know why i like this girl are you sure that you're already married let's get on we don't know the value of what we have it's when someone else tells us that we appreciate it more you know? yeah i said you know what i said a big problem in africa i said you know my sons can come here after middle school, what we consider middle school. So like once primary is done, 
he can come in for high school. He'll have his strength. He'll know he's a man. He'll know his identity as a black man. He'll have good work ethic. Then he can really get busy. And then he can go to high school and college here. But um, I won't have it. Sorry. See, Bumi, you see what you see? Yeah, let me just ask on quickly, Bumi. What I see here is what I've been talking about that is it's like a dynamics that is going on right now. The African uh, we, um, women are a kind of buying into Western um, narratives, while the, Afri the African women that left for three, four hundred years ago, those societies have seen the damages it's doing, it's and they are trying to reverse, trying to warn us not to buy into those things. And I tell you, you will do some good to listen to what she's saying. Because there are there are there are aspects. My argument. I'm no, you're arguing. A, a, you're, but you're argue, the yeah. argument is that you are a traitor. Wait, let me speak up for myself oh, because okay. I feel like there oh. is some misunderstanding <laughs> and biasness going on here. I made a clear point. I never said I was advocating for the LGBTQ. I, I asked the question, why is it that? And I give you statistic. In 2024, this year, also last year, but let's talk about this year because we're in the present. 2024, nine point something million Nigerian children are going to die of my, my, my nutrition. Right? Mm -hmm. But Nigerians are not going to completely cut off everything they're doing to protest for that. But you see, when the LGBTQ topic comes up, if I answer the question for you, would you wait, stop? Wait, they will cut off. <laughs> I guess they would. Wait, wait. They will. I can cut answer off the question, or I can answer this question that you're putting. Thing. And that needs to answer that. I would call that, in my opinion, I would call that conflating points. Well, I said it to her, but she she doesn't agree. No, what it is, no, what no, it no. is, well, from the aspect that you are, profile, profile, and let me just to quickly try to please, please let her finish what she's saying because I am hearing her. But Maybe you are not hearing that. fully. I hear what I think she's trying exactly. to say that we are not putting our, we are not getting our priorities right. Right, kind of. totally, exactly. Uh, yeah, if I'm mistaken, you can't hear. Always advocate about military. Yes, how we don't have it. Yep, how that is going to be the debt of us. Yep. We always talk about how we have corrupt leaders who are not yep. only stealing money now, but they're destroying our generation. Nigeria does not have a future if we continue in this pattern. Okay. Yep. And I'm wow. not saying, see, if we should see, we talk about Bob Risky. Bob Risky was in the whole media. AFCC arrested him fine. But there is no one LGBTQ, at least we know of, in the Nigerian government. There is no law in support of any LGBT whatever in the Nigerian constitution. Mm. But so why is it that as a school child, I will skip school? You know how education is in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Don't don't even try to skip school because it's not worth it. I have to but be allowed to answer the question. I will skip school and go and protest for that, knowing there's nothing in our constitution, no LGBT, whatever. But the things that affect, you mentioned how there was recent strike, uni strike, that lasted nine months or almost up to a year, for decades, it's been happening. But we don't gather as a nation to protest those things. But once the LGBTQ topic comes on, we we automatically just arise like robots and focus on that. Why okay. is it? Okay, I'm going to answer. Me personally, you've labored that point. You say a couple of times, I've told you that there is a deflation, but you won't accept that. Fair enough. Let me answer your question. The fact that the matters you speak about in the Nigerian um, historical causa caus causation where we are today, many things have been talked about, many things are deep, many things have caught us out. This new thing that has come about, it is good we nip it in the bud. 
completely. We don't want it to become any law in our land, talking about rubbish. So it's better that we stand up and kick this new bullshit that these European and Western people have for us. We get it straight away before it, before it, it merges into a, 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 a something else that is of death to us. We get it now and, sh and ship it out. That is, if that answers your question, maybe that's okay. Well, if you understand well, what I'm well, saying. But Mr. Jago, in the Nigerian constitution today, if, you sh if you're part of the LGBT, if, if you're found to be part of it, whether you're showing any physical affection, whatever, you will be sentenced to jail for seven plus years, if whatever. It's okay. there. It's, so, not, it's not anything well, you, new. You, you don't me. I, I don't know what's there or not, Bumi. And I'm not yeah. arguing for I'm not arguing for argument's sake. Yeah. I'm saying no matter what it is that individuals feel about their own individual self as to their sexuality, this thing therefore has been going on for neons, and we have never needed laws this way or that way for this predicament. Predicament. So I don't believe that we need these laws now. However, fundamentally, what is what is of strength in that Africa of ours is family. However, this family is made up. It's normally made up of a man and a woman, or a man and several other women, or in some aspects in Africa, there are there are a, a woman with several other men. So there, there are these things. However, what they're forming is largely a form of conjug conjugation that can turn into birth. This is the natural course of things us complicating our minds with all these foolish things that any individual can get on with unimportant things the fact that me and a, a woman across the road is having sex what's that got to do with anyone it's got nothing to do with no one but it's not a marriage but we're just having illicit sex what's what's that why do i have to bring that to the table mm. why why don't why don't i bring to the table i want to be the most promiscuous individual ever and i want to be recognized for this because it's my sexuality what kind of argument talk is that it's nonsense and then you're coming to bring it to the table like we're going to eat off it i cannot eat off that table there's that's nothing it. nourishing there nothing that's nourishing Mr. Mr. Jago, Jago, I, I i know you feel strongly about it i yeah. i get where you're coming from okay see um, Mr. Brother, Jago. um my point is this right um okay are you finished um on booming okay I, see my point is that i 100 percent agree with you but yeah. understand this is a big topic in the west because it's something they are addressing you know but understand this is not a topic in nigeria i think we should show, corrected me that it's 14 years it's see so if, if yes, you are if if you are deciding to parade as gay in nigeria it's like you're asking for a debt like you're literally acting to be killed like yeah. nigeria is very homophobic i'll give you an so, anecdote honey i get my hair done at a certain salon in vi and yeah. the young man that's been doing my hair for years, he used to have the flyest double twists. They were red and they were cute and everything. I used to love it. And then when, when I came back the last time, I said, what happened to your hair? He said, I had to cut it, Ma. I said, why? He said, because I was looking too much like a girl. You know, they don't like that in Nigeria. But you, but you see, he's going to live his lifestyle, but he's going to have to abide by the rules. Right? Yeah. And, and he recognizes that. He will have his community... No one's going to shut him down. He knows where he can hang out. He knows where he can parlay and get together with those people. But he will have to abide by the rules because that's just not the country for that. Now, if he wants to live freely and openly, then he needs to find himself in the West. Mm. Yeah, but that, that, that's, exactly, that's exactly my question. Okay. Right now, right now, presently, if I, Bumi, should call a protest in Nigeria about the LGBTQ, millions of Nigerians are going to write, they're going to come up. But if I actually call a protest about corruption, you barely see Nigerians. So, but I'm like, but that's, LGBTQ is not what's killing us because it's not really there. It's not, it's not um, something that's I, I think, could it be, let me suggest this, could it be because the LGBT protest is not, of, it doesn't happen often, 
But while um, the issue of corruption has been with us for a very, very long time, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, so many times, and, and it's part I don't of believe you're listening. No. I don't believe you're listening. Yeah, for me, you repeated yourself five times the, now based yeah, on that yeah, same sentence. The election for and, the. And, uh, unless you can answer it yourself, J J Jagun, let, uh, it doesn't seem like you can get an Jagun, answer. Jagun, leave it so that because um, Loco come for you. Loco is not in the mood. No, but I want to ask a question to Bumi. I understand that you've been asking the same question, but I also want to ask you a question. What would you like to see have? What would you like to have seen done? What this would you it. like? What would you like to change in your country about that? I would like that we first address key issues that are literally because mr jago mentioned family mm -hmm. what's killing nigerian family structure is the lack of security mm -hmm. i have a friend that was literally raped that's what's killing in nigeria like literally went to school and kidnappers came stole the money but that's what's killing society present day nigeria right now Mm -hmm. it's what's killing us so th this is not me trying to say nigeria should accept lgbtq understand that's not what's killing us it's if you have a list of things that's not exactly yeah. i get you but every single time they always somehow put that at number one it's like it's miss well, well, you see that that is what I don't get. Why do you say every single time because it's yeah. not every single time it's not, it's not number times. one in, in nigerian mm. aspects Nigerian aspects, when it comes I, I, to this discussion, there are far more forward thinking. Again, but the thing that is flaring up yeah. is security, corruption. Yeah, there are far more forward family. thinking than Ghana, yeah. Kenya, mm -hmm. Uganda, and all these it's other it's countries it's that it's have it as a proper political aspect. In yeah, Nigeria, it's not that much of a political aspect. It's just that the people know that they don't want this pushed upon them. They, they, they know that they, want it, they don't want it pushed upon them. Hello, speaking yeah. true. The, the is, but they have more anger the for that. Is, Compared to others, hey, leave More them now. Okay, nice. okay. <laughs> let's leave them with the anger. I, I, I see. I, I I have the same frustration when I saw them protesting about Mubad. People respond to what see. they feel emotive about at the time, uh -huh. and Listen, I think they are a little bit um uh, 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 tired or have, oh, well, there's a I time for it. Um, a kind like, of jaded by corrupt. Um, so, so sorry, uh, a kind of protesting for corruption and security and all those things. They, I think they've done. gotten. Yeah, they've done it, but they, it's like they're exhausted. That's um, the fatigue. That are yeah, the fatigue. Yeah, yeah I think about. kind of. Mm, yeah. 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 Mm. See, the thing is, for me, I think what Bumi is trying to say, I understand quite clearly, very clearly. Mm. Um, she is not saying what Jagun is saying is not correct. She just probably maybe wants equal balance to like hey look there's this other aspect that is as in um, um danger coming on this direction they have not put attention to it by now just the way we are putting attention to this lgbt stuff that it will end up becoming disastrous in the nearest future and these are little ones generations five generations or the like probably next future in of nigerians you understand so she's just advocating like look She's not asking us not to put energy for this LGB, whatever, STD, HIV, whatever people they are. She's just saying that, look, this is another endemic that's coming and that's coming on the way in the future. Just like people are advocating for climate change, saying, no, look, 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 please, um, there's climate change on the way. We have to protest. We have to this. We have to that. Even at that, people are still not even coming out to protest for climate change, so to speak. But there are people who are fully convinced that, look, if we don't focus on this climate change, it will come and wipe the whole country or whatever, the whole world away. This is that. So and people are putting more effort, like, look, climate change, climate change. So she's just coming from the aspect of that angle. Not understanding the fact that what Jago or every person is saying about protests of, of against LGBT, you stand, or Jago will say, like, nip it on the board now before it gets too deep. She's also saying that this one to nip it on the board now before it gets too deep. She's not asking to, you also to abandon one and focus on that one. Yeah, she's just like, hey, this is also coming. Put effort into it. So that's what, what I understand she's just trying to say. So basically, we are all in the same thing, the same thing, or in the same boat. You know, for example, the same well, one thing I found out local was that societies actually do regulate certain things that they want. Like, I was watching this documentary when they were talking about the um, the American tribes, that they, when there is a time for many, uh, there's a lot of resources in, in the community that they reduce the age of consent 
uh, for uh, this thing, the girls, and I think maybe the men too, so that they can procreate more. But when things are tight, they increase the race, uh, age of consent because they don't want to be having many children that they cannot feed. So so societies can regulate themselves based on that. And that gave me an insight into that societies yes. are meant to be regulated based on what they need. It's not, Absolutely. there's nothing fixed. And that's why if we are like Gumina at her age, when she goes to the West, she has to understand that most of the things they define there is for their society. If you translate um, some of those things to our own um, society, it might do harm. And that is that's something we have to be careful about and filter out the ones that are beneficial to us when we are talking about these things. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. She's, she's not saying you shouldn't. What she's just, she's just pointing to you like, hey, look, there's one danger in this corner coming. Just like people protesting for climate change. You may say in Africa, like climate change, what's, what's our fucking business with climate change? You understand? But the world is like, hey, man, this is happening out there. The ozone layer is coming down or whatever, whatever is getting destroyed. And in the nearest future, maybe the next 50 years, if we don't do something about it, we are go all going to be in a mess. Just like climate change, but now we will not see the danger in it. So I think for me, my is just this is what she's just trying to say, that look, this is a time bomb that's waiting to happen. Because in other places, children are being just like this pedophilia or this, um, 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 what's it called, um, child um, um, pornography that they, they're trying to exploit in the world right now. America's been crying, people have been crying in America, bringing out this hidden code, like, um, I think, um, what's it called, um, Black Beauty, you should have heard this, the Balenciaga saga and what else, for trying to um, introduce children into um, se um, sex pornography or children or whatever. So this is an endemic that most of the world do not know. But there are some people who are like conspiracy, conspiracy theorists in America who are bringing this out. Like, look, this is what these people are trying to do. The larger population will not see it. Just done. So that's well, weird. In, 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 you, in you ending there, because I was listening to you, I, I think Bumi spoke very well for herself. She stood up very well for herself, even though I'm in disagreement with her. Um, you said some of what Bumi said in trying to explain that like she, she didn't use the English better than you did. She, she, I want now to know where you ended in saying that there is there are deeper levels to these things, which is to say that there are conspiracies. When you say there are conspiracies coming out that tell us that there is an agenda with the political and the economic forces who are pushing this thing. Given that aspect of your knowledge, where does your balance lie where Africa is concerned? That's where I use um, um, climate change, for example. You understand? That's why, that's why I came up with climate change. That you no, but I, I, want, I want it in this aspect because climate change is going to confuse us in that it's another old discussion because I may object to what you're saying about climate change. We don't want to go down that road. We don't want to go down that road. We just want to stick to the aspect of this aspect of family values against uh, personal individual choices for sex relationships, sexual relationships. That's what we're comparing at this time. Yeah, that's, and, individual, and, that's individual choices for sex relationships can still kill family values. You understand? This, if, 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 if I understand what you mean by um, personal um, sexual relationship, which is talking about maybe transgender or gay or sexuality, or whatever, those also secure family values. They do what? Sorry? They can still destroy family values. Okay, indeed, indeed. Yeah, they can still family values. But what so I'm that, saying that, is like... That, that is, this is the real crux of our argument. Our mm -hmm. real crux is that how valuable is this LGBT philosophy to our African society, especially at the time when there are so many other things that are far more important. So when our governments and our people reject this, the, 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 the ill value of LGBTQ, that means it's a right thing, not necessarily no, a thing that we should argue against. No, but it's it seems right somehow thing. we're arguing against it. No, 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 no. Okay, from my understanding, we are not right. You, I, I'm fighting against it 100% correct. But it's just like, okay, why are you fighting that, right? Oh, climate change is coming. Out. Let's also see fight for that too. She's not asking you to soft pedal on that fight at all. Well, could it be from that? My could it be that the, and this is just a question, could it be that the protest that you're looking for regarding the children, that the topic itself is too heavy? So when we're like emotionally, that topic is very heavy, very hard to rally people around that. Whereas the, the LGBT stuff, 
is a little more lightweight. People can digest it easier and they can read to it faster. Whereas you talk about generations of abuse of children. Now you're getting into something that is very deeply culturally it's, ingrained it's what I'm and saying. very heavy. The things, Maybe that's that's right. why they don't jump to protest about it. Listen, I answered the question, but you, I don't think you listened to the answer. These things have to be nipped in the bud because we have learned so much. We have learned so much from what they have done previously to us in the introduction of a new culture to our lands. So when these foreign cultures are coming in, we should be sharp to know that that is poison, more of that bullshit poison that it brings to the table. Let's snip it out. There's a there's a Igbo woman who has been campaigning tirelessly for the fact of one parent family, which is uh, something that Bill Gates was trying to bring into Nigeria, bring into the whole of Africa. And she was going around seeing that the medicines that they were using within these uh, family planning or uh, uh, arenas, yeah. that these medicines were actually poisonous to the ladies. So many people have died. So many people were given get, getting miscarriages. All these kind of dooming clauses. We have to be careful about with, vaccines. So. Well, she just came on and said, no, no more. And she's been fighting for this. These are vigilant people. We need to be vigilant. We can't be accepting what is unacceptable. I, I can't see. I can't see I, I, any. I, I, okay, let me just. Uh, this is a, a, a hypothetical or you know thought experiment here. I'm thinking that the reason why people tend to respond viscerally to LGBTQ stuff is because it threatens the fundamental. Uh, it threatens every single person that that wants to get into a relationship. Uh, they feel threatened to an extent by it because it's changing the, the equation between men and women. And Pope, so it's not like only for change? rich and poor, it's for everybody. Pope, do you think climate why, change does the same thing? Do you think climate change does the same um, thing? Climate change doesn't because it doesn't necessarily, they don't think about it on a daily basis. But almost any grown adult thinks about the opposite sex. And if anything, if, if they feel anything is threatening that, it, it, uh, it oh, it's almost visceral. They they respond to it more quickly than they will respond to even security because security not everybody experiences security the same way. But in terms of relationship between man and woman, it's almost universal within uh, society apart from the groups that want to change it to an extent. See what same I mean? Thing with, same thing with children pedophilia. You say, um, we mean, please go ahead. Same okay, thing. so I I hear what you're saying in terms of like the family family side of this you know and fine okay but i'm trying to say is that there are things that equally based on your arguments there are things that equally affects our family values even way more and i give example too the thing that the 200 and something girls that were recently kidnapped that's family okay yeah, but, but not my I, family. That's the thing. Most of the people in Lagos are fine. They don't care. You see, that's, that's the thing. Now that's... But what that LGBT one threatens every single one of them. If one, if no, if they they feel threatened by it to an extent. Not not overtly. They feel threatened by it because even in their own bedroom, they feel it. But that, but people, actually, hmm. but that hmm. actually affects us even way more because, understand, we don't but have human... We don't have human rights in Nigeria. It does. We say we we think we say it exists, but in theory, it really doesn't exist. See, I'm not sure you so, know that it's actually is is a kind of concept that applies to people people in the West. <laughs> it's a kind of concept. <laughs> Let's face it; they apply it very differently. <laughs> it depends on who is who is affected. If you look at the conflict recently, it's so obvious where the where the one is really does the, the coverage is different. All the all the stuff you're hearing this week is just about several Western people that died. <laughs> Why did so many thousand yeah. died? So it tells you human yeah. rights is is a concept that is applied differently, in different contexts. Yeah, I agree with you, but I'm talking about the Nigerian context right now. Mm. It doesn't really exist. Of course, it exists. That's what I mean. It applies. Yeah, that's why, yeah. You have to admit it does exist. It just it, applies. It it, 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 I understand it's not to your standard of living in the West, but it still exists. People it's in Nigeria, so, no, if you not, go listen no, to Nigeria, no. if you go to Nigeria and live there for one year, and then from there, I took you to Afghanistan and live there for one year, you'll see that Nigeria has human rights. You'll see clearly. 
You will see clear as day. Are you are you are you saying? Like Nigeria's an enlightened. Have you? When you go to Afghanistan, you will like Nigeria's at the Renaissance. Mr. Jago, are you saying that you fully accept the current human rights standard? You know, I don't. You know, you know, okay, I, and I, that's, I that's my argument. I no, don't know. I'm not saying we shouldn't be fighting for our human rights, but to say it doesn't exist is to be fundamentally flawed. You are no, wrong. Obviously, to it doesn't exist to your standard, it doesn't exist to my no, standard, it doesn't, it doesn't it does. exist exactly. But so, I know so, I, I can live in Nigeria, I can live there now. With all the craziness that's going on, I can live there. See, I can people, live can also live in right now. people can also can... live in Afghanistan now. People can also live in Afghanistan right now. Yes, yeah. yes, they, they can. However, it's the, the, the you as a woman in Afghanistan, you know the score. Me, uh, uh, me in Nigeria as a man, I know the score. So I can live in. If I'm in, if I'm in Afghanistan, and I'm somebody that basically does not like Islam, I don't like it for nothing. And I want to practice being a Christian or whatever other religion. I am going to be harangued there, if not put to death. But but it's not you but, can you can say the same about maybe some northern side of that. Yeah, but uh, we we, we, we are, I'm giving it away. I'm not giving it the comparison to have an argument. I'm giving it the comparison to just let us know that the thing that we call human rights, as forefather rightly said, it's a concept, and it's a concept given by the West. That the whole world is adopted, and we are doing measure for measure within this measure for measure. The measure of me being in Nigeria under the human rights concept would be far preferable than for me to be in Afghanistan. Simple. There's no there's no sword no, fencing to I, be done. Django, I think I, I get where she is coming from. She's coming from maybe she did contextualize it to say that uh, it's. Um, to her standard at the same time i think originally she's coming from the point of view of the way they define it in the hague or something like that the way they have it in their document the truth is none of them actually follow it they follow it when it suits them exactly um, so, but, I, but I, I, I get where she's coming and, and this is the this comes down to the, what we were talking about earlier and you have to approach things in an original way try to strip from all the things you've heard and you know understand the and source of what they what they truly mean when they say those things because when wonderful you follow the thing. document you just you they will lose you they will confuse you and they'll make you judge your society with a standard that may not because they are it's not you are, you are may using not be society appropriate. Your society. and exactly it's not appropriate can i ask a and question a, yeah play, go ahead but, did you did you listen to that though what forefather because it's very important that we take it and that's why i want to ask him a question okay i so. feel like where can i ask what do you think my background is i know you're nigerian that's good enough for me I do. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you elaborate because you, you we, tend to address you're a young intelligent individual yes. as one very well from her Gen parents. Z. Okay, yeah, Gen from Z, her like parenting. Said, yeah. From her parenting. You are young and you are in the world, as it were, and you are somebody who is influenced by your peer group, by your peer group and by what's going on around you. That's how we see you. Are you a northern Can I Nigerian? Ask you what, sorry? Are you a northern Nigerian or come from parents who are northern? My name is Shibina. Now, now, now you're about Shibina. I'm Yoruba. Okay. So then okay. So can I ask you, what do you yeah. think ni the influence Nigeria has in me in terms of like how long, like I would I would hope is I would hope it's a great deal more than fifty percent. That's my hope. So do you think I grew up in Nigeria? Do you think I was just like born? And I think you schooled in Nigeria. I can hear it in your accent. Do you okay. definitely schooled in Nigeria over some point, and you are now in the West and doing your thing? Okay, so I I just the reason why I ask because I, from my perspective of things, I feel like the way I perceive your delivery, it seems to be like, oh, you're coming from a Western perspective. I'm not coming from a Western, I'm coming from like my life in Nigeria, my family's life in Nigeria. Cause it's not that my entire family are out of like, they are presently in Nigeria. And I, I talk to my family so well Okay, so this is not me bringing argument from me talking to some random person from McDonald's here. No, it's me actually having conversation from people in Nigeria. It's me listening to every single one of you, 
on this platform, talk about your experience about Nigeria. So when I talk about saying things in terms of like, oh, the LGBTQ, for example, it's not coming from a Western perspective, but oh, let me push an agenda. It's coming from the, the we need a solution to what our problem is in terms of like, there are certain things that are really are killing us. Well, do you uh, do you, is it fair for because what you said is is uh, you you heard my my answers to your question, and I I think based on what you said again my my answers to your question are accurate. All I all we're saying is that if we're having a discussion about sexuality, which is basically what it was about women's issues, about male and female, if we're having a discussion on that, LGBTQ came in, it should be judged on LGBTQ levels as opposed to any other issue. We must understand that what we're speaking about came from somewhere. Mm. I, I, but, from, but, but Jago, I do hear what she said. I think that she, No, she but made, it's what, what I'm saying, not pertinent. What no, I'm no, saying, I know, I know. I think we are all making points. It's just that um, sometimes it's a little bit um, all over uh, this in a kind of separated to an extent. But what she said, the, the where she what she said uh, with the last uh, this thing, what she said, I think I I think I get what she's trying to say. I think um, for me the reason why it comes across as if we are questioning is the wordings that you use, and which is a little bit petty when you think about it. But is the wording that you use that seems to imply that you are not approaching it from somebody's point of view that you know that wants to solve a problem on the ground from the point of view of somebody that is experiencing or has the knowledge in Nigeria. That is because of those wordings. When you use the term, there's nothing like human rights. No, no. Uh, you know, I, things I, like that. that that's so, when we got further. Uh, that's when we got much further. What the, the actual matter is, she's, uh, Bumi is almost asking us, why are we speaking about LGBT mm -hmm. matters? Why does it raise our eyebrows in such a way? There are other more important issues. Now, once we can agree with that, I need to recalibrate what we're speaking about in the fact that this conversation came from somewhere. So we are discussing it. And to ask us not to discuss it and to discuss geopolitics is, is not following the subject. It's very simple. I, I, I think, I, I, to be fair, Jago, you are not being too I, kind to her, but I, I, but I get I, where you're coming from. Wait, but try I, to I, understand where she's coming from. I never said we shouldn't talk about it. I said that it seems to be more bravery more courage is put into that topic compared to other topics. And that the reason why I brought up human right and why I say it does not exist in Nigeria is not to say, oh, but like truly, truly, when we really deep it, because if it did exist, I don't think majority of us would be out of the country. And I'm not saying, oh, the people there, but it's like, if we're truly being honest to ourselves, to the standard where Nigeria becomes a, functioning society where more than half of the people in their diaspora can freely confidently go back to the country because we do have nigerians going through means like actually going through libya where we know what goes on there but they know that is rather is either i die there than, than die in nigeria that's the aspect of me talking about that there is like people will rather go that than stay in nigeria and that's why I say that those things are really affecting us deeply. Mm. And even if we try to address the LGBT stuff, the police department, for example, or our investigative teams, if we really want to say we want those people to investigate who is actually LGBT or whatever, we do not have that. Because they can't even investigate a, a simple robbery. They can't even do that. So how would you want to stand on actually protecting your society when it comes to that aspect? When you can't even protect the basic amenities. It doesn't exist in Nigeria. And that's why I feel like this LGBT, this topic is such a western thing because that's what they're dealing with they've gone through so many things they have standards so it's like okay what's the next thing that we can argue about and debate about and, and talk about waste our time on because they have other things well, we don't have those things uh, speaking mm. as a westerner 
I would like to say that LGBT is kind of almost like a, um, a smoke and mirror here. It's almost a bit of a distraction that's used to manipulate people's minds so that they are not paying attention to more relevant topics that impact, for example, their taxation rate, their ability to buy a home, their ability to get approved for financing, et cetera. So when you say that they don't have many things to argue about, I disagree with you. There are plenty of things to argue about here in the West. And because we're so you know, distracted with Diddy's trial and with uh, LGBT, we don't have the energy mentally to focus on the things that matter. So I would challenge you on that statement. Mr. Jackie, do you agree with what she just said right now? I think that she, she has a point. I, I, mean, I, I believe that uh, the LGBT ag agenda is an agenda. It's an actual agenda. It, it didn't, if you read history, then you, you would have an understanding of where it actually comes from. Once you've done that, then you bring it to the present day and look at what's actually happened and what's happened over a quite quick season. Over 10 years now, people's minds have changed completely. Now, when I see this kind of thing happening, as somebody who's older than probably the oldest on this stage right now, um, uh, the oh, truth, you can't be uh, that show. Freedom. I think this might be. A, you don't know that. that, <laughs> that, 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 that show. Keep saying that. <laughs> no, no, I, I barred myself from you guys. Yeah, I'm not going to that me. Anyway, what I'm saying is that because I've seen these changes and I recognize them for what they actually are, I, I would put it in a much deeper way than even Black Beauty put it, which is to say that these things are actually demonic. And they if you have any semblance of, of spirituality in you, you would understand where this demonism comes from. And it is placed nicely into our year by year. And we're swallowing it. We're swallowing the poison, which is what we've always done. The people who stand up and say, hey, you are swallowing poison. Normally, they're not listened to until it's too late. It's, it says it in all of our books. So that's how I'm looking at this thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. See, Bumi, I'm sorry. I think with this topic, uh, a lot of people are on your case. But I do understand where you're coming from. And you, you seem to be going back to this LGBTQ thing. You, because if your original point was about why are we not prioritizing other things, I would have preferred that you talk about other issues that we, like the Mubad protest and other little things that we'd go on about. Like you saw how um, uh, a Black Beauty talked about how they use it to distract people in the West so that they can get away with stuff. They even made a song about it. Is it not um, something Bambino or something about how they use all this stuff to distract people, why people are dying and all kinds of stuff is going on? I See, we on... Uh, yes, yeah. and I know your... Yeah, her heart is in the right yeah. place. I think she's... Today, but um, Bumi, you are, you are thinking more in line with the way I know my, I will always talk about like oh why are we not prioritizing more important things and all this why are we going on about all this stuff I get where you're coming from on that one but when you keep using LGBT as a way to make your point it seems as if you are defending the LGBT uh, agenda to an extent I'm only pointing out the things that unite us mm. as a country so no, I'm sure to see the no. same the Thank reason why you keep reaching for it, hon, is because they keep putting it in front of your face so it's at the forefront of your mind. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I, I'm saying it because I've realized that's what really unites Nigerians. Really? really? Which is what? Which, no, which is what? What really yeah. unites really unite us? LGBTQ. That's well, what LGBTQ. So if, if, yes. if we agree, if, if Nigerians, oh if Nigerians... And I tell you why. It affects everyone. Bumi, yeah, if Nigerians... Right. If I could put this to you, uh, Bumi, if Nigerians are united on a certain specific point, is that not a good thing? Exactly. That's my. That's exactly my point. That same thing that united, I feel like we should use that and also challenge that to other things. Like that's what? Why I how, how do you think we should tap into anti-LGBTQ unity in Nigeria to solve other problems? And that's mm. why, and that's why I brought. I an never example. thought I would ever ask such a question, but it's and all this, right. This is, <laughs> and that's why I gave an example about school children because aren't they the children future of tomorrow? Okay, they protest against that. 
And I'm saying this same children should actually protest about children dying in Nigeria. That same energy should be put into place. It shouldn't be it's left not to a bad, It's not a bad idea you have, therefore, it, now that, that I'm coming to your understanding. But you, we also know that with that kind of idealism that you have, when you have idealism like that, I, 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 it's not like when they just tell uh, forefather, you go and do it. But when the, you have this kind of idealism, because it took a long time for us to get to understand what you're saying. And if you have that type of idealism that would adjoin a power play to other position of note in our society, then maybe it's you that need to stand up and just surprised Mr. why I come to Mofia getting what she's saying right now. It's okay, it's okay, bro. Can I can I can I can I weigh in on this one? Sorry. Before before you weigh in, before you do bros, let her finish, bros, please. And that's why I asked. Come on now, Jack, you been I'm saying please, though. Finish. I'm saying please let her finish. Not let me finish, finish now. Uh, is oh, that okay, bad to okay. <clears throat> And Mr. Jagu, that's why I asked you. Why is it that when this comes, we put so much effort, but then why this? Because it seems like we do tend to ignore the fact that, yes, this is a bad thing, but we ignore the fact that a bunch of people do die in Nigeria. And fine, let's forget those ones. Let's start with children. If we truly value children as an important part of the family, like you have truly mentioned, the family structure has to do with children. How is it that we live in a society that we say nothing to 9 million Nigerians dying of malnutrition? I, 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 Mr. Bumio, you have to understand that, as I said, now I am clear that your utterances have not been to push the lgbtq agenda into africa but you're saying how this power base may relate to other areas where we can push further or push just as unify i i can get with that but the architecture to put in that together since this was birthed in your mind if there's any originality that you have come forward with is the birth of that positioning you therefore will you are gifted the the governance over operating such an allegiance within uh, within courses it's something that we see in the internet age done all over the world so i would say that study what you're dealing with study the, the those things that actually need a lot of attention being drawn to it and how the power base of family lgbtqism and how these things may or may not relate yeah, me. It's a big job. Uh, I would offer any assistance I have, but mm. you would be the grandmaster planner of such an ideal. I think I can learn something from it actually, because if there is unity in in with Nigerians in terms of LGBTQ, is there any way to use that understanding to make them do other things too? Um, so, um, uh, uh, Lumide, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I was I was gonna weigh in, but uh, yeah, I was just gonna. Kind of emphasize our point, and I and I see and I see that Jagun showed some understanding there, and I, I was gonna say that even though I don't sub subscribe personally to that orientation, but I do see a point of view that you know what, that is not a primary, um, they are not the real problem of our society. That's what she's saying. There are, there are other things that, that, that are bedeviling our society that we're not focusing on, but we're trying, to, we're trying to put this at the forefront to, how do I put it now? We're, I mean, I, I would say we, 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 we are looking in the wrong direction. We are, we, are, we, are, we are being hypocritical. You understand? We're pandering to, 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 to religion. Rather than <laughs> I speak the truth, calm down. Huh? Is, you, no, are no, you getting no, no, frustrated no, no. or something? You, 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 you react. <laughs> you understand? You're, you're pandering to to more to no, reason, no, more no. to how do I put it now? To the same, same thing over and over. You understand? So, mm. so I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't subscribe to that view, my my orientation, but I don't think that's a problem, um, a major problem. In that, like what the the guest said on earlier today. 
You understand? There are certain things that you can you can't legislate. You understand? It's not is it is it in our is our in our law, our constitution, that that if you subscribe to that orientation, you're gonna to go to jail, you're gonna do that, or do this or do that. You understand? Mm. These are things that there are so many things that you can like it's just like somebody else sleeping with somebody else's spouse. There's no law that that convicts you of, of that kind of action, but we know morally it is wrong for you to do that. Mm. So they're both equally wrong. You understand? Hold so, on, hold on there. Traditionally, was there a punishment for that? Traditionally. Traditionally, I can tell you. Mm. Probably, I mean, probably. No, I'll tell people. you the fact. I'll tell you the fact. Many homosexuals live amongst us in this time. We know this. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, um, adultery. Like a man goes and sleeps with a married woman. Is, is there? Is, was there a punishment for it traditionally? Mm. I'm sure there is. I don't know that. Sorry. Some cultures it might depend on on different cultures. Some cultures no. are at it. Banishment. Some may not. It depends. Banishment. Banishment. Uh -huh. Something like that. Some, some the, may not. Ostracizing people. But nobody, no personally, no, no, no mm. man yes. or no spouse is going to be happy that so someone else is um. Is, is, buggery, buggery that, wasn't uh, <laughs> part of the punishment. There was no buggery no, going no, on. I, I think, I, yeah, like, like just to round up, I do see a point of view that you know what. I, believe that. I mean, we should be, <clears throat> we should be more, to, we should be a more tolerant. You know, uh, they're not the real problem. Tolerant. In as much as you tolerant don't want, part. you don't want a closed family, or you don't want a daughter subscribing to that orientation. But let's be, let's be tolerant. Do you know how many Nigeria is one of the most tolerant countries in the world? It is indeed. So I've been listening to y'all for free. For Do you know how many universities? Yeah, that's you, that's been, that's been, that's been, you don't want to trigger. Oh, I speak the truth today. No, nobody's no, no. triggering me. I just been listening to <laughs> yesterday. You were wild, bro. bro. No, not really. Not I have really. to get out of there. Hey, anybody sorry, bro. Anybody no. else that was on there? Is, everybody was just having fun, you know. <laughs> well, I think both sides is just is just a lot of hypocrisy. Okay, so what Boomi is saying, and I hope she can hear me, and I, I wish she could come, is one of the reasons why I never subscribed to the BLM movement nonsense, which in the end everybody seen was a farce and it was fake, and only four people benefited by buying houses in the hills of San Bernardino after linking the lgbt um the lgbt agenda. cause to that of for example the civil rights issues that black and brown people in the united states were facing so i'm not saying bumi has is not right in what she's saying what i'm just saying they do not correlate you cannot bring economic problems and bring them to issues that would affect the familial and marital um, line that everybody else is trying to talk. So saying, well, they don't talk about corruption, but they talking about LGBT, two things can be right at once. So they can talk about the LGBT issue and they can also talk about corruption, but trying to say, well, why should they talk about this if they're not willing to um, promote it um, to protest against corruption? I don't think it even makes that much sense, in my opinion. That's, and not that's my beginning. What you're that saying beginning. now, on the other side, I think it is very hypocritical. And, and before I go on, I don't think it is on record anywhere in Nigeria where that 14 year sentence has been put into action. I don't think anybody has been locked up for being gay. I don't think anybody has been prosecuted or sentenced for being homosexual or lesbian. So like everything else in Nigeria, it is just a lot of hot hair and it is a lot of <laughs> mouth going around. They say that knowing fully well that homosexuality really has never been a problem in Nigeria. And that's just being real. We know people, in, especially say in the north of Nigeria, they, they have certain groups that were known to be gay. Like the society knew them as harsh as they want to pretend. Yeah, was that you or who is that from?
Who's that sound from, man? Who for that? Is it you? Go on, go on, spirit route. Go on. Yeah, yeah, so, flash his right in the toilet. No, no, no. It's, it's a TV program that was just going on. Uh, please go ahead. As much as people want to say the northern part of Nigeria is very strict, and you would expect that the northern part of Nigeria will be the most harsh when it comes to homosexuality, I would say, and I beg to be corrected, that the northern part of Nigeria actually might be the most liberal when it comes to how they relate to homosexuals in or same-sex people in their societies. There has been a designation of homo, of a group, I don't know the proper pronunciation now, of people that you would know that they were gay. So now that leads me to the point of hypocrisy in the Nigerian sphere. Nigeria in 2016 and 2021 actually topped the top gay searches of gay gay mm. porn on the internet, My yes. mind, really, so especially wow. Emo State and Delta State. Mm -hmm. So what? Those, yes. So nothing to do with me. I want to run around. It's better than somewhere in the north. I'm not surprising. No, no. Emo no, State no, 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 and no, no, Delta no. State. I think Abuja. No, Abuja. Abuja, Abuja is number well, one. Well, I'm telling you, calling the real deal. I'm telling you, if Abuja was a fragrant party man. <laughs> if if Abuja was a top, I, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I know for a fact in 2016 and 2021. So those two states stopped the searches for gay porn, not just searching about <laughs> homosexual gay, yes, gay porn. And if you went and what they searched the most, that no, was it. Oh. No, 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 no. Hold on. Are you talking about um, Google search? Who did that, Buzz? <laughs> Sir, I'm saying there was a um a, a, a reset uh, Ross, you won't see um, whether your name did there i mean which one is the interest no no no, no 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 i think it's the hold on no sorry but the, what i thought i heard right like the <laughs> the practice the practice right now uh -huh, that's what i thought i heard the practice i, thought, I didn't hear the, it was the search no the, the like, searches that came out of those areas what top to who, who top the searches for gay porn in the world was the top five was Nigeria. Nigeria was in the top five. Wow. And of those top five, are you, are you Emo State and Delta State topped. Oh, I thought you were saying those, practice. Who is practicing it in Nigeria? Oh, shit. Fuck. No, searches on gay porn, watching gay porn for fun. You know, just going to the internet and just... So, 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 how do you know it's just for fun? So, 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 that goes on on the, on the side of Nigerians. Now, what I always have a problem with, with the LGBTQ thing, and when, when I see a lot of people in a certain generation, what I would assume that Bumi is probably a little younger than me, or maybe quite younger than me, is a lot of them regurg we, you have to realize most of the people that push this lgbtq trans agenda are actually men and that is why you see men straight men are actually more vociferous and they object to it the most so most of these white men and this is at the risk of you know sounding racial most of the people the white men that push this agenda do it then they do it through their wives and then they have the rest of society just follow through this is why you see them they mm. now you see trans men trying to compete in women's competition trans women trying to compete in women's competitions knowing that the only reason they're doing that is because they could not compete 
with their fellow men. So, for example, you had that um, trans woman, four hundred and fifty ninth best in the in America, Fallon Fallon Fox. So that was a yeah. a UFC fighter and couldn't fight in the men's competition, but was going into the women's competition and basically destroying them. And they tried to make this person a phenom. In the end, just to round it up, I'll just say a lot of. Africa should be careful about buying into the trans agenda, the LGBTQ agenda. We have to be very careful. And why I say that is everybody has the right to do whatever they want. And if you believe in a higher power, then I say all of us have been destined to be what we are going to be regardless. So you we're destined to like men, you like men. You're destined to like women, you will like women. That aside, but we also have to remember the perverse nature of this culture that they're trying to push on us. This is not us. Again, like I repeated and like I said in the first half of my speech, and I'm going to reiterate again, homosexuality is not new to us. We knew who these people were and we accepted them we did not ostracize them and we did not punish them i think that not please, denigrate please. them can we I, accepted can I, can them. I ask you a question no you can't please. ask me a question talk, so, talk we accept, so we accepted them in the in society you, you, so we accepted them I into society. Back by the same time you know? so we accepted these people into our society but what we have to look out for now is this issue of them trying to make us promote it and push it on us and you when you look at it how do most people when you speak to people that are of same-sex orientation usually how how did they become of that um aspect of their sexuality usually it was either they'll say that i was born that way and you can actually talk to someone and see this person was actually born this way but a concerning aspect of it for me, is that a lot of them were abused. Does it take that long to A lot them? of them Jesus were Christ. abused into it. Are you gay? Are you are you angry? Because I'm saying something that's There's a level of trauma off. there. There's I want to ask you yeah. a question. So, <laughs> I, 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 think, I think he interrupts everybody. It doesn't so matter what you're talking about. A lot of them are Let him finish. How long is it going to take? So, ask the question. A lot of people. She oh, said, "You're traumatized." Did you? Did you? <laughs> what you can't think? What? I was speaking to speak the truth, but I, so I agree with a you. lot of a lot of, a lot of people were <laughs> abused, manipulated, and molested into it, and I think that's also something <clears> I'm really, really concerned about. But moving on, yeah, all them they can have fluent acting. No, but if I see that, even one, even. No, he rounded up. He said, "Hello, they have the floor." Please, please, please. Hello, they be the ask question. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Ah, bro, they said, "Hello, we they have the floor," and he's arguing. The guy just kept humming and humming and humming, 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 humming. Ask your question. I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm not, no. You can go on and on and on and on and make your speech. Are you How do it? you propose that you engage them? Is it by making laws or stoning them or allowing some religious? You you, you understood nothing of, of what he was saying. What, 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 what does he that? Didn't, he didn't tell me how we get, where are we engage that what, that what challenge does, that problem. Do what does that have to do with? It doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just bullshit. I'm saying, how do you, how do you engage that 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 vice you don't like? You you painted it as a vice. How when did I say? You didn't understand everything, bro. Bro, he understood nothing of what you said. You're gonna have to repeat it. But the rest of us understood. Yeah, we understood. But let let us listen. You guys have a great Let him answer you. Let him answer you, Lumide. Please, this is how they held back the education system in Nigeria, so that it doesn't lead to many more. Um, I speak the truth. Please go ahead. At what point? Did I refer to it as something that I didn't like? No, you never, you never, you never did. You never did. did you talked about true. that. We've always accepted that we knew who they were. Yeah, you, which was, which was the actual truth of the matter. 
That is the you what, what, Yo, what, what true is said is the actual truth. If you grew up in Nigeria at all, but for me, where where I where I live, there was one guy who I always used to see as homo shameful growing up, and he was always around the women doing feminine kind of things, and he behaved effeminately. And I asked my sister, I said, okay, this guy not gay now. She said, oh, he's not gay. I goes, he's, he's very feminine. Why? He's a feminine boy. He's not gay. I said, and look now, in England, this will be a gay man. You know what I mean? Next minute, he's got five kids. He, this person has got five children, and he's still the same person. So, you no, know, no, I have to look at all these no, things. That, that is an interesting point. Hold on. I, I think that triggered something in my mind anyway. I was thinking about it some time ago. I said, before now, <laughs> even if you are gay, you still function as a family man. And you still are at least able to fulfill your, your your procreative duties and all the rest of it. But in the West, it seems to be like only through adoption or you know other forms. Not you don't necessarily go and get married to a woman or anything like that because they say it's unfair to woman. But you know it's, it's an interesting um, way that we used to do it before. But you know I will just leave it. Please uh, address uh, Olumide if you wanted to. I speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Tell him what you said about uh, how we should treat. Okay, let me let me, let me just stress. Um, so let me see. It's it's very easy for us to come here and talk about issues. Oh, gay is this, lesbian is this. I told you straight on. I don't subscribe to that orientation. You understand? For me, there, there should be ways that society can engage them without legislating laws to to jail them or kill them. Or stone them to death for their orientation. That is what I'm against. You understand? Mm. I see people on the on the panel saying, you know what? Oh, maybe you lose this. Or lose that. I, I, I have a wife, a beautiful one, two lovely kids. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Have, it doesn't okay. mean listen. Someone listen. like Jagun just Let mentioned. Talk. You didn't allow like me that. to interrupt you. But you, you asked me a you. question, right? Didn't you ask me a question? You haven't You're told going me on how, the speech now. How you want to deal with that issue? You kept saying, okay, oh, so you okay, so you you no, 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 let's say, speak the truth. Let him have his turn. Now you got your voice. Let him have his turn. Speak the truth. I'm talking now. You got your voice. Why do you play so much? You're a grown man. Why do you play so but much? Play, play what? Play, you're the one playing. I, I, I feel it too. Just hear him out since he hasn't said anything for a bit. So you are the one not telling me. Exactly, not using the, the nail on the head. Tell me what you want to do about the issue. There's you nothing to do you just want about to come it. And condemn, it. You're condemning them, you're condemning them. Which I is did not condemn anybody. But you, 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 you're, you're, not, you're, not you're, you're not fair, fair. you're just not fair in your comments. Listen, for example, please, you're, you, you, you yourself condemn them. I said, just, okay, okay, so listen to me. Them. Okay, okay, so listen to me again. Okay, just listen to me, calm down, all right? And just listen. I'm not interested in all this games y'all are making people play up here. I'm tired of playing the game. Okay, so this is what I said. What I did, if you listened, I don't know if comprehension is an issue, but what I basically did was show that... Oh, you, you think you think you have an accent? I, you I, said, so, I said You think you sides. comprehend? You want to play around with what So, so what, what I did was bring <laughs> the hypocrisy this is what I did. I started off by showing the hypocrisy of the LGBT community and the movement. That was so what I started. Well, hold up. You asked me a question, so let me finish. That is not being so, critical. So, so that was what I did. The first thing I did was... That is not being critical. So that, that, was the first, that was the first thing I did. I showed the hypocrisy of the LGBTQ movement. Then I showed the hypocrisy of men. Then I saw the hypocrisy of Nigerian society, or rather, I saw the hypocrisy of Nigerian I society. I think the truth. Can I ask you a question? When you, say you, somebody is hypocritical, you say, when you say somebody is hypocritical, are you being critical or not? If I show three sides of hypocrisy... If you say hypocrisy, somebody is hypocritical, are you being critical or not? No, I'm not being critical. I'm just You're not being, being critical facts, when you say somebody is hypocritical. I showed you see? Listen, you if see? I okay, you so I you ask me a question. So hold you up. You are the D U M B, okay? D U M B. Okay, okay, all right. So, but you asked me a question. All right. You look this guy. Is this guy on the spectrum? He looks like he's on the spectrum. Why does he act like this? Um, he's, we he's don't know. We don't have any diagnosis. He doesn't have medicine. So he's a Jekyll. He's a Jekyll and Hyde. I can't talk. We don't have any diagnosis. He's a very competent pharmacist. I started off by showing the market university. 
<laughs> I started off by by saying Northern Nigeria that should actually be the strictest has a group called the Yan Daudu that and they accept homosexuals. I, I came up with that and I said I couldn't even I couldn't even remember, remember what the, the name. classification was. And I'm showing like there's hypocrisy in all these groups, but at the end, you know, there's no I never said I wasn't for or against them. I just made my statements so i don't when you call someone hypocritical you're being critical no 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 that it's okay olumide olumide it was that your submission it's a fair no, point olumide do you have a new submission or is that your submission what i'm saying what i'm trying to submit is what i'm trying to get in what i'm trying to get 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 him to do i mean you to jago or whatever your critical submission was about the lgbtq is how do you engage that part those those that part of the society do you engage them i think that was what bumi was kind of uh, um no that uh, we we're, we're clear on bumi listen don't play around with what with me man come on pretty cool listen so, no we're so, clear on what bumi is saying see, we want to know what you're saying bumi can contradict me if she i mean she's here so what, what what she was trying to say is how do you even if you we agree that 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 people people in in our part of our society have such um characterized I mean they do such activities again how do you deal with such such people do you do you then criminalize what they do do you send them to jail do you do you do you um legislate laws to say you know what well, you then, told well, them? Well, the can I can I ask you? Can very, I ask you? Wait, wait, last, bro, bro, wait, wait, bro. Sorry, last, sorry. No, no. Let me let me land, please. The very last thing I said was you have to look at two ways how people usually say they subscribe to this orientation, and if you listen to a lot of people you would say, well, this person does actually sound like they were born like that. And then if you listen to another subset of the same people, which are same-sex people, you would listen and a lot of them were actually indoctrinated into it, mainly Absolutely. molestation, it could have been rape, they were probably <laughs> sexually <laughs> abused. That's my goal. Do you allow, okay, you know what? Go ahead. I don't have time for this. Now, let me, let, right, me, right. let, me, right. let me suggest to you, let me suggest right. to you, if I may, um, in, in going through this conversation, and hopefully the conversation will change so we don't yeah, it's get back on this matter. Because I, I believe that myself, uh, Forefather, and, and Bumi, who were mainly in that conversation, came to a point of real understanding. But yeah. what, what um, uh, uh, I Speak the Truth brings to the table is that there is in culture across the world fundamentally whether we accept it or not there is a culture within all societies that are homosexual and in most societies in the world they were able to include them fully within that society some in west africa we call them two spirits i don't know if you're aware of this or only there we have there, we call them double spirit. I do, I do agree with, yeah, go on. I do, if I disagree, I'll let you know. No, as, I, as I'm coming really from where, where I think um, um, Speak the Truth gave a lot of clarity. Within this, moving forward, we don't need to adopt a foreign ideology in order to have that as an aspect in our community, because we know what it is. We don't need to be told by them, but we are allowing ourselves to be told by them. Instead of that, we know that these people aren't just there being gay. They are doctors, lawyers, gold, whatever. They do things. They're houseboys, who, whatever they are, they're already in the society. We don't need to narrow man what we're going to do for these homosexuals. That's not practical. That's why the, the, the actual. So, so, so you have, that's why the actual now, when, when you now, where you got me off track now was when you said. Now I, I agree with the fact that you told me they are in all societies, all culture. You understand? So what 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 I have learned myself personally is that no matter where you go, the, even the most religious cultures in the world, you go to Saudi Arabia, you go to UAE, you go you go to India, good, they are there. They are there, black, white, 
that hey, bro, this, you're, this you're, agreeing, you're, you're interrupting with an agreement. I don't quite understand. That, that, that's yeah, I'm agreeing with that part that they're in all cultures, you understand? So what ideology okay. are they then bringing again? That's what I want to understand. They, I, I don't think they, they, the ideology of any country, if a country is robust and real, is the ideology of the culture of that country. It doesn't need to change because white people decided that it's something called LGBTQ, which basically means gay, 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 and gay. It doesn't mean anything more than that. Um, what it is, is uh, uh, in LGBTQ, L is lesbian, which is gay. D is gay, which is gay. Bisexual is gay which is gay in terms of if you can have sex with a man's underneath i'm sorry you you are gay uh what's the other one lgbtq which is rather largely pushed by men who like other men which is again gay so they're all they're doing is throwing out complications for idiots to deal with well people like myself so can, you can see these things clearly do don't get into the stupid that? idiotic do you deal with this? skipping around with batman all day long <laughs> uh, like you're progressing anywhere <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i think um, today, today today is sunday um is is of if i start introducing another topic we are going to go too long and some people are going to be late for work and all the rest so um today for one i'm quite happy that we have two um you know solid ladies on panel indeed the end. i and, salute uh, them both they, they did extremely I well think, i think today okay okay Bumi oh, got a bit of a grilling today, I must say. He um, did well, mate. Yeah, well, Bumi did extremely yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I, she was always bound to. Um, so, but she, she's seen how we roll here now. So it's all, uh, it's all in good because we all came to an agreement in the end. So that's very, very good. And um, ladies, uh, I really appreciate your time here. Um, a black beauty, I really appreciate you coming, joining us, and um, sharing, you know, very competently with us. Um, oh. Bumi, the same too. Uh, uh, expert and uh, you all see that's the beauty now you see we all have a conversation try to understand each other um it's just that um Ulumide, i can't still understand you fully but it's all right uh, it's all right <laughs> i've never had, i've never truly understood you um i speak the truth um you know it's a shame because normally me and i speak the truth we really have a, a bit of time to have a conversation normally and the conversation slows down and he starts asking questions and i answer you go to and fro i do enjoy those our sessions together uh maybe next week uh, we'll have the opportunity to do that um, yesterday was too hot and then um, you know 12 hours people were saying shut this show down because this um <laughs> this is a little topic was getting a little bit too hot so we didn't get the chance to extend it so um i really appreciate your time here um i speak the truth and uh, jago as always um as decisive you know we british uh, we do know how, we own the la english language and uh, no, we don't own them now i don't know i don't know what uh, we don't with it point of view of the <laughs> british show we nigerians don't own it <laughs> so but the way uh, the way jago uses it i must say i i have to commend him the way he comes across and he thought you, you, you are quite incisive quite a lot of time uh, yeah uh, and also for that to so one of the panelists um, um points there a b i don't i'm mm -hmm. your yeah i don't i don't hate any tribal i don't hate anybody of you course raise, not i you raise issues i bring fire to your feet that's just no that's true that's true you, know, you don't hate anybody i think that's one thing you can say about the lumi day it's not Okay, no. next thing you do, you do not, not like Fulaniso. Um, this guy doesn't like Fulaniso. <laughs> no, no, I see. I don't. I don't hate Fulaniso. It's just that the way they, they, they are, they are influenced. I mean, if they, if they want to be a part of the society, obey the laws. Don't take laws. Nice we, we have one thank you. law. Thank you. Oh, thank, you. thank you. We truly appreciate you. You are, you are, you are a star here now, so you know you are always thank welcome. You for I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't hate Fulaniso. I just, mm. you know, I just feel that the way the country. Has been led mm. in the last couple of years and the way things are right now mm. i mean i want to be, i want to i want to be made to believe that there's no agenda there's no hidden agenda against the indigenous not just the yoruba people but the indigenous people of, of all the groups have an agenda you understand all groups do but, but it's just that it's about, not, it doesn't it doesn't dominate their approach to life but, That's but what it by is. killing each we're not going to solve issues by killing each other though. We all know that. We all know that. So, so let me so let me let me acknowledge the people in the chat. Olumide, um, 
Ch- um, I'm going to say a new name. Uh, goodbye, you everybody. I'm going to yeah, say Yeah, Bumi. Yeah, night, yeah, uh, Bumi. Man. As always, please Thank join you, us. Yeah, please join us. And the way you stood your ground today, that's how it's supposed to be. And um, so that you, we, you, we, uh, because you have a, you, for a while there, you were representing about 4 point something billion women. So, um, you, and you did a good job. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate that. Um, mm-hmm. Oscar Blackbone, I see you there. Um, thank you for joining us, Oscar Blackbone. As always, uh, Chibike, that's a new name. I don't think I've ever said that name like that before. Chibike, thank you. I see you there, Chibike. Ah, Loco, how did I miss you? I think you were not on stage. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Loco. I really appreciate you. And, uh, mm. you know, you come in and you... You didn't say too much today, Loco. Uh, but you did come and try to get us to understand what uh, Bumi was saying. So I really appreciate you uh, for coming in and spending time with us. And I hope you have a great week ahead. You know, I know you're a very busy man in London. I hope you have a great week. And uh, let me go to Oga. I see you there, Oga. Oga, you are, you are not you are, you are not being very mean today. Oga is always very mean, but today it was a bit nicer. Uh, thank you, uh, Oga. Show, show. I see you there, show. Thank you for mm-hmm. joining us. Thank you for being in the chat and all. And uh, I really appreciate uh, the time you spent here too. Tope, oh, yeah, Tope, oh, man, she was on my case today about wig. I, th- I didn't bring the wig, uh, I didn't bring the issue up today. <laughs> I don't want to get controversial. That's why I didn't come on, on stage because if I had asked a few questions, that it's they were still started. peppering you when you were oh, away. Yes, yeah. they were. I, I was on the I was in the chat that they would let me rest. I was like, oh, you see, they were, they were like, like, do you see how weak? Do you, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> it's like they just want me to come out and get into trouble with them. It's unbelievable. All right. Um, uh, justice, just justice. I see you there, just justice. Yeah, uh, cool. yeah Fumi, oh, Fumi, oh, they didn't, they didn't do anything to me today. So, Fumi, oh, I really appreciate your time. <laughs> I, really appreciate, I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you for joining us, Fumi, oh. I really do appreciate your time. To be fair, she's been with us quite a long time, and that's it. Just yeah, man. She's, but, she's tradition. Yeah, Tope O there, TBK. Let's see who's, who's new there. Uh, Dixon, Dixon Eck official. I think that was the first time I'm seeing this name too. Dixon Eck official. He keeps mm-hmm. accusing me of being silent during the gay debate. <laughs> I don't know what he expects me to do. He's like, oh, I see you are silent. You just remain silent. There's something, there's something going on here. Um, Roland, Roland Gabriel, Roland Gabriel, I see you there. Thank you for joining us, Roland Gabriel. Um, with God, all things are possible. Thank you. With God, all things are possible. Um, not all the time, though. Uh, like a <laughs> they are saying that God has already done his bit. It's up to you to do your bit. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's true. Uh, Hi, Beauty 10. I see you there, too. Hi, Beauty 10. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Beauty 10 was a bit mean today. It's all right. Uh, Beauty 10, I see you there. Thank you for joining us. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Queen TA, yeah, very nice one. Queen TA, I see you there, too. Thank you for joining us, Queen TA. Uh, who else is new here? Um, G- I- IJ Onuibo. IJ Onuibo. Thank you for joining us, IJ Onuibo. Thank you. I appreciate you and the time you spent here. AB. AB, I see you there, AB. Thank you for joining us and spending time with us. I hope you have a great week ahead. Um, it's going to be an, an interesting week, isn't it? This 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 week. Uh, let's see who else is there. Soji, I see you there, Soji and Jagon at the same time. Soji, aka Jagon, thank you for mm-hmm. joining us and contributing in the chat too. We really do appreciate you. And uh, man, I must say, man, Jagon, you are uh, you are man, your submissions lately are something else. I have to say, um, Ru Ruwan, Ruwan, thank you for joining us, uh, Ruwan. I really appreciate you. Um, who else is there? Ruan and uh, who else? Okay, let me go to the people that have donated uh, their mm-hmm. hard-earned money. Inf- info. I see you there to info. Um, the, the people that have donated money. Oscar Blackbone. Oscar Blackbone. Thank you for your donation. Five dollars. Five dollars from Oscar Blackbone. Kulata. Two dollars. Thank you for the donation. Another Kulata. Another two dollars. That is a lot of money. Um, uh, Igbo Basics. Five dollars. And Oscar, uh, the Black Stone, the Black Stone. Thank you for your three dollars, the Black Stone. Oh my goodness, show you are you are a moderator and you are donating. Thank you for the ten pounds. Oh my God, and it's a pound. He's paid himself it's now. A pound. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's paid himself. <laughs> <laughs> Walking and paid himself at the same time. Yes, <laughs> thank, thank you for the donation. Uh, uh, this is show ten ten pounds, and that ten pounds weighs quite a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Alexander Gomez, this is the first time I've gone. One, two, three, four, five, six people before Alexander Gomez. Alex, uh, 
Yeah, Oga Alexander Gomez, thank you for the donation. We really do appreciate it. Every little mm -hmm. helps, and uh, he's done it again. Alexander I'm Gomez Ferreira. With, the, with the American dollar. Yeah, I'm Ferreira. Ferreira, as always, thank you for your donation. Not always, actually. Alexander Gomez is the always one. He's always donating. The money that man has spent on platforms, my God. No, I mean, no, that's, real, that's real support there. Oh. That's real support, you know, yeah. constantly doing it. And he don't, he, he don't retire with millions. What's he going to do with them? Make it <laughs> I, I, that he's coming online to do that. He could have gone somewhere else. And the people online need it, don't they? So I really mm. appreciate him. He goes on all the yeah. platforms to assist them too. Thank mm. you for that. I really do appreciate it. And um, let me see if I can find something to you know play us out with. And I really do appreciate it. I, I must say, forefather, this this for me, I like this part of your show when you close out and give everybody a nice shout out. It's very nice. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that too. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so let me just uh, introduce uh, some of the highlights of the week uh, regarding uh, the news from yesterday. <laughs> All right, all right. So now we go with our closing song. Bye, all. When your master love you, I want one master of you. Max, if you have one, you look one no more, no food, and as oh, oh, laga, oh, laga, nipiazigo, my one laga, don't nipiazigo, I want one we look to you, be corrupt, when you're my son, because I'm a mother, 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 I'm Masi weko mamwe Odogu no kwe rezu neke Onyo mwani gadele mwe Masi ni mwazi kwe Ibu kwa mwuti melani